Yao Yao, are you back from the game? Huo Yao was riding a dazzling black bicycle. When she passed the street corner canteen, the old lady standing at the door called her to stop. Huo Yao gently pressed the brakes with his toes on the ground, and skillfully took off the helmet. The long ponytail poured out in an instant. Her facial features were very delicate and beautiful. At this time, the whole person looked like an indescribable heroic and handsome appearance. Cool. Looking at Huo Yao, the old lady couldn't help but sigh in her heart. This good-looking child is different. Riding a bicycle can bring out a different kind of temperament from ordinary people. By the way, your house seems to be a visitor, and you drove a car that looked impressive and magnificent. My son said that the car is worth millions of dollars. We can't find a car that can match it in the entire county. Then, the old lady said, and gestured with her hands exaggeratedly. Huo Yao listened thoughtfully, but there was no other expression on his delicate face. Seeing that Huo Yao was silent, the old lady carefully looked around for a while and then approached Huo Yao. She deliberately lowered her voice and asked, Little Yao Yao, tell the truth to your grandma, how did your family know such a rich person? Or is it, offended someone? She remembered that they drove a car to their house last year, and it seemed that they had a big fight in the end. Huo Yao's eyelids trembled and some dumbfounding looked at the old lady who was obviously wanting to be crooked, to avoid misunderstanding by the other party, she replied in a very soft voice, it may be a distant relative. As the words fell, the old lady's face immediately showed doubts, but before she could ask more, Huo Yao had put on the helmet again and waved at her, Grandma Huang, I will go back first. The old lady looked at the back of Huo Yao riding away, and it took a long time before she murmured, isn't your family a famously difficult household? Where did the distant relatives come from? Or the super rich one? Huo Yao was riding his car and saw the black car parked in the alley outside the courtyard gate. The eagle logo soars in the sky, the body is majestic, linear, and flexible. For Bentley, it can't be millions. Huo Yao hooked the corners of his lips, retracted his unexplained gaze, and slowly jumped out of the car, and then skillfully pressed down several buckles on the bicycle. Almost in the blink of an eye, the huge car automatically folds up, and the entire folded size looks almost smaller than an 11-inch laptop. The courtyard door was not closed. Huo Yao easily picked up the folded bicycle, raised his foot and stepped in. Before he reached the front room, he heard a sharp voice coming out one after another. Mom, why are you so stubborn? What's in this shabby place that you are worth keeping? I said that I have bought you a big house in the city, and also hired a nanny to take care of you. The conditions in all aspects are definitely better than yours now. Look at the black lacquered floor, the faded walls, and the upstairs. Is it still leaking on rainy days? You are not in good health and you have been living in such a damp and moldy old house. People who don't know think that our family is very poor, and that we are children who are deliberately abusing the elderly. Hearing these words, Huo Yao, who was still in the yard, suddenly fell into thought, but soon she raised her head again. To be honest, she really didn't look at the place where she lived when she was wearing this body. The house is an old-fashioned, small two-story building with a courtyard in the country. It has red bricks and black tiles, and the walls are not painted or tiled. Part of the area is also covered with black mold stains because of the age. In short, this is the standard construction style of the 80s, it looks really old and dilapidated. Huo Yao touched the tip of her nose, and said in her heart that after living in such a difficult environment for more than a year, she was quite comfortable with the situation. At this moment, the shrill noise in the room stopped. He's Ioman, in a black lace dress, walked out of the room. She wore a purple silk scarf around her neck. Her makeup was exquisite, and her hair was coiled with diamond hairpins. Her whole body was full of a strong noble temperament. However, seeing Huo Yao standing in the yard, he was stunned. Only soon, He's Ioman recovered his senses, constricted some of the complex expressions in his eyes, 
and asked indifferently, Why are you here? Huo Yao looked at his Ioman calmly, his eyes faint, his thoughts drifting away. She wore this body for unknown reasons a year ago. At that time, this body was not called Huo Yao, but Liu Yao. She was the daughter of a rich and upstart family in S City. Until a few months ago, I was suddenly told that this body was not a child of the Liu family, but was hugged by a nurse in the hospital when he was born. The actual biological parents were just an ordinary working couple, not only lacking money and power, but also four sons who are said not to be motivated need to be raised. It can be said that the family burden is very heavy. The adoptive mother, he's Ioman in front of her, is learning that her biological daughter lives in such a poor family, but she regards the children of poor families as daughters in raising her. It may be that this strong contrast has inspired her inner point. The remaining maternal love, coupled with the daughter raised in a poor family, looked gentle and generous, with a sweet-hearted mouth, so she quickly took her daughter home, renamed and listed on the genealogy, for fear that her daughter would be wronged. On the other hand, Liu Yao, a fake daughter, was born in a wealthy family. In fact, she was not liked by the Liu family. She was raised by his Ioman's mother in the small county town since she was a child. She is rarely seen once in a year or two. When the real daughter came back, her fake daughter would naturally have to stand aside, so before the Huo family's biological parents came to pick up the person, his Ioman told her that she was not worthy of the surname Liu, let alone continue to live here. The appearance of rushing people is exactly the same as this indifferent attitude at this time. Huo Yao condensed his thoughts, and at the same time casually retracted the gaze that fell on his Ioman. His Ioman frowned when he saw this, and his anger suddenly jumped up, what is your attitude? Hearing this angry question, Huo Yao frivolous eyebrows, and jokingly said, then what status are you now? When the words fell, his Ioman's well-maintained face turned black in an instant. Sure enough, the children of other people's families are still wild no matter how long they are raised, without half education and courtesy. At this moment, his Ioman couldn't help but think of his biological daughter Elusia. Although he grew up in a lowly ordinary family, he was gentle and generous with a symbidium temperament. Not only did he learn well, he was also versatile and versatile. Now he was dug into a star by scouts, and he was born to show them Liu family's face. On the other hand, this adopted daughter, except for this face, is really inferior to her Xia Xia. His Ioman took a deep breath. Thinking of the purpose of coming back this time, her eyes narrowed slightly. After thinking for a few seconds, she calmed down the anger in her heart. Since you are here, I want you to be clear about one thing today, and I hope you can accomplish it. His Ioman has resumed that noble posture to speak again. Although she said the word hope, she expressed another meaning. Huo Yao's lips twitched slightly, and he didn't speak yet. In the room, his Ioman's mother Yang Kaihua, who was also the grandmother raised by the original owner, walked out. She patted his Ioman's arm with her hand beckoning her not to go too far, and then her gaze fell on Huo Yao's body, her expression softened subconsciously, Yao Yao is back, how is the game? Huo Yao gave a light hum, and replied lazily, it's okay. Have you won the prize? Yang Kaihua's voice became more excited. Well, first place. Huo Yao replied faintly, without any pride between her eyebrows and eyes it seemed that it would be easy for her to get the first place. When Yang Kaihua heard this, he wiped tears from his eyes, good boy. His Ioman, who was next to him, frowned, and asked the old lady unclearly, what game won the first place? Yang Kaihua looked at her, raised the corners of her lips, and said with some pride, don't you know that we not only have very good academic performance, but also... Seeing that the old lady didn't answer her question directly, his Ioman spoke and praised Huo Yao's good academic performance, and immediately lost interest in hearing the answers. She raised her hand impatiently, and interrupted, I already understand it now. As for you, 
there is no need to deliberately set her up in front of me. With her grades, she even went to the County Key High School. No qualifications. If it weren't for our LU family to pay, maybe she could only go to a vocational high school. After a pause, Hizayoman glanced at Huo Yao mockingly again, these fish eyes are fish eyes, and they can never be regarded as pearls. When Yang Kaihua heard it, he looked at Huo Yao subconsciously, fearing that she would feel uncomfortable after hearing it, so he hurriedly explained, You haven't taken care of her all these years, you don't even know that Yao Yao is now. Hizayoman sneered and interrupted again disapprovingly, Mom, she is not my Hizayoman's biological daughter, nor your granddaughter. Her surname is Huo. Whether she is studying well or not, she will be with me. Nothing, I don't want to know. Yang Kaihua's face became stiff, those unfinished words stuck in her throat, and after a long time, she said dully, she is my granddaughter. Hizayoman squeezed his eyebrows. I really don't know what kind of ecstasy the old lady had been poured by Huo Yao. The granddaughter she found didn't like it, but she liked this uncultivated fake. She has enjoyed the blessing of seventeen years in our LU family, but my biological daughter has suffered seventeen years outside. Mom, please be sober and don't recognize your relatives randomly. If you treat her as a relative, someone might just use you to cheat some money from our family to subsidize her relatives. Shut up! Yang Kaihua was shivering with anger, I was the one who brought me up. I know what kind of person she is, I know better than you, don't use yours to maliciously speculate on her. Hizayoman's face was pale, no distinction between good and evil, Mom, I think you are really sick, you're so confused. Yang Kaihua was over 60 years old and had a heart disease. He was irritated by Hizayoman's words, his face pale, his fists pressed tightly on his chest. Seeing this, Huo Yao put the things in his hands on the ground, walked quickly to the old lady's side, helped her sit down on the bamboo chair next to her, and held her wrist with his right hand. Huo Yao's eyebrows and eyes became darker. A few seconds later, she loosened her fingers and asked with a heavy voice, Does my heart hurt again? Yang Kaihua shook her head with a strong smile and shook her head to comfort her, Grandma is all right, you're getting sick? Don't worry. Hizayoman, who was next to him, was startled by the old lady's sudden illness. After reacting, he almost reflexively waved Huo Yao away, Mom, are you sick again? Is it uncomfortable? Do you want to go to the hospital? Huo Yao, who was pushed aside, twisted his brows, glanced at Hizayoman lightly, and turned and walked into the room. Hizayoman took out his mobile phone to call for an ambulance, and glanced at Huo Yao's back, and sneered, Mom, look, this is the person you grew up with. You are like this. She still responds as if nothing had happened. The house. Hizayoman shook his head, lowered his head and started to make a call. After a while, Huo Yao came out of the house with a water glass in his hand. After Hizayoman made the call, she turned around and saw that Huo Yao was feeding the old lady something to drink. She frowned. She snatched the water glass. Seeing that the glass was not pure water, she immediately questioned, You give me what is mom drinking? Huo Yao's eyes swept over the cup she grabbed, and his eyes sank suddenly, his delicate face was no longer half of his expression, and his body exuded a dangerous breath that was cold and eager to rain. Seeing Huo Yao like this, Hizayoman was so unfamiliar that she was shocked, and the feet in high heels stepped back subconsciously, you, what's that expression? The tone is obviously weaker than just two points. Zayoman, you give me the cup, that is the medicine that Yao Yao bought me specially. Yang Kaihua, who had been relieved, pressed his chest and said, while extending his hand towards her. When Hizayoman heard this, his eyes widened. Not only did he not give her the cup, but instead slammed the remaining medicine on the ground, what medicine did she buy for you? What medicine can a country girl buy? Isn't this a nonsense? Yang Kaihua looked at the concoction on the ground, and immediately explained, this medicine. 
Hizayoman didn't give her a chance to speak at all, and interrupted directly, Stop, stop, and the ambulance will come in a while. After we go to the hospital, we have to take a good examination of our body. We dare to take any medicine and are not afraid to take it. Something went wrong. He shook his head speechlessly, and Hizayoman set his gaze on Huo Yao's face again, and you, give my mother medicine indiscriminately. If something really goes wrong, you can't pay for the lives of your Huo family. Since I am still thinking about being a family, you can leave me quickly and don't stay here anymore. Xiaomin, don't talk anymore. Yang Kaihua was anxious and angry, she looked at Huo Yao, Yao, this is your home, don't listen to her, don't leave. Huo Yao glanced at the ground, and the old lady had already drunk most of the medicine. She didn't bother to say anything to her former adoptive mother. Instead, she squatted slowly in front of the old lady, her black and white eyes staring calmly. She opened her mouth and said word by word, in fact, you should enjoy the blessing. Yang Kaihua stared at her blankly, and suddenly there was an indescribable panic in her heart. Her bloodless lips trembled slightly, and then she asked in a hoarse voice, Hey, did you hear us just now? What did you say in the room? Huo Yao smiled, with rare softness on her cold face. She gently stroked the white hair of the old lady's temples with her hand, like coaxing a child, her voice lowered, My transfer procedures have been completed. It's time to go. You have to take good care of your health. Remember to take your medicine on time. When you return to City S, I will see you again, at Yang Kaihua felt the tenderness on her cheeks, and her throat became more dry. For a while, she held Huo Yao's hand tightly with her back hand, OK, Grandma will listen to you. Good. Huo Yao nodded in satisfaction. Hizayoman, who was next to him, looked very uncomfortable. She just had a dry talk with the old lady, and she didn't see her nodding and promised to go back to the city with her. At this time, the wild girl simply said a few words. She actually agreed? It seems that she really underestimated this wild girl's tricks to deceive people. At this moment, the ambulance arrived outside. After a while, the old lady was put on the ambulance by the medical staff under Hizayoman's compulsory request. Before going to the hospital, Hizayoman did not forget to give Huo Yao a few more warnings to get her off. After Hizayoman left, Huo Yao went upstairs and returned to the room to pull the suitcase that had already been sorted out from the bed. Even without Hizayoman's appearance today, she is about to leave. In the past few months since Liu Yao changed her name to Huo Yao, the reason why she has not returned to Huo's house is that she is not at ease about Yang Kaihua's body. Secondly, she is in the second semester of high school, so she and this body his biological parents have agreed and when the semester is over, they will transfer to another school in the third year of high school. Huo Yao took out a letter from the drawer of the old writing desk, brushed the corners with his slender fingers, and then stuffed the letter into his backpack. Pulling the suitcase, Huo Yao just closed the courtyard door, and a horn sounded over. She raised her head and half squinted to look at the black car making the sound not far away. Although it bears the ordinary Volkswagen logo, the line shape of the entire body looks very cool and smooth, and there is no lack of publicity in the low key. After a while, one person got off the car, and the other person was wearing a black peaked cap. After getting off the car, he just leaned against the car door lazily, looking at Huo Yao's direction. Huo Yao raised her eyebrows, her delicate face was a little more scattered, and then she took the box and walked towards the person. When she approached, the corners of her lips curled up, waiting for me specifically. The man put his hands on his chest, Rui raised his chin slightly, glanced up and down at Huo Yao, and finally landed on her suitcase, and said playfully, Is this being swept out? Huo Yao glanced at him, eavesdropping on other people's speech is not the work of a gentleman. Men Yu whispered, Did you forget that our two houses are only halfway apart by a wall? So, Neighbor brother, are you waiting here specifically to laugh at your savior? 
Huo Yao folded his arms around his chest, not smiling. Knowing for nearly a year, Men Yu never asked Huo Yao by his name, and he has been obsessed with calling his neighbor's brother, indicating that he has changed from gnashing his teeth to a habit. Of course, he also knows Huo Yao's life. Some. What are you going to do now? Men Yu raised his eyebrows, the facial features under the peaked cap were amazing, especially those eyes that were deep and bottomless, like stars, boundless. After a pause, he added, of course, if you have no place to go, I can also take you in temporarily. Huo Yao looked at Men Yu's face and tucked in her heart. Then she placed the suitcase in her hand in front of him, let's do it, I'll give you a chance to repay you. Men Yu's eyes drooped, looking at the suitcase that was deliberately placed in front of him, he probably guessed what she meant, and couldn't help but hum, where do you want me to take you? Huo Ya raised his delicate eyebrows and snapped his fingers, his handsome action was a little bit ridiculous, train station. Although the small county town is not big, it is in a good location. It happens to have a small train station. However, the biological parents of this body are in S City, and there is no direct train service here, so they have to transfer halfway. Hearing this, Menu inevitably looked at her strangely, that's it. Yes. Huo Yao nodded and saw that he looked quite complicated. After thinking for two seconds, he said again, but you have to think that this method of repaying my gratitude is too easy. If you feel uncomfortable, you can send me to the airport in the city. Okay, after all, everyone is a neighbor, and I guess there will be no chance to see you again in the future. It takes twenty minutes to go to the railway station, but at least three to four hours to the city airport. Under the peaked cap, Menu's expression became more complicated, and even a chap appeared on his always calm face. He was considering whether to reveal his details to this silly girl, otherwise she didn't know what kind of opportunity he had missed to hold his thigh. Four hours later, the city airport. Huo Yao got out of the car and took out his luggage from the trunk. After thinking for a few seconds, he walked to the front again, raised his hand and knocked on the window. Soon, the car window slowly lowered, and Men Yu looked at Huo Yao, his eyebrows raised. Huo Yao took out a small bottle without any label from the bag, this is for you, and there will be no deadline. After speaking, she threw the small bottle into the car, turned around and pulled the suitcase without waiting for Men Yu to speak. Men Yu picked up the small bottle that was accurately thrown in the storage box next to him, with a playful look between his eyebrows and eyes. He raised his eyes to look at the girl who had gone away outside the car, his slender fingers rubbed the edge of the bottle cap and thin lips. Suddenly outline a very shallow arc. Oh, will it be indefinite? In the hospital, the doctor's office. He Ziyoman looked at the doctor with an incredulous expression, Doctor. Are you saying that my mother's heart problem is much better? The doctor held a stack of diagnosis sheets in his hand and nodded again, Yes, the old lady's current body data is good from all aspects. As long as she doesn't receive too much stimulation, the probability of her future angina pectoris is very low. His Ioman was still in a daze. He always felt that this doctor was not reliable. After all, her mother had had angina pectoris for decades, and all major hospitals had gone to check them and concluded that they were all serious. By the way, I want to ask Ms. He, did the old lady go to another hospital for treatment? Or did she take any other medicine? The doctor asked again. He has always been Yang Kaiohua's attending doctor. He showed her every time she fell ill for so many years, but in the past year, she has hardly been to the hospital and the results of today's examination really surprised him. His Ioman shook his head blankly, No, my mother has always been at home. I have wanted to take her to the provincial hospital many times, but she refused to go, let alone treatment. As for medicine. When talking about this, I don't know why, His Ioman saw the scene of the cup of brown potion that Huo Yao gave the old lady before. The doctor saw that his Ioman was talking and there was no more text, and he couldn't help but cried out in doubt, Ms. He. 
Hizayoman recovered and shook her head hurriedly, my mother did not take any other medicine. She is really crazy, and even the doctor is helpless. Where can that wild girl buy medicine for treatment? The doctor heard the words and said jokingly, that's pretty amazing. Hizayoman reluctantly pulled a faint smile on his face, and planned to check it again when the old lady was brought back to S City. When I arrived in S City, it was already 10 o'clock in the evening. Huo Yao got off the plane. As soon as the phone was turned on, a lot of text messages and WeChat flooded in. Before she clicked to read it, the phone came in. Unfamiliar mobile phone number. She paused with her fingertips, pressed the answer button, and the young and unfamiliar male voice came over on the phone. It was not someone else who called, but the eldest brother Huo Yangzi. Although Huo Yao was a little surprised how Huo Yangzi was at the airport, she soon remembered that she had sent a message to her grandmother Yang Kaihua before boarding the plane, but didn't ask much, but she replied, come out in five minutes. After hanging up the phone, Huo Yao put his cell phone in his pocket at will, and walked towards the baggage claim area according to the directions of the airport signs. After getting the luggage, Huo Yao quickly passed the exit gate, raised his eyes and scanned the group of people waiting in front of the pickup gate. Finally, his eyes were locked on a tall young man who was talking on the phone. Huo Yao lifted his hands and pulled the shoulder straps of his backpack, dragging the suitcase and walking towards the person. When the biological parents of this body came to recognize her a few months ago, they showed her the pictures of the four brothers in the family. She has a good memory, and the Huo family's own genes are highly recognizable. Recognize. Huo Yangzi hung up the phone, thinking that his sister, whom he had never met, should also come out, and then he flipped through his phone again and found a photo of his sister who had been specially collected on WeChat. As soon as I raised my head and prepared to compare the photos to identify people, I saw a little girl standing in front of me. Wearing white sportswear, with a black backpack on his left shoulder, and a suitcase that is not too big in his right hand, his face is pure and white, and his facial features are exquisite and beautiful. At this time, his clear and bright eyes are watching he didn't show any timidity at all. Huo Yangzi was stunned then looked down at the photos in the phone. He could vaguely find some similarities in his facial features, but he still asked a little uncertainly, How? Huo Yao nodded and let out a lazy um. Huo Yangzi scratched his head, with an unbelievable expression on his handsome facial features. It took him a while before he said, You look a bit, different from the picture. Huo Yao raised her eyebrows slightly. She was already tall, so she scanned the photos on Huo Yangzi's phone at a glance. The girl in the photo has two long braids hanging on her chest, and her cheeks are very brightly painted with blush. She is paired with the earthy and tacky scissor hand posture, and she looks like a country girl. Huo Yao's forehead suddenly jumped. I remembered that this photo was taken some time ago after Huo Yangzi added her WeChat account and asked her for a photo. She never liked taking selfies so she found the selfie taken by the original owner directly on her phone. Just clicked one and sent it over. In such a comparison, it is no wonder Huo Yangzi's expression is shocked. Huo Yao cleared his throat, and replied without changing his face, perhaps I was born not to be on the mirror. Hearing this, Huo Yangzi's black eyes fell on her overly beautiful face again, and the corners of her lips twitched fiercely. With this appearance, you can completely abuse and many stars in the entertainment industry, right? This is not yet on the mirror, so how can the stars who eat by their faces live? Huo Yangzi suddenly felt that his sister who met for the first time, is a little shameless, is it swollen? Just as he secretly complained, he heard Huo Yao's voice coming over again. However, you are not the same either. Huo Yao raised his lips and looked at Huo Yangzi's vague words. In a high-profile suit, there is an inherent noble temperament in every gesture, which is obviously different from the rumored do not seek improvement and the poor. Huo Yao's eyes flashed a touch of playfulness. Interesting. Huo Yangzi was about to ask Huo Yao what's different. 
she raised her gaze and seemed to see who she saw. The corners of her lips rose and she subconsciously put on a petting smile, raised her hand in the air and waved, Sya Sya. Huo Yao tilted his head and looked over his eyes. Not far away, a tall woman in a white dress was jogging over. She was wearing sunglasses and couldn't see her appearance for a while. I'm sorry, big brother, there is a traffic jam on the road, I am late. El Yuxia's voice was still panting obviously. It's okay. Huo Yangzi shook her head. Seeing her hurriedly panicked forehead sweating, she took out a pack of tissues from her pocket and handed it over. El Yuxia took the tissue, took off her sunglasses gracefully, hung them on the collar of her shirt, and smiled sweetly at Huo Yangzi, Thank you, brother. Huo Yangzi only raised her hand and patted her head lightly, showing intimacy in every manner. Huo Yao watched the interaction between the two people, and the corners of her lips curled up slowly, without asking deliberately, she also guessed that Xia Xia in front of her was the girl who had carried her wrong in the hospital. Originally named Huo Xia, Liu Xia changed her surname after being picked up by the Liu family. It's not particularly beautiful, but the whole body is really like what the adoptive mother Hizioman said. She is knowledgeable, gentle, and generous, probably wearing a white dress, and the whole person has added two cents of immortality. Su realized that Huo Yao looked at it unconcealedly, and El Yuxia seemed to have discovered the existence of a person like Huo Yao, and finally set his sights on Huo Yao. The girl in front of her is very beautiful, her bright eyes are shimmering, and the corners of her lips reveal a cynical sloppy, three-point stubborn, seven-point cool, lazy, and casual. El Yuxia was obviously startled. By the way, my sister, Yao Yao. Huo Yangzi next to him pointed at Huo Yao in time and introduced. When El Yuxia heard the words my sister in Huo Yangzi's mouth, her fingers in her bag tightened, as if something had been taken away in her heart, and the smile on her face was so natural. Huo Yangzi didn't pay attention to El Yuxia's expression, and looked at Huo Yao again, this is. I know. Huo Yao interrupted Huo Yangzi lazily, raised his hand to look at the time on his wrist and said, find a place to eat first. Huo Yangzi naturally didn't introduce El Yuxia anymore. He took the initiative to take the suitcase in Huo Yao's hand, look, I'm patronizing and talking, and I'll get back in the car first ask me. Huo Yao hummed softly and didn't be polite with him. He stroked the shoulder strap of his backpack and followed up. El Yuxia looked at the two people walking out in tandem. She felt very uncomfortable. She had never been ignored so much since she was a child. When Huo Yao came back, she not only robbed her brother's attention, but also calmly lower her sense of existence. I thought it was just a country girl, but now it seems obviously not like that. El Yuxia's eyes drooped slightly, and while he was thinking, a few screams came, and she was surrounded by a few girls in the next instant. Is it Xia Xia? Oh my god, I can still meet idols at the airport most of the night, I'm so happy. Xia Xia is so beautiful, and she looks so gentle. Can little fairy Xia give us an autograph? The unconcealed loud voices of the little girls who surrounded El Yuxia quickly attracted the attention of others in the airport. Many people stopped to look here. Huo Yao and Huo Yangzi also turned to look at them. Up her. El Yuxia was stunned. It seemed that she didn't expect to meet fans. After regaining her consciousness, she pursed her lips and showed a shy smile, greeted them softly, and did not refuse to take pictures. However, her gaze still looked towards Huo Yao as if there was nothing. Xia Xia has been very talented in dancing and singing since she was a child. I just joined a girl group some time ago. The agency is very optimistic about her and arranged for her to participate in a variety show program. It is said that this variety show is quite popular on the internet. These girls probably they are her fans. Huo Yangzi's eyes fell on the besieged El Yuxia, slowly explaining with Huo Yao. Huo Yao's expression didn't see any envy, she just answered the word oh flatly, the phone shook in her pocket, she retracted her gaze and took out the phone. 
it's a WeChat. Why, boss, help. Huo Ya raised his hand and pressed his eyebrows, and replied a little impatiently, get off. Why, big brother, don't do this, you can't ignore me. The corners of Huo Yao's lips evoked a very slight coolness, and his white and slender fingertips tapped on the screen, I solve my own problems by myself. After clicking send, Huo Yao simply dragged the person into the blacklist again. So the Y over there quickly typed a long string of text to send, and got this response, the sending failed because the other party refused to accept your message. Why? On this side, during the time when Huo Yao lowered his hair message, El Yuxia, who took a photo with a few little girls, came over. It was probably those little girls who were reluctant to leave first, and kept following El Yuxia. The two girls are always shooting with their mobile phones. Huo Yao put the phone in her pocket, raised her head, and happened to catch a glimpse of the two sisters who were still filming. After squinting, she quickly took out a black mask and put it on. El Yuxia, who was walking by, saw Huo Yao suddenly put on a mask, and his eyes were obviously strange, but he was relieved again when he thought of something. The Huo family has good genes and high-value products. She doesn't want fans to take pictures of Huo Xia's face. After a pause, El Yuxia said in a low voice, I'm sorry, I didn't expect to meet fans at the airport, so it took a while. It sounds like an apology, but with her raised chin, it is not difficult to see that she deliberately shows off in front of Huo Yao. Huo Yao's eyes were faint, and he looked away at El Yuxia, lazily and casually. It's okay, let's go. Huo Yangzi said. Huo Yangzi's car is very ordinary, about two to three hundred thousand. Although it is not expensive, it can be seen that he is by no means the kind of person who is rumored to do nothing. After putting the luggage in the trunk, Huo Yangzi raised his wrist to look at the time, then turned to El Yuxia who was standing aside, and asked, Xia Xia, how did you come here? El Yuxia raised her head and glanced at Huo Yao, rolling her eyes, and then replied, the driver sent me here. Huo Yangzi heard that when he opened his mouth and was about to say something, El Yuxia stepped forward, and naturally took his arm affectionately, and said a little bit coquettishly, brother, discuss something with you. Huo Yangzi frowned while holding his arm, but didn't pull his hand out, what's the matter? El Yuxia blinked, her exquisite makeup with a hint of cuteness on her face. I have been recording programs for a long time, and I haven't been back to see my parents for a long time, and I feel a little sad. It just happened that I just came back from the country, and I must be a little bit sad. I'm not used to it. I want to go home and live for a few days, accompany my parents, and I can also bring Yao Yao to get acquainted. Huo Yangzi heard this, thought for a few seconds, then nodded and said, All right we are more relieved that we have you with you. El Yuxia grinned and said um, then tilted his head slightly, raised his chin at Huo Yao, then let go of Huo Yangzi, turned and sat in the co-pilot. Just like the posture of a master. Huo Yao raised his eyebrows, and the corners of his lips under the mask curled up. He didn't say anything. He stretched out his hand and unhurriedly opened the rear door. On the way back, El Yuxia kept talking to Huo Yangzi about her participation in the audition show after joining the women's team. From time to time, she looked through the rearview mirror and took off her mask. Huo Yao seemed to want to see from her face. A trace of envy. However, the other party looked lazy. Apart from lowering her head to play with her mobile phone, she was obviously immersed in her own world, and it seemed that everything else had nothing to do with her. This made El Yuxia's sense of superiority suffered an epic frustration. El Yuxia told herself in her heart that it might be this village girl from a small county who didn't understand the entertainment industry, so she didn't understand what she said, so she was so calm. So her thoughts turned, and all the topics in the entertainment industry ended, she turned her head and looked at Huo Yao and asked, By the way, we are all students in the same year, so you should also be in high school, Right. Huo Yao's slender fingers paused on the screen of the phone. 
After a while, she slowly raised her head, and the soft warm light in the car hit her face with a thin halo, diminishing the eyebrows. Sharp. She faintly said um. El Yuxia's eyes flashed, and she always felt that Huo Yao looked a little inexplicable at this time, especially her voice was hoarse with a little smoky voice. Grasping, El Yuxia made a smile on her face, listen to my mother, when you left my grandmother's house, you have completed the transfer procedures. She deliberately increased the volume on the words my mother, my grandmother. Of course, she didn't listen carefully, and she couldn't make it out. Huo Yao's lips twitched, and he glanced at her with a smile. El Yuxia's breathing was stagnant, and her gaze was subconsciously placed elsewhere. She didn't look at her, and her voice was no longer natural. Have you chosen a good school? Do you want my dad to help? I listened to my mother before. Not particularly. No, the school has already been selected. Huo Yaman interrupted her casually. El Yuxia was stunned. The word good was stuck in his throat. After a while, she grinned stiffly and asked, Have you chosen which school? When Huo Yangzi, who was driving, heard this, he glanced at the rearview mirror in surprise. Because of work, Huo Yangzi is not often at home, but he knows that his parents have been worrying about this sister, who was taken wrong and grew up in a small county, considering changing schools and which school to go to. The reason is that his sister's grades are said to be very bad, and her parents are reluctant to send her to a regular middle school, but even if the trusteeship enters a key high school, they are worried that she will not be able to keep up with her study progress and feel inferior. In short, up to now, the family has not finally decided which school to go to. Huo Yangzi's eyes flashed, seeing her sister's calm look at this time, doesn't she seem to be joking when she chooses the school? Huo Yao changed his sitting posture lazily, with his calves crossed and cocked, and his voice was quite faint, one high. As her words fell, a weird look immediately appeared on El Yuxia's face, and she couldn't help turning her head to look at Huo Yao again, one middle school? City one middle school. Huo Yao still said um. When El Yuxia saw Huo Yao this time, she only felt that she had heard the funniest joke in the world. If she wanted to tell the 11th high school, she could barely believe it. But City 1 Middle School? Haha, <laughs> that's the best high school in the city, among the top five schools in the country, and the students admitted are basically top academics from all over the country. She spent a lot of money to go through the back door to get the county's key results. LUA sneer flashed across Xia's eyes which was also a whimsical and simple. The threshold of city number one middle school is not low. Finally, El Yuxia said with a smile. Huo Yangzi also felt that her sister's words were a little erratic. She couldn't help but cough in front of El Yuxia. She coughed and hurriedly interjected, I will discuss the school affairs with my parents before making a decision. El Yuxia knew that Huo Yangzi was looking for Huo Yao to step down, and her eyes dropped slightly, and she didn't continue the topic, but said, where I need my help, my dad also knows the principals of several schools in the city. Say hello when it's time. Huo Yangzi stretched out his hand to turn on the onboard music, and made a soft um without paying much attention. Huo Yao's slender fingers were on his legs and then tapped, lazily and did not say more, a pair of deep eyes looked out the window of the car. In the street market, there are busy traffic, bright neon lights and colorful night scenes, which are enough to show the bustling city. It is not comparable to a small county with 36 lines. Before long, the car drove into a community, probably an old community of some years, so the environmental facilities inside did not seem to be very good. However, it is probably also an old community, so the floor is not high. The Huo family bought a top floor, duplex room. The Huo family and his wife had been waiting at the door for a long time, and when they heard the ding of the elevator, they glanced at each other nervously, and then looked at the elevator door together. Soon, Huo Yangzi and El Yuxia came out one after another, and finally Huo Yao's figure appeared. Dad, Mom, we brought Yao Yao back. 
El Yusya smiled, her voice very sweet. Hmm. Mother Huo Song Ning only glanced at her, then focused all his attention on Huo Yao behind her, paused, and then walked towards her with a little excitement and a little awkwardness. El Yusya, who sensed that she had been obviously ignored, had a momentary stiff smile on her face. Although the Huo family has no money, because she is the youngest daughter in the family, her adoptive father and adoptive mother are still very fond of her, but now this kind of love is about to be taken away by Huo Yao who is back from the country. Although El Yuxia is not uncommon for this kind of petting, but thinking of something, she has suppressed her inner unhappiness. Song Ning walked in front of Huo Yao, looked at the biological daughter who looked like a mold carved out of him, and then glanced at El Yuxia, her expression was a little tranced, and a lot of emotion suddenly surged in her heart. When Song Ning was very young, whenever Song Ning brought her little daughter to a party with her best friend, her best friend would always stare at her and make fun of the little daughter's face, always asking if the child was holding the wrong child, and she looked nothing like her. It's not that the adopted daughter doesn't look good. It's that the children in the family were all sculpted when they were young. Compared with the previous brothers, El Yusya is really too ordinary. In addition, she and her husband are both very handsome. We'll be teased by a girlfriend. Looking back now, it was really poking a word, and condensing the distant mind, Song Ning softly shouted, Yao Yao. Huo Yao's expression was as faint as ever. He did not see the excitement of seeing his biological parents, and only politely nodded to her. Seeing Huo Yao's cold look next to him, El Yuxia rolled her eyes and spoke for her, Mom, Yao Yao has just returned from the country, and she may not be used to it for a while. Song Ning had been in contact with Huo Yao a few months ago, and she probably saw that her character was rather lonely and cold so she was a little bit disappointed that she didn't call her mother aloud at this time, but she didn't feel anything. After all, I was taken care of since I was a child, and raised by the LU family in a small county. Now I return to my biological family, there will be a transitional period of adaptation. Don't worry for a while. However, Song Ning glanced at LU Xia again, the complex color faded away, and soon there was an indifferent smile on her face, just saying, Xia Xia, I have worked hard for you tonight, and I went there. The airport picks up, I think it's not early, your biological parents know that you are coming to our house, I'm afraid they will be upset. After a pause, Song Ning set his eyes on the elder son next to him, Yang Zi, you can send Miss L Yu back. She was also called Xia Xia in the front, and she changed her name to Miss L Yu directly in the back. El Yuxia's face turned red in an instant, and she opened her mouth, subconsciously preparing to speak, Mom. When Song Ning saw El Yuxia, she felt a little uncomfortable, but she didn't show it. The smile on her face seemed more alienated. Before El Yuxia could say anything, she immediately interrupted, You should call me Aunt Song from now on. This is more appropriate. Huo Ya raised his eyebrows unexpectedly. Song Ning's temperament is very good, elegant, and dignified. Although she is 50 years old, she has few fine lines on her face. She looks at most in her 30s. At this time, although she is smiling, her brows and eyes have a look. The strength that cannot be ignored. It is a kind of aura that is rare for ordinary women. Huo Yao's eyes narrowed slightly, thoughtfully. El Yuxia looked at such an adoptive mother, and the embarrassment of being humiliated gradually rose. She bit her lip, her eyes were hazy and her small face was pale and pale, as if she had suffered a huge grievance. She couldn't understand why the person who once loved her so much could suddenly become so acrid because of her biological daughter's return? If so, it would be too hypocritical. El Yuxia felt that she had been deceived. For a while, the atmosphere was a bit stagnant and awkward. Cough cough. Huo Jinyan, the father of Huo who has not spoken, cleared his voice and said, Yang Zi, you send Xioxia home first. Although it broke the rigidity, it felt more embarrassing inexplicably. Huo Yang Zi nodded and responded. 
Although he didn't understand why his parents didn't let Elusia stay at home, he didn't ask much. After all, she is now the daughter of the wealthy Lu family, with an unusual status, and the Lu family is not a fuel-efficient lamp. When Huo Yangzi and Elusia entered the elevator, Song Ning, who had just had a polite and unfamiliar expression on his face, immediately changed into cautious. Looking at Huo Yao, his voice was particularly gentle, good girl, hurry in. Before the elevator door was closed, Liu Xia turned around and saw the sudden change of her foster mother's attitude, her face turned green in an instant. Huo's house is not too big, but the area of the two-story duplex room is not too small. It is decorated in Chinese classical style and the furniture is also mahogany. The layout and the layout of the house show that the owner is very tasteful. Huo Yao looked at it slowly, and finally her eyes fell on a set of calligraphy and paintings hanging on the wall, and a little surprise appeared in her eyes. But soon after thinking of something, she withdrew her gaze again, and in her heart automatically rejected the idea of the master's authenticity. Although the Huo family does not seem to be a super poor household as imagined, it is not a family rich enough to afford expensive calligraphy and painting. This calligraphy and painting are mostly imitations. Huo's father caught the little daughter's short gaze, and he was still worrying about how to get closer with her daughter. He glanced at the calligraphy and painting, and his eyes rolled. Yao Yao, do you like calligraphy too? He asked aloud with a smile on his face. Huo Yao raised his eyebrows slightly and looked at Father Huo, his eyes lazily, not interested. Huo's father choked for a moment and a bunch of calligraphy topics that had just been brewing in his heart were stuck in his throat. After a long time, he said in a daze, Oh, you are not interested. Seeing him as if he had been hit, Huo Yao said after two seconds, Personal interests are different. As soon as Father Huo heard this, a fatherly smile appeared on his face again, and he immediately asked, Then what is your interest? Huo Yao remembered herself when she didn't wear this body, and suddenly fell into silence. A few seconds later, she raised her head, looked at Father Huo, and replied seriously, Study. Hearing this answer, Huo's father's lips twitched fiercely, his serious face almost broken. A scumbag who often skipped classes at school actually said that his hobby is learning. Huo's father quietly looked at him and didn't seem to be a joking daughter. Suddenly he wondered if he was misled when he was inquiring about the school teacher in the small county town. The daughter seems to be very good and ambitious. Old Huo, are you showing off your broken calligraphy again? Song Ning, who only vaguely heard her husband mentioning the two characters of calligraphy, took out food from the kitchen, glanced at him anger, and yelled again, Don't hurry up and get the dishes. How can I show off? Father Huo touched the tip of his nose. Although he walked towards the kitchen very recognizably, he did not forget to mutter in a low voice, How come all antiques are broken in your eyes, obviously my calligraphy and painting are. His voice became smaller and smaller, and it was still a little vague, so Huo Yao didn't hear the words clearly. But the broken calligraphy and painting that my mother had just said was quite loud. Asterisk. After dinner, Song Ning took Huo Yao upstairs. There are four rooms upstairs. Huo Yao was prepared for the room on the last right of the corridor. Song Ning pushed the door open and said, This room was used by the fourth child before. He loves to jump for a year and a half. I didn't go home, so I redecorated his room. Look, do you like it? When the light turned on, I saw a pink decoration wind blowing over my face, wallpaper, wardrobe, big bed, curtains, writing desk. It can be said that everything in the room is pink except for the floor. Huo Yao. The eyes are so spicy. Song Ning looked at the princess room that she had carefully bought, and continued proudly, the decoration of this room is a proposal my mother asked a famous designer to come up with. How about? Isn't it a girl, dreamy, and warm? The corners of Huo Yao's lips twitched, and he lifted his eyes to scan the entire room once again, really a little bit dare not to compliment this kind of aesthetic style. 
since she is a famous designer, there is no need to smash her own sign, so her mother is probably fooled. After all, many unscrupulous decoration companies like to professionally deceive people under the banner of designers. So, after thinking about it for a few seconds, Huo Yao, who insists on not hurting people, slowly replied, You like it. After speaking, she yawned, her beautiful facial features were lazily glowing under the warm light, and the fatigue on her face was looming. Song Ning touched the tip of her nose, always feeling that her daughter's words were quite ambiguous, but seeing her sleepy appearance, she didn't say anything else, just let her rest well and left in a moment. When the door was closed, he pressed his brows helplessly, facing Huo Yao, who was in a pink color in the room. Later, she opened her suitcase, took out her pajamas, and went directly to the bathroom. She was indeed tired. She returned to the county seat early in the morning after participating in the city competition, and then drove back to S City by car without stopping. It can be said that the whole day was spent on the road, and she could not help but consume her energy no matter how good she was. On the other side, Liu Xia, who returned to the Liu family, thought of Huo Yao and the attitude of her adoptive mother and father tonight. She was so depressed that she could not fall asleep over and over in bed. Finally, she took out her mobile phone and checked Weibo. Since Liu Xia participated in the star training camp, she has attracted countless fans with her sweet voice and pure appearance. In addition, the brokerage company deliberately favors her and often uses various channels to set her up, so she appears at the airport at night. The photos taken with a few fans unexpectedly appeared in Weibo Chow Chow. The group of photos in Chow Chow were taken pretty well. Fans only posted them after intensive repairs. The following building comments have reached nearly tens of thousands in just two hours. This is for a newcomer who has not yet debuted. It can be said that the heat is very high. But the only flaw is that there are two photos in which Huo Yao's profile is taken. Although the face was not photographed, and the fans simply made a little background blur when editing the picture, the tall and thin figure and cool temperament had an inexplicably hazy beauty. Can't see clearly, but it's more curious. Liu Xia frowned, both left and right felt that these two photos were an eyesore, and for a few seconds, she patiently began to look through the comments below. Although some of the fans were curious to ask who the person wearing the mask was, it was as if the sea did not make waves and no one paid attention. Liu Xia sighed subconsciously, then turned down some comments that flattered her, and the gloomy mood all night finally calmed down. She was just afraid that it was not a problem with her brain that would cause an inexplicable sense of crisis. Even if Huo Yao's rural aunt looks good, she is still a vulgar vase without any merit. Even if he returns to Huo's house, what can it be? It's just from a fake daughter to a poor daughter, how can it be compared to her? Liu Xia let out a sneer and turned off the phone. Huo Yao woke up very early the next day. Her biological clock was always accurate, and she couldn't get up at 6 o'clock every morning. However, because of the new environment, she lay dormant for a few minutes today before slowly getting up, lazily going into the bathroom to wash for a while, and sitting on the ground with her feet crossed after she came out, and began to organize the things in the suitcase. She didn't bring many clothes, just two sets. The remaining space was filled with unlabeled bottles and cans, and two iron boxes with a simple atmosphere. Huo Yao just took out the clothes, thought about it, and picked out two more bottles from the pile of bottles and cans, then closed the suitcase, closed the zipper, and did not put on the code lock. Lifting her eyes and scanning the room, Huo Yao finally fell on the closet door beside her and then she stood up and walked over with the suitcase. Pushing open the cabinet door, Huo Yao was a little surprised looking at the clothes hung full of clothes inside. Although the clothes do not have signs, they are all new at first glance, and the quality does not seem bad. As for the style, Huo Yao doesn't have any ambiguity, at least it is more tasteful than this pink, tender, and girlish decoration. After finding a corner of the box and stuffing it in, Huo Yao changed into sportswear again, twisted his long hair and left the room. 
she has the habit of running in the morning, but she would not change her way of working and resting just because she changed places. Asterisk. After eight o'clock, Song Ning had already prepared breakfast and brought it to the dining table. She glanced at the top of the stairs and then at her husband who was sitting in the living room reading the newspaper. Lao Huo, do you want to ask your daughter to get up for breakfast first? Huo Jinyan pushed the glasses on the bridge of his nose, and only said, the child was so tired yesterday and slept late. Don't bother her and let her sleep longer. Okay. Song Ning nodded. When the doorbell rang when she was about to say something else, she couldn't help but looked up at the door and said strangely, who knocked on the door early in the morning. Huo Jinyan put down the newspaper, thinking, could it be finance? Song Ning glanced at him, brother, it's only the twentieth today, there are still a few days before the settlement. Huo Jinyan suddenly realized oh, paused, and then said, then you ask finance to stop coming home this month. My daughter just came back, I'm afraid to scare her. Song Ning thought for a while, felt that what her husband said was reasonable, and said, it's okay, I'll go see who is knocking on the door first. Soon, the inner door opened. When Song Ning looked at Huo Yao standing outside the anti-theft door, she was still stunned for two seconds. After recovering, she hurriedly unlocked the door, with shock in her voice, Yao, what are you doing? Outside. Huo Yao just finished running, her fair face was still blushing after exercise, a few strands of broken hair stuck to her cheeks, a drop of sweat dripped down, she raised her hand and wiped it lightly, I have exercise in the morning. Habit. When Song Ning heard this, he nodded unexpectedly, it's a good habit to run in the morning. However, after a few seconds, she hurriedly added, it doesn't matter if a girl sleeps in, it's good for the skin. Huo Yao's lips twitched. Breakfast is ready for my mother, so go up and take a shower before eating. Song Ning continued as he walked into the house. It is good. By the way, there are clothes in the closet. They are all newly bought by my mother. Do you still like them? If you don't like them, change them again. Change a batch? Huo Yao's footsteps suddenly stopped, and his expression was quite complicated, Mom, do we have a mine at home? Song Ning turned around, shocked on her face. There was a sentence in her mouth, otherwise, I will arrange a designer to come and make a tailor-made for you. It suddenly stopped. Huo Yao looked at Song Ning's expression and was stunned, but in the next moment, he was suddenly hugged by her. Wu my dear daughter, you finally called my mother. Song Ning was so excited and moved that she almost cried. Huo Yao. As if not on the same channel. Asterisk. Ten minutes later, Huo Yao, who was simply washed up, wore a casual loose t-shirt and ripped jeans and went downstairs. Although he looked casual and clean, it gave a cool visual effect. My daughter is pretty. Song Ning held his chin and looked at the daughter who came by. Although she didn't wear the clothes she bought, it didn't prevent her from calling for her appearance. Huo Jinyan also nodded with Yu Rongjian, I have completely inherited my fine genes. Song Ning gave him a roll of eyes, you have to point your face, obviously my daughter looks the most like me. Yes, my wife is right in everything you say. The wife slave immediately confided. Huo Yao, who just approached and heard this conversation between the two. I was offended by dog food. Soon, Huo Yao sat down at the dining table. She had always said very little, so she basically kept silent when eating. Occasionally, Huo Jinyan and Song Ning talked to her, and she just used simple O and um. Single phonetic reply. When Huo Jinyan and Song Ning looked at such a daughter, they didn't think she was unreasonably arrogant, on the contrary, they felt more guilty. This child has been so lonely and lacking in love since he was a child, and he has developed such a lonely character. Huo Yao didn't know what the two of them thought in their hearts. After eating breakfast, she saw Song Ning raise her hand to press her temple from time to time, thinking of something, she quickly went upstairs, and within two minutes, 
she came down again. He handed the two small bottles previously taken out of the suitcase to Huo Jinyan and Song Ning. This is for you. Huo Yao's voice was quite soft, with some casualness on his delicate face. Song Ning took the small bottle, unscrewed it, and asked curiously, What is this? The bottle is so delicate and beautiful. As soon as the bottle cap was opened, a strong medicinal scent floated out. As soon as Song Ning smelled the smell, she felt that her whole body was washed away, and she was uncomfortable. She suffers from migraine headaches. She always gets sick from time to time. There is no medicine to cure her. When the pain is severe, she can only rely on painkillers to relieve it. In the morning, her head hurts a little, but in front of her daughter, she does not want to behave. Too obvious. And at this time, the smell made her feel strangely even the migraines healed instantly. Yao Yao, what kind of medicine are you? Song Ning asked in surprise. The more you smell the fragrance of the medicine, the more you have the urge to immerse yourself in the smell for a lifetime. Huo Yao saw that Song Ning's expression was much more relaxed than before, and he only replied lightly, just some herbal pills, um, it's like incense, it has the effect of calming, soothing, and relieving pain. After a pause, she added, you take one pill every night and put it on the bedside. It will improve your migraine. When Song Ning heard this, she was shocked instantly, how do you know that I have a migraine? Not to mention she was shocked, even Huo Jinyan on the side showed an unexpected expression. When you first had breakfast, you always pressed your temples. Huo Yao's eyes were clear and he didn't explain too much. Song Ning was stunned, she didn't seem to expect that she would be so careful, but, by pressing her temples to judge that she has a migraine, wouldn't it be too amazing? Song Ning was still filling up some pretty fantasy scenes here and soon heard Huo Yao's voice come over again. This Ning Xiang pill is only an auxiliary medicine and cannot be used for a long time. If you want to completely cure it. Huo Yao paused, only said, when I have time later, I will, let my friend send me some other targeted medicine. When Song Ning heard this, her eyes suddenly opened, are you saying that mother has medicine for this headache? Huo Yao has frivolous eyebrows, of course. Others may not work, but she, sorry, this is only for pediatrics. Song Ning touched the tip of her nose and didn't take her daughter's words seriously. After all, this is a problem that even the doctor said is incurable. She turned her eyes and fell on her husband's hand. What's your father's bottle? Fragrant pills. Although it is a modern society, the medicine is called this kind of pill and it is packed in a ceramic bottle, so as not to give people a kind of ancient primitive feeling. Song Ning thought strangely in her heart. Huo Yao shook his head and said quietly, No. Then what kind of medicine is this bottle of mine? Huo Jinyan was very curious. Just now, his attention was on his wife, and he did not open the small porcelain bottle. There was a strand of broken hair hanging down Huo Yao's cheek. She hooked her hand behind her ear and replied lazily, It's not a medicine, but you can treat it as a Shiquan Dabu pill and take one pill every month. Be strong and fit. Puff. The corners of Huo Jinyan's lips twitched fiercely, and his face quickly burned red, and the small porcelain bottle in his hand almost fell to the ground without holding it firmly. It seems that male dignity has been greatly insulted. Ha 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 ha. Song Ning on the side looked at her husband's expression and couldn't help but laughed directly. My daughter is so cute, she actually gave her father a bottle of health care. After a while, Huo Jinyan sighed silently in his heart, turned around and found a mahogany box with exquisite workmanship in the cabinet, and put the small porcelain bottle in it quite preciously. Although it is not needed, it is the first gift from my daughter and must be cherished. Song Ning rolled her eyes suddenly. Huo Yao was thinking about Song Ning's migraine and was about to go upstairs. Seeing that she was going back to the room, Song Ning suddenly remembered what was going on, so he stopped her in a hurry, look at my memory, I almost forgot the big thing. 
Huo Ya raised his eyebrows and looked at her quietly with in white eyes. It's about the transfer. Song Ning explained that the school will start in a few days, so I have to try my best to confirm the school within these two days. Your dad and I have looked at a few schools, I will show you the information, you can choose one. Then Song Ning bent over, opened the drawer of the coffee table, and took out a stack of books from it. Look at this third middle school, the teachers are barely, and the main ones are relatively close to home, so we can consider day school. In this eleventh middle school, the admission rate for one and two books is a bit low, but the admission rate for art candidates is higher than that of other key high schools. There is also this Desheng Foreign Language School. Although the fees are a bit more expensive, it is a good school second only to number one middle school in this city. Both my dad and I like this. Song Ning took out De Sheng's school profile, opened it page by page, and handed it to Huo Yao. Originally, the school was required to take the entrance exam. My dad and I found a relationship. Now we can go to school without the exam. Huo Yao, who had been unable to speak, fell on the introduction page with a complicated expression. She was not looking at it seriously, but thinking about a problem. She has also learned about De Sheng on the internet before, and it is understandable that it is a private aristocratic school built on money. The teaching staff is professional, and the teaching levels are strictly differentiated. There are only two types of people who can enter, the real scholar and the rich. In a word, as long as you have money, you can go in. And so. Have you stuffed money for the school? Huo Yao, who was silent for a moment, finally asked with a serious face. The two couples were suddenly shocked by Huo Yao's serious expression, so they looked at each other. Yes. No. Song Ning answered in the affirmative, and Huo Jinyan answered in the negative. The two people who were not unified in their calibers glanced at each other silently, seeming to have a disgusting meaning converging. Huo Yao looked at the two with a smile. Song Ning, who was inexplicably seen by the smile, kicked her husband next to her subconsciously and motioned him to come out and explain. Huo Jinyan coughed and sat upright after receiving the suggestion from his wife. Although he was over fifty, he still wore a solemn look on his handsome face, if you finally choose this school, I and you. Mom does have this plan. When Huo Yao heard this, the serious expression on his face eased, just don't have money, I have already chosen the school. Although the home does not look like a super poor household, it is really unnecessary to spend money to go through the back door. Have you chosen a school so soon? Which one is it? Song Ning asked hurriedly. Huo Yao's eyes drooped slightly, and he replied in a brief and horrified manner, One China. Song Ning and Huo Jinyan were both taken aback when they heard this. One Chinese? Did they hear it wrong? Song Ning coughed, and asked uncertainly, Daughter, what you just said was. 11th Middle School. Huo Yao put down the school profile in his hand, with his head slightly sideways, and the corners of his lips curled up, No, one in. Well, the daughter is not kidding. Can you repeat again? Which one did you choose? Although she was picked up by her daughter's careless appearance, Song Ning still felt that her ears had auditory hallucinations. Huo Ya raised his eyebrows and his peach-eyed eyes were wavy, and he replied in earnest, No kidding, only one middle school meets my school selection criteria. When Song Ning heard this, the expression on her face changed, Mom also knows that number one high school is the best, but our strength does not allow it. She has learned about her daughter's grades in her first year of high school. It is definitely the best crane. Number one middle school is a schoolmaster in each region. Your grades, even if you go in, it may not be a good thing for you. Huo Jinyan was also surprised by his daughter's request, and the expression on his face changed subconsciously. Got serious. Song Ning nodded hurriedly, yes, your dad is right. We don't ask you to have a good academic performance. We just hope you can be happy. It doesn't matter if you go to a normal university in the future. Anyway, 
there is no need for famous college students at home to support the scene, after all, the bosses, two, three, and four are famous college students, and they are enough for decoration. So Song Ning picked up the profiles of several schools and put them in Huo Yao's hands, Yao Yao, look at these ones again. If you can't, Mom will call De Sheng Middle School now and set this school. Good De Sheng, Dad supports. Huo Yao looked at the two of them being persuaded to retreat because they had mentioned one. He pressed his eyebrows helplessly, wait for me. Then she stood up and went upstairs. Soon, Huo Yao went downstairs, still holding a letter in her hand, she walked to Song Ning and handed it to her. Song Ning's eyes fell on the letter handed over by her daughter, and he was puzzled before accepting, this is. The transfer admission notice from number one middle school. Huo Yao replied lightly. As her voice fell, Song Ning, who was still in a state of disbelief, was dull when he looked at the letter with a stamp seal on the front of the letter. He didn't open the letter for a long time. Huo Jinyan's expression on the side condensed, and he took the admission notice directly from his wife. After quickly opening it and reading it, he raised his head and looked at Huo Yao's expression, which can be said to be shocked and complicated. It turns out that my daughter has just been emphatically saying that the school has been selected, not from the few schools they have chosen as they understand it, but rather early. Because the date on the admission letter is last month. But. Isn't your daughter's grades terrible? How could the first middle school accept her? Song Ning, who came back to her senses, also read the admission notice carefully. After confirming that it was correct, she was filled with question marks just like her husband. She looked at Huo Yao and was about to speak. The phone in Huo Yao's pocket vibrated. When she took out the unknown number displayed on the screen, her eyes darkened, and she raised her head and said to Song Ning and Huo Jinyan, I'll take the call. Then she went to the balcony and closed the sliding door easily. Song Ning looked at the back of her daughter answering the phone, and murmured, Old Huo, why did you say that her daughter had a transfer admission notice from a middle school? Look at the stamp on it, there should be no fakes, right? Huo Jinyan's eyes narrowed slightly, and after a while, he shook his head, it won't be fake. But the threshold for the first middle school is that Yao Yao's grades can get in? Didn't Xia Xia also said before that she used to go to the middle school where she originally studied at a cost? It was because she knew her daughter's grades were poor that Song Ning had doubts about the admission letter of number one middle school. Huo Jinyan thoughtfully, only said, don't think too much you have to trust your daughter. Song Ning sighed, I didn't believe her, I was afraid she would be deceived. Huo Jinyan looked at her strangely. Song Ning saw that he had not cared deeply for his daughter as an old father at all, and could not help but said sadly, daughter has taken the wrong place since she was a child, and she has never seen social evil when she grew up in a small county. Think about it, her transition where did the school admission letter come from? Isn't it from the school? Where else did it come from? Huo Jinyan became more confused about what his wife was anxious about. Song Ning scratched her hair, how do I put it, I mean, is it possible that my daughter has met someone who came from wrong? Do you remember when we went to the small county and asked the teacher about our daughter's situation, are those things he said? Huo Jinyan frowned upon hearing this and raised his eyes to look at his daughter who was standing on the balcony talking on the phone. She leaned on her side and put her left hand casually on the balcony railing, tapping her fingers one after another, and through the sliding door, she couldn't hear what she was talking about. However, she quickly hung up the phone and turned around. Her deep eyes met his gaze, and she raised her eyebrows carelessly, as if she knew someone was staring at her. Huo Jinyan's heart suddenly condensed. Huo Yao walked into the living room again. Before Song Ning and Huo Jinyan could speak, she asked, Mom, what is the detailed address of our house? A friend of mine wants to send me something. While talking, she was already holding her mobile phone and preparing to write it down. Song Ning hurriedly reported a list of addresses to her. After reporting, 
she thought for a while and asked in a low voice, Your friend? Is it your friend who lived with Grandma El Yusya before? Huo Ya was sending a message. Hearing Song Ning's question, her fingertips paused slightly, and then she raised her eyes and gave her a very casual um. Seeing this, Song Ning wanted to ask something, but Huo Jinyan next to her pulled her arm and shook her head. The daughter just came back, it is still not suitable to interfere too much, it will be a long time in Japan. Huo Yao, who had sent the message, put his phone in his pocket, then raised his head again and looked at Song Ning, did you have any questions you wanted to ask me just now? Song Ning hesitated, and finally she smiled at the corner of her lips and shook her head, nothing. But soon, she glanced over the transfer admission notice of number one middle school, and said hurriedly, almost forgot. Xia Xia is also in the middle school. I will call her back and let her take care of you as much as possible. The two have been hugged in the wrong since childhood, but she has a gentle personality and you should get along well. Although the child Xia Xia spoke a bit unpleasantly last night, he knew the bottom line. Huo Ya recalled that when he saw El Yuxia early last night, the other party's look, he curled his lips playfully, and only made a faint O oh sound. By the way, Xia Xia is now participating in a variety show, what's her name? Song Ning didn't remember what her name was for a while, and couldn't help but patted her for it. It's called a star training camp. Huo Jinyan next to her helped her add. Yes, yes, it's called this star training camp. Have you ever watched it? It seems quite popular. Song Ning thinks that young people should all like this show. Huo Yao shook his head uninterestedly, I haven't seen it. Hearing this answer, Song Ning originally wanted to say, you can vote for Xia Xia, but in the end it became, ah, don't you look at this. Well, it's a waste of time. Huo Ya replied lazily, and added another sentence at the end, let's delay studying. Song Ning's lips twitched fiercely, making her speechless in an instant. As if he didn't want to continue this unnutritious topic, Huo Yao asked again, by the way, don't several brothers live at home? Song Ning nodded, they all have their own things to do, and they have long since stopped living at home. After a few seconds, afraid of her daughter's misunderstanding, Song Ning said again, you came back quite suddenly. Except for the boss, the second, third, and fourth people are still out of town. You can see them when they are finished. When Huo Yao heard the phrase they all have their own things to do in Song Ning's mouth, his eyebrows were raised. After thinking for a few seconds, he asked, they all have jobs. Song Ning was stunned. Although she didn't quite understand the intention of her daughter's question, she still nodded. Seeing this, Huo Yao didn't ask any more questions, but said nicely, I will go back to the room first. Back in the room, Huo Yao's eyes fell on the laptop on the writing desk, thoughtfully for a few seconds, walked over and turned on the computer. The computer is brand new, the desktop is very clean, and there is no software installed. Huo Yao clicked on the search page, tapped a string of English characters on the keyboard with his fingertips, and then pressed the enter key. Soon, a verification box popped up directly on the main screen of the computer. Huo Yao skillfully pressed a few characters and passed the verification. Then he really entered the main page of the website. But before I could see the page clearly, the screen instantly dimmed. A user login dialog box pops up. Huo Yao looked at the computer screen with expression on his face, and while typing his account password, he shook his head speechlessly. Break the website and force the grid to do so much, sooner or later. Soon, I only heard a ding sound, the account login was successful, and I saw a large line of illuminated fonts at the top of the homepage. The realm of cloud, only you can't think of, you can't buy it without you. When Huo Yao saw this advertisement, the corners of his lips twitched fiercely. Has been unable to complain. Huo Yao flipped through it casually. He didn't see any new and challenging posts. He felt bored and planned to close the web page. Only at this moment, 
her account profile picture suddenly flashed. Someone is looking for her. Huo Ya raised his eyebrows, clicked on the small portrait, and a message popped up. There was a small green dot under the other's portrait, indicating that the person is currently online. It's been a cool autumn, damn it, baby, you finally showed up. It's a cool fall, what have you been doing this year, why have you never seen you online? It's a cool autumn, baby, are you still there? Why not speak? Huo Yao looked at the computer for a long time before making a sign slowly. Bald baby? The nickname was random when she registered before. She was too lazy to think about other things temporarily, so she didn't change it. Unexpectedly, the broken website didn't change its name after registration, so she kept using this sand sculpture name. It's a cool autumn, good brother, where have you been, why haven't you seen you in a year? Huo Yao's fingertips paused slightly, as if thinking about how to answer, a long time. Bald baby, dear, have you experienced crossing? Liang Chu, who was on the other side of the computer, took a sip of water with a glass of water, and when he saw this sentence on the computer screen, he sprayed it. It's a cool autumn, I'm going, brother, you haven't been hacked, right? Asking this kind of brain-dead question. Little bald baby, go away. The familiar violent formula is still the familiar one. It's been so cool in autumn, H.A., just kidding. Bald baby, it's down. It's a cool autumn, wait, brother, don't leave, ask you about someone. Bald baby, who? It's a cool autumn, Shang Guanyu. Huo Yao looked at the name with a weird expression on his face and he was silent for a long time to answer him. After waiting for a long time, Liang Chu didn't wait to answer, so he could not help but sent another. Are you still there, brother? Huo Yao's eyes drooped slightly, his fingers moved, and he replied, I don't know him, but what do you do with this person? It's a cool autumn, I also asked my friend, it seems to be looking for him to buy medicine. I heard a very mysterious person. At first I thought you knew him. Bald baby, I don't know, I'll get off first. It's a cool fall, okay, if it's convenient, brother, would you leave me a contact information? You see, we have known each other for almost three years. Bald baby, it's not convenient, goodbye. Huo Yao turned off the computer directly. Liang Chu scratched his head helplessly when he looked at his friend bald baby whose head went dark in an instant. This old bald donkey is still so cold and ruthless. Liang Chu closed the website page, thought for a few seconds, then took the phone on the table, edited a message and sent it out. In the past few days when Huo Ya returned to Huo's house, apart from going out for a run every morning, he basically stayed at home for the rest of the day. Song Ning tried to take her out several times, but was refused because of learning. This makes the old mother very bald. On Sunday, Huo Yao's courier arrived. The box was not too big, but it was heavy. Dad Huo took a lot of effort and grabbed his wife to help with the move before moving the box from the door to the hall. In. Song Ning looked at her husband's panting look, and only said jokingly, Remember to eat the bottle of health care that I gave you. Huo Jinyan's forehead was straight, tired, and paralyzed, and didn't want to talk. Huo Yao just came downstairs to pour water and saw the box in the hall. Daughter, your express delivery. Song Ning called to her. Huo Yan said, put the cup in his hand and walked over. Your friend sent you something, it's quite heavy. Song Ning was quite curious. Huo Yao's eyes drooped slightly, he rolled up his sleeves, and replied casually, just some miscellaneous things. As she spoke, she had bent over to hug the box, her slender body seemed to contain infinite power. I'll go upstairs first. Even the voice can't hear any difficulty. Papa Huo, who had spent a lot of effort and didn't move, saw this. Is his daughter a strong man? The box weighs at least a few jins, how could she move it so easily and effortlessly? Song Ning was also very shocked. 
At this moment, the image of the delicate and cute daughter deep in her heart seemed to collapse. Huo Yao didn't know what kind of shadow he had left on his old father and mother by just carrying the box once. She didn't wear this body in front of her, and she had a lot of strength. After wearing this body, although she felt very weak, after this year of exercise and conditioning, her current physical condition can be said to be stronger than before. This kind of 20 or 30 kilograms of boxes is not easy for her. After moving the box back to the room, Huo Yao spent the whole afternoon playing around in the room, almost never going out. Song Ning came to her door several times and tried to knock on the door, but in the end he gave up. When it was time for dinner, Huo Yao went downstairs, the exhaustion looming on his delicate face. The eldest brother Huo Yangzi was here today. Huo Yao was a little surprised when he saw him. He came back for a few days, except for contacting him when picking up the plane. He has never come back these days. I don't know if it's busy, or just don't want to accept her sister. Of course, Huo Yao didn't care whether he accepted it or not. The dinner table. Sister, I heard mom say you really want to transfer to a middle school. Huo Yangzi's expression was a little complicated. In the car that day, she said that she had chosen one. He only thought she was bragging. He actually looked down on her a little bit in his heart, so after sending El Yuxia back to Lu's house, he didn't do it again. Come back here. If it hadn't been for his mother to call several times, he might not be back today. God knows how shocked Huo Yangzi was when he saw the admission letter from his mother to a transfer school. Huo Yao was very attentive when eating. After a while, she raised her head like a slow shot, looked at Huo Yangzi with a clear gaze, and replied, Well, yes, I will sign up tomorrow. Huo Yangzi met his sister's clean and pure eyes, as if his heart was blocked by something. After a long time, he also mumbled and said, Then, I will send you to school tomorrow. Ah, no need, I'll take the car by myself, you can be busy with you. Huo Ya replied, thinking he was sensible. When Huo Yangzi heard it, the whole person was even more uncomfortable. Send you to school without delay. Huo Yangzi was ashamed of her preconceived thoughts before, so she insisted on sending it at this time. Huo Yao is already full. She put down her chopsticks, looked at Huo Yangzi, and was about to say, OK. But he heard him say again, it happened that Xia Xia was also in the first middle school. I had promised her to send her there when the school started. You are not familiar with the first middle school. If you have Xia Xia, you also. Before he finished speaking, Huo Yao interrupted faintly, no, I can be alone. The corner of his lips flicked to self-deprecating. Immediately, she stood up, looked at Song Ning and Huo Jinyan, and said, Dad, Mom, I'm going up first. After speaking, they left without waiting for the two to say anything. Soon, Huo Yao's figure disappeared from the stairs. Huo Yangzi returned to his senses, frowning slightly. This is because he heard that he was going to send Xia Xia together so he played a child's temper? He looked at his parents, his voice was a little heavy, she has come home these days, is this temperament? Fortunately, he just felt a little guilty. Looking at the boss, Song Ning probably understood what he meant by asking this, and could not help but subconsciously explain to his daughter, actually, Yao Yao has a very good personality. As the eldest brother, you know that she has just returned but you haven't come back to see her for so many days. Maybe it's a bit awkward in my heart. Hearing this, Huo Yangzi was a bit wrong, but he still said one more sentence, even if you are awkward, you shouldn't have the same attitude when speaking. Mom, although my sister just came back, don't be too used to her. Song Ning was not happy with the elder son saying such things, and patted the table fiercely, hey, why do you think you have such a big prejudice against your sister? Where did she offend you? Seeing that the old mother was about to get angry, Huo Yangzi hurriedly stood up and raised her hand in a perfunctory manner, OK, my fault, I shouldn't be back tonight, 
I will leave now. After a while, there was a sound of closing the door. Song Ning looked at the food at a table that hadn't moved much, and she was quite big, I think when the boss came back from picking up that day, didn't he get along well? Why is it so abnormal today? Huo Jinyan stretched out his hand, patted her shoulder lightly, and calmly said, Come on slowly, my daughter has just returned, and I still need to run in. I always think that the boss is the most stable, he should be the best to get along with Yao Yao, now it seems. Song Ning pressed his temple, feeling that he was about to commit a migraine. The second, third and fourth weird guys haven't come back yet, and God knows what kind of conflict sparks will collide. After Huo Yangzi drove away from the community, he thought about it on the road, and finally called El Yuxia, so he asked her to meet at a western restaurant near her home. After half an hour. Big brother, what happened to you asking me out so late? El Yuxia has attracted countless fans since participating in Star Training Camp, and she is considered a small celebrity. She wears sunglasses and a mask when she goes out. At this time, she has taken them off after entering the box. Huo Yangzi poured her a glass of water, no hurry, order something to eat first. He passed the menu to El Yuxia. El Yuxia ordered a steak at random, picked up the cup, took a sip, and asked tentatively, Brother, are you looking for me because of going to school? Last time she mentioned in the car to help Huo Yao find a school, but for so many days, she hadn't seen Huo's family call her. Huo Yangzi put his hands on the table, watching El Yuxia's lips make a wry smile, that's right. El Yuxia saw this with concern on her face, I haven't selected a good school yet. If this is the case, I will call my dad now. Then she took out the phone from her bag. You don't need to call, it's not that you didn't choose a good school. Huo Yangzi explained aloud. El Yuxia paused with the hand that was about to dial, and looked at him suspiciously. Her school has been set a long time ago, it is the first middle school. El Yuxia was stunned, as if he hadn't heard what he said. After a while, she reacted, her voice was incredible and something else, and she asked with a smile, Big brother, what did you say? But I is the current school. Seeing El Yuxia's surprised look, Huo Yangzi knew that she didn't believe it. After a moment of silence, he said, She will go to the school to report tomorrow. In fact, I'm asking you out so late just to trouble you in the school for us. Take care of her more. After a pause, he said, growing up in a small remote county, Yao Yao has never seen a big world. Although we don't know her academic performance, it will definitely not be a material for entering the first China. I don't know how she got the transfer admission letter from number one high school, but she insisted on getting into number one high school, so xia xia. Big brother can only come to ask you. Although Huo Yangzi had some opinions on Huo Yao, he was still a family, so naturally he still had to help. Listening to these words, El Yuxia's eyes drooped slightly, suppressing certain emotions in her heart. Only for two seconds, she looked at Huo Yangzi again, with a sweet smile on her face, Big brother, don't worry, you don't need to tell me specifically. I will definitely take care of it. Huo Yangzi always knew that El Yuxia had a good temper. Looking at her, he couldn't help feeling a little regretful. If he didn't hold the wrong incident, it would be fine. But eldest brother, you just said that the transfer admission letter in Yao Yao's hand didn't know how it came from. El Yuxia quickly asked again in confusion. Huo Yangzi nodded, yes, parents don't even know the specific situation. That's it. El Yuxia rubbed the frame of the phone, and soon she said in a state of uncertainty, I suddenly remembered last month. I seem to have heard my dad and the principal of number one middle school make a phone call. Huo Yangzi was stunned when he heard this. Last month? Isn't that close to the date on the admission letter of your sister? However, Huo Yangzi suddenly remembered that Huo Yao did not live in the El Yu family since she was a child but was raised by her grandmother who was thrown into a remote county town. According to this unfavorable situation, 
would the LU family find such a good school for her? He didn't quite believe it. Liu Xia paid attention to the changes in Huo Yangzi's expression. Seeing that his brows were raised and his eyes rolled, Liu Xia hurriedly said, However, even if a school like Yishong has strict requirements in all aspects, even if my father comes out and walks through the back door, it's difficult, so, it's also possible that I heard it wrong. Liu Xia stuck out her tongue, her expression seemed simple and harmless, Big brother, don't bother you. As long as the transfer notice is obtained through the normal way, it doesn't matter who helps, it's all for the sake of it. Huo Yangzi frowned deeper when he heard this. It's really scary to think carefully, it seems that his sister is not only a character problem. El Yuxia glanced at Huo Yangzi who was silent, her lips twitched and she said nothing. Huo Yangzi was very irritated by Huo Yao's affairs, and then chatting with El Yuxia was a little absent-minded. After eating, Huo Yangzi drove El Yuxia back. When he reached the gate, El Yuxia unfastened his seat belt and asked, Brother, do you want to sit inside? My dad said several times before, let me call you. Huo Yangzi put his hands on the steering wheel, glanced lightly at the Liu family mansion outside the car window, and shook his head, No, it's too late, it's not appropriate. Let's change another day. A look of disappointment flashed across El Yuxia's eyes, but the lady's smile still remained on her face, Well, eldest brother, you drive carefully, I'll go back first. After a pause, as if remembering something, El Yuxia blinked playfully at him again, By the way, big brother, don't forget the agreement with me tomorrow. Huo Yangzi was stunned. You promised me before that you would personally send me to school when the school started. Did you really forget? El Yuxia pretended to be sad and pressed her heart. Huo Yangzi recovered and shook his head with a smile, I haven't forgotten. When El Yuxia heard this, she smiled and said, That's good, you go home quickly, I got off the car, see you tomorrow. Huo Yangzi hummed softly, but a second before El Yuxia pushed the car door and was about to get out of the car, he suddenly thought of Huo Yao and he almost subconsciously called her again, Xia Xia. El Yuxia turned her head and looked at him for unknown reasons, Hey! The girl's eyes are clear, her Jiao house face is soft, and the whole person looks well behaved and sensible. Huo Yan hoped for her, suddenly pursed his lips, smiled, and shook his head, It's nothing, just forgot to ask you what time you will go to school to report tomorrow. Seeing this, El Yuxia suddenly let out a sigh of relief, and said jokingly, Big brother, you almost scared me. I thought you were going to regret that you won't give me away. Huo Yangzi's eyes flickered, denying, No. All right, then I'll see you tomorrow at eight. El Yuxia ended the topic comfortably. Huo Yangzi said um. After that, El Yuxia waved at him and jumped out of the car and walked towards the villa. Huo Yangzi's eyes followed El Yuxia's back and disappeared for a long time before he slowly retracted. Since his sister didn't need him to send it, he didn't need to reject Xia Xia because of her feelings, after all, Xia Xia was his sister. Thinking like this, the trace of guilt remaining in Huo Yangzi's heart also disappeared. Soon, he started the car's engine, turned around and left the Liu family. Asterisk El Yuxia had just entered the door, and he Xiaoman, the mother of El Yu who was still sitting on the sofa in the hall, looked up at her and asked, It's so late, why is your friend asking you out? Her voice was gentle, but she didn't mean to question. El Yuxia walked over in a hurry and stretched out her hand to naturally pinch he Xiaoman's shoulder, My eldest brother asked me to talk about something. Big brother. He Xiaoman clearly frowned when he heard this name. Is it the family of your adoptive mother again? El Yuxia knew that he Xiaoman looked down on the Huo family, so she gave a soft hum. Didn't you let you have less contact with the Huo family? He Xiaoman said earnestly, Mom knows that you are kind, but your adoptive mother's family is not a good thing, especially your fake brothers. The more you are with them get close, they may decide how they will use you in the future. El Yuxia's eyes drooped slightly 
and she said in her heart that it was because of your prejudice and short-sightedness, you would never know what they were capable of. Mom, I'm well measured, don't worry, it's okay. Luziro said, and after a two-second pause, she continued, there is something very strange. Mom, didn't you say that Huo Yao has poor academic performance? Hizayoman closed her eyes and enjoyed her daughter's massage. After a while, she faintly said, Well, what's wrong? Elusia didn't stop her hands, and said tentatively, She seems to be entering a middle school. Hizayoman listened to the words, his eyelids opened quickly, one side of his body, turned his head to look at Elusia standing behind him, with an incredible expression, What did you say? Elusia looked at the surprised expression on her mother's face, and a suspicion flashed across her eyes, the Huo family's eldest brother came to me tonight, just to tell me that Huo Yao will study in the city number one middle school in the future. Please take care of her privately. Elusia's eyes lightly flashed, Mom, did you and Dad ask someone for help, or how could she get into the first high school? How is it possible? For her grades, let alone a middle school, even ordinary middle schools may not be able to accept her. If your dad and I really ask someone for help, wouldn't it be a shame to our LU family? Hizayoman sneered lightly Tao. You didn't help, then how did she get into a high school? LU Xia's face was slightly curious. Hizayoman's face was deep, and his tone was also very deep, are you sure this is true? LU Xia nodded, it's true. The Huo family's eldest brother said personally, he will not lie to me. Hizayoman sat upright, and after a moment of silence, she picked up the phone on the coffee table. Asterisk. Huo Yao was working on a bunch of utensils that looked quite ancient. Suddenly the phone on the bed rang. She paused, looked sideways, and then retracted her gaze to continue the work that was almost finished, and ignored it. However. After the phone rang once, the person looking for her didn't seem to give up, and the ringing continued. Huo Yao's eyes were focused and not affected by the mobile phone. Soon, after she put the things extracted from the utensils into the porcelain bottle, she took off the gloves in a hurry. The phone was still ringing, Huo Yao didn't ignore it this time, walked to the bed, picked up the phone, and looked at the caller ID on the screen, she was still stunned. Her fingertips paused, and she quickly swiped. As soon as the call was connected, Hizayoman's frustrated voice came over, I have called you so many calls, why have you never answered? Huo Yao moved the phone away from her ear for some distance. When faced with the question of her adoptive mother, she just asked nonchalantly, what's the matter? Hizayoman's face over there is even more ugly, what is your attitude? Huo Ya rubbed his bulging eyebrows, without the idle time to listen to her to force him, it's all right and hang up. Hizayoman knew that this adopted daughter's temperament seemed to have changed in the past year, and she was completely rebellious as before, so she didn't talk any more nonsense. I don't know what means you used to get the qualifications for the first high school, but what I want to tell you is that I don't want you to appear in the first high school. Your existence will only be a joke for the first high school. It is our LU family. Jokes. Except for the first middle school, you can pick any middle school in this city. Our LU family can find a relationship to let you in, and the tuition fee can also help you out, but the premise is that you are not allowed to tell anyone that you used to be our LU family. Child. When Huo Yao heard these words, he raised his eyebrows playfully and said seriously, your LU family is the richest man in the world. When Hizayoman heard these words, his face turned green almost instantly, Huo Yao, are you having a brain problem? Huo Yao's lips twitched, and he laid his whole person on the bed lazily, staring at the ceiling of the ceiling with black and white eyes, and his voice was very soft, since you are not the richest man in the world, who gives you the courage to scream here? Isn't it good to be a good individual? Huo Yao sighed and hung up the phone. Hizayoman heard the beep on the phone, and his whole body was shaking. He threw the phone on the coffee table with a bang, and the phone fell to the ground again. 
El Yusya, who was standing next to her, shrank her shoulders. She seemed to be frightened by her emotions. She quickly bent over and picked up the phone that had fallen on the ground, looked at the broken glass screen, and silently put it back on the coffee table. Immediately, El Yusya sat down next to Hizayoman again, stretched out her hand, and gently patted her back, Mom, please calm down, don't be familiar with Huo Yao, she grew up with Grandma's parents, so she's used to her wild temperament. So it will inevitably be a bit ugly to speak, don't take it to your heart, it's not worth it if you are angry. Hizayoman just used the speakerphone when he called, so El Yusya heard what Huo Yao said. To be honest, she was also a little surprised by Huo Yao's attitude. Although her voice sounded normal, she was inexplicably arrogant. Hizayoman was originally a face-saving person, so it is strange that he is not angry when he is so stunned. El Yusya said some comforting words, and after a while, Hizayoman's face improved. She looked at her well-behaved and sensible biological daughter, raised her hand and touched her head and said with some relief, you are still caring. Once again, I am grateful that the wrong-holding incident has been corrected, or I will be to death by adopting the temperament of a daughter. Taking a deep breath, Hizayoman remembered her purpose of waiting here at night, and bent over. She took the small bag next to her, took out a card from it and handed it to El Yusya. You will start school soon. There are half a million in this card. You can use it first, and then talk to mom if it is not enough. As soon as El Yusya heard it, he took the card and handed it back to her, Mom, I have money to use, but what you gave me before is useless. Hizayoman couldn't help but squeezed the card to her again, Our children in the El Yusya family can't look shabby than others, and you are still participating in training. The popularity of the internet is so high, and the appearance must be supported. El Yusya looked down at the card in her hand, then raised her head again, and said happily, Thank you mom. Asterisk. Over there, after Huo Yao hung up the phone, he was about to take a bath and sleep. Just as he took out his pajamas from the cabinet, there was a knock on the door. Yao Yao, are you asleep? Song Ning's voice came from outside the door. Huo Yao put down his pajamas thoughtfully, walked to the door and opened the door. Song Ning looked at the calm and well-behaved daughter, remembered the attitude of the boss tonight, and asked cautiously, Are you angry with your big brother? Huo Yao showed a puzzled look, Hey. Song Ning saw that she seemed unclear, as if she didn't take the night's affairs to heart. She breathed a sigh of relief, but she felt more uncomfortable. She immediately said, your eldest brother is sometimes more careless and has no worries. As far as you feel, don't take it to heart. Huo Yao understood what she meant, and replied in a short and horrified manner, I know, I'm not angry. Her gaze was very pure, and people knew at a glance that she was not saying anything against their will. For such a sensible daughter, Song Ning subconsciously cursed the eldest son in her heart. She really had a problem with her eyes and she dared to say her sister had a bad temper. Ahem, it's fine if you don't get angry, your father said, he will send you to school tomorrow, you can sleep a little longer in the morning. Song Ning said hurriedly. It is good. Then you should rest early, don't play too late, mom will leave first. Song Ning finished the instructions, and turned to leave. Mom, wait a minute. Huo Yao suddenly stopped her again, and after speaking, she turned and entered the room. After a while, Huo Yao turned back to the door and handed a porcelain bottle to Song Ning, oral one capsule every three days, and your migraine will be cured after one month. Song Ning took the porcelain bottle in a daze, this, from your friend. She remembered what her daughter said a few days ago and the express delivery she received today. Huo Yao gave a vague um. Holding the porcelain bottle for a long time, thank you friend for me, you are interested. Song Ning said with a smile. Although the fragrant pill the daughter gave her last time was indeed effective, she did not hope for a complete cure of the migraine, but the daughter was also kind and she was very happy. 
Huo Yao saw that Song Ning was not quite convinced, and he just smiled without explaining too much. Early the next morning, Huo Yao went downstairs wearing pretty casual clothes, his long ponytail was tied up, and a not too big rucksack was casually slung on his shoulders. Although it looked so clean, it was accompanied by her bright and three dimensional face. But Sheng Sheng gives people a very handsome and cool feeling. When Song Ning looked at such a daughter, she couldn't help but tisk in the bottom of her heart. Others rely on clothes to set off people. She felt that her daughter is a human set off clothes, and she can wear everything she wears. But. Why don't you wear the clothes that your mother bought for you? Don't you like it? Song Ning put her arms around her chest, and suddenly felt that the clothes and skirts she had chosen were really not good enough for her daughter. When Huo Yao heard these words from her, to avoid her saying I don't like it, I'll give you a new batch of mine, he hurriedly explained, I'm just used to pants, let's go. I will also change into school uniforms after school. When Song Ning heard it, she said, well, it's mom's mistake. When I look back, mom will choose some pants for you. The daughter who can be salt, sweet, cool, and cool must be arranged. Huo Yao. Dad Huo, who was reading the newspaper next to him, also put down the newspaper, picked up the card that he had prepared, and walked towards her, daughter, dad has nothing to buy for you, and I don't know what you like. This card is just a gift. There is no limit for your school opening gift, just take it and spend it. The corners of Huo Yao's lips twitched again, and his eyes fell on the black card handed over in front of him. Isn't it a good poor family? It's a black card, and it's a random flower. How can it give birth to a sense of sight of a hidden giant? Seeing his daughter's dazed appearance, Huo Jinyan suddenly remembered that she grew up in a small county town. After thinking for a few seconds, he thrust the card into her hand and said. You take the card first. The password is your birthday. It doesn't matter if you are not used to using the card. Dad will go to the bank and get some cash for you later. The card is forcibly stuffed, and there is another kind of Huo Yao who is about to be hit by cash. After breakfast, Huo Yao, who was carrying a black card, followed Dad Huo downstairs. When taking the elevator, Huo Yao asked casually, Dad, isn't our family very poor? Huo Jinyan unexpectedly asked how his daughter would ask such a question. Although she didn't know where she learned about the poor family, he sighed after thinking of some old past events, although the family is not rich, but daughter, you don't worry, dad won't make you suffer. Reaching out is the black card, opening and closing the mouth is just a random flower, Huo Yao tilted his head slightly, his eyes clearly written disbelief. Huo's father was a little guilty by this look. Fortunately, at this time the elevator dinged, the door opened, he coughed and hurried out of the elevator. Huo Yao's lips twitched, with a smile but a smile, and followed him. The community where Huo's family lives is not far from number one middle school, and it only takes about 20 minutes to drive so Huo Yao doesn't need to live on campus. Huo Jinyan originally wanted to send his daughter into the school's academic affairs office to report, but he had no choice but to park on the first day of school. In the end, Huo Yao repeatedly assured that he was okay before drove away. Huo Yao waited for Huo Jinyan's car to drive away before she walked towards the school gate calmly. At the door, she swiped her card to enter. She was a transfer student and had not applied for a student card, so she was stopped by the guard. Huo Yao took out the transfer notice from his backpack and handed it to him, this is all right. The security guard took a look, and when he looked at Huo Yao, there were a few differences in his eyes. He raised his hand to invite another colleague, and then said to Huo Yao, You wait here first, I need to go. The academic affairs office will check before you can enter. With that, he didn't wait for Huo Yao to say anything, took her transfer admission notice and left. Huo Yao looked at the back of the security guard entering, and squinted his eyes. Is there so much trouble in the previous high school? Although it was annoying, she waited patiently. It's just that, 
after waiting for nearly ten minutes, the security guard still didn't come back. Huo Yao pressed his eyebrows, not wanting to complain about the efficiency of the school. Can you remind me of your colleague? Huo Yao said politely to the other security guard. People with good looks are always a little more pleasing. The security guard nodded and took out his mobile phone to help make a call, but the call was connected, but no one answered. The security called several times, and it was still the same. He couldn't help but looked at Huo Yao with a little apologetic expression, my colleague may not have taken the phone with him, and no one answered the call after a few times. When Huo Yao heard this, he twisted her eyebrows, and the security guard had not come out, so wouldn't she have to wait here? Looking down at the time on his wrist, Huo Yao asked again, is there a contact number for the academic affairs office or the principal? The security guard scratched his head, and said a little embarrassed, I'm sorry, classmate, I am new here, I don't know these well, or you should wait a little longer, maybe my colleague will be back soon. Okay, I don't know if I ask three questions, Huo Yao didn't bother to ask. At this moment, a black car drove to the door, and the security guard did not care about Huo Yao anymore, and walked over quickly. The window of the black car was lowered, and the people inside did not know what was shown to the security guard, and the expression on the security's face instantly became respectful. Huo Yao lowered her head and didn't pay attention to anything else. She raised her head when the black car honked the horn for a long time. The black car was unremarkable and ordinary, the rear window slowly lowered halfway under the line of sight, and the exposed half of the face was familiar. Huo Yao looked at the half of the face in the car and was taken aback. Men Yu's thick eyebrows were raised slightly, and his deep peach blossom eyes glowed with shattered waves. He looked at her with a smile but not a smile, can't you get in? The astonishment on Huo Yao's face was already gathered, and he shrugged helplessly. Isn't this nonsense? Men Yu chuckled lightly and said, get in the car, brother will take you in. Hearing these slightly ruffian words, Zhou Yun driving ahead couldn't believe his ears. Is this still his master who is so cold and emotional? Huo Ya raised her eyebrows, glanced at the security guard next to him, and saw that he was hanging his head and did not mean to stop. After thinking for two seconds, she did not refuse Min Yu, walked over, opened the rear door and bent over and sat down. Go in. El Yu Xia, who just came over not far away, just saw this scene, suddenly pointed to the gate in surprise. Big brother, do you think that is dull? Huo Yangzi, who had sent El Yuxia to school all the way, was still a little absent-minded. Hearing what El Yuxia said, he raised his head suddenly and followed her hand to look over, except for the black car slowly driving into the campus at the gate, the crowd did not see Huo. Yao's figure. No, Xia Xia, are you wrong? Huo Yangzi asked suspiciously. Although it was only a glance from a distance, El Yuxia was pretty sure that the person who had just gotten into the black car was Huo Yao, but Huo Yangzi might not have seen it. After thinking for two seconds, El Yuxia withdrew her gaze and said in a low voice, It may be that I misunderstood. Why would Yao Yao enter the school in a stranger's car? The sentence behind her was very quiet, Huo Yangzi only heard a vague outline, could not help asking, What stranger's car? El Yuxia stopped talking, and finally shook her head, it's nothing. After a pause, she said again, big brother, I'm going in first. Thank you for sending me to school today. Huo Yangzi just smiled and waved at her. When her figure disappeared at the door, the smile on his face disappeared. His sister got in a stranger's car? Here, after Huo Yao got into Min Yu's car, he turned his head to look at him resting his cheek in a playful manner, what a coincidence, neighbor brother. Hearing the words of the neighbor brother, Men Yu's lips twitched, his handsome face seemed to be a little helpless, and his low voice gurgled out, Men Yu, my name. As his words fell, the car was visibly bumpy for a moment. Men Yu raised his eyebrows and faintly glanced at Zhou Yun who was driving in front of him. Feeling the coolness of his back, Zhou Yun immediately sat up straight, 
not even daring to look in the rear-view mirror. Huo Yao didn't notice the strangeness in the car, his delicate face still had that lazy look, and he muttered, Men Yu, the name sounds pretty good. Men Yu changed his sitting position, his slender legs cocked, and asked playfully, Aren't people good looking? I haven't seen you for a few days, the thickness of your face is good. Huo Yao squinted and gave him a look. Men Yu hesitated, his expression turned, but he asked, What's going on at the gate of the school? If you don't have a student ID, don't enter. Huo Yao shrugged and narrowed his eyes, as if curiously asked, It's you, why did you come to the first middle school? You can drive directly into the school, you wouldn't be from this school. Teacher. Huo Yao actually didn't know much about Min Yu. Although they had known each other for nearly a year, the two had met only a few times. What did he do? and even the name had just been mentioned by him before she knew it. Men Yu tilted his head, raised his eyebrows and looked at Huo Yao, do you think I look like? Huo Yao looked at him up and down a few times, and shook his head really, no. No school dares to recruit such a perverted teacher, and it simply doesn't want students to study hard. Men Yu's lips curled up with a slight smile, and said, I'm really not a teacher. Really. Huo Ya raised his eyebrows and looked out of the car window. He was not interested in asking any more questions, trouble, stop here, I can go in by myself. Zhou Yun in front heard that the speed of the car had slowed down, but instead of stopping, he looked at the rear view mirror. Good. Men Yu responded lightly. Zhou Yun stepped on the brakes. Huo Ya glanced at the front thoughtfully, thanked the people and got out of the car. After a while, Zhou Yun slowly started the car, looked at the back of the girl who was drifting away from the car window, and whispered, Brother Yu, this girl is the Huo Yao you asked us to check before. Yet. Men Yu's voice was faint, and his expression had returned to his usual coldness. His slender fingers were resting on his knees, and he didn't lightly tap. Even though she looks pretty, but she can't see anything special about her. Zhou Yun commented suspiciously. He didn't understand how the master was interested in such an ordinary high school student. This must be known to the family members, and he might not cause an uproar. Men Yu's eyes flashed deeply, and he said with a smile but a smile, good looking is a special thing in itself. Hearing this, Zhou Yun couldn't help muttering, how many beautiful ladies in the capital, I haven't seen anyone you have seen. Superficial. Men Yu snorted lightly, his handsome face full of disgust. Zhou Yun. Are you really okay with such a double standard? Shaking his head, Zhou Yun turned the topic away from Huo Yao, and his expression began to become slightly serious. By the way, brother Yu, there is news from the dark line, and there is no trace of Shang Guanyu, will it? In fact, this person does not exist at all. After all, even Cloud Mirror, which covers the world's cutting-edge information chain, can't find this person, which will inevitably make people suspicious. Men use lips were thin and lightly pursed, you treat those medicines formulated with ancient secret recipes as fake. Zhou Yun showed distress on his face, but, it has been more than a year. Then check for another year. Men Yu's voice was light and fluttering, but it was not difficult to hear the impatience in it. Zhou Yun glanced at the rearview mirror, and finally had to say a low voice, without speaking. After Huo Yao got off the ride, she looked for someone and asked about the location of the teaching office. It didn't take long before she came to the office of the teaching office. Knocked on the door, and after a response came from inside, she walked in unhurriedly. There is only one teacher in the office, who is in his thirties and forties, and he is sitting at his desk writing something. Huo Yao walked over and briefly explained his intentions to him. After Wei Mingj listened, he put down the pen in his hand, the expression on his face was quite surprised, are you the Huo Yao who passed the online exam in Fuxian? Huo Yao stroked the shoulder straps of his backpack and raised his eyebrows frenzily. If no one is going to replace them, I'm right. Wei Mingj looked at the girl who was full of arrogance in front of him, 
thinking that the child who came out of the small remote county was arrogant and didn't know how to constrain. Shaking his head, he said, give me your notice. Hearing this, Huo Yao flashed a strange look in his eyes, the notice was taken away by the security guard at the door just now. It said it was sent to the academic affairs office for verification. Didn't you receive it, the teacher? Wei Ming frowned, no, I have been in the office, and I have never seen a security guard come, but how can you give it to a security guard at will for such an important thing as the transfer notice? Huo Yao's eyebrows sank, and he suddenly remembered that the security guard at the door looked different when he saw her notice. She didn't care about it at the time. Now it seems that she was deliberately waiting for her to take her notice. After thinking for a few seconds, Huo Yao asked directly, what if I don't have an admission letter? You can only enter the number one middle school with the admission notice. If you don't have one, unfortunately, you can only find another school. Wei Ming is not alarmist, but the express stipulation of number one middle school. Even if the school has an archive. Wei Ming shook his head. Okay, I get it. Huo Yao finished speaking, turned his head and left. Wei Ming looked at Huo Yao, who was walking all together. He was still stunned. When he recovered, he had already walked out of the office. He opened his mouth, and finally said nothing. Such arrogant students are not accepted by the school. A few minutes later, the dean of instruction hurriedly walked in, Old Wei, is there a girl named Huo Yao to report today? After a pause, he added, I'm a senior transfer student. Wei Ming saw the director look very anxious, his eyes showed a suspicious look, but he didn't hide it, I'm here, but I just left. Hearing this, the dean was not too anxious on the face, thinking that he had already arranged to go to the classroom, and said, just come and report. I have work to do, so let's go. Wei Ming was stunned by his rushing behavior. Hearing these few words after him, he was obviously misunderstood. He couldn't help calling him, no, director, although the student Huo came to report, it seems because I didn't bring the admission notice, I left again. When the dean heard this, he immediately turned back, what did you say, old way? You said she is gone? How could you let her go? Wei Ming couldn't figure out why the teaching director cared about a transfer student so much. He hesitated. He still relayed everything that Huo Yao had asked when he came in. Of course, including the security issue, he did not hide it. The dean of teaching listened, stomped his feet, and said angrily, Old Wei, you are also a staid, do you know that she is the principal? Forget it, I won't tell you, I'll go find someone first. Wei Ming looked at the back of the dean hurriedly leaving again, only the unfinished words in his mouth were in his ears. What is she from the principal? Relatives? So, the so-called transfer student was actually not the one who got the full score online, but was a relative of the principal? The more Wei Ming thought about it, the more he felt that he was right, otherwise the girl would not be so arrogant and the dean would not be so nervous. For a while, Wei Ming's impression of Huo Yao was extremely bad. He hates this kind of students who come in through the back door. After Huo Yao walked out of the office of the teaching office, he did not go to the school gate to find the security guard. After all, the person deliberately took her transfer notice. Even if she found it now, he might have destroyed it. Come to death. If she doesn't admit it, she is justified and loses. Therefore, Huo Yao went directly to the principal's office. However, when Huo Yao went to the principal's office, the office door was closed and no one responded when he knocked on it. It seems that there is no one inside. Huo Yao slightly melancholy sighed, it was really difficult to break high school last. Suddenly I felt a little nostalgic for not having to go to school. Ah, this crossing. Huo Yao walked back a little mournfully, and a female teacher came to face him. When she saw Huo Yao, her face sank and her voice was fierce, this classmate, you are almost in class, why are you still here? Dangling. 
Huo Yao paused and blinked innocently, Teacher, I am a transfer student, because I don't know which class I am assigned to, so I came to ask. The female teacher listened, her face was not so cold, she only said, You go to the teaching office to report, this is the principal's office, the principal is very busy, he doesn't care about it. After speaking, she hurriedly walked towards the principal's office without knocking on the door. She swiped the elevator on her chest and went in. After a while, the female teacher walked out with a portfolio in her hand. Seeing Huo Yao was still there, she couldn't help but said, Why are you still here? Didn't you go to the teaching office? I... Forget it, you come with me, and I will take you there. The female teacher shook her head, and walked ahead as she said. In this way, Huo Yao was taken back to the teaching office by the female teacher. Old way, please check with this transfer student to see which class she is assigned to. Class is about to start. Don't delay her time. The female teacher finished speaking, and left in a hurry without waiting for Wei Ming to say anything. In the office, only Wei Ming and Huo Yao were left with big eyes to small eyes. Wei Ming didn't want to see Huo Yao, a student who came in through the back door anymore, but thought of the attitude of the dean who had just been teaching him, he resisted his inner dissatisfaction, walked to the office desk with a calm face, picked up the landline phone, and dialed out. Huo Yao looked at Wei Ming, who exuded the scent of I think you are very unhappy. He was very puzzled. He obviously looked pretty good when he came in for the first time. Why did his work change in a while? The teachers in number one middle school are good at face changing? After Wei Ming finished the call and sat down directly in front of the office desk, he said coldly, Where are you standing and wait? Huo Yao didn't even look at him. Within two minutes, the dean who had just rushed to find someone came back, his gaze fell straight on Huo Yao, and the whole person seemed to be relieved. Student Huo Yao, welcome to the first high school. Huo Yao nodded politely and looked polite and well-educated, but after a two-second pause, she looked distressed, my admission notice was taken by a security guard. Can I still sign up? Hearing the words, the dean shook his head and said, it's not a problem. The admission notice is just a form and does not affect the registration. I will ask the security guard what is going on in a while. Huo Yao looked at Wei Ming inadvertently, then he sighed, and replied happily, that's good. Upon receiving Huo Yao's sight, Wei Ming was inexplicably slapped in the face. The dean of teaching did not notice the subtle atmosphere between Wei Ming and Huo Yao. He turned his head, looked at Wei Ming, and said, old Wei, I handed Huo Yao to your class. You have to take care of me. People are taking care of it. Wei Ming's expression changed instantly after hearing this. It doesn't matter if you go through the back door, and you have to cram such an arrogant student into his rocket class. The dean is afraid that he is crazy. Not to mention the academic performance of Huo Yao, everyone in his rocket class is elite, and the third year of high school is the most critical year. If parents of students know that someone comes in and walks through the back door, wouldn't they have to die? Thinking of this, Wei Ming didn't care about the teacher's face, so he refused on the spot. Director, you should arrange for Huo Yao to go to another class. Our rocket class has reached full capacity. One more person might affect other students. His attitude of refusal was too firm. The dean of teaching took a look at Huo Yao only to feel embarrassed. It took a lot of effort to persuade this transfer student to the principal. After coughing, the dean of instruction said to Huo Yao, student Huo Yao, wait for me first. Immediately, he gave Wei Ming a look and walked outside the office. Wei Ming frowned and walked out. Old guard, you. Before the dean's persuasion was finished, he was directly interrupted by Wei Ming, director. I know what you want to say. The Rockets class are all elites in this class. They are all proud of heaven. One more person will hold back. The teaching director was taken aback, no, old way, you don't even know that classmate Huo is. Okay, 
Director, don't persuade me, it is impossible for me to accept this transfer student. Seeing that Wei Ming didn't get in with oil and salt, this made the dean also angry, I ask you one last time, do you really want to? No. The instructor smiled angrily, then you don't regret it. Wei Ming frowned obviously when he heard this, but he sneered at what he thought of, and said, never. All right. The dean of instruction took a deep breath and stopped persuading. At this moment, the female teacher who had sent Huo Yao to the teaching department walked over. Seeing that the atmosphere between the two was a little weird, she asked suspiciously, What's the matter with you? The dean, who was angry, immediately turned his eyes on the female teacher, I will arrange a transfer student for you, do you want it? The female teacher was Chen Yu. She was shocked by the sudden sentence from the dean. It took her a while to react, transfer students? It's not because the principal mentioned that he had passed the online exam during the meeting two days ago. High school transfer students who passed full marks? Yes. The dean of education had a scorching gaze, and without waiting for Chen Yu to express his personal opinion, he directly decided, that's it, classmate Huo Yao will be a student in your experimental class. Take it to your class. The planning level of the students in the first middle school is similar to that of other key high schools. The top classes in the rocket class, followed by the experimental class, and the final grades are in the ordinary class. Of course, even ordinary classes have better average grades than other key middle schools. The principal originally meant to arrange Huo Yao into the rocket class, but he didn't expect that Wei Ming would not accept Huo Yao, so the dean had to put Huo Yao into the experimental class. Although it is not the best top class, it is also better than the ordinary class. Chen Yu, who had been forcibly stuffed with a transfer student, was still a little confused. Seeing the obvious relief of Wei Ming next to him, he felt a little bit in his heart. Is there something wrong with this transfer student? Thinking like this, Chen Yu opened his mouth and asked, Director, this. The Dean of Teaching raised his hand and said impatiently, The principal has a distinguished guest here today, I'll go there first. After speaking, he left. Chen Yu looked at the back of the Dean's departure. After a while, she turned her head to look at Wei Ming. Old Wei, Director Gang wants to arrange transfer students in your rocket class. Wei Ming and Chen Yu originally had a somewhat competitive relationship. After all, one was a rocket class and the other was an experimental class. Although there was a huge difference in strength, he was afraid that the outstanding dark horse of the experimental class would overwhelm his rocket class. Therefore, he cleared his voice and said, Yes, I refused. After all, our rocket class is not able to make any grades. Although Chen Yu heard Wei Ming's ridicule of the winner, she still held her temper and asked with a smile, Old Wei, what do you mean by this? This transfer student was not admitted with a perfect score. Wei Ming just shrugged, I don't know, don't ask me, no matter if she is full or not, she is excellent or not, she is now a student in your class. Chen Yu's expression immediately changed. Although Wei Ming didn't say clearly where the transfer student had problems, it was not difficult to guess. This full point transfer student, I'm afraid that it won't really come in with full marks. To say full marks is just a cover. No wonder Wei Ming is so gloating. Rejection is no longer possible, Chen Yu took a deep breath, turned and walked into the office. When she saw Huo Yao, Chen Yu was stunned. It turned out that the transfer student was the transfer student she had just brought to the principal's office to get the documents. At that time, she was busy taking the documents. She only thought it was a transfer student from another grade, but she didn't expect, and eventually became a student in her class. Chen Yu's mood became more complicated for a while. She coughed and said, Student Huo, you will be a student in class 3 from now on. I am your head teacher Chen Yu. You can go to class with me now. Her tone is not bad, but it is not too good. Although Huo Yao had been waiting in the office, 
she unfortunately heard the conversations just outside the door. Anyone who is forced into a transfer student who seems to be problematic will be unhappy. Therefore, Huo Yao also expressed his understanding of Chen Yu's nonchalant attitude, and only cleverly responded, OK. Chen Yu couldn't help but glanced at Huo Yao again. The little girl was very pretty, not humble, but well-behaved and docile. People are all visual animals. Even if the mood is bad, when facing beautiful people or things, the mood will change accordingly. Chen Yu is no exception. She remembered that Huo Yao seemed to come from a small, remote county. They said that children in small places were more mature and sensible. No wonder they looked so well behaved. That's all, for this well-being, even if the grades are bad, she will recognize it. After a while, Chen Yu brought Huo Yao to the classroom. The classroom, which was originally noisy, quieted down instantly as Chen Yu came in. Chen Yu is strict with students, and often keeps her face cold, so she is known as the devil. Many students in the class are afraid of her. Chen Yu was quite satisfied with the self-consciousness of her group of students and cleared her voice. She pointed to Huo Yao beside her and said, This is a new classmate who has transferred from another school. Everyone should help the new classmate more in the future. She did not say that Huo Yao came from a small county. Then, Chen Yu asked Huo Yao to introduce herself. Facing dozens of pairs of eyes, Huo Yao's expression was plain and not timid. He turned around, picked up the fountain pen next to him, and wrote the words Huo Yao on the whiteboard. Her handwriting is very beautiful, and it is still rare in block letters. The outline of her strokes is all correct and elegant, which contrasts with the cool temperament of her whole body. Oh my god, it doesn't matter if this transfer school grows well, and the words are also written so beautifully, it's really shocking. Suddenly there is a feeling of rapid heartbeat. This looks, this temperament, I have decided, this new transfer student will be my goddess from now on. When Chen Yu heard the student's words, her face turned black in an instant, and she couldn't help but cough heavily, and the boiling sound immediately disappeared. Soon, she asked Huo Yao to sit down in the last empty seat by the right window, and said something to spur everyone to study this kind of opening remarks and let everyone study by themselves before leaving the classroom. When Chen Yu left, the quiet classroom broke again, and the topics of discussion basically revolved around Huo Yao. New classmate, my name is Menjiang, we will be at the same table in the future, you can just ask me if you have any questions. Mengying has a baby face and delicate features. She is a very kind and cute girl. Huo Yao turned his head to look at her, raised his eyebrows coolly, can you lend me your chemistry textbook? Little cute. Mengying stared at Huo Yao in a daze, her white cheeks flushed quickly because of the other party's cute and when she noticed her gaffe, she hurriedly covered her face with her hands. My mother, the new classmate is too sultry, she can't resist her girlish heart. Huo Yao who just wants to borrow a book to read. Meng Ying finally calmed down her restless heart, and then remembered that Huo Yao was borrowing books from her, and hurriedly took out the chemistry textbook from the desk box and handed it over, here you are. Thank you. Huo Yao gave a small smile. Meng Ying once again felt that her blood tank was emptied quickly. After a while, she stammered back, No, you're welcome. Huo Yao just glanced at her again with a faint smile, then withdrew his gaze and turned over the chemistry textbook in his hand. Meng Ying swallowed, and Zendeo was at the same table with such a beautiful and sassy person, it was simply happiness. However, the new classmates seem to love to learn, which makes people very ashamed. Thus, Meng Ying also subconsciously took out a book. The power of public opinion is very strong. After only one morning, the entire senior third grade almost knew that a girl with a perfect face was transferred to the third experimental class. There are also many students who are curious, and deliberately take advantage of the gap in get out of class to watch. Therefore. After seeing Huo Yao's face, many people returned to their class to discuss topics such as the beauty of transfer students. 
so it quickly spread to El Yusya's ears. El Yusya was in a rocket class. Her grades were pretty good. She was in the middle of the ranking of the rocket class. Hearing that Huo Yao had transferred to another school only one morning caused such a big sensation throughout the senior year of high school. The whole person was not good. Since she participated in star training camp, her popularity has skyrocketed. Before Huo Yao came, she was also recognized as a goddess and school girl, and her status can be said to be unshakable. However, now, she felt a sense of crisis inexplicably. Xiaxia, show you a picture. El Yuxia's desk mate and number one follower, Chong Yingying, took the phone in front of El Yuxia. The picture in the phone is not someone else, it is the protagonist of the hot topic in everyone's mouth, Huo Yao. This is a new transfer student from the experimental class, and his looks seem to be really good. Chong Yingying added, quite gossip. El Yuxia's eyes fell on the phone. Although Huo Yao in the photo is just a profiled face, and even the person taking the photo is still a bit blurry, the feeling that everyone is ordinary and she shines alone can be seen at a glance. El Yuxia's eyes darkened for a moment. From the first day she saw Huo Yao, she knew that her face would attract attention, but she didn't expect this day to come so soon. She couldn't figure out why this Huo Yao was different from what she expected. She is obviously a timid, inferior, and noisy person. El Yuxia lowered her eyes, suppressed many questions, and raised her head. She didn't show any unhappiness on her face, but still answered Chong Ying Ying's words in a very gentle voice, Well, it's very beautiful. When Chong Ying Ying heard it, she suddenly realized that, how could she praise other girls for their beauty in front of the goddess? Isn't this an insult to the goddess? Thinking about this, Chong Ying Ying hurriedly retracted the phone, put it on the table with the screen facing down, and said with a smile, Hey, no matter how beautiful it is, but we Xiaxia, you are everyone's recognized school flower, where is this this kind of transfer students who don't know where to transfer is comparable. El Yuxia's eyes drooped slightly, and then she whispered with a slight accusation, Ying Ying, don't say that in the future. Although Huo Yao is from a remote county, it is a fact that she looks good. Huo Yao? Xia Xia, do you know the transfer student? She is from the countryside. Chong Ying Ying seemed to get a major news. El Yu Xia covered her mouth, seeming to be a little annoyed at her sudden failure. After a while, she whispered, I know, she is the adopted daughter of our El Yu family. When Chong Ying Ying heard this, her eyes widened, so she is the fake daughter who has occupied your identity for many years. The school flower has a bizarre life experience, which many people in the school know. Hush, Ying Ying, don't speak so loudly, it won't be good for people to hear it. El Yuxia said angrily. Chong Ying Ying puffed up her lips and said, there is nothing bad to hear. She is a fake and has enjoyed her daughter status for more than ten years but you live in a poor family for her, I to take back what she just said beautiful. When El Yuxia heard this, her eyes drooped slightly, and the corners of her lips flicked like a smile, but soon, she patted Chong Ying Ying's shoulder with her hand, you must not tell anyone about this. After all, Huo Yao is very innocent. Aren't you innocent? Chong Ying Ying snorted, and did not listen to her previous words, Xia Xia. You are too kind, don't look back and be bullied and don't know it. How come, Huo Yao is not that kind of person? El Yuxia was still defending Huo Yao. Anyway, don't let me catch her with any braids, otherwise I won't make her feel better. Chong Ying Ying said coldly. El Yuxia hooked her lips and said nothing. Before Huo Yao left the school in the afternoon, Chen Yu asked her to go to the office fill in the admission information, and gave her a temporary student pass. When giving her the student ID, Chen Yu remembered what the dean had told her. Student Huo Yao, the director asked me to tell you that your admission notice has been taken back from the security guard. The security has a stomach irritation, and the mobile phone is not with him. That's why such a big oolong happened in the morning to let you do not worry about it. 
Chen Yu directly relayed the teaching director's meaning. After hearing this, Huo Yao thought a little, and finally only softly responded, Ms. Chen, I know. Seeing her behaved like this, Chen Yu couldn't help nagging a few more words, you have just transferred to another school. There may be many things you are not used to, and the teaching method of the first middle school is different from that in your county. The most critical year, if you don't understand something, you must ask the teacher, you know. Huo Yao looked at her face and wrote, I know your grades are poor, but I want to help you. Chen Yu just hooked her lips and blinked at her confidently, Teacher, you can actually I have more confidence. Chen Yu was stupefied by her smile, and it took a while before she came back to her senses. When she wanted to say something, she realized that Huo Yao had gone far. This student, maybe not as unbearable as Wei Ming expressed, right? As soon as Huo Yao walked out of the school gate, the mobile phone in her pocket rang. She found out that it was an unfamiliar mobile phone number. At this moment, there were a few car hums not far away, and she raised her head and saw a familiar black car. Huo Yao raised his eyebrows, but didn't answer the phone call anymore, and walked slowly towards the car. The window was lowered, and the face I had only seen in the morning showed up, get in the car. Why, would you like to invite me to dinner? Huo Yao didn't move, but said playfully, and didn't ask if he was waiting for her to say something like this. Hearing the words, Min Yu in the car made a small smile at the corner of his lips, diluting the coldness of his handsome features a lot, of course there is no problem. Huo Yao thought for a while, opened the rear door, and said, Okay, but I have to go home after dinner. The family will be worried when I am late. After getting in the car, Huo Yao sent a message to Song Ning. Are you so honest now? Min Yu slowly started the engine, and suddenly looked at Huo Yao with a very unbelievable look, as if the girl next door who used to go over the wall in the middle of the night was an illusion. Huo Yao tilted his head, and at Min Yu's gaze, he asked with a smile but a smile, when am I not being honest? Min Yu shook his head with a smile. He felt that if he said what he had seen before, the other party might come to say you peeping at me, so he chose not to speak out. It didn't take long for the car to stop in front of a private restaurant in the city, and the decoration looked pretty delicate. After entering the box, Huo Yao put the backpack on the chair, picked up the menu bluntly, ordered a few of her favorites, and then remembered the host sitting opposite. Min Yu added two more dishes at random and let the waiter leave. Suddenly, he and Huo Yao were the only two people left in the box. Huo Yao lowered his head, playing with his phone, and asked casually, How do you know my phone number? She remembered that she never gave him contact information. Min Yu poured himself a cup of tea slowly, the heat swelled and dissipated in the air, Your grandma asked me to take care of you. Hearing the words, Huo Yao raised his head and looked at Min Yu, his expression was obviously more surprised, as if he didn't expect to hear this from his mouth. Min Yu picked up the teacup and took a sip in an elegant manner, after you left, your grandma said a lot to me. Huo Ya remembered the old man who wakes up very early every day to make her breakfast and waits silently at the door every night. A touch of warmth fills the corner of his lips, is my grandmother okay? It's okay, but the mental state is not as good as before. Maybe because you are gone, she is reluctant. Min Yu said slowly. Huo Yao's eyes drooped, and there was a moment of silence. The reason why she didn't wait for her to come back from the hospital when she left was because she was afraid that she would be sad. Seeing this, Min Yu said, but your adoptive mother has brought her here. If you want to see her, you can go anytime. Huo Yao gave a light hum. His Ioman would take her grandma over. She had known it a long time ago, which is not surprising. However, she looked at Menu with a complicated expression and asked, How can you know so much? Even when he was in Fuxian, this person lived next to their house and never interacted with them much. She never heard her grandma mention him. Menu raised his eyebrows lightly, and answered the wrong question, I still know where your grandmother lives now. Hearing this, 
Huo Yao suddenly said, You know so much, isn't it the illegitimate child of my foster mother? As her words fell, Min Yu's face turned black in an instant. After a while, he said coolly, You are so imaginative. Thank you for the compliment. Huo Yao replied lightly. After a pause, she said with a slight disgust, but to be honest, my adoptive mother has not had the gene to give birth to a son like you. Min Yu snorted lightly. At this time, the waiter came in with the dishes. When the food was over and there were only two people left in the box, Min Yu seemed to think of something and asked, This morning at the gate of number one middle school, the reason you were stopped outside was because the security took your admission notice. Do you know this again? Huo Yao glanced at him again. Min Yu smiled, I heard it accidentally. Huo Yao curled his mouth, clamped a piece of ribs for himself, and muttered in a low voice, Then your ears are really good. Min Yu leaned back in the chair lazily, did not move his chopsticks, only said meaningfully, It seems it's not going well for you to change school. Huo Yao paused, remembering the phone call he Xiaoman had called her last night and a sneer flashed across the corner of her lips, it's just the villain. Need help? Min Yu asked playfully. Huo Yao didn't raise his head, and said vaguely, no. After dinner, after Min Yu settled the bill, he asked Huo Yao, want to see your grandma? Huo Yao thought for a while, shook his head, no, it's too late today, let's get another day. Min Yu didn't say much, only said, then I will send you the address back. Okay. It was almost eight when he returned to Huo's house. As soon as Huo Yao walked in, he obviously felt that the atmosphere at home was a bit strange. Huo Jinyan and Song Ning are sitting in the hall, the TV is not turned on, they look serious. Huo Yao was puzzled for a little bit, and then said, Dad, Mom, I'm back. Song Ning got up from the sofa and walked to Huo Yao. Because there was something in her heart, the smile on her face was quite reluctant. How did you feel on the first day of school? Are you used to it? It's okay. Huo Yao replied unhurriedly. After a two-second pause, she asked again, What do you want to say? When she was noticed by her daughter, Song Ning coughed dryly, It's okay. I just want to ask what kind of friends you are going to eat with at night. Is it your classmate? It turned out to be asking this. Huo Yao shook his head, no. Male or female? Song Ning asked cautiously. Huo Yao looked at Song Ning with a clear gaze, his voice was not flustered, and he answered patiently, man, the neighbor who lived next door before helped him, and he happened to meet him today, so he invited me to dinner. Song Ning met her daughter's candid eyes. For some reason, there was a hint of shame in her heart, ashamed of the nasty speculations in her mind. Touching the tip of her nose uncomfortably, Song Ning didn't ask much in the end, but said gently, It turns out that it's like this. Don't bother your mother. Mom is worried that you are a girl who is not safe to be outside too late. Although Huo Yao didn't know what Song Ning was trying to say, she probably guessed a little too. After a short pause, she only responded nicely, I know. Listening to this well-behaved voice, Song Ning once again felt ashamed in her heart, and said hurriedly, I was tired from the last day of class, so I should go back to the room and take a shower and rest early. By the way, Mom warmed up the milk for you. You brought it up and remembered to drink it. Song Ning walked into the kitchen quickly again, took out the milk in the holding cabinet, and handed it to Huo Yao. Okay, thank you mom. After a while, Huo Yao went upstairs with the milk, until her figure disappeared from the stairs, Song Ning exhaled heavily. When she walked back to the living room and sat down next to her husband, she reproached herself, I'm really not a qualified mother. How can I suspect that my daughter has a character problem? Huo Jinyan patted the back of his wife's hand, I have told you that I should give my daughter more trust and don't just think about it when I hear it. Song Ning glared at him irritably, I'm not misled by the boss. He called me today and said what made me pay attention to the awkward friendship situation, 
I will. Forget it, I will give it to the boss now. Make a call and ask him why he has such a big opinion of his sister. Seeing his wife's angrily, Huo Jinyan shook his head helplessly, and stopped her in time before she dialed out. The relationship between Yangtze and Yao Yao is not very good at first. Do you want to make the misunderstanding between the two people worse by calling this questioning call? Song Ning took the phone for a while and stopped making a call. Then he threw the phone aside, and said with a slightly bigger head, It's difficult. I don't think the problem is big. It has only been a few days since I came back, and they know little about each other. Take it easy. Compared with Song Ning's thinking too much, Huo Jinyan obviously viewed things more calmly. Song Ning sighed again, leaning softly on the sofa for a while, thinking of something, suddenly she sat up straight again, I almost forgot, Xia Xia and the boss have a good relationship, I can ask her to help match up. Match it up. Hearing this, Huo Jinyan squinted at her, and said in disapproval, did you forget that the conflict between the boss and Yao Yao was just because of the mention of Xia Xia? Of course I haven't forgotten this. I mean, Xia Xia is mild-tempered, and she happens to be studying at Yizhong. If she can get in touch with Yao Yao, wouldn't the relationship be relaxed a little naturally? As an old mother, Song Ning felt broken. I think you should dispel this idea. When your daughter just came back that day, you spoke to Xia Xia in such a strange manner, and asked her to call you Aunt Song directly in the future. Do you think that child has no idea? Huo Jinyan began to analyze rationally. Problem. Song Ning could not avoid a wry smile when he heard it. In fact, I was mad at the way she talked that day. Knowing that Yao Yao came back from the country, I deliberately emphasized this matter in front of her. If an outsider hears that, I am afraid I will only look down on Yao Yao. You say I don't speak. It's hard to hear, can you feel comfortable after hearing it? After a pause, she said again, Xia Xia was also brought by us from childhood to adulthood. Although this miscarriage incident occurred, I always treat her as my own child. Seeing her wronged and uncomfortable, I don't feel as it uncomfortable. Although the palms of the palms and the backs of the hands are all meat, she cannot deny that she cares more about the feelings of her own daughter in front of her own daughter and the adopted daughter who held the wrong one. This is blood relationship. What's more, after raising El Yusya for 17 years, she has never been wronged by the Huo family, among other things, she is her biological daughter, who grew up in a wealthy family in name, but in reality, she has been caught by the L.U. family. The cruel couple was raised in a small remote county. Although the grandmother who brought her biological daughter from childhood to adulthood is really good for her, but the difficult growth environment and as a left-behind child, how lonely her daughter was in childhood. Every time she thinks of this, Song Ning's heart hurts. Now that her daughter comes back, she just wants to make up for the missing 17 years as much as possible. Huo Jinyan watched his wife fall into self-blame again, couldn't help but stretched out his hand to hold her shoulder, and comforted, Yao Yao is a very well-behaved child, no one will dislike her, so does the boss. This weekend, Huo Yao bought something to see Yang Kai Hua. She lives in an apartment for the elderly in the urban area. The community environment is very good. There are no schools and large shopping malls nearby. It is very quiet and suitable for the elderly. Although he's Ioman is very mean, careful and pretentious, he treats his own mother well. Huo Yao called Yang Kaihua before she came, so when she rang the doorbell for a while, the door opened. Seeing his granddaughter, Yang Kaihua's eyes were red, and he hurriedly pulled Huo Yao into the room. The area of the house is not small, and the decoration is very good. Although all kinds of furniture and appliances are complete, it feels very deserted inexplicably. Huo Ya raised his eyes and swept around and then withdrew his gaze. Seeing that the old lady was going to get fruits and pouring water from the cup again, she looked like a child in a panic. Grandma, don't be busy, sit down and let's talk. Huo Yao pulled the person onto the sofa and sat down. 
Yang Kaihua's eyes kept falling on Huo Yao's face. For a while, she said, it doesn't look thin. It seems that your biological parents treat you well. Well, they were supposed to visit you, but I was afraid to disturb you, so I pushed. Huo Yao smiled. Someday, invite them to come home another day, and today we will have a good gathering of our mother-in-law and grandchildren. Yang Kaihua's wrinkled face is full of joy, but the lower eyes are blue-gray, so the whole person does not seem to be in a special state of mind. It is good. Huo Yao stretched out his hand to hold the old lady's hand, put his fingertips on her wrist at random, and asked casually, Did you rest well recently? No, I have a good rest. Yang Kaihua said hurriedly, as if afraid of her worry. In fact, since she came here, she suffered from insomnia almost all night. Huo Ya raised his eyebrows, and only asked, Is the medicine taken on time? The old lady nodded again and again, like a student being admonished by the teacher, Yes, I have listened to you to take the medicine on time, and never left. Huo Ya retracted his hand, Do you still have the incense I gave you before? Yes. I will order it every night. When the old lady said this, she obviously hesitated. Huo Yao looked at her with a smile, if you order every night, you won't always have insomnia and palpitations. When the old lady heard this, she immediately lowered her head with a guilty conscience. After a while, she said, actually, I forgot to take it when I moved. A dark color flashed across Huo Yao's eyes, but his voice was still light and fluttering, right. Every time the old lady saw a granddaughter like this, her heart burst, but she still replied boldly, Really, I didn't lie to you. Huo Yao's lips twitched, but he didn't reveal the old lady who was obviously hiding something, and then stood up again, walked around behind the old lady, and slender fingers fell on top of her head, Relax, I'll give you a press. The old lady wanted to say no, but when she saw Huo Yao's calm and indifferent face, she closed her mouth subconsciously. I don't know when she started, she was afraid of her granddaughter's serious appearance, always feeling that she could not hide anything from her. She is obviously the elder, but she has the illusion of a junior. Half an hour later, Huo Ya retracted his hand and asked warmly, How do you feel? The old lady opened her eyes, and replied a little embarrassed, It's very comfortable, you pressed me so I fell asleep. Her eyes fell on her hands again, I'm tired after pressing for so long. Huo Yao took the cup on the coffee table next to him, and took a sip of water, No, I'll bring you some incense later. Yet. The old lady nodded grinningly. In fact, incense is not important, the important thing is that the granddaughter said she would come again. The old lady felt that her energy level had improved a lot, so she stood up, talked, and walked towards the kitchen. Grandma bought your favorite ribs today, as well as small yellow croaker. You have to make these things slowly. You can rest in the hall, and you can eat them later. Huo Ya raised his head and looked at the nagging old lady, his eyes drifted away, as if the situation had returned to when he was still in the small county. Huo Ya didn't have much to do. After walking around the house, he also went to the kitchen, leaning lazily against the door frame, watching the old lady cooking. Not long after, the doorbell rang. The old lady was still in the busy pot, so she asked Huo Yao to open the door, saying that it might be water. However, when Huo Yao opened the door and saw the people standing outside, there was no surprise. Why are you here? The people outside the door are not others, they are Hizioman and Elusia and there is also a L.U. family housekeeper who carries several tonic boxes behind them. The moment he Zioman saw Huo Yao, his face became gloomy. Huo Yao just glanced at her faintly, and didn't say anything, turned around and walked into the room, not even bothering to give her one perfunctory. Really no education at all. He Zioman let out a cold voice. L.U. Xia didn't expect to meet Huo Yao here. She glanced at He Zioman, who had a bad face, and said softly, Mom, don't be angry, go to the house. 
The old lady turned the fire down and walked out of the kitchen, Yao, is it for water? Before she finished speaking, the old lady saw Hizayoman entering the room, and the smile on her face instantly froze. Why did you come today? The old lady said unhappy. After a pause, she seemed to see Elusia next to Hizayoman, Elusia is here too. The tone also sounds obviously perfunctory. Elusia's expression froze, but she still smiled and called to Grandma. Why can't I come? Xiaoxia and I are still outsiders, shouldn't you show up here? Hizayoman was almost laughing at him. Then why are you calling before you come? The old lady whispered. If he knew that Hizayoman would bring Elusia, she wouldn't let Elusia come over today. Xiaoxia bought a lot of things to see you today. You still look like you don't want to see her. Mom, can we not be so partial? Hizayoman felt that the old lady was poisoned by her adopted daughter and was not enthusiastic about her biological granddaughter. You haven't seen much waiting before. The old lady said sarcastically. Hizayoman helped his forehead, forget it, I won't argue with you so much, I just hope you get a good bowl of water. Who likes to argue with you, it's the questioning face when you come, and your good mood is ruined by you. The old lady fully demonstrated the essence of leverage today. Hizayoman's face turned black in an instant. Seeing this, Elusia next to him hurried over and said with a smile, Mom, didn't you buy a set of jade for Grandma? Show it for Grandma to wear. As Elusia said, she hurriedly asked the housekeeper next to take out the box, and smiled and held the old lady's arm, Grandma, don't be angry. Let's sit down and try this jewelry first. Do you like it? With Elusia calming the atmosphere in the middle, the old lady wouldn't be so stern, letting Elusia take her to sit down on the sofa. However, the old lady looked at the jade bracelet Elusia brought out, but she didn't stretch out her hand, she just refused, I'm a lot of age and don't like wearing these things. You should take them back. Elusia's movements froze. Seeing the old lady's determination, she couldn't force her, so she put all the emeralds into the box embarrassingly. Soon, the old lady turned her gaze on Huo Yao, who was sitting on the lounge chair not far away, lazily playing with her mobile phone. A soft color appeared in her eyes subconsciously, and she said, Yao, why don't you take a look at this jewelry, you do you like it? Huo Yao, who was suddenly caught by the cue, raised his head and blinked dumbly. As soon as Hizayoman heard this, his temple jumped sharply, walked over and said silently, Mom, she is a student, what emerald is she wearing? The old lady curled her lips and said, She can't wear it. I can give it to my mother. Hizayoman's eyes widened, Mom, you are crazy, do you know how much my emeralds are worth? The old lady looked at her with a strange look, aren't you going to give me these things? The implication is, isn't it normal for me to give my things to someone? Things are for you, but I didn't let you change hands to give them away. Hizayoman took a deep breath, trying to suppress the inner mania. The old lady wanted to say something, but was robbed by Elusia. She glanced at Huo Yao and said, Grandma, this set of jewelry was specially selected for you by mom. The price is expensive, and it is not appropriate to give it away. Do you think this is the case, I will go to the mall now to pick a new gift, and let Huo Yao take it back to her mother, will it work? Even though Hizayoman knew that Elusia was looking for herself to step down, she didn't want to ask her to spend money to buy gifts for the woman who had never seen the world before. Therefore, Hizayoman let out a sneer, his eyes fell on Huo Yao, Use the kindness of an old man to defraud money, is this your goal? Huo Ya raised his eyes, with a trace of carelessness on his delicate cheeks, looking at Hizayoman with a look neither sullen nor angry. Seeing her expression, Hizayoman frowned, and continued, If you want money, you can tell me directly, do you find it interesting to be pestering an old man? The old lady glanced at Huo Yao, afraid of her misunderstanding, and hurriedly said, Zyoman, how can you say such things? Hizayoman's expression turned, 
his face gloomy, Mom, don't talk. Instead, he Xiaoman paced up to Huo Yao and looked at her condescendingly, let's say, how much do you want, 100,000, or 200,000? 300,000 is enough for your family to live for a few years. Right. Huo Ya raised her eyebrows, and the corners of her lips evoked a hint of playfulness. Although people leaned back in a chair lazily, they were not at all deterred by Hizayoman's aggressiveness. She brushed the hair from her cheeks to her ears. Later, this slowly stood up. It's only 300,000? I thought you were going to give me 30 million for such a long time. It seems that you don't really care if an old man is deceived. Huo Yao's voice was light and fluttering, and it was not difficult to hear disappointment in his tone. Hizayoman heard the words and only felt that this adopted daughter was a whimsical one, and instantly laughed angrily, Ha ha, thirty million? You can really think about it. Huo Yao looked at her with a look in his eyes that seemed to be mentally retarded, I don't even have thirty million. I am embarrassed to say those words just now, embarrassing. His Ioman was so stunned by Huo Yao's words that he almost didn't spit out a mouthful of blood. Was this hillbilly who had never seen the world suddenly been possessed by a lever? Huo Yao didn't bother to pay attention to His Ioman anymore, and set his eyes on the old lady, and said in a very regretful voice, It seems that I can't spend the weekend with you today. The old lady heard the words and knew that she was going to leave. She wanted to tell her to stay, but with the attitude of her daughter just now, where did she have the face to keep her granddaughter? That's it. The old lady sighed and forced a smile, it's okay, don't worry about what your aunt said just now. Huo Yao nodded, lightly um at random, and walked towards the door. As soon as Huo Yao left, he Xiaoman said angrily, Mom, you are not allowed to let her in in the future. Look at her arrogant attitude just now, where would I be considered an elder? Hearing her daughter's rant, the old lady looked tired, then stood up without a word, went into the kitchen, and turned off the small fire that was still simmering in the kitchen. Staring at the cut vegetables on the stove, the old lady touched the corner of her eye with her hand for a while, turned and walked out of the kitchen, leaving Hizayoman and Elusia alone in the hall, and went back to the room. The door was slammed shut. His Ioman was shocked by the sound of the door slamming, and her face was very ugly in response, what does the old lady mean? What's your temper? Elusia glanced at the closed bedroom door, and said softly, maybe grandma likes Huo Yao too much. His Ioman's mood became even worse when he heard this, it is extremely ignorant to treat fish eyes as pearls. After Huo Yao got out of the old lady's apartment, he took a taxi directly on the side of the road and returned to Huo's house. When I got home, there were several pairs of shiny men's leather shoes at the gate, and there was a strange color between Huo Yao's eyebrows and eyes. Is there a guest at home? After thinking for a few seconds, she put the key that she had just taken out back in her bag, turned and walked to the elevator entrance, the elevator still stopped on this floor, pressed the button, the door opened, and walked in. After going downstairs, Huo Yao sat down on the public chair downstairs. Her appearance was extremely high, so as long as someone passed by, even children couldn't help but look at her more. Huo Yao wore a hoodie today and was always watched by onlookers. She simply buckled her hat on her head, then took out her phone and lowered her head to play. Soon, no one stared at her again. Huo Yao boringly played a few games of a competitive game that she downloaded some time ago. It felt that it was not challenging. She closed the game again. At this time, she seemed to remember something, so she clicked on WeChat again. She didn't have many friends in WeChat, flipped through her fingertips, dragged the nickname that was annoying before from the blacklist, and then she sent a message to the other party. Pill number Sending failed because the other party refused to receive your message. Huo Yao closed WeChat, raised his eyes, and saw a few burly men in all black suits walking out of the lobby. The man walking in the front was carrying a silver password box. The whole group of people looked like big brothers who had just collected their bills. They were big in battle, 
full of momentum, and had a fierce and evil spirit that no strangers would get near. The residents of the passing community were scared to detour when they saw them. Huo Yao squinted his eyes, but he inadvertently glanced over the shiny shoes on the feet of a few people, and his expression suddenly stopped. These people didn't see Huo Yao, and walked towards the garage right after they left the lobby. The way they are familiar with the road shows that they are familiar with this place, and they should come often. Huo Yao frowned. After the figures of several people disappeared from the field of vision, he slowly stood up. After a little thought, he walked into the lobby, pressed the elevator, and went upstairs. Going out of the elevator, the row of shiny black leather shoes at the door of the house was gone. Huo Yao narrowed his eyes, then took out the key and opened the door. As soon as Huo Yao entered the living room, Song Ning, who was packing the cartons, raised her head. When she saw her, she was shocked, and the ledger in her hand fell to the ground. Yao, why did you come back so soon? Didn't you mean to visit Mrs. Yang's house? Song Ning looked surprised, and then she hurriedly stooped to pick up the account book and put it in the cardboard box. Huo Jinyan, who was holding a calculator next to him and wearing glasses, also put down the calculator. After checking the time on his wrist, he wondered, Daughter, you haven't been out for a few hours. Do you have anything else you forgot to take? Up. Huo Ye Oruo casually glanced at the cardboard box in front of Song Ning, and replied casually, The old lady has a visitor at home, and I will be back. Song Ning heard this, so it's like this. After a pause, without thinking about it, he said, Then you haven't eaten yet? Your dad and I thought you won't be back at noon so we haven't prepared lunch yet. You will wait a while, mother will clean it up and do it. Rice. Song Ning said, throwing a few account books on the coffee table into the box in twos or twos, and finally even the calculator of her husband. Lao Huo, you move things back to your room, I'll go get the food. She ordered. Good. Dad Huo took off his glasses and went upstairs with the cardboard box. Huo Yao looked at his back thoughtfully, and then followed Song Ning into the kitchen. While helping pick vegetables, Huo Yao asked casually, Have any guests been to the house today? Song Ning shook his head, No, why do you suddenly ask like this? Could it be that he encountered finance? When I just walked in, there were a few more pairs of clean slippers in the shoe cabinet. Huo Yao lowered his eyes and couldn't hear anything unusual. When Song Ning heard this, he paused slightly, and then smiled, Mom cleaned the shoe cabinet in the morning and was interrupted by your dad. Maybe he forgot to put the shoes in. Huo Yao said oh, and after a few seconds, she seemed to think of something, and then casually said, By the way, I just met a group of people in black suits when I was waiting for the elevator downstairs. Song Ning's hand paused again, and when he was about to say something, he listened to her daughter's words and passed it over again. Those people look fierce and evil, a bit like the kind of people in the society who specially come to collect accounts. Mom, our family does not owe accounts. Huo Yao looked at Song Ning with a serious expression. Song Ning was so inexplicably vacant by this look, she couldn't help but shook her head, No, our family has no debt. However, after a few seconds, she tentatively asked, those people you said look real. Is it scary? Well, it's not like a serious person. Huo Yao told the truth. When Song Ning heard that, the sentence that she wanted to say in her throat, they are the company's financial affairs, not for reminders, instantly suppressed her. Sure enough, Lao Huo was right. The image of the group of people in the company was too scary. Even if she told her daughter that the person she had just met was the company's finances, she would be frightened. Maybe she would still wonder if her parents were doing something. Illegal industry. No, I must not let my daughter know the truth. Song Ning grabbed her mind, and then she didn't change her face and said, It may be that someone in our building borrowed usury. Next time you meet this kind of person, you must remember to avoid it. 
Huo Yao glanced sideways at Song Ning, her eyes narrowed, her slender eyelashes cast a shallow shadow, she didn't ask any more, and put the last vegetable she picked into the basket. After eating, Huo Yao returned to the room, only Song Ning and Huo Jinyan were left in the hall. Sitting at the dining table, Song Ning did not rush to put the dishes into the kitchen, but told her husband the conversations he had with his daughter just now in the kitchen. I suspect that my daughter now thinks that our family owes a lot of money. Song Ning knocked his elbows on the table with a look of deep thought. Although the daughter did not continue to ask, the woman's sixth sense told her that her daughter must have misunderstood something. Huo Jinyan glanced at her, it shouldn't be the case, she just happened to run into finance downstairs. Song Ning shook her head, no, the first thing she said was to ask if our house is a visitor today. I think you think too much, she may just care about it casually, not to mention that she doesn't look like that kind of very sensitive person. Huo Jinyan said lightly. I hope. Song Ning sighed and paused, her eyebrows brightened, and then she said, or we can give her another card. So that we won't misunderstand our debts. Hearing this, Huo Jinyan felt that this idea was very feasible, but, the black card I gave her last time, she seems to have never used it once. Song Ning raised her eyebrows, it's not easy, I just take the cash and give it to her. Cash is not good. When I took her to school on the first day of school, I was going to take cash to her on the road. She said that young people now use mobile phones to pay, and cash is not convenient. Huo Jinyan shook his head quickly and rejected her plan. Um, the WeChat transfer? Yes. Why did I forget WeChat? Song Ning patted her head, got up hurriedly, and went to the living room to get her mobile phone. WeChat was added a long time ago, Song Ning quickly found her daughter from the address book, and while clicking on the transfer panel below, she said, Lao Huo, you said I should transfer how much money is appropriate. What? 500,000? 1 million. Huo Jinyan twitched the corners of his lips and said, Loki, you will scare your daughter like this. After all, their family has always adhered to the principle of being low-key and not extravagant. Even the adopted daughter doesn't know the actual situation of their family, just thinking that they are just an ordinary family. Of course, if you are careful enough, you will find that everything in the house is unusual. When Song Ning heard her husband say this, she couldn't help but roll her eyes at him, why didn't you think about keeping a low profile when you gave it to her the other day? Huo Jinyan coughed dryly, pretending not to hear his wife's questioning. Song Ning thought for a while, and then asked, Otherwise, I will transfer 100,000 yuan. Is this low-key enough? Huo Jinyan, all right. So Song Ning quickly entered the transfer amount of 100,000 in the payment box, and as soon as he clicked to confirm, a limit message popped up. Hurt, I can't transfer so much at once. Song Ning's face turned black. What breaks the restriction? Doesn't this delay her major event of dispelling her daughter's misunderstanding? Huo Jinyan raised his eyebrows, then you turn 10,000 yuan a day, so that your daughter can receive pocket money every day, wouldn't it make her happy? Yeah, you have a good idea. The key point can also narrow the relationship between me and my daughter. Song Ning nodded and confirmed the transfer. Huo Jinyan heard the phrase bringing closer between me and my daughter from his wife. After a few seconds, he also took out his mobile phone silently. Huo Yao, who returned to the room, just took out the suitcase he had brought back from the county seat from the closet when he heard the sound of the mobile phone. She ignored it just opened the suitcase without any haste and found a long box inside. It contained incense, probably the length of fingers, not too many, but it was enough for a month or two. Huo Yao took a look at the box and placed it on the desk next to it. At this time, the phone's WeChat rang again. After putting the suitcase back in place, Huo Yao picked up the phone and looked at the two transfer information notifications that popped up on the screen, and was stunned. Immediately, she unlocked and clicked on WeChat. 
the two transfer messages came from the parents downstairs and the parents respectively. The transfer amount was not small, but they were all the same, each of which was 10,000 yuan. Huo Yao pressed her eyebrows. She didn't quite understand the couple's actions at this time. After holding the mobile phone for a while, she didn't click to accept. Instead, she sent a question mark to the two. Soon, Song Ning, who was nicknamed Miss Song, replied. Huo Yao looked at her mother's reply and was silent for a few seconds. She replied, I still have money to use. Miss Song, oh, mom gives it to you, so you can accept it, girls should have more pocket money. Miss Song, if you don't accept your daughter, then I will have to use the money to buy clothes for you. Huo Ya raised his head and glanced at the clothes that hadn't been worn in the closet, his lips twitched, and he decisively accepted. At the same time, the pro dad's message came. Fearless is me, daughter, last time you said that cash is inconvenient, my dad went to the bank to open an online banking, just bound to WeChat, you are about to receive it. Huo Yao's expression is very complicated. If you make this statement more truthful, I will believe it. Soon, she was typing on the phone screen. Pill, if I don't receive it, will you plan to give it to me in other ways? Fearless is me, hey, daughter, you are so smart. Pill, seeing B.A. As a result, Huo Ya received two huge sums of money inexplicably, and even in the following days, she would be forced to receive the so-called living expenses transfers from her parents on time. She still couldn't refuse it. Kind. Huo Yao ended the WeChat conversation with Ms. Song and Huo Yuanjia, and turned to look at the incense wooden box on the desk. After thinking for a few seconds, she pulled out a mobile phone number from the address book and dialed it. Soon, the phone was connected, and a slightly cold and low male voice came over. Kid, why did you suddenly remember to call me? Huo Yao's lips twitched when he heard the children's three words, but because he was looking for something, he didn't correct the other person's title, Are you free? Do me a favor. Min Yu on the other end of the phone raised his hand and interrupted the subordinate who was reporting to him, leaning back on the chair, looking very lazy, Let's talk, why are you busy? Send me something to my grandmother. Huo Yao also said directly without being polite. Min Yu thought she was encountering something major, and when she heard this, she couldn't help being stunned. Huo Yao didn't hear the other party's reply for a long time, only thinking that the other party was unwilling, if you don't have time, then forget it. With that, she was about to hang up the phone. I said your patience as a kid is too bad. As Min Yu on the other end spoke, he seemed to let out a rather helpless sigh, like a breeze blowing in his ears. Huo Yao's eyes narrowed, and the fingertips that were about to fall on the hang-up button moved away, and patiently asked again, So are you helping? The corners of Min Yu's lips raised, Are you in a hurry? It's not particularly urgent, but it would be better if you have time today. Huo Yao thought for a while and replied. Okay, send me your address, I will let someone pick it up now. Well, wait for your positioning to be issued, thank you. When Huo Yao finished speaking, he hung up the phone, then clicked on WeChat again and found out the WeChat of the neighbor's brother that he had added a few days ago. Without hesitation, he directly sent the location of the neighborhood he lived in. Asterisk. Here. Min Yu received Huo Yao's WeChat location and replied OK to her, then raised her head and looked at a group of subordinates standing not far away, with shocked eyes in all of them. Min Yu squinted his eyes, and the gentle expression on the phone just stopped instantly, I'm here for today, let's go away. The voice was cold. A few subordinates and a spirit, hurriedly retracted their sights tremblingly, did not dare to say anything, and chose to walk out numbly. Zhou Yun was the last one, so he was stopped. Zhou Yun, go get something. When Zhou Yun heard this, he paused, turned around and looked at his master. After a few seconds of silence, he asked softly, is it for Huo Yao to get something? 
Men Yu gently turned the phone in his hand, faintly humming. Zhou Yun's expression was quite complicated. Even if he was curious about N, he didn't dare to ask more. He just nodded to show that he knew, then he turned and walked outside. Just before he was about to step out, Men Yu, who was lazily leaning on a chair, stood up, forget it, I'll go there in person. Zhou Yun. Are you still the master I know? Twenty minutes later, the car stopped downstairs in the community where Huo Yao lived. Men Yu sent a WeChat message to Huo Yao, and after a while, he saw a slender girl walking out of the old big iron gate. The car window slowly lowered, Men Yu tilted his head slightly and looked at the girl approaching outside the car window. There was a slight doubt on his cold face, this weekend, why don't you go and give your grandma something personally? Huo Yao handed him the wooden box in his hand. There was no other emotion on his pretty face, and he only said, it's not convenient for me. Men Yu glanced at the wooden box, then looked at Huo Yao again, the corners of his lips raised, is your foster mother not letting you go? Huo Yao glanced at him with a complicated expression, and after a while, she said jokingly, those who don't know thought you installed surveillance on me. Men Yu chuckled and shook his head, the problem with your adoptive mother's family is so simple, it's not hard to guess. Huo Yao clasped a fist, with an ancient chivalrous demeanor, then I will ask you for my things, and I will invite you to dinner another day. Men Yu raised his eyebrows, but asked, just trust me. Huo Yao had already turned around and was about to leave. Hearing his question, he couldn't help but turn to his side. The breeze blew, and the fine hair was blowing on her cheeks. She raised her hand and hooked it behind her ear casually, and dropped her eyes carelessly. Men Yu's face looked like a smile, it's not a valuable thing either. After speaking, she turned around and left, looking quite arrogant from back. Men Yu looked at the back of the girl who was gradually walking away. It was quite a while before he shook his head with a smile, like a proud kid. Zhou Yun in the front cab, looking at the master who was obviously disgusted but not angry in the rearview mirror, asked again in her heart, is this really his master himself? It feels like being dropped. Drive. Men Yu glanced lazily at Zhou Yun in front of him, his voice was cold, completely different from just now. Zhou Yun. No, his master is still his master. While starting the car, Zhou Yun glanced at the wooden box Men Yu was holding, and asked curiously, this box looks quite old, I don't know what it contains. Men Yu looked down, and his gaze fell on the wooden box. The box should be made of sandalwood, with carved patterns on the frame. It is probably some years old. The corners have been smoothed and the color is somewhat dark, so it looks really old. Like an old object. However, a patterned logo on the edge of the box looks familiar, as if I have seen it somewhere. Men Yu thoughtfully moved his finger to Mu He's buckle, and finally did not open the box to look at it. He only put it aside and looked out of the car window. At this time, he said lightly, curiosity will hurt. Dead cat. Zhou Yun. Could it be that Huo Yao has any extraordinary ability? After about half an hour, Zhou Yun drove downstairs in the community where the old lady Yang Kaihua lived. Brother Yu, I'll bring things up. Zhou Yun put out the car and said while unfastening the seat belt. Men Yu glanced at the wooden box, no, I'll go there by myself, you will wait for me in the car. When Zhou Yun heard the words, his eyes inevitably crossed his surprise, and he was silent, he just said, then you be careful. Men Yu raised his eyes and glanced at him, stunned. After speaking, he got out of the car with the wooden box. Zhou Yun who was left touched the tip of his nose. Isn't this his habitual vigilance? He took the elevator upstairs, and soon, Men Yu rang the doorbell of the old lady's house. About a minute or two later, the inner door opened. When the old lady could see the people standing outside, she hurriedly opened the security door outside, Xiao Min is here. Men Yu smiled politely towards the old lady, Hello, mother-in-law. Come in quickly. 
the old lady found a pair of clean slippers for him in the shoe cabinet. Why do you have time to come over today? Is there no class? Menu put on his shoes, walked behind the old lady, and replied in a very gentle voice, I will rest in the afternoon, just drop by to see you. Entering the living room, Menu raised his eyes and looked around, then passed the wooden box in his hand, Mother-in-law, this is what Huo Yao asked me to bring you in the afternoon. The old lady was holding a glass of water in her hand and was about to give it to Menu. When she heard what he said, her hand shook, and the glass slipped from her hand and clanged to the ground. Glass and water spilled all over the floor. Seeing this, Menu hurriedly put the wooden box on the side coffee table, Mother-in-law, don't move. As he said, he stretched out his hand to support the old lady to the other side of the sofa, about to clean up the glass dross on the ground, but did not think that the old lady grabbed his arm with his back hand. The old lady's face was a little pale. She looked at Menu, her lips were shaking, and she shivered for a long time before she said a complete sentence, isn't she reluctant to come to me again? Menu looked at the old lady who was obviously not right, and was startled. Seeing that Menu was silent, the old lady smiled bitterly, and said to herself, I bought a lot of things early this morning and came to see me, but I didn't expect to run into her adoptive mother. My daughter is too mean. I have not waited to see him. My daughter said a lot of ugly things, so the kid didn't show up here for an hour, so my daughter got angry and left. She must be angry, so she didn't come here in person. The old lady's eyes were red, and she grabbed Menu's arm and never let go. As if let go, the only person in the family who could listen would also leave. Menu looked at the old lady who was in self-blame, and probably understood the ins and outs of the matter, no wonder the kid would let him help deliver things. However, the child's youthful and mature appearance, as if ordinary people can get angry. Therefore, Menu waited for the old lady to calm down, and then slowly said, Don't think too much, Huo Yao might just be afraid to come over and meet your daughter again, so he asked me to bring you something. The old lady was startled, Really, really? Menu nodded, his temperament was already cold, and his deep eyes had an inexplicable convincing power. The old lady was still very worried and uncomfortable, but the strangeness was smoothed a lot. Her eyes fell on the wooden box that Menu put on the coffee table. Then she stood up again, walked over, picked up the wooden box, ignoring that Menu was still beside her, gently pressed the buckle on one side, looked at the incense inside, her face subconsciously rose to warmth a warm smile. Her granddaughter didn't want her, she still cared about her body. Seeing that she was not sleeping well, even if she was wronged here today, she asked someone to bring the soothing fragrance. The old lady wiped the corner of her eye, closed the box again, turned her head to look at Menu, her eyes were a little embarrassed, I was a little gaff just now, I made you laugh. Menu's eyes still stopped on the wooden box in the old lady's hand, and he paused for a second before he retracted his gaze, it's okay, understandable. Yao Yao is really a good boy. Seeing that I don't sleep well, he bought me a soothing fragrance. Well, my daughter doesn't have that blessing to be her mother. The old lady let out a long sigh, turned around and staggered to the locker on the side, slowly opened the drawer, and put the wooden box in. Menu calmly listened to the old lady's nagging, her eyes deep, she didn't know what she was thinking. After half an hour, Menu left Yang Kaihua's home. Seeing that his face looked a bit condensed after he got in the car, Zhou Yun couldn't help but asked in confusion, what happened? Menu constricted, raised his head casually and glanced at him, his voice faint, nothing. Seeing this, Zhou Yun didn't ask any more. Menu's eyes flashed, his fingers on his knees did not click, as if thinking of something, he took out his phone and sent a message to Huo Yao that something had been delivered. Perhaps it was because the other party did not look at the phone. It took ten minutes or so before that he received a reply with the word thank you. It was very concise, and there was not a word of unnecessary chatter. The corners of Menu's lips hooked, 
as if he was used to the other party's indifference, his slender fingers tapped slowly on the phone screen, where did you buy the soothing fragrance for your grandma? Great. Huo Yao has been reading, but after replying to Min Yu's message, she didn't read it anymore. At this moment, looking at the message sent by the other party, she was silent for a moment, and then replied, just bought it online, I can send you the store link if you want. After thinking about it, Huo Yao opened a certain treasure again, turned out a store in the favorites, then copied the address link, the page jumped back to WeChat, and she pasted the address link and sent it. Min Yu, who received the reply, checked the online store sent by Huo Yao. The shop is a three-star crown, and there are many kinds of products. It is not specialized in selling incense. However, the outer packaging box of the sandalwood and agarwood sold inside looks a bit similar to the old lady's wooden box. The price is quite cheap. More than 200. Although I didn't see the same style, it is obvious that the box of soothing incense from the old lady probably came from this shop. If it is really the secret smoked incense in the rumor, how could it appear in this kind of online store, let alone the price? Menu turned off the software, and the corners of his lips flicked a touch of melancholy. His deep eyes were dim, and he couldn't tell whether it was disappointment or something else. In a blink of an eye, Huo Yao has entered the first middle school for more than half a month. She has a rather lax temperament. She doesn't communicate much with her classmates or participates in any activities on weekdays. Her quiet appearance is synonymous with being well-behaved in the eyes of the teacher, but she has become a typical high-cold vase in the eyes of the students. Mainly, her academic performance is not clear to everyone, but she definitely has no choice. The vase is well-deserved. However, due to her learning problems, there has been a rumor that the high-cold vase came in through the back door recently appeared in the class. As an inexperienced person who only wanted to learn, Huo Yao naturally didn't pay attention to this. It was her deskmate who was shadowy. After hearing the rumors, she was so angry that she almost didn't find anyone to reason. She turned to look at Huo Yao, who was reading during get out of class and after class. She really admired her composure. I think they set up the wrong person for you. It shouldn't be a high cold vase. Meng Ying dragged his chin with both hands, looking at Huo Yao with a serious face. Huo Yao closed the textbook in his hand and laid his gaze on Meng Ying's face lazily, raising his eyebrows gently, hey. Meng Ying was teased by her inadvertent expression, swallowed, and then angrily replied, the book is for a nerd. Huo Yao flicked the corner of the book and said meaningfully, there is only one way to the direct IQ, and that is learning. Meng Ying broke his fingers and sighed, I always feel that you are suggesting that I am stupid, but there is no evidence. Huo Yao just smiled and did not answer the call. The phone she put on the table suddenly shook, the screen turned on, and two successive notifications showing transfer information popped up. With just a glance, Huo Yao pressed his eyebrows with a headache. It's here again, it's been almost half a month. The couple in the family transfers money to her at this time every day, it's almost like having money to spend. And she was watching her shadow with her chin on her side, and she inadvertently swept her eyes on the screen of her mobile phone, staring at the two naked and huge money transfer messages, she couldn't help chanting, today is also a flash it's a day to blind my dog's eyes. Huo Yao. That's right, Meng Ying found out that her deskmate received huge sums of money transfers every day. It had been several days, and then she went from being surprised at first to being numb now. Huo Yao Juju, you honestly explain, do you have mines in your house? The shadowed lemons began to sour again. Huo Yao raised his eyebrows and glanced at her, then picked up the phone without changing his face unlocked it in front of Meng Ying, clicked on WeChat, and received Ms. Song and Huo Yuanjia's 10,000 yuan in transfers, not to mention their actions. Arrogant. Meng Ying. Ah, she wants to kill this table mate, not only to transfer all the money on her WeChat, but also to occupy her giant parents alone. Oh, people are really maddening than people. 
After a while, the shadow made a sad sigh, why don't I have such a pair of rich parents with daughters? Huo Yao tilted his head and casually drew the bangs on his forehead with his fingers. His black and white eyes were fascinating, it doesn't matter if you don't have local tyrant parents, but you still have a chance to be a tyrant mother who spoils your daughter. Puff. Meng Ying gave a thumbs up at the other person. Who said that her deskmate was just a high cold vase? Listening to her, she has a clear thinking and a sharp speech. Thinking of the rumors in the past two days, Meng Ying moved his fart and moved a little closer to Huo Yao. The expression on his face was not as joking as it was before. By the way, there are some rumors about you recently. Have you heard of it? Huo Ya raised his eyebrows, what rumors? Meng Ying thought for two seconds, then said, Someone is telling you that your academic performance is not good, and you can't compare it to ordinary classmates, saying that you came in through the back door. The number one middle school is not like the Desheng Noble School next door. Basically, the students who can enter are all elite students from all regions. The school's rules and regulations are very strict. The principal is a well-known selfless and extremely tough person. The situation like going through the back door basically does not appear in one. However, the rumor that Huo Yao came in through the back door has now become an exception to breaking the rules. In fact, the rumors are not terrible, but the challenge is the reputation of the school, this issue is very serious. Judging from the fact that Meng Ying saw Huo Yao's parents transfer money to her every day, it is not difficult to guess her family's conditions, and going through the back door, it seems that it is not impossible. Of course, Meng Ying is not willing to believe the rumors of going through the back door, after all, the learning attitude of his deskmate is obvious to all. Huo Yao looked at the complicated shadow, curled his lips, and asked, Do you believe it? I, of course I don't believe it. Meng Ying shook his head, You read a book every day besides reading, a proper nerd, anyone can go through the back door, but you can't be the only one. When Huo Yao heard her comment, he only smiled and shook his head. The children are really innocent. Seeing that she didn't care at all and was unaffected, Meng Ying said slightly depressed, How do I feel that you are not panicked at all? Normal people will get angry when they hear that they are criticized? Huo Yao looked at her, and after a few seconds of pondering, he lazily replied, The rumors stop at the wise man. The corners of Meng Ying's lips twitched, and she said again in annoyance, Although it is correct to say that, if the rumors become more and more serious, I am afraid it will be very troublesome. If you let those silly pens go to the principal, it will be even worse. That's great. After a pause, she suddenly remembered something, her eyes lit up, and she looked at Huo Yao, I have a quick solution to this rumor. Huo Yao raised his eyebrows, hey. Last week, the official website of the school forum released a national knowledge contest. It seems that the scale of the competition is quite large from the municipal preliminaries to the provincial level to the whole country, and the final three players will represent the country to participate. International Competition As Meng Ying said, she took out her mobile phone, and quickly logged into the school forum and turned over the post, here, this is it. Online registration is due for two days. I think you can sign up for this. Because it is a national event, there are many masters, so we don't expect to win the championship, but if you can survive the municipal preliminaries, it will be enough to prove you. Strength Huo Yao's gaze fell on the mobile phone that Meng Ying handed over. He only glanced at it, then lay back on the desktop lazily, boring, not interested. The corners of Meng Ying's lips twitched, and she pushed her arm again, Giant sister, this is the best way to wash white. It's a shame if you miss it. Huo Yao yawned and closed his eyes, then miss it. She doesn't need to wash white. Seeing a giant sister who was lazy and caring about nothing at the same table, Meng Ying had to sigh silently. During the second class in the afternoon, Huo Yao was called to the office alone. Chen Yu looked at the well-behaved Huo Yao in front of him, her face slowing down subconsciously, 
are you interested in the national knowledge contest? Huo Yao looked at her for a moment, and looked at her as if unknown. Originally, you just transferred to another school. I don't recommend you to participate in this kind of competition. But since you have already signed up, I can't persuade you any more. I just hope you will spend more time to review your homework. Now I have entered the third year of high school, which is an important year of life turning point. Chen Yu said earnestly. Huo Yao opened her mouth. She wanted to say that she hadn't signed up for the competition, but suddenly remembered that Meng Ying had tried to persuade her to sign up in the morning. After a few seconds of silence, she whispered um. But soon, she asked softly, Mr. Chen, how much is the prize money for the first place in this competition? Chen Yu. As if hearing hallucinations appeared in the ears. Seeing Chen Yu's strange expression, Huo Yao immediately understood. His face that had been a little vigorous at first fainted, and even his voice became a little listless, I'm going back to the classroom first. Chen Yu. Chen Yu, who came back to his senses, just before Huo Yao was about to step out of the office door, he said to the people, although there is no bonus, he can get the recommended place at the National Youth University. If he wins on the international competition stage, his future will be even more immeasurable. Kingda University, the top three universities in the country, is a good school that many people want to get admitted to, not to mention that the annual enrollment quota is also limited. If they can get a recommended quota, it is equivalent to having a ticket for exemption. It's definitely more than hundreds of thousands of millions of bonuses. After Huo Yao heard these words from the head teacher, she didn't feel much excitement. Instead, her shoulders slumped even more. She replied with a muffled I know without looking back, and stepped out the door. Looking at Huo Yao's fading back, Chen Yu twisted her eyebrows subconsciously. How did she feel that her new student was not signing up for the quota, but for the bonus? It's just that as soon as the idea came up, she laughed at herself. Could it be that she was crazy? and if she would offer a quota with this little girl who came in through the back door, shouldn't the point be to persuade the other party to do what she could? After the registration deadline for the knowledge contest, Chen Yu sorted out the registration form of the experimental class and handed it to the vice principal. After the vice principal saw it, he asked in confusion, Hey, just such a few people in your class. There were 40 students in the experimental class, but only three signed up. Chen Yu chuckled and explained, maybe the children don't want to spend their time on the game, so think about reviewing it. The vice principal looked at the names on the registration form again, and when he saw Huo Yao's name, he was still stunned, this Huo Yao is the transfer student, right? Why is she also signing up for this? No need to review and follow the previous one. Is your progress in learning? Chen Yu replied awkwardly upon hearing this, she might want to challenge too. The vice principal probably knew that Huo Yao was recruited by the principal. He was not clear about the specific academic performance. However, two days ago, Wei Ming had slightly mentioned this student and said that he was very arrogant, so he frowned. Said, nothing. The Education Association attaches great importance to this knowledge contest. If this transfer student can excel and pass the municipal preliminaries, it will be fine. If not, let other schools know that our number one middle school arranges a transfer student to pool the number of students, then we number one middle school. Still shameless. Chen Yu saw the vice principal's face serious, although he felt that he was right, but. Aren't you free to sign up for this competition? then there is no reason not to let a transfer student participate? The vice principal choked, in short, the transfer student's name must be crossed out. Chen Yu was silent for a few seconds after hearing this, then said, this, isn't it? The vice principal's tone was already a little impatient, there is nothing wrong with it. Chen Yu lowered her eyes. She knew that Huo Yao had come in through the back door. At this time, Looking at the attitude of the vice principal, we can be sure that he was not the one who came in, so the only possibility is, the principal? 
If Huo Yao was disqualified for no reason after learning that he had signed up, would he go to the principal to reason? Then she, the head teacher, would be the first to be scolded by the principal? Thinking about this, Chen Yu hurriedly said, Why, or ask the principal before making a decision? When the vice principal heard this, he threw his sleeves angrily on the table and threw the registration form on the table. Am I the vice principal? I can't even do this little thing. On the one hand, we have to consider the principal, on the other hand, we must not offend the vice principal. It is really difficult to be an individual. Chen Yu felt sad, and she had to smile, vice principal, I didn't mean that, but I just feel that Huo Yao's qualification for the competition is cancelled for no reason. It's a bit unreasonable. The vice principal said softly, raising his hand to interrupt Chen Yu, OK, you don't need to go to the principal anymore, I won't cross out the name, so be it. Chen Yu opened her mouth, Vice Principal. If you have nothing to do, go out, I have something to deal with. The Vice Principal opened his face coldly, picked up the registration form that had just fallen on the desk, turned around, walked to the desk, opened the drawer, and threw it in. When Chen Yu saw this, it was okay to say more, and left in a slanderous manner. The vice principal sat down on the office chair, his face was awful, half-sounding, as if he had figured it out again, the corners of his cold lips curled up and he let out a sneer. He wanted to see how the transfer student from this small remote county was so embarrassed by that time. Huo Yao didn't know that because of the competition, the vice principal was dragged into the blacklist of good students, and there were rumors that she went through the back door. For a while, let alone the classmates, even the rocket class and ordinary students. Those classmates who eat melons look at her with strange eyes. It is a shame and shame for the school to go through the back door with poor academic performance. Therefore, when the school bulletin board posted a list of students participating in the National Knowledge Contest, when Huo Yao's name appeared in it, it became one of the most funny jokes at the beginning of the semester. Gosh, where does this transfer student's face dare to sign up for the National Knowledge Contest? Isn't it embarrassing? Could it be that she thought that the National Knowledge Contest could also go through the back door casually? I bet a penny that she can't even pass the pre-test. My mother, I feel that our number one high school will be embarrassed across provinces and cities this time and lose face to the whole country. Oh, it's not fragrant to be a vase honestly. Meng Ying also saw Huo Yao's name on the bulletin board, and she was stunned. Sister Giant, didn't you say that you are not interested in the National Knowledge Contest? I asked you to sign up that day and you refused me. Meng Ying puffed up a pair of cheeks, his originally round face looked rounder, like a little hamster. Since knowing that Huo Yao received huge transfers every day, she has been calling the giant sister Huo Yao, which has become a habit. Huo Yao looked at her strangely, didn't you register for me? Meng Ying blinked blindly, I don't have one. Although I hope you will participate in the competition, I really didn't help you sign up. Huo Yao twisted his eyebrows and said, who is the one who reported me? If she knew that Meng Ying had not reported her name, when Chen Yu would ask her to go to the office, she would have refused directly. Meng Ying scratched her hair and declared again with an innocent look, Sister Giant, I really didn't sign up for you, you have to believe me. Huo Yao glanced at her faintly, I know. As soon as Meng Jing heard it, she stuck out her tongue for fear of misunderstanding. After all, participating in the National Knowledge Contest was not a joke. Tilting his head and thinking about Xiao Su, Meng Jing used his detective qualities and analyzed, could someone want to see you embarrassed? so he deliberately tried to fix you like this. Huo Yao's eyes drooped slightly and did not speak. The National Knowledge Contest is a contest that is attended by figures of the gods of study. If the other party signs up for this contest after knowing that your academic performance is not good, you will definitely lose face and even lose your footing at that time. Sister Giant, think about it, have you offended anyone lately? Meng Ying folded her arms and hit the key point. Huo Yao's expression was calm, 
and his voice was quite serious, I'm jealous of my beautiful people, don't you? The corners of Meng Ying's lips twitched fiercely, please be serious, I can't help you analyze the problem rationally like you. Huo Yao let out a light oh, then laid back on the table lazily and closed his eyes. Meng Ying. My big sister in society, this way of getting serious is really different. With a sigh, Meng Ying said helplessly, would you like to go to the demon to explain the situation? The devil is the private name given to the head teacher Chen Yu by the students in the class. Huo Yao didn't move his eyelids, no need. Meng Ying was taken aback, and then asked, so, what do you mean by planning to participate in this competition now? Yet. Huo Yao replied lightly, as if he had stopped thinking about who had reported her name. Meng Ying blinked. Although she didn't believe that the giant sister entered the first middle school through the back door, she didn't think her academic performance was as good as top-notch. The list of students participating in this competition is basically the top ten university tyrants in each grade. The name of the giant sister appears on it. It can be said that it is a mudslide that has strayed into it. No matter how good her grades are, she will be the halo of these schoolmasters is crushed. Unless she can get a provincial ranking back. Can you do it, Sister Giant, this competition is not a joke, and do you know how many people are waiting to see you joke? Meng Ying tried to persuade people to leave. After all, quitting at this time is better than being brushed off and embarrassed during the first preliminary exam. Su Ye was a little bit big because of the shadow of the shadow, Huo Yao opened his eyes again, and then put his hands on the edge of the desk propped up the upper body, and slowly bullied her with a little aggressiveness, his deep eyes flashing with fragments. Dimming, his voice was a little rusty, don't ask people if it's okay. Meng Ying looked at the giant sister close at hand, that delicate face was inexplicably lazy at this time, and his voice was more neutral and dull than usual, which was simply too sultry. Damn, she felt that her heart was about to jump out of her chest out of control. So, under Huo Yao's gaze, Meng Ying raised her hand to cover her face in a very embarrassing manner, and then sat back in her seat, Hey, big sister, don't use this kind of trick next time. Look at me, I am afraid of bending. If she was bent, she would be beaten to death by her parents. Huo Yao snorted softly, and finally no more thoughts in her ears, she simply lay down on the table lazily, and finally covered her head with a chemistry textbook. Menjiing beside. Giant sister, you will have no friends like this. The other side. Xia Xia, do you know how self-defeating Huo Yao is? Chong Ying Ying looked at Liu Xia who was quietly writing a question with a gossip on her face. When Liu Xia heard the words, the pen in his hand paused, and at last he simply put it down and raised his eyes, looking at Chong Ying Ying for unknown reasons, hey. She actually signed up to participate in the National Knowledge Contest. Chong Ying Ying's voice could not hide her excitement and irony. I don't know where she came from. Many people are laughing at her now. El Yusha Zhuangzi raised her eyebrows, tilted her head, and said in a very calm voice, this competition was originally free to sign up. What's the ridiculous thing? Hurt, you don't know. Now it is rumored that she was the one who entered through the back door and dare to sign up for the competition with the kind of crane performance. Can you say that it makes people feel funny? Chong Ying Ying scoffed. After hearing this, El Yuxia was silent for a few seconds, then looked up at Chong Ying Ying again, and asked tentatively, Ying Ying, Huo Yao went through the back door to get into the middle, didn't you tell it? Chong Ying Ying's eyes flickered lightly slightly faint, but her tone was firm, no, I can't say it. Elusia's lips twitched, and she smiled softly, it's fine if I didn't say it. Huo Yao is my sister even if she doesn't study well, I don't want others to talk about her or laugh at her. When Chong Ying Ying heard it, a look of it really is so crossed her eyes, and then she said again, Xia Xia, you have also signed up for this competition. Then you have to take the exam and try to get a provincial ranking back. Elusia brushed the long hair hanging down her cheeks, 
her eyelashes drooping slightly, and the delicate profile gave people a look of tranquility in the years. She pursed her lips and smiled, I will try my best. Depending on your grades, there is absolutely no problem. Chong Ying Ying took the opportunity to boast. El Yuxia's expression was faint, this time the participants are all masters from all over the country. Don't panic, number one middle school was originally the top-ranked key middle school in the country. If you talk about learning God, you are definitely one of the best. Chong Ying Ying blinked and paused for two seconds. She continued with a grin again, you see you are now a popular flower of star training camp again. If you get another provincial or national ranking this time, I don't know how many fans will it attract. El Yusya had a good grade and was studying in the first middle school. She was taken out by a brokerage company and fired up for a high school. It can be said that half of her fans are students. Imagine a person who has a good heart, can sing and dance, and can be ranked in the national quiz. How many people think of the perfect goddess? Not to mention anything else, just this kind of face filled with positive youth energy can definitely become a star role model for schools. The fake daughter like Huo Yao won't work. I'm afraid I'll be embarrassed and thrown to my grandma's house this time. Chong Ying Ying snorted, as if she had foreseen the scene. When El Yuxia heard this, she just smiled and said nothing. After school in the afternoon, before Huo Yao and Meng Ying walked out of the school gate, they saw El Yuxia who was standing not far away wearing a pair of sunglasses and seemed to be waiting for someone. Looking at her, Meng Ying couldn't control the gossip factor in her heart. As she walked, she whispered to Huo Yao, Have you seen the girl wearing sunglasses at the door? Huo Yao glanced at him, Hey! She is the star school girl of our school, El Yuxia, you should have watched the star training camp variety show Giant Sister. She is the most popular. Huo Yao tilted his head, looked at Meng Ying, raised his eyebrows, Are you a fan of her? When Meng Ying heard it, she shrugged and shook her head, I am not, don't you feel that she is full of fake pretenses all over her body? It's the kind of deliberate pretense, do you know what I mean? Huo Yao gave a faint hum, but after a few seconds, she added, I never watch variety shows. Meng Ying's eyes widened, damn, Sister Ju, which big mountain ditch did you come from and never watch variety shows? Huo Yao tickled the corners of his lips and asked, can watching variety shows improve academic performance? Meng Ying choked for an instant, this soul questioning made her speechless. Also, don't discriminate against the mountain, maybe the tiger and lion come out from inside. Huo Yao said meaningfully. Meng Ying touched the tip of her nose, and somehow she didn't talk to Giant Sister on the same channel. Stepped out of the school gate. When Huo Yao passed by El Yuxia, she didn't even look at her. She was already tall, with a backpack on her shoulders. Her lazy and delicate face didn't show much expression, and her whole body was filled with something more dazzling than boy's cool flamboyant temperament. Under the sunglasses, El Yuxia's eyes darkened, and for only a second, she called out Huo Yao, Huo Yao, big brother will pick me up today, wait for us to go together. As soon as her words fell, Meng Ying, who was standing next to Huo Yao, changed his eyes with a choppy look. The star school flower is called giant sister Huo Yao, and there is another big brother in his mouth, using our collective name. Suddenly I feel that there is a big melon. Huo Yao's footsteps paused slightly, and then he turned his head to look at El Yuxia, his eyebrows hung faint, and his voice was coldly rejected, No, I'll take the bus. After speaking, she retracted her gaze, and without waiting for El Yuxia to say anything, she walked towards the bus station without rushing or slowly. Seeing this, Meng Ying with an attitude of eating melons subconsciously followed Huo Yao's footsteps, giant sister, wait for me. El Yuxia's expression was a bit stiff, but because she was wearing sunglasses, there was nothing strange on her face. She looked at Huo Yao's back, holding the small bag slightly tightened. Asterisk. Sister Giant, do you know El Yuxia? Menjiang asked with a certain face. 
Huo Yao had already reached the bus station. Before the bus came, she turned to look at the gossip shadow, and replied in a perfunctory manner, Forget it. You, are relatives. Meng Ying blinked and guessed boldly, but after a few seconds, before Huo Yao could say anything, her face suddenly collapsed. It's over, big sister, if I just complained about El Yuxia, you wouldn't tell her. Meng Ying felt her little heart tightened at this moment. After all, El Yuxia in the first middle school had a lot of stubborn fans. If anyone said anything, the slobber of the stubborn fan could drown her. Huo Yao glanced at her with a smile, don't add drama to yourself. Meng Ying's original nervousness disappeared instantly, I found that you have no humor at all. At this time, the bus that Huo Yao took on weekdays came. She took out the bus card and lined up, and said casually, You are sure to follow me like this, well, discuss the question of whether there is a humorous cell. Meng Ying immediately reacted when he heard the words, and suddenly patted his forehead that had been stunned by the gossip, I, CAO, why did I follow you on the bus? My dad is still waiting for me at the school gate. After speaking, she gave Huo Yao a bitter look, then turned and ran back. Huo Yao let out a soft sound. El Yuxia got into Huo Yangzi's car. After chatting for a few words, she seemed to think of something and said, Brother, I signed up for the national quiz. This time, the Education Association paid much attention to it. Kingda's recommended places. When Huo Yangzi heard it, he turned his head and glanced at her unexpectedly, then this game is quite interesting. You play hard and try to get a good place. El Yuxia's eyes were drooping, her fingers gently moved the fur ball decoration hanging on the small bag, and she said with a soft humble, I think Yao Yao also signed up. Huo Yangzi held the steering wheel for a moment and twisted her eyebrows, what does she sign up for with her grades? Isn't it a waste of time? Maybe I want to challenge it, it's okay, anyway, this is just an after-school activity. Broaden your horizons. El Yuxia laughed softly. Huo Yangzi shook his head speechlessly when he heard the words. It seemed that his sister was really not a worry free master. After Huo Yangzi took El Yuxia to dinner, he sent her back to Lu's house. It was early to leave the El Yu family, after thinking about it, he drove back to Huo's family. Song Ning had a mask on her face. When she opened the door and saw her elder son standing outside, she was surprised, Boss, are you coming back so late, what's the matter? Huo Yangzi walked into the room, raised her eyes and swept around, and then replied, I have just finished my work these days, I plan to stay home for a few days. After a few seconds, he asked again, where is the little girl? Song Ning looked at her elder son with a strange expression, and inexplicably warned in her voice, you will find your sister as soon as you come back. What do you want to fix? After she broke up last time, apart from calling her to discipline her daughter, this dog didn't see him coming back so actively. Huo Yangzi's lips twitched, do you have any misunderstandings about me? I just asked the little girl casually. Song Ning took off the mask on her face. It was not difficult to see the disgust on her wet face, is it a misunderstanding, you don't have any points in your heart. Huo Yangzi. Okay, I won't tell you any more, I'm going to get my face, you can do it yourself. Song Ning said that she turned and walked towards the bedroom, but after two steps, she paused, turned her head, and said seriously, don't disturb your sister, she studies very hard every day. After speaking, people entered the room, and suddenly Huo Yangzi and Dad Huo who were watching TV were left in the hall. Huo Yangzi turned his gaze on Dad Huo, opened her mouth, and was about to speak, when Dad Huo stood up, pressed the remote control, turned off the TV, and yawned loudly, in a vague voice, Get up this morning. It's too early, you're sleepy, boss, rest early, good night. After speaking, Dad Huo didn't wait for him to say anything, and went back to the room very quickly. Huo Yangzi didn't go home for a few days, he was not seen by his parents. 
Going upstairs with depression, Huo Yangzi glanced at the room where Huo Yao was living, paused for a few seconds, and finally retracted his gaze and turned back into his room. Asterisk. The next day was Saturday and there were no classes. Huo Yao went to the downstairs for a morning jog as usual. After running back, going upstairs, and just passing by the door of Huo Yangzi's room, the door opened from the inside, and her footsteps stopped. Huo Yangzi wore a pajamas. Just after waking up, his eyes were still half squinted. When he opened the door, he saw Huo Yao with a sweaty face. He immediately became sober, you are. The surprise in Huo Yao's eyes has been restrained, and his voice faintly replied, I just ran back in the morning. Huo Yangzi was stunned when he heard the words. It seemed quite unexpected. After all, it was weekends and most people would choose lazy beds. I'm going back to the room first. Huo Yao nodded towards Huo Yangzi, his manners looked polite and cultivated. Huo Yan hoped for Huo Yao's back, a little lost. Twenty minutes later. Huo Yao sat at the dining table and ate breakfast in a hurry, quiet and well behaved. Huo Yangzi was sitting opposite her, her eyes would always fall on her from time to time. He wanted to talk, but didn't know what to say, so he looked awkward. As if staring at him a bit too much, Huo Yao put down the small spoon in his hand, raised his head, and stared at him with his and white eyes, Do you have anything to say? Huo Yangzi gave a dry cough, and suddenly remembered what El Yuxia said last night, and said, I heard that you signed up for the National Knowledge Contest. How do you know? Huo Yao was puzzled. I heard El Yuxia mention it yesterday. Huo Yangzi didn't think there was anything to hide, so he replied honestly. Huo Ya raised his eyebrows and said oh. Okay, she probably guessed it too. Why do you want to participate in this competition? Huo Yangzi wanted to say, the study time is tight in the third year of high school, and participating in this kind of competition is a waste, but in the end he stopped. Huo Yao chuckled at the corners of his lips, and only asked, you also asked El Yuxia about this? How did she answer you? Huo Yangzi frowned, what did you mention El Yuxia again? Can you do the same? Huo Yao tapped his finger on the table twice, his eyes were a little loose, are you sure you didn't mention it first? Huo Yangzi choked, feeling completely unable to communicate normally, patiently, he explained, Xia Xia is to recommend the quota for the youth university, what about you? Your grades in this competition seem, not very meaningful. After a second, he added in a low voice, with this time, it is better to find a tutoring class to make up lessons. This is the most useful for you right now. Although he was a little disappointed with this sister, he still hoped that she could put her focus on the right way, instead of taking whimsical shortcuts that she knew was impossible. Huo Yao looked at him and smiled casually, so, brother, you mean, I am not qualified to participate in the competition, am I? Huo Yangzi was stunned by Huo Yao's smile, and subconsciously replied, I didn't mean that, but I just don't think people can be far ahead. Okay, I get it. Huo Yao nodded, retracted his gaze, and continued to eat the little porridge left in the bowl. Huo Yangzi looked at the seemingly quiet and well-behaved sister, but actually deliberately indifferent and alienated sister, feeling a kind of unspeakable complexity. If it was Xia Xia who was talking to him at this time, she would definitely not be in such an awkward state, at least she knew how to understand the meaning of every sentence he said. For a while, the atmosphere on the table was a little low. After a while, Huo Yangzi put down the breakfast in his hand without eating, looked at Huo Yao again, and said, I will ask you a tutor. Huo Yao didn't know why he raised his head, Hi. Since you insist on participating in the competition, my eldest brother doesn't persuade you. It just so happens that I have a friend who works in the education association, which may help you. Huo Yangzi said slowly. Those who can enter the education association, apart from the teachers of major colleges and universities with advanced teacher certification, 
there are also graduates who contribute to the country in various fields. If they can get the guidance of people from the Education Association, they will definitely avoid many detours. Thank you, I don't need it. Huo Yao politely declined. In fact, she doesn't understand. Why is her elder brother so sure that her grades are so poor that she has to rely on people from the Education Association to give her counseling in advance? Huo Yangzi didn't expect that Huo Yao would refuse. Originally, he thought that he was thinking about her so hard, so why would she be moved? However, not only was she not half moved, but she refused without even thinking about it for half a second. Huo Yangzi's face was a bit ugly, and she couldn't help but said, Do you know how much help you can get from people in the Education Association? Huo Yao looked at him plainly and didn't speak. Seeing her completely indifferent, Huo Yangzi held her for it a little angrily, and her voice increased, You know. It just suddenly remembered that she had been living in a small county, fearing that she hadn't even heard of the Education Association. Huo Yangzi's voice came to an abrupt end. Finally, she just shook her head, forget it, I will tell you what to do. Standing up, Huo Yangzi finally said to Huo Yao, since you refuse, then just assume that I have never said those words. This sister, he doesn't care. Huo Yao looked at the back of Huo Yangzi walking away. After a while, she took out the phone, edited a text message and sent it out. His groggy head instantly became sober. Educational Association? It seems to be a boring association of literati who are so idle and self-proclaimed to make contributions, right? The man didn't understand how this big guy would suddenly ask this, but he still typed quickly, score query system, and found the belonging page of number one middle school. A total of 68 people participated in the preliminary test in number one middle school but only 23 of them passed, and the name of Huo Yao displayed on the column ranked first overall. The dean looked at the computer without blinking for a long time. When Wei Mingj and the vice principal saw him for a long time without speaking, they could not help walking directly to the computer. When they saw the rankings and scores on the page, they were both stunned. Wei Mingj returned to his senses. He took the mouse from the teaching director without a good-looking face and muttered to himself, I don't believe, how could she have a higher score than Yilian Fan? She obviously didn't take the exam seriously. However, no matter how he refreshed the page, it was Huo Yao who showed the number one with a score of 150. Wei Ming shook his hand and the mouse clicked and fell on the table. Seeing this result, the dark face of the vice principal was no less than that of Wei Ming, and he glanced at Huo Yao with a complicated expression. I originally thought that this transfer student was the back door opened by the principal, and I was convinced that her grades were not good. I also wanted to see how she lost the principal's face in this competition. The vice principal's lips twitched at himself. Chen Yu, Huo Yao's head teacher, saw that everyone looked wrong, so he hurriedly walked over, and when he saw the results displayed on the computer, he was confused. It's a perfect score. Is she dazzled? Didn't you mean bad grades? This is obviously not too good, right? Chen Yu has read yesterday's test paper. The degree of difficulty is generally more tricky than the questions in the semester final exam, and it is a mixture of literary comprehensive and scientific comprehensive topics, and can get a perfect score. This shows that this student has both liberal arts and sciences. It is quite excellent. The experimental class is a liberal arts class. Chen Yu was shocked. How did Huo Yao answer all the science questions correctly? It was not like an almighty student before, but she was not so perverted. Old Wei, what else do you have to say now? The dean of teaching regained his senses and said something ironically. When Wei Ming heard the dean's words, he suddenly remembered that on the first day of school, he had originally put Huo Yao into his rocket class. Wei Ming smiled wryly at the corner of his lips. For the first time in his life, he tasted regret. If, if he did not misunderstand at the time and did not reject the director's kindness, 
perhaps such a versatile student would become the glorious point of his career as a famous teacher. It's just that. Wei Ming suddenly looked up at Huo Yao. This student was in such a quiet appearance from beginning to end, without arguing or explaining, his eyes were full of indifference, as if he was just waiting for this moment, watching everyone's jokes, watching everyone arguing because of her face. No. Wei Ming retracted his gaze mockingly. Such a student, no matter how good his grades are, he is not rare. Soon, Wei Ming walked up to Huo Yao, with a bit of irony in his voice, Student Huo Yao, you are a very powerful character. You are silent, and the teacher admires you very much. After speaking, he didn't wait for others to say anything, and walked out of the office blankly. The instructor twisted his eyebrows. This way Ming Jis really. Don't say anything, you obviously started to question her as soon as people came, and you never gave her a chance to explain. Chen Yu couldn't stand it and said in a low voice. The grades are not good, and they suspect that they will go through the back door. Now the grades are in front of them, but they are ironic that they deliberately concealed it. I also don't want to think that if there is no initial test result, Huo Yao might still be caught in the middle of being severely questioned by everyone. What's the matter with that teacher? He speaks so yin and yang, and people who don't know think that my daughter made a mistake. Huo Jinyan had a calm face, and his tone and attitude were not good. He just walked over and saw his daughter's grades, first place, still full marks. Although I don't know what kind of exam this is, the point is that her daughter's grades are not at all compatible with going through the back door and grades. Therefore, it is these teachers who clearly misunderstood, and it is these teachers who have a bad attitude. Now that they have achieved grades, they do not reflect on themselves. On the contrary, they think that her daughter is deliberately hiding her scheming. The dean glanced at the vice principal who was about to lose face, and sighed helplessly, then stepped forward and started to apologize to the peacemaker. Twenty minutes later, the dean finally sent away Huo Jinyan and Song Ning, and Huo Yao returned to the classroom. Only the dean of education and the deputy principal are left in the office. Director Wu, it's not that I have to pick and prick, this transfer student has such good grades, why didn't you explain the situation in advance? You can really make such a big joke. The vice principal thought of the scene when Huo Yao came out just now, his face still hurts. Hearing the words, the dean looked bad, didn't I say it? I have said it so many times. Did any of you listen to it? The vice principal looked a little unnatural raised his hand and pressed his eyebrows, then you didn't explain clearly, I'm not listening to Wei Ming again. Well, forget it, it's useless to talk about it. Immediately, the vice principal remembered something and said casually, since the misunderstanding has now been clarified, you should stop telling the principal about this today. He has a lot of things going back to the capital, so don't bother him. The head of the teacher sneered at his lips. Now he is thinking about not telling the principal. What did you do just now? Even if I don't say it now, the principal will still know when he comes back. The vice principal waved his hand impatiently, then wait until he comes back, but it's just a misunderstanding, and it's not a big deal. As soon as the initial test results came out, all the students who followed, even those who did not participate, took out their mobile phones to check. Everyone wants to know how Huo Yao, a transfer student who came in through the back door, got a score of one or two in the test. It's just that everyone's eyes almost fell out the moment they saw the results ranking. Helped her to pay attention. As soon as the backstage rehearsal was over, the agent checked her score and ranking on the phone and handed it over. Xia Xia, the first test score is good, 138 points, worthy of a tyrant. It is great. The agent smiled. At this time, he was already thinking about how to use the to create popularity for El Yusya. After all, in the circle like El Yusya, who has a good family background and looks good, there are still too few real masters. As long as she cleverly reflects her advantages, I am not afraid that she will not be popular in the future. 
El Yusya smiled and took the manager's mobile phone. El Yusya is very confident in her scores. Since yesterday's exam, apart from the vague answers about the liberal arts, the others are basically no problem. It can be said that there is absolutely no problem in passing the first exam. With a score of 138, she ranked sixth, as she expected. The corners of El Yusya's lips were raised, and after only one glance, she handed the phone back to her agent, but when she thought of something, she retracted her hand again and gently swiped her fingertips up on the screen. I saw that the page of the ranking table had been slid to the bottom, but Huo Yao's name was not seen. El Yusya frowned. Didn't she take the exam? How could there not be her name? Could it be? Didn't have the first test? El Yusya thought about it this way, and the smile on her lips grew deeper, so she said, how can such an achievement be ranked? El Yusya chuckled softly, and inadvertently tapped her fingertips to the top of the back next to her. When she bowed her head to close the web page, Huo Yao's name came into her sight. First place, 150 points, Huo Yao. The smile on El Yusya's lips solidified, and her hand subconsciously squeezed the phone tightly. How is this possible? How could she get full marks? How could she rank first? Xia Xia, why is your face a bit ugly? Did you just get tired from rehearsal? Seeing that his artist looks different, the agent couldn't help but ask. El Yusya's eyes flickered, and if nothing had happened, he returned the phone to the agent again, and said softly, It's okay. Maybe it was because I was too focused when I first sang and danced. I haven't recovered a bit at the moment. Upon hearing this, the agent raised his hand and patted her shoulder, You are here for a good break, and I will call you when the show is officially recorded. Well, thank you, Brother God. El Yusya responded lightly. The agent was holding his cell phone and was going to go out, but after walking a few steps, he paused again and turned to look at El Yusya. By the way, Xia Xia, there will be a question when recording the show, I will go to the editor to mention it. Talk about your participation in the competition, then you will watch and answer. El Yusya was startled, and then nodded. Huo Yao successfully entered the next round of municipal preliminaries with an excellent score in the preliminary test, and such a full score is the only example among dozens of middle schools in S City. Therefore, in the total ranking of the official website of the, she steadily ranked first, even the second in the city's score was nine points away from her, which shows how solid she has mastered the knowledge of liberal arts and science. At this time, the Municipal Education Association in this competition, a student from City No. 1 High School got a perfect score, and he even solved Zhang Lao's tricky physics problem. This student is really not easy. The Secretary General held an examination paper in his hand, and while admiring it, he handed the examination paper to the chairman. The chairman of the board took the test paper and pushed the glasses on the bridge of his nose. Then he lowered his eyes and fell on the test paper. I haven't read the answer, just looking at the block letters in a daze, it makes people feel pleasing to the eye. This is a good word, magnificent, full of vigor, and there is no extra bells and whistles between the outlines, and it looks like a person. This is a very cultivated student. The chairman of the board did not hesitate to comment. Liberal arts students, they are somewhat more delicate than science students in terms of literary talent. The secretary general laughed and said casually. The chairman raised his eyebrows, with surprise on his face, isn't it? It's a liberal arts student who solved Zhang Lao's question. That's why I just said that this person is not easy. The secretary general said with a long look. The chairman heard the words, Shen Ning looked at the test paper for a few seconds, especially the last big question, which was the physics question Zhang Lao put forward. After a while, the corner of the chairman's lips hung a touch of admiration. He leaned back in the seat and sighed, it's really not easy. You see, the equation is cleverly listed. There are no extra steps, and the solution is also very good. Fresh, 
simpler than the solution passed to us by Zhang Lao. Although the Secretary General is not good at physics, when he heard what the chairman said, he also understood how strong the thinking ability of the person who answered this question was, and his expression was slightly restrained. He only said, Zhang Lao has been looking for someone who can be good at physics. A disciple with outstanding talent, would you like to recommend someone who scored a perfect score in the first high school? The chairman took off his glasses, rubbed the corners of his eyes with his fingers, and was silent for a few seconds. He then said, not for the time being. It's just a small preliminary contest and nothing can be seen. After all, this perfect candidate is a liberal arts student, maybe Zhang Lao did she just happen to solve this problem. When the secretary general heard it, he felt that there was some truth, well, let's talk about it after she passes the municipal preliminaries. Yet. The chairman replied softly, and then put the test paper on the table. The secretary general glanced across the test paper again, and said, then the solution to this physics problem, should I take a picture of it and send it to Zhang Lao? I think he will see it. The chairman lifted his hand and interrupted, Zhang Lao can spare time to write questions for this competition. This has given us the Education Association's great face. Such questions are not worth mentioning to him, but it's just another solution, there is really no need to make a fuss and bring it in front of him. The Secretary General touched the tip of his nose, well, I understand, then I will take this test paper back and seal it. After speaking, he picked up the test paper. Go ahead. However, when the Secretary General had just turned around and took two steps, the chairman seemed to be thinking of someone, and then asked from his back, by the way, there is one named El Yusya in number one, how did you score this exam? The Secretary General paused, he had an impression of El Yusya, because his daughter was still her fan. Turning around, he replied, 138 points, ranking sixth, not bad. After a pause, the Secretary General added, this student seems to be a campus star. He is still studying science. Having such an achievement is also an individual talent. The chairman tapped his fingertips on the desktop a few times, OK, I see, you can go to work. The secretary general glanced at the chairman of the board. Although he didn't know why he suddenly asked El Yusya, he didn't ask too much, and left after responding. On Saturday, just after breakfast in the morning, Huo Yao was dragged by Song Ning to the supermarket near the community, where he bought a lot of vegetables and a large package of snacks. After closing the bill, Song Ning turned around and saw that her daughter was not free with her hands and still looked unlovable, and suddenly laughed out loud. She stretched out her hand to help carry the bag, and said again, Girls don't want to be too house, they should come out if they should go out for a stroll, and they will almost become nerds when they stay at home and read. Huo Ya refused his mother's help expressionlessly, and pointedly pointed out, you are just because no one is helping to carry things. Song Ning coughed with a slight guilty conscience. Seeing that she was not struggling to carry two large bags, she thought that it was impossible to have a delicate and sweet daughter. A visitor at home today. Huo Yao glanced at the cabbage in his right hand and asked. Song Ning Glu said mysteriously, not a guest. Huo Yao raised his eyebrows, El Yusya. Although El Yusya had already returned to the El Yu family, for the Huo family, she was afraid that she would not be regarded as a guest. No. Song Ning shook his head and said with a smile, Why would you suddenly think of Xia Xia? Huo Yao's expression was quite natural, guess what you want. There are many people coming and going in and out of the supermarket, and Huo Yao is not too interested. He continued to ask, Go home first. With that said, she had already carried two large bags and walked out. Song Ning looked at the back of a very slender but powerful daughter, and couldn't help but sigh again, it is really impossible to have a delicate and weak daughter. When he got home, Song Ning got into the kitchen and got busy. Huo Yao glanced at her thoughtfully, and then returned to the room. It wasn't until six o'clock in the afternoon that the doorbell at the gate of Huo's family rang. 
Yao Yao, go and open the door. Song Ning, who was busy in the kitchen, shouted out. Huo Yan said, put the phone back in his pocket, got up and walked to the door. The door just opened. Ah! Am I going to the wrong door? The man who just wanted to call Auntie outside, when he saw Huo Yao, he was taken aback for a second and immediately changed his mouth and swallowed the auntie in. Huo Yao frowned, Hey! The man was carrying a lot of things in his hands, he took a step back, looked up at the house number on the door frame, that's right. Immediately, the man looked at Huo Yao again, marveling at the other person's immortal appearance, and cleared his voice, and asked uncertainly, This is the Huo family, right? Yes. Huo Yao's voice was cold and cold, and there was not much expression on his delicate face. Even the sound is so nice. But. Although the girl looked face to face, if you look closely, her facial features are somewhat similar to those of his celebrities. The man's eyes condensed, and suddenly he remembered something, and exclaimed, Are you the biological sister of Brother Xiang who was hugged by mistake? He knew El Yuxia so it was not difficult to guess the identity of the girl in front of him. Huo Yao looked at him with indifferent eyes and did not speak. He looks good, has a nice voice, and has a cool temperament. Where does it look like a person raised in the country? The surprise in Tong Yu's eyes flashed away, and he hurriedly introduced himself, Hello sister, I am your brother Huo Xiang's agent, and my name is Tong Yu. When Huo Yao heard that, there was an accident in his eyes, so my mother was busy all day, wondering if the person who came today was Huo Xiang. The fourth brother of this body? However, Huo Yao's eyes turned and he scanned Tong Yu, who claimed to be an agent, so her fourth brother who had never met is an artist? Tong Yu was suddenly looked at by Huo Yao, and he straightened his back almost reflexively. The other side was obviously just a little girl but he gave people an unreasonable pressure, which was really strange. Concentrating on his thoughts, Huo Yao's lips were slightly pursed, and he nodded politely, Hello. Then, she opened the half-open door wide and let him in. Tong Yu recovered, but didn't go in. He only put a few delicate paper bags in his hand into the entrance of the entrance one by one, and said with a smile, I won't go in anymore. I'm here to help Brother Xiang deliver things, and I will leave immediately. When Huo Yao heard this, his expression faded a little, and he asked with a smile, he won't come back tonight. Tong Yu has been in the entertainment industry for more than 10 years, and now he is one of the best gold brokers in the industry. Although my sister was laughing at this time, he always felt that the smile was a bit cold. He wanted to nod his head and say yes but when the words came to his lips, he changed in a ghostly manner, no, there is something in the company. He filmed the film abroad during this time. Some parts of the play needed repairs, so I went to the company as soon as I got off the plane. After a pause, he said again, Brother Xiang knew that you were back, so he specifically told me to send the gift back first, and he should be back when he takes care of the company's affairs. Huo Yao twitched at the corner of his lips, and then only said quietly, I know, thank you. Tong Yu scratched his head, and subconsciously asked, I will go to the company in a while, sister, do you have anything else to bring to brother Xiang? Huo Yao had already turned around and was about to enter the house. Hearing what he said, she looked up at the direction of the kitchen, then she turned her head and looked at him, then please tell him. Mom will go to the supermarket early in the morning. Bought a lot of dishes he likes to eat. Tong Yu was stunned, and when he opened his mouth to say something, he saw that Huo Yao had already closed the door. After a while, the smile on his face dissipated, replaced by a sad face, he sighed, turned and walked to the elevator entrance. Song Ning took the spatula and walked out of the kitchen. She was still smiling. When she saw her daughter alone, she was startled and asked, Uh, daughter, who was ringing the doorbell? Didn't your fourth brother come back? Huo Yao put the paper bag in his hand on the cabinet next to him, No, it's his agent. 
The expression on Song Ning's face was a little disappointed, so the fourth child is not coming back today. Huo Yao glanced at her, said that the company still has something to deal with. Okay. Song Ning sighed, turned, and walked back to the kitchen, still angrily said, I should have opposed him entering the entertainment industry at the beginning. He has not rested all year round. My sister has been back for so long. No matter how busy work is, I should come back and see. Huo Yao just smiled unclearly. The other side. After Tong Yu drove away from the Huo's community, he did not return to the company, but went to an upscale villa community in the city. After swiping the card to enter the door, Tong Yu put the key in his hand on the entrance cabinet, changed his clean shoes, poured a glass of water, and went up to the second floor. When I went to your house today, I saw your sister. She is very beautiful and looks quite like you. After Tong Yu entered the master bedroom, he looked at the person lying on the bed and said this in the first sentence. The person on the bed didn't seem to react, nor moved, as if he was asleep. Tong Yu sighed, walked to the bedside, turned on the side lamp, and said, Your sister should hope you go back to see her. When I left, I asked me to bring you a word. As these words fell, the person on the bed who hadn't reacted for a long time suddenly lifted the quilt, revealing a face that was two points similar to Huo Yao. Huo Xiang's hair is messy, and his handsome face is ruinously depressed. He looks at Tong Yu with gloomy eyes, and his voice is fierce and cruel, Are you annoying? What are you doing with me? Don't you know that I am now? After the conversation stopped, Huo Xiang's lips twitched a touch of ridicule, and then his voice seemed to faint, You hurry up, don't come to me in the future. Seeing that he finally had a reaction, Tong Yu seemed to be used to his manic way of speaking. He passed the water glass in his hand and said with a heavy voice, Huo Xiang, when are you going to abandon yourself? Huo Xiang looked at the ceiling, but his gloomy eyes were replaced by a pool of stagnant water in an instant. For a long time, he said bitterly, I can't stand on the stage anymore, it is already a death sentence for me. I'm just like a waste. Don't you understand? Tong Yu opened his mouth, not knowing what to say, because he understood his current mood. Huo Xiang was almost brought out by him. Whether in music production, singing or dancing, he has a very outstanding talent, as if he was born to be a king on the stage. But now because of an accident, the foundation was injured. What a fatal blow to a person so proud of him. Huo Xiang, don't give up. Now that medicine is so advanced, there will always be someone who can heal your injury. Tong Yu's throat is astringent. He can't help him except for comforting him over and over again. Hat. Huo Xiang only let out a chuckle, closed his eyes, turned his head to face Tong Yu, and didn't say a word. Seeing this, Tong Yu smiled bitterly and gently placed the water cup in his hand on the cabinet beside him, raised his head restrained all his emotions, and walked towards the door. It's just that he remembered what Huo Yao said when he left Huo's house, he couldn't help but paused, turning his head to the side, and his voice was very soft, your sister asked me to tell you that you. Mom went to the supermarket to buy a lot of your favorite vegetables. After a few seconds, Tong Yu seemed to have made a decision, and then said, Huo Xiang, I don't want to help you cheat your parents like today. Also, I didn't tell your sister that you won't go back tonight. As for whether you can go back, you can see for yourself. I am leaving. There was a sound of closing doors at the door. The bedroom became very quiet at this moment, terribly quiet. Huo Xiang on the bed opened his eyes, his eyes were complex, his fists were tight, and suddenly he pulled the quilt very irritably, and simply covered his head. Ten minutes later. Huo Xiang suddenly opened the quilt, sat up, cursed, and finally got up and got out of bed. It's almost eight o'clock in the evening. Song Ning sat on the sofa, looking at the time on the wall for a while, and then at the door. Although she didn't say anything, it was not difficult to see that she was waiting anxiously. Huo Yao sat beside her, leaning lazily on the sofa, 
playing with her mobile phone. Yao Yao, are you hungry, or go eat first? Song Ning turned to look at the cute daughter sitting next to her, and said something. Huo Yao put away his mobile phone, and said nonchalantly, maybe the fourth brother is very busy and won't be back tonight. Song Ning shook her head with a smile, with a certainty written on her face, although the fourth person is too busy to go home all the year round, he has never fooled people. Yesterday, his agent called and said he was coming back. We'll be back. If her fourth brother really came back, she wouldn't let an agent send gifts over. Huo Yao's expression was faint, he wanted to say something, but seeing Song Ning's face firmly convinced that his son would come back, he chose to say nothing in the end. After a while, the doorbell rang at the door. It must be the fourth child. Song Ning quickly stood up and walked to the door. Seeing this, Huo Yao raised his eyebrows slightly and a hint of surprise appeared in his black and white eyes. As soon as Huo Xiang walked into the living room, Song Ning pointed to Huo Yao who had just gotten up from the sofa and said, Fourth old man, this is your sister, Yao Yao. Huo Xiang followed his mother's sight and looked over. The girl is very beautiful, with delicate and three-dimensional features, her white cheeks glowing brightly under the light, her loose t-shirt is paired with homely casual shorts, her long legs are slender and straight, even better than any model he has ever seen. Artists in the circle must be perfect. In addition to his appearance, the whole person's temperament seems a little casual, but inexplicably it gives people a cold and cool handsome. No twitching, no timidity, and no frailty like other girls. Huo Xiang originally had no feelings for his sister, even if he heard Tong Yu's evaluation of her he didn't take it seriously. After all, he grew up in a different environment, not to mention that he didn't like two delicate girls. Looking at it at this time, it was completely beyond his expectation. At least the first impression of the meeting was not annoying. The indifference on Huo Xiang's face, which had always been kept away from the afterlife, faded a little. When he looked at Huo Yao, Huo Yao also looked at him openly. To tell the truth, Huo Xiang is not the same as she imagined. His appearance is undoubtedly the Huo family's high-value gene, but judging from the behavior when his agent gave the gift this afternoon, she judged that this person should be extremely arrogant. Type At this point, it seems that arrogance does exist, but this kind of arrogance is born with it and is not deliberately targeted at someone. People with this kind of temperament are mostly strong in their own right, and they don't even bother to please anyone. Huo Yao was quite surprised, and for the first time expressed incredible for the sensory deviation he had in the afternoon. But this fourth brother is so powerful, he is still an artist, why hasn't she seen him in commercials before? Isn't he actually not famous? After thinking about it, Huo Yao retracted his puzzled gaze, and then said calmly and politely, Fourth brother. Well, it's okay if you come back. Huo Xiang nodded slightly, his expression was cold and cold, after a few seconds, he seemed to realize something, his voice suddenly felt annoying, sorry, I have to come back in a hurry. Bring a gift. Hearing the words, Huo Yao looked at a cabinet not far away with some doubts. The things on it were delivered by Tong Yu in the afternoon. She didn't speak, but Song Ning next to her spoke first. Hey, didn't your agent bring so many gifts in the afternoon? Song Ning had walked to the cabinet and turned it over. When Huo Xiang saw this, his eyes flickered, and he only said, Tong Yu chose these. When I have time, I will personally choose a gift for the little girl. Song Ning was surprised when she heard this. The fourth child has the most weird personality, arrogant, indifferent, and high profile. Even Xia Xia, who grew up with him, doesn't like to be bothered. When the boss had a prejudice against Yao Yao, she was still worried that her other sons would be more difficult to deal with, especially the fourth child. Now it seems that the fourth child has a good impression of Yao Yao. It's okay, don't buy me a gift specially. Huo Yao declined with a nice voice. Huo Xiang twisted his eyebrows, as if he did not accept the rejection 
he thought for a few seconds, and then took out the phone from his trouser pocket, I don't know what you like, so let's buy it yourself with the money. He had added Huo Yao's WeChat a long time ago, but at that time, he learned that his sister grew up in the country. Although he didn't mean to look down upon, he was afraid that the other party was annoying. So even if he added WeChat, he never talked to her chatted. The WeChat nickname was specifically noted, so Huo Xiang quickly opened the dialogue with Huo Yao, tapped his finger several times, and entered an amount in the transfer panel. You can only transfer 200,000 yuan in a single day, and you will accept it first, and I will continue to transfer it for you tomorrow. Buy what you want. If it is not enough, ask the fourth brother to get it. Huo Xian Jiun said calmly. Hearing the sound of information from the mobile phone in his pocket, it seemed that there was another Huo Yao who was dominated by huge transfers. Is this an ancestral gene? Absolutely, right? He pressed his eyebrows, and Huo Yao didn't take out his cell phone. When he opened his mouth and wanted to refuse, he heard Huo Xiang's voice again. If you don't accept it, I will assume you are still angry and don't give face to the fourth brother. Huo Yao. Listen, even the behavior of forcing people to collect money is exactly the same in this family. Underscore. Huo Yao, who was forced to accept a huge sum of money, was still a little fluttering until he sat at the table to eat. Previously, the appearance of poor families has been deviated, and now the fourth brother who met for the first time has come to such a show, this situation has clearly exceeded the definition of poverty. What are you thinking about? You look worried. Song Ning beside her asked concerned. The child was in a daze from the moment he went to the table, and it was the first time she saw him. Huo Ya returned to his senses and shook his head slightly complicatedly, it's nothing. Huo Xiang raised his eyes and glanced at her. The little girl's face was still a little sluggish, perhaps because of blood relationship. He suddenly felt that this kind of expression on other people's faces was silly, but the expression on his sister's face was quite cute. Soon, by the way, you will stay at home for a while when you come back this time. Although work is important, your body is also important. It was Dad Huo who spoke. Hearing this, Huo Xiang's hand holding the chopsticks tightened, his eyes narrowed, his handsome facial features did not seem to be abnormal, and then he said in a very low voice, maybe not, this year's schedule is full. Tomorrow afternoon, I will fly to City B to shoot the MV. Time is tight. After speaking, he bowed his head and ate something. At the beginning, I had to sing and I was so tired. Look at how thin you are when you come back this time. Song Ning said distressedly. Huo Xiang swallowed the astringent rice in his throat. After a few seconds, he raised his head, with a relaxed smile on his face, it's just fine to be thinner. It's also necessary to record the show. Song Ning shook his head helplessly, you, you, you are young, your body is the first. Huo Xiang's lips showed bitterness, and he gave a perfunctory hush. Huo Ya raised his head and caught his strange expression. Although his expression looked natural, it was obviously a bit pretending. Huo Yao thoughtfully, but didn't ask much. Everyone has everyone's secret. Asterisk. After dinner, Huo Xiang only sat in the living room for half an hour, then found a reason to leave and left. I always feel the fourth child is a bit weird. After Huo Xiang left, Song Ning frowned and said. Is a man not attentive to a woman, Huo Jinyan patted his wife's hand. Probably he is too tired. Didn't you hear him say that he came back by plane from abroad today? But I still feel wrong. He used to stay at home for a while no matter what happened when he came back, but just now you looked like he was afraid of staying at home. Song Ning looked very serious. Huo Yao had already returned to the room, so she continued, if he didn't seem to reject Yao Yao, I would have misunderstood that he resisted living at home because he was here. But the current situation is obviously not. Huo Jinyan thought for a few seconds, and couldn't help but said, why don't you wait for tomorrow to call and ask his agent? 
Song Ning nodded, All right, otherwise I always have something in my heart. Do not think too much. Huo Ya returned to the room, sat in front of the computer after taking a shower, clicked on the web page, and typed in the word Huo Xiang. Soon, a lot of web pages popped up, but none of them were related to her fourth brother. Huo Yao touched his chin. Isn't her fourth brother really famous? After thinking about Xiao Su, she quickly entered a string of URLs with her fingers. Soon, the page jumped, two consecutive verifications, and she successfully logged into the Cloud World website. Afterwards, she clicked on the personal friend list and sent a message to a person whose nickname was Bald Baby, yes? Look up someone for me. The other party showed that he was online, but maybe something happened and he didn't reply immediately. Huo Yao was not in a hurry, leaning lazily on the chair, the light from the computer screen refracted on her face, flickering and dimming, making her look more inattentive. After about five or six minutes, the other party finally arrived late. Prophet, I'm sorry, something was delayed just now, please tell me who to check. Huo Yao's eyes drooped slightly, his fingertips placed on the keyboard, he just typed the word Huo Xiang, and before sending, the cell phone beside him suddenly rang. She paused and glanced at the caller ID on the screen. Menu? Huo Yao had some doubts on his face, what did he call so late? After pondering Xiao Su, she picked up the phone and pressed the answer button. A minute later, I see, it will be here soon. Huo Yao hung up the phone, the expression on his face had become a little serious. Looking at the dialogue on the computer screen waiting for a reply, with her fingertips moving slightly, she quickly deleted the words that had just been typed in the dialogue, and instead directly replied, Let's talk about it later, I'll be anxious. After posting this one, she directly closed the website, stood up, took out a coat from the closet, and walked out quickly. Downstairs, Huo Jinyan and Song Ning had already returned to the room to rest. Huo Yao didn't disturb them, and took the key and went out. Twenty minutes later, the hospital. As soon as Huo Yao got off the taxi, she saw Min Yu standing at the gate. She walked over and asked in a deep voice, How is my grandma? Min Yu walked to the ward with people, and said, I just got out of danger. Hearing the words, Huo Yao was relieved, Shen Ning's expression eased a little, turned his head and glanced at him, Thank you, fortunately I have you. The corners of Min Yu's lips were pursed, and the delicate facial features were tinged with a faint color under the light, You are welcome. Soon, the two walked to the ward. The old lady has moved from the emergency room to the general ward, and there is also a doctor on duty checking the old lady's various indicators. Huo Yao stood outside and didn't push the door for the first time. She quietly watched through the glass window, her eyes deep and she didn't know what she was thinking. Min Yu glanced at a gloomy expression, as if he suddenly changed to Huo Yao. After a long time, he slowly comforted him, your grandma will be fine. Huo Yao gave a light hum, her eyelids drooped, her slender eyelashes cast a shallow shadow and she looked quiet and did not reveal any anxiety. Soon, the ward door opened from inside. Huo Ya raised his head and walked over calmly. The doctor took off the masks and looked at Huo Yao and Min Yu. There was a bit of seriousness and harshness on their faces, the old man is fine for the time being, but if you guys have any temper, you can't restrain yourself? I don't know. She has a bad heart, can't she stand it? Huo Yao's eyes flickered, and he replied with a very polite and humbly accepting attitude, We know, we will pay attention later. Perhaps she was very polite and listened to her words. The doctor had lost his thoughts about saying a few words, but he just exhorted, You go in and stay with me, and be careful not to stimulate her again. Okay. Huo Yao nodded slightly, and when the doctor and nurse left, she walked into the ward. The old lady was still not awake, with an oxygen mask on her mouth, lying there quietly, and the data on the nearby instrument was beating smoothly and steadily. Huo Yao only glanced at the instrument next to him faintly, 
and then handed over the chair next to him and sat down beside the hospital bed. Watching the old lady quietly for a while, Huo Yao stretched out his hand again, tucked the quilt for her very gently, and finally held the old lady's hand on his side casually. Min Yu also sat down in the chair beside him. When he looked over, he only saw Huo Yao in profile, but didn't notice her small movements. The phone in his pocket shook, Min Yu retracted his gaze, and slowly took out the phone, glanced briefly at the information displayed on the screen, and then put the phone in his pocket again. Only after about two minutes, the phone shook again. This time it was not a message, but someone called. Min Yu frowned, glanced at Huo Yao, then stood up and walked outside the ward. His steps were very light, and there was hardly any sound. Huo Yao turned back and looked towards the door until the sound of closing the door. After a second thoughtfully, she withdrew her gaze. After a while, Min Yu turned back to the ward, Huo Yao slowly put the old lady's hand into the quilt, and then raised his head to look at Min Yu, his voice was very soft, thank you tonight, it's late. Go back and rest early, as long as I am guarding here. Min Yu raised his eyebrows, so polite. Huo Yao leaned back in the chair lazily, his delicate face was not as condensed as when he had just entered the hospital, but a bit more relaxed, not at all, shouldn't you have something else? She faintly glanced at the phone in his hand that hadn't been put in his pocket. Min Yu was quite surprised by Huo Yao's sharpness, but he did have something. After a pause, he said, I may not be in S City these days. If anything happens, please call me. Okay. Huo Yao waved his hand and deserved it, obviously not caring. Seeing this, Min Yu just smiled, go away. Soon, only Huo Yao and the old lady on the bed were left in the ward. After the nurse on duty came to check the situation for the last time, Huo Yao lay on the bed and prepared to rest. Asterisk. The next day. Huo Yao returned to Huo's house after the old lady woke up. It was only 8 o'clock in the morning when I returned. Although it was a bit later than her usual morning run, Song Ning, who didn't know her daughter was at home all night, didn't doubt it only when she exercised a few more laps today. Huo Yao did not take the initiative to say. She went back to the room and took a short shower. After she changed her clothes, she took out the box from the closet, opened it, and found a water blue one from the dozens of bottles inside. Porcelain bottle. Putting the porcelain bottle in the bag, she didn't delay too much, went downstairs, didn't even eat breakfast and slightly mentioned the old lady to Song Ning, refused her request to visit, and hurried away. Twenty minutes later, Huo Ya returned to the hospital. But when she just walked to the door of the ward and saw his Ioman, Elusia in the ward, and a boy who was only about fifteen years old, her footsteps stopped subconsciously. Mom, don't tell me if you are sick. I don't know if it weren't for the nanny to call me today. His Ioman pressed his eyebrows, but he was caring about the old lady's body and did not dare to say. Two heavy words. Yang Kaihua leaned on the head of the bed, there was not much blood on her face, she didn't seem to welcome the people in the room very much, her expression was cold and indifferent. I'm fine. There are doctors and nurses here, and you don't need your care. Let's go. She didn't know when to come back. If she met them, wouldn't she be bullied by them again? His Ioman heard the old lady's words, so he stopped being angry. Knowing that you are sick, Xia Xia and Xi Ming came to the hospital to see you, do you have to be so unkind? Yang Kaihua just looked out the window and did not speak. Seeing this, his Ioman really had a headache, she didn't understand, how could this old lady be able to act like this? Mom, don't say a few words. Grandma's body can't be stimulated. Elusia next to her stepped forward and shook her head. Then, Elusia looked at the old lady again, her eyes turned slightly, moved the chair next to her, sat down in front of her bed, gently held the old lady's hand, and said softly, Grandma, don't you angry at mother, she just cares about you very much. After all, 
she reached out and didn't hit the smiley person, not to mention that Al Yusya was still her granddaughter. Yang Kaihua turned her head back, his face was still cold and cold, but it was obviously not so stiff. My body is okay, you can take your mother and your brother back. Yang Kaihua took out his hand without a trace while talking. El Yusya closed her fingers, with a gentle smile on her face, how can doctors and nurses take care of relatives? When Yang Kaihua heard it, she was a little excited subconsciously, but I don't need it, I'm awkward. Halfway through, realizing that she almost missed it, she stopped talking. However, Hizioman had already heard some clues, are you looking forward to that Huo Yao's coming again? Yang Kaihua looked elsewhere, what can I do? You bullied her like that last time. Hizioman was angrily laughed, I bullied her? Why did I drive her away, don't you have any points in your heart? She shook her head speechlessly, and then said, Okay, you defend her like this. But you are sick now. Does she know? Does she come to the hospital to take care of you? Hizioman pointed to El Yusya, she doesn't have one, so please look carefully. It is Syasya who is here to take care of you, and Syasya is also the one who comes to see you. She is your granddaughter. Yang Kaihua was pale, biting his lip, and when he wanted to say something, El Yusya stood up and pulled Hizioman's arm. Mom. Just say a few words, since Grandma wants Huo Yao to come and take care of her, let's call her. Although Huo Yao is not grandmother's granddaughter, but the relationship between living together for so many years is true. You don't have to argue with Grandma for me, Grandma's body is the most important thing. The corners of El Yusya's lips were a little bitter, and then she took out her mobile phone from her bag. As soon as Hizioman heard it, his anger became more intense. Seeing that she was holding her mobile phone, she seemed to be really going to call Huo Yao, so she couldn't help but grab her mobile phone. What kind of fight? Why is your child so mentally minded? You even pushed your company's important activities and ran over to take care of your grandmother. You still want to call that girl now? I really don't know if it is stupid or naive. Hizioman hates that iron cannot become steel. Mom, it's okay. El Yusya stretched out her hand to get her mobile phone back, raised her eyes, but saw Huo Yao standing at the door, and she was stunned. Seeing that El Yusya's expression was different, Hizioman couldn't help but follow her gaze and look towards the door. He was also stunned. He quickly reacted, and his face sank immediately, Why are you here? Yang Kaihua also saw Huo Yao. She didn't know how much she had just heard. He couldn't help being anxious, afraid of being misunderstood, and said hurriedly, Actually, Yao Yao guarded me here last night. One night. When He Zioman heard it, he turned to look at the old lady, with obvious unbelief written on her face, Mom, are you trying to say good things for her again? If she keeps you all night, then you why didn't you say it just now? I'm just starting to talk about it now, isn't it that there is no silver 300 tails? If I said it, would you believe it? Would you not drive away? Yang Kaihua said dully. She just wanted to persuade them to leave before Yao Yao came back, but she didn't expect Yao Yao to come back so soon. He Zioman ridiculed when he heard this, dare to love me as a daughter in your mind so unbearable. Yang Kaihua don't open your eyes, don't want to talk. Mom. El Yusya made another sound at the right time. She shook her head at Hizioman, and then she quickly walked to the door, wanting to go to La Huo Yao, you can come in quickly, Grandma, she has been waiting. You. Huo Yao just glanced at El Yusya faintly. Before her hand touched her, she had already avoided her and walked into the ward. She didn't even look at Hizioman. He walked to the bedside of the old lady and made a sound. Quite plain, didn't you say not to be angry and disobeyed? Yang Kaihua looked at Huo Yao's unhappy face, subconsciously persuaded, and muttered, I'm not angry, I'm fine. Huo Yao smiled, you have to be well, you won't get sick last night. 
Yang Kaihua did not dare to speak any more, like a little quail. She is not afraid of anyone who is angry, but she is afraid of her failure. El Yuxia watched this scene, her eyes drooping slightly and her fingers tightened. No matter how she performed well in front of the old lady, it seemed that she could not get her straight eyes. She really hates Huo Yao. El Yuziming, who had been playing with his mobile phone next to him, had never made a sound but raised his head at this time and looked at Huo Yao with a little doubt in his eyes. Is this still the stupid, stupid and timid sister in his memory? El Yuziming is Hizioman's most beloved son. He was smart when he was a child. In Lu's family, he was almost treated like a baby, so he was accustomed to lawlessness. Everyone was arrogant and rude. The appearance of a wealthy second-generation ancestor. El Yuziming and Huo Yao didn't have much contact. The two didn't grow up together. Hizioman occasionally brought people back to the El Yu family during Chinese New Year. The spoiled El Yuziming would always take the opportunity to bully her and frame her. It can be said that at that time, the Lu family would particularly hate Huo Yao, and most of the reason was to be attributed to El Yuziming. Hey, coward, don't you say hello when you see me. El Yuziming put the phone in his pocket and said to Huo Yao in a rather arrogant tone. Huo Yao didn't even lift his eyelids. He only turned his back on the table next to him. He slowly picked up a clean cup and poured a glass of water. From an angle that no one could see, he threw the medicine he brought back to Huo's house. Go in. El Yuziming made a circle and walked to Huo Yao's side, I'm talking to you, are you deaf? Seeing this, El Yuxia, who was next to her, twitched her lips as if waiting for a good show. Huo Yao gently shook the cup in his hand, as if he hadn't seen El Yuziming, turned around and handed the cup to the old lady, drink some water. The old lady was about to take the cup. El Yuziming, who was repeatedly ignored, was very upset. She was used to being arrogant and domineering. She raised her hand to grab the cup, El Yu Yao, you are so courageous now, don't you? However, before he finished speaking, his wrist felt a pain. The next moment, a strong force dragged him staggering, and when he raised his head to meet Huo Yao's temperatureless eyes, El Yuziming shivered subconsciously. You. Mom didn't teach you to be an individual. Huo Yao looked condescendingly at El Yuziming, his deep eyes were full of cold light, his voice was soft, but there was an inexplicable dangerous aura. At this time, El Yuziming only had the instinctive timidity of being stared at by a tiger. The pain on his wrist was not as painful as Huo Yao's eyes. He opened his mouth tremblingly, I, you let me go. Huo Yao looked at him in such an ashamed way of being strong and weak, and sneered softly, if you don't have the courage, don't go out and be ashamed. After speaking, her hand loosened. El Yuziming's face was pale, holding his aching wrist, he wanted to say something, but he didn't dare, as if he was frightened. El Yuxia, who came back to her senses, glanced at El Yuziming, hurriedly stepped forward, and stood in front of him, Huo Yao, how do you deal with a child? Anyway, Xi Ming was once your younger brother. Huo Yao's eyebrows were frivolous, his eyes fell on El Yuxia's face, and he smiled playfully. El Yuxia frowned, you. Before he finished speaking, El Yuziming pushed her away. He had lost face in Huo Yao's place. When El Yuxia stood up and said, he only felt that his face was even more dull, and finally gave Huo Yao a fierce look. Angrily left. El Yuxia's face also couldn't hold back, and she stood still. After half a minute, El Yuziming, who walked out of the ward, turned back to the door, Mom, why are you still here? If someone is willing to stay here to take care of Grandma, don't worry about that. After that, he really left without looking back this time. His Ioman has always spoiled his son like his life, but he didn't care to teach Huo Yao anymore, so he hurried to catch up. El Yuxia, who was left alone, looked blue and white. As soon as His Ioman and El Yuziming left, El Yuxia naturally had no position to stay. 
she found an excuse and exited in embarrassment. After a few people left, the old lady looked at Huo Yao and explained, Yao Yao, the reason why I didn't tell them that you were taking care of me in the hospital was because. Huo Yao handed the water glass to her hand and interrupted her faintly, I know, I'm not angry, you don't need to be so nervous. When Yang Kaihua heard this, he sighed in relief and took a sip from the cup. It was the medicine she used to drink. He couldn't help but raised his head and asked in surprise, Did you just go to get the medicine for Grandma? Huo Yao let out a hum, he hooked his feet to the chair next to him, and sat down lazily, Why didn't you take the medicine I gave you during this time? Yang Kaihua held the water glass and tightened his hand subconsciously, his eyes drifted a little, and he did not dare to look directly at Huo Yao, I have something to eat. Huo Yao looked at her with a smile but didn't say anything. Yang Kaihua was most afraid of her granddaughter's smile. The excuse she had thought up a long time ago seemed to be stuck in her mouth. In the end, she was defeated and whispered, I really didn't mean to take the medicine you gave me. Yes, but the medicine is gone. Huo Yao tapped her finger on the arm of the chair, behaving lazily and casually. After a few seconds, she said lightly, the medicine was taken by the Lu family. Yang Kaihua nodded after a long while, and she knew she couldn't hide it from her. All right, put the medicine aside, then let's talk about why you suddenly fell ill last night. Huo Yao's voice was quite soft, as if he was just asking about a very common thing. But Yang Kaihua knew it was not. This was a sign that she was already angry. After a moment of silence, she smiled bitterly. In fact, it is because the medicine is gone. Apart from me at home, only the babysitter who takes care of me is the only one who takes care of me. Xiaoman made a call. Many words can basically guess the whole story without explaining in detail. Huo Yao pressed his eyebrows and sighed a little helplessly, you can call me directly when the medicine is gone. Yang Kaihua lowered his head, restraining the bitterness in his eyes. Seeing that she was not speaking, Huo Yao didn't continue to ask, and changed the subject, what's the matter with Min Yu? How could he send you to the hospital last night? Yang Kaihua was stunned when he heard Huo Yao's name, and then said, maybe he called his mobile phone when he fell ill last night. Teacher Xiao Min is a kind person. You must thank him for grandma. She didn't say that because she came to this new city and was almost unaccompanied. Her daughter could not rely on her. Now her closest granddaughter also has her own family. In this city, she only knows Min Yu. He, she would never think of anything else. Teacher Xiao Min. Huo Yao tilted his head, with an expression on his face looking at the old lady, you call him teacher. Um, isn't he your tutor? Yang Kaihua was stunned. Huo Yao blinked. Although I don't know what misunderstandings are in it, but, it's okay, it can save a lot of explanations. She hummed, he is my tutor. Yang Kaihua heard the words and didn't doubt him. He only sighed with emotion, you are a good tutor. You can successfully reverse your academic performance from the bottom until now you can get the first place every time. He must be called to eat at home, we have to thank him well. Huo Yao. Min Yu, who was far in the capital, suddenly sneezed. At this time, his handsome facial features were slightly white different from the usual, but his eyes were still deep and dark. Master, is it physically? Zhou Yun looked worried. Min Yu raised his hand, it's okay. The auction will only start at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Would you like to go back to the manor for a rest? Zhou Yun asked concerned. No, go directly to the venue later. Min Yu's eyes were clear, and he paused slightly. He turned his head, be sure to pay attention to anyone who enters the venue tonight. Zhou Yun nodded, I understand, as long as that person appears, we will definitely be able to keep the person. Min Yu casually flicked his cuffs. After a long time, he said indifferently, I hope. As long as he needs the medicine, he will definitely appear. Zhou Yun lowered his voice, 
his expression dull and unclear. Here, Huo Yao watched the old lady finish the medicine and talked with her about the conversation. After all, she was a little older, and her body was still weak, so she fell asleep shortly after being tired. Huo Yao tucked the quilt for her, and after a while, she walked out of the ward. As soon as he took the elevator down to the first floor, Huo Yao ran into his Iomen. No, to be precise, she should be waiting for her deliberately. You come with me, I have something to tell you. There are a lot of people coming and going, so his Iomen's voice is not so sharp, but his face still has the same arrogance as before. Huo Ya raised his eyebrows and looked at his Iomen's back who had already walked toward the flower bed outside. He thought for a few seconds, lifted his steps, and followed. I ask you, what kind of medicine did you give the old lady? His Iomen's eyes were cold, looking at Huo Yao like a heinous wicked person. Huo Yao put his hands in his trouser pockets, with a casual expression, Why, is there a problem with my medicine? His Iomen laughed angrily by her attitude, There is no packaging instructions, no manufacturer, this kind of three no medicine, do you really dare to give it to a 60-70 year old man? Huo Yao, do you think kill her? Three no medicines. Huo Yao suddenly let out a chuckle, lazily raising his eyelids, his eyes dark and flowing, and facing his Iomen's questioning face, You, no, Tao, I, medicine, value, more, less, money, is it? Her voice was very slow, and she spoke every word, as if deliberately and ridiculing. His Iomen was taken aback by her way of speaking. After a while, she returned to her senses and snorted coldly, no matter how valuable your medicine is, it is also three no medicines. How much is a local medicine in the countryside worth? It's really funny. After a pause, his Iomen said again, what's more, I have shown it to the doctor. Even the doctor said that this kind of rural medicine should not be tried easily. In addition to increasing the heart load, it is no different from a chronic poison. The old lady's body indicators are already very stable. If it were not for your medicine, how could she suddenly fall ill last night? Huo Yao, if something really goes wrong with the old lady, you are the culprit. Huo Yao's lips curled up, and he didn't feel angry at this kind of remarks. He just asked lightly, is the doctor you administered the drug highly myopic and undocumented? He's Iomen. Huo Yao chuckled and shook his head. Huo Yao didn't bother to waste time here. Without saying anything, he turned and left. His Iomen returned to his senses and looked at Huo Yao's back, his face pale. Huo Yao went to the nurse's desk on duty to explain a few words to the nurse, and then left the hospital. Although the old lady fell ill suddenly, but fortunately, she was sent to the hospital in time and she had her medicine, so she naturally didn't have to worry about any problems. But when she walked out of the hospital, Huo Yao inadvertently saw a somewhat familiar figure, her footsteps stopped subconsciously, and she quickly remembered it in her mind. It seems to be her fourth brother's manager, Tong Yu. We only met yesterday, and Huo Yao still has some impression of him. After squinting her eyes, she scanned the crowd again, but did not find Huo Xiang's figure. The agent is in the hospital, it doesn't mean that her fourth brother is there. After all, he said last night that he would fly to a neighboring province and city to shoot the MV. At this point in time, I'm afraid it was on the plane. Then, Huo Ya retracted his gaze, and walked outside without stopping. Not long after she left, from the toilet at the side door, came out a man with a peaked cap and a black mask covering most of his face. With a list in his hand, Tong Yu walked to the man's side, Brother Xiang, Dean. They are already waiting. Huo Xiang's gaze fell on the list in Tong Yu's hand, and his deep eyes were still dim. Let's go. Tong Yu knew that it was very difficult for Huo Xiang to pluck up the courage to come to the hospital, and patted him on the shoulder. Maybe there will be a miracle. Huo Xiang laughed mockingly. After a while, the two went directly to the dean's office. At this time, in addition to the dean, 
there was also an expert in neurology. Tong Yu politely nodded at the two of them, and then handed over the checklist in his hand. Two minutes later, the dean took off the glasses from the bridge of the nose, and said with a little regret, the spinal cord is severely damaged, and no one cannot recover for three to five years. Of course, this is only the second thing. The most important thing is that the spinal cord is injured. Nerves, this has a big impact. Yes, nerves connect all parts of the body. If spinal nerves are damaged, sensory abnormalities will occur in the slightest, and paralysis will occur in severe cases. According to Mr. Huo's inspection report, it is moderately damaged and can only be treated conservatively. It is guaranteed to be completely cured, and even if there is a one thousandth possible cure, you will not be able to perform large-scale strenuous exercise in the future. The neurology expert also added. Huo Xiang squeezed his fist hanging by his side. Even though he had been numb after hearing the results of this examination many times, each time he felt painful like a sharp knife stuck to him. Is there no other more effective treatment? Tong Yu's eyes were red. It was because he knew that this hospital had almost the best level of neurology in the country, so he found the dean and this neurology expert through the relationship. What he wanted was not the same answer as other hospitals. Sorry. Tong Yu wanted to say something. Huo Xiang next to him had already stretched out his hand to take his arm, and then nodded to the dean and expert, I understand, thank you. After speaking, he turned around and walked outside without waiting for them to say anything. His back was thin, his whole body was filled with despair, and he looked inexplicably sad. Although he had seen a lot, the neurology expert let out a helpless sigh, and suddenly his eyes swept to a magazine next to him, thinking of something, he hurriedly stopped Huo Xiang, wait. A bit. The expert picked up the magazine and flipped through it quickly. Although our hospital can't do it, maybe someone abroad can treat your neurological problem. Huo Xiang had already reached the door. Hearing this, he suddenly turned around, Who? The neurologist held the magazine in the air and pointed his finger at the photo above, This is the person, the Chinese genius doctor, Lin. Huo Xiang's gaze fell on the photo in the magazine, and at that moment, he was taken aback. This Lin at the age of 19, has already won many medical awards in the world. His random medical research report can cause a sensation in the medical field. He is especially good at this neurological disease. If he can treat you it's not impossible to recover. When the neurology expert said this, his face was still with admiration, which shows how highly he recognizes this Lin. When Tong Yu heard this, his face showed ecstasy. Can you give me this magazine? The expert was not stingy, and handed over the magazine in his hand, however, I heard that this Lin has a very strange temper and will not easily give it to others. You, you can try it. Tong Yu took the magazine and thanked the people. At this time, he could no longer take care of the other party's eccentric temper. What is important is that the body of his celebrity artist has hoped to recover. Even if the opponent won't make a move easily, he still has to find ways to get the opponent to treat Huo Xiang. Asterisk. After walking out of the hospital and getting into the car, Tong Yu still held the magazine like a baby, and finally his expression was no longer as anxious as usual. Huo Xiang, you don't have to worry about your body anymore. We have hope now. As long as we find this Lin, we won't be far from standing on the stage again. I check this Lin online to see if there is any relevant information. While Tong Yu was talking, he took out the phone again. Huo Xiang was still immersed in the surprise of seeing the photos in the magazine. He didn't pay much attention to what Tong Yu said. For a long time, Tong Yu had already had a look of great hope, and once again became dignified, this Lin, the temper seems to be really weird. It is rumored that unless it is a world-class incurable disease, otherwise, it would not be too bad for him to act may. Tong Yu turned his head to look at his artist, his voice was a little muffled, Huo Xiang, we. Huo Xiang finally recovered, he slowly said, interrupting Tong Yu, if it were me, 
he would shoot. Tong Yu's eyes narrowed, not knowing where he was suddenly confident, what do you mean by this? Huo Xiang took the magazine from his hand, and after looking up the photo of Lin, he took off the black mask on his face and raised the magazine, compare it and see what is the same. Tong Yu was even more confused by his actions, but his eyes still looked back and forth. After a while, he wondered and said, they are all the same and handsome? No, Brother Xiang, at this time, you are still in the mood. Who looks more beautiful than a genius doctor? Huo Xiang's face turned dark, and he raised his hand and pressed his eyebrows, with a bit of gritted teeth, don't you think I look a lot like him? Tong Yu heard the words and observed it carefully, it looks a bit like. His words suddenly stopped, and an incredible expression appeared on his face, you shouldn't be. Seeing that he seemed to have realized the truth, Huo Xiang put down the magazine and put on the mask again, okay, let's drive. Huo Ya returned home from the hospital. Not long after he walked in, Huo Yangzi also came back. It has been many days since Huo Yangzi left after an unhappy last time. When Huo Yangzi saw her sister again, although she was not angry, she deserved it in her heart. Therefore, her eyes were light. The fourth son didn't come back yesterday. Huo Yangzi looked around the hall and asked Song Ning who was cooking in the kitchen. I'm back, but he left after having dinner last night, saying that he was going to fly to City B to shoot the MV today. Why, did you come back suddenly to find something to do with him? Song Ning gave him a puzzled look. When Huo Yangzi heard this, he said softly, It's not a big deal, but I haven't seen him for a long time, thinking he will rest at home for a while when he comes back. I called you yesterday, you were busy with work again, missed it. Song Ning said angrily. Huo Yangzi coughed dryly. You haven't had lunch yet? The meal will be ready in a while. You can go to the living room and chat with your sister for a while. Song Ning paused, and added another sentence, Take your temper, you are your sister, don't always wear colored glasses to see people. Huo Yangzi wanted to say not to eat at home, but after hearing the next few words, he finally swallowed. Huo Yao was reading a book on the sofa with his legs crossed at this time, with a focused expression, even Huo Yangzi approached and sat down on the sofa next to her, as if he hadn't noticed it. Huo Yangzi's eyes were dim, thinking that she was deliberately ignoring him, so he didn't take the initiative to speak to her, but picked up the TV remote control next to him. Suddenly, the sound played by the TV broke the quiet atmosphere in the hall. Huo Yao just raised his head and glanced, then lowered his head to continue reading his book, as if he was not affected by the outside world. Huo Yangzi didn't really want to watch TV, but because of Song Ning's instructions, he couldn't take the initiative to speak, so the channels switched aimlessly. As for what program was on the TV, none of them paid attention. But soon, a variety show being broadcasted on Mango Channel at this time made Huo Yangzi stop switching the remote control. Because El Yuxia appeared on the screen. El Yuxia is a sing and jump singer. She is very agile on stage. She is also in the C position in the team, so she is the one who gives the most shots of the whole show. The feeling that she is born to shine is very strong. People like Huo Yangzi who have never watched variety shows can't help but feel that his adopted sister El Yuxia is indeed very talented on stage. Over time, it is inevitable to become popular. Huo Yangzi didn't change the channel anymore, just looked at it. After the show is over, there is the host interview session. As a sea biter, El Yuxia will naturally be the host's key interview target. Excuse me, little fairy Xia Xia, what do you do during the rest of the day except for training? The host asked. On TV, El Yuxia, with a delicate makeup, with a sweet smile, politely replied, except for training, I mostly read books all the time. After all, everyone knows that I am still a senior in high school. Haha, <laughs> such a hard-working Xia Xia, do the audience friends like her a little bit more. The host teased to the camera. Immediately after a second or two, 
she continued to smile and ask questions, I heard that you participated in the, and you also achieved the national ranking sixth in the preliminary test. So Syasya, you are now what's your mood? Do you have any inspirational words to share with us all? Seeing Huo Yangzi here, her eyebrows were raised lightly, and her expression was quite surprised and unexpected. He knows that his adopted sister's results are very good, but the first test results rank sixth in the country. Then it can't be described by a single good word. Learning tyrants and learning God are all well deserved. On the TV, Elusia was still calm and self-effacing. Answering the host's questions calmly, the first test results don't mean anything. I will continue to work hard to get a good place in the next competition and live up to everyone's treatment of me. Expectations After that, the host turned off the topic with a smile, and began interviewing other members of the team. Huo Yangzi didn't pay attention to the follow-up interview on the TV anymore. Instead, he took out the phone from his pocket and sent El Yuxia a WeChat message. How did you get the first test? After a pause, Huo Yangzi glanced at Huo Yao, before waiting for her to answer, he said again, Xia Xia also participated in this competition, the results are not bad, the ranking is very high. He didn't say that he was sixth, he was thinking about saving some face for his sister. Huo Yao's eyebrows moved slightly and did not speak. When Song Ning and Huo Jinyan heard it, they didn't seem surprised, but... Oh, Xia Xia's performance is not bad. Song Ning nodded perfunctorily. Huo Jinyan next to him also commented calmly, El Yu Xia's child has always done well, and it is not surprising that he ranks high. However, no matter how good it is, it is not as good as their daughter. After all, their daughter has a full score and the real hammer ranks first. Seeing that the reaction of the two seemed too plain, Huo Yangzi couldn't help raising her head to look at them strangely. How could El Yuxia really feel sorry for her adopted daughter for more than ten years? Although she was not happy for her, it would not be such a reaction. Could it be because Huo Yao did poorly on the exam, and they were caring about her feelings? Huo Yangzi's lips twitched lightly, but he just got the idea and soon after hearing Dad Huo's voice came over. Like our family, it's different. I just transferred from a high school in a small county, and I haven't fully integrated into the teaching methods in the big city, so I got a full score on the test. It really shows us old Huo parents. After Huo Jinyan finished speaking, the pride of Ranjian on his face was not too exaggerated. He just wrote the words my daughter is the smartest in the world with a pen directly on his face. That's not it, it's ranked first in the country. Song Ning also changed his attitude, with his chin raised, not to mention being proud. When Huo Yangzi heard what the two said, he suddenly raised his head and looked at them, with shock on his face, full score. First place. Seeing the incredible look of the boss, Song Ning blinked innocently. Right, haven't I told you? You may have forgotten. Huo Jinyan next to him looked at his wife, and added a word of the truth. Why, isn't her grades very bad? Huo Yangzi blurted out subconsciously. Song Ning raised her eyebrows and glanced at her elder son, who told you that you have poor grades. She seemed to have forgotten that she used to think that her daughter had poor grades. Huo Yangzi was stunned. If you don't believe me, you can go to the internet to check it yourself, and the ranking will come out as soon as you pull it. Song Ning hummed softly, expressing disappointment at the boss's distrust of his sister. Hearing this, Huo Yangzi's face became stiff, and the chopsticks in his hand almost couldn't hold. He didn't take out the phone to check the ranking, because he knew his parents would not make jokes about this kind of thing. Huo Yangzi was in a complicated mood and looked at Huo Yao who had been eating quietly next to him. For so long, he always thought that his sister had poor academic performance, and even the transfer admission letter from the previous middle school was considered improperly. Especially when I heard that she had participated in the knowledge contest some time ago, I felt even more preconceived that she was fooling around. 
what's more ridiculous was that he thought he was good for her at the time and wanted to hire a tutor for her, but she refused. Later, she thought she was so lofty. Huo Yangzi's lips suddenly twitched a sneer, and he was amused by his misunderstanding during this period of time, and felt speechless for his sister's behavior that she was doing well but did not explain anything. If she said a few more words to him, maybe there would be no misunderstanding, let alone so much unpleasantness. The food is tasteless, maybe it loses face, and maybe he doesn't know how to face Huo Yao, so when the phone in Huo Yangzi's pocket rang, he found an excuse that the company was still in trouble, and he hurried before eating. Gone. Song Ning looked at the direction of the gate, quite confused, isn't it the weekend today? Huo Jinyan raised his eyebrows and said unclearly, uncomfortable. Song Ning looked at her husband, but didn't quite understand. Huo Jinyan just smiled, and said nothing. Asterisk. Huo Yangzi went downstairs and returned to the car without starting the engine the first time. Instead, he took out his mobile phone and searched the internet for National Knowledge Contest. Soon he entered the homepage of the official website, and found the results ranking section without much effort. Clicking in, almost no need to deliberately search for it. At first glance, he saw Huo Yao, who ranked first, and the next 105. Very good results. Huo Yangzi's eyes fell on the screen for a long time before moving his fingertips, and then sliding down, he saw El Yuxia's name again. If he didn't mention the game casually today, and his parents didn't talk about his sister's performance, perhaps he would have always misunderstood that his sister was worse than his adopted sister, and even would always be proud of the wisdom of his adopted sister. Thinking of his attitude a while ago, Huo Yangzi grabbed a handful of hair annoyingly, then threw the phone aside and started the car. It's just a simple initial test score, and it's no big deal. On Monday, as soon as Huo Yao arrived at the school, he was called to the principal's office. Student Huo, long time no see. The principal looked at Huo Yao with a smile on his face, with a gentle and polite attitude. Huo Yao nodded politely at him, Hello. What can you do with me? That's it. I was too busy during the beginning of school, and I went on a business trip again. I didn't expect that false rumors like you would go through the back door would spread in the school. When the principal talked about this, his face sank, and then he continued to speak with a little self-blame, actually, I blamed my negligence. I didn't make it clear with a few teachers before, which led to this kind of misunderstanding. Don't worry, Huo. We'll return you innocence. Huo Yao looked at the principal in surprise, and when she recovered, she shook her head, No, the rumors stop at the wise, the more you explain, the more jealous it becomes. The principal was stunned, as if she didn't expect that she would not care at all, but after another thought, it is normal for a genius like her not to look at anyone in his eyes, but he, but he seems a little narrow. Up. Isn't it more enjoyable to slap your face with strength? Huo Yao added this sentence more than a smile. You. The principal smiled and shook his head, then walked to the drinking fountain, poured a glass of water for her, and did not continue the topic just now, by the way, this time the national knowledge contest, I am very look good on you. Huo Yao took the water cup, heard the words, and if she thought about it, she suddenly raised her eyebrows and said, I didn't register for the competition. The principal gave a dry cough, and after motioning her to sit down and talk, he said, I added your place online. Mainly I think this competition should not be difficult for you. The principal said with emotion. It is a coincidence to know Huo Yao. This 17-year-old girl successfully challenged the difficult and miscellaneous problems of several famous schools in Beijing in one fell swoop on the internet. How many students couldn't solve the problem for ten and a half months? When she got it, she almost looked like a chicken in elementary school. It didn't take any effort to solve the problem. The inferiority thinking is simply amazing. For this reason, she almost collapsed the education systems of several major colleges and universities, and no one knew who did it. 
If it hadn't been for the online enrollment answer of number one middle school to expose her, I am afraid he would not have known that the person who made the head bald in the major colleges was a high school student of 16 or 7 years old. And the reason why she can pull people into number one middle school can be said to rely on luck. If she doesn't happen to be studying in S City, number one middle school is the best high school, I am afraid that the other party will not look up. Of course, this little girl would really choose number one in the end, the principal never expected. Facing the inexplicable trust of the principal, Huo Yao said helplessly, I just want to study hard. The principal's lips twitched, study and competition do not conflict with each other. So, why did you let me participate in this competition? Huo Yao asked directly. The principal pushed the glasses on the bridge of his nose, although the admission rate of the first high school in the past two years has been maintained at the previous level, it has obviously declined. After a pause, the corners of his lips were slightly bitter, I just I don't want the school's century-old reputation to fall into my hands. Headmaster Huo Yeokeo made an okay gesture, I understand. You don't need to be circumspect to talk to smart people. The principal looked at Huo Yao, thought for a few seconds, and said, in fact, this competition is not easy. If you can stand out, you may be recruited by people from the major associations in Beijing. You will be fine in the future. Huo Ya raised his eyebrows, a little surprised. The principal smiled, with your strength, you are also a poor talent in our first middle school. I can't help much. Huo Yeo Kong waved her hand, looking lazy, no, it's good to be like this now. Then she stood up and said, class is about to start. I will go back to the classroom first. Okay. The principal didn't say any more, but when Huo Yao was about to step out of the door, he suddenly said to someone, I didn't tell anyone about that online. Huo Yao paused slightly, turned his head and smiled, and left. The principal's eyes were long, and when Huo Yao was completely gone, the gentle expression on his face suddenly sank, turned and walked to the desk picked up the landline phone and made a call. Although the little girl said that she didn't need any clarification, it didn't mean that he would tolerate some people taking advantage of his absence to make small actions behind the scenes. In a blink of an eye, the time has come for the official city preliminaries of the National Knowledge Contest. The examination room for the municipal preliminaries examination is not in each middle school's own school examination, but concentrated in the Municipal Education Center building for unified examination. Huo Yao didn't need to go to school today, but went directly to the examination room. Song Ning and Huo Jinyan, who learned that their daughter was going to take an exam today, got up early and even prepared breakfast more and more abundantly than usual. After having breakfast, when they went downstairs, the two were still in the elevator chattering about whether Huo Yao had brought everything together. Seeing this nervous couple who are going to be on the battlefield, Huo Yao was a little bit dumbfounded, Dad, Mom, I'm just a simple little game, not so exaggerated. Song Ning's lips twitched when she heard the phrase small competition in her daughter's mouth. She couldn't help but remember that when she asked her what competition she was participating in a few days ago, she also told her with this perfunctory attitude that it was a boring competition without a prize. Is it a small competition to get a place recommended by the highest university in the country? Song Ning's expression is quite complicated, and the female goose is a bit ugly, what should I do? After a short while, Huo Jinyan drove his old Santana, carrying his wife and daughter to the city education building. When I got to the place, most of the people standing at the gate were parents of students. In addition, there were TV stations shooting videos. Hey, do you still want to be on TV in this game? Huo Jinyan asked in surprise. Huo Yao glanced at the camera at the door, twisted his brows, and shook his head, I don't know. Just leave it to him, just play normally, Song Ning said next to him. Yet. Yeah. Huo Yao's voice was faint, and the whole person looked calm, without panic. At this time, the driver of the Lu family also sent Lu Xia over. As soon as Lu Xia and Hizioman got off the car, 
the photographer who was still shooting at the gate immediately pointed the camera at Al Yuxia, and the host went to interview them. Huo Jinyan and Song Ning also saw Al Yuxia, they were not surprised, after all, they knew she had participated in this competition. Seeing that she was surrounded by the TV station, the couple did not step forward to say hello. After all, there was Hizioman standing beside her, and they had no affection for the Lu family. Especially Song Ning, thinking of Hizioman's original attitude, she felt angry, not to mention that she left her daughter in a small county since she was a child. That kind of patriarchal conception is disgusting. Song Ning withdrew his gaze with a heavy face, and turned his body sideways. He didn't want her to see Huo Yao, so he hurriedly said to Huo Yao, Daughter, come into the examination room. Go in and find your position first. Huo Yao saw that Song Ning looked different, but didn't ask much, I'm going in. Song Ning patted her shoulder, Come on, mom and dad are waiting for you outside. Huo Yao gave a light hum, hung the student ID in front of his chest, walked to the door lifted the ID and scanned it to the staff, and the verification passed. Here, after the TV station focused on interviewing El Yuxia, it went on to film other students' parents. Without the camera, Hizioman, who still had a decent smile on his face, glanced over Song Ning and Huo Jinyan who were standing not far away, wrinkled his brows, lowered his voice, and asked, Why is your former adoptive father and mother? Here. El Yuxia knew that Hizioman looked down on the people of the Huo family, and it was not easy to greet Song Ning and the others in front of her. He only lowered his eyes and replied softly, Huo Yao also participated in this competition. When Hizioman heard this, he immediately sneered and said, She dare to participate in this competition with that grade. Isn't she funny? El Yuxia thought of Huo Yao's initial test results, her expression was a little ambiguous and she only said, Mom, you may not have paid much attention to Huo Yao before, she is, very good now. Very good? Can my daughter be good? Hizioman didn't take Al Yuxia's words seriously, and didn't want to ask anything about Huo Yao in detail. He raised his hand and looked at the time, very impatient, okay. You should also go in quickly and get a good grade in the exam, don't shame our Lu family. When El Yuxia heard this, the corners of her lips twitched lightly, and she made a perfunctory hum. The official competition of the National Knowledge Contest, the municipal preliminaries are not like the first test, and the score is completed after a test paper is tested. In addition to the answer sheet, there are theoretical tests and on-site test of thinking divergence. A lot of. The written test takes one hour. After you finish the written test, you must go to the next room to answer the questions on the spot. There is also a time limit. Huo Yao got the test paper, scanned it around, and shook his head a little boringly. Although the question was a bit more difficult than the first test, but, it was really not challenging. Very disappointed to pick up the pen, slowly answered the question. Well, because she answered the questions too fast last time, she was mistaken for her attitude towards the exam. This time she will take all the seriousness she should have as a student. Forty minutes later, Huo Yao thought he was already slow but he was still honored to be the first examinee to hand in papers. This speed even the invigilator felt surprised. Therefore, when handing in the papers, the invigilator paid special attention to the name of the other party. Huo Yao, isn't this the perfect candidate in the last preliminary test? The invigilator was in a daze holding the test paper. Huo Yao went directly to the on-site exam room next door to answer the questions. The rule of this exam room is that the three on-site invigilators each randomly select a question, and the candidate will answer it on the spot. The answering time does not exceed 10 minutes. Is it a bit like an interview? Huo Yao tweeted about this it was indeed an exam model developed by MLM, and it was too boring. Soon, three questions were selected. One question was a theoretical question about history, and the other two were science questions, which mainly considered people's brain thinking ability. After reading the questions, 
Huo Yao didn't panic at all. After all, after reading so many books, it was still useful. It took about two minutes before she finished answering all the questions, and her face was flat throughout the entire process, as if everything was in pediatrics. Instead, the three invigilators were frightened. After Huo Yao left, they couldn't help but sigh. This candidate is probably the most powerful of all the students I have ever met. In two minutes, I also drew three questions with the highest degree of difficulty. With this abnormal logical thinking, I seem to have seen the birth of a genius. No, this year's international competition arena, there should be our country's name. The whole test was filmed by TV stations. The host originally thought that the first person to walk out of the test room would be campus star El Yusya, and all the staff were ready to interview her. After all, a star Ziyahua who is currently in the heat will definitely explode a lot, so there is no traffic. It was just that Huo Yao would be the first person to come out. The host was stunned, but soon, she reacted and walked up with the microphone to ask about the exam. Although it is not El Yusya, the girl who came out is really tall, and she has a cool and handsome look all over, but she has a sense of camera. Huo Yao glanced at the approaching camera and pressed his eyebrows with a headache. She would come out later if she had known it. This classmate, how do you feel about the exam questions this time? Are you confident in entering the next round of municipal finals? The host asked with a smile. Huo Yao looked at her without any expression on her face, and replied faintly, It's quite simple. Hearing this perfunctory and conceited answer, the host holding the microphone felt a little choked for the first time. As a general examinee, shouldn't they be very modest to answer every question from the host in the face of TV interviews? Why is this examinee so stubborn and impatient? The point is, she is not even angry at all. Sure enough, Face value is justice. The host returned to his senses and hurriedly said with a smile, Haha, presumably this classmate is very confident in himself, then I wish you a successful promotion here. Thank you. Huo Yao bypassed them and walked out. The host looked at Huo Yao's back, and tweeted, This girl doesn't know which school she is from. She has a really good look. If she enters the entertainment industry, she won't know how many fans will be crazy about it. Asterisk. As soon as Huo Yao came out, Song Ning and Huo Jinyan, who were waiting outside, saw her sharply. Daughter, the exam is over? So fast. Song Ning glanced at the gate as he spoke, and no other candidates came out. Yet. Huo Yao replied lightly, thinking that she could come out sooner if it weren't for keeping a serious exam attitude. How was your exam? Although she knew her daughter would be fine, but as an old mother, she was still curious. Huo Ya raised his eyebrows lightly, little meaning. When will there be results? Huo's father next to him asked. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. Dad Huo nodded, indicating that he remembered, let's go, mom and dad will take you to a big meal and celebrate. This is the two couples who just waited outside and discussed it. Huo Ya raised his eyes and looked at the two of them, isn't the results coming out tomorrow? Hee <laughs> hee, my daughter is a schoolmaster, you don't need to look at the grades to know that you can pass it safely. Song Ning replied with pride. Father Huo smiled and shook his head, okay, let's talk about it in the car. Soon, the three of them drove away. Not far away, he's Ioman who had been sitting in the car waiting, had a panoramic view from Huo Yao out to the time the family left. Especially when Huo Jinyan was driving an old and worn out Santana, the corners of his lips became more disdainful. Sure enough, what kind of family will give birth to what kind of daughter, a poor look. He Ioman raised his hand and glanced at the watch on his wrist. His exquisite makeup became a little more impatient, and he said to the driver in front, Go and see why the lady hasn't come out. Good lady. About ten minutes later, El Yusya finally came out. As soon as she got in the car, Hizayoman's questioning voice came over, Why did you come out so long? El Yusya was stunned, 
seeing he's Ioman's impatience, and then replied warmly, this time the question is deeper, it took a little more time, and there was a TV station interviewing, it was a little delay. A moment. When he's Ioman heard this, the sharpness on his face suddenly dissipated a little, and the corners of his lips twitched, revealing a sneer. That's right, her adopted daughter will hand in the paper so quickly only if the exam questions are too difficult. How do you feel on the test? Hezioman asked. It's okay, it's definitely okay to enter the city finals. Although Alusya said calmly, it is not difficult to hear that she has full confidence in the results. Well, that's good, my Lu family's daughter must be better than others, especially that Huo Yao. Hezioman snorted softly. Alusya looked out of the car window, her eyes were cool but he's Ioman didn't see it. What she hates most is that her mother compares her with Huo Yao, which makes her feel that she is out of class. Here, Huo Jinyan took his wife and daughter to a well-known seafood restaurant in the city. After getting off the bus, Huo Yao looked at the magnificent decoration in front of him. There were expensive restaurants everywhere, and he was a little surprised. Dad Huo went to the car, but Song Ning walked out two steps, but found that her daughter hadn't kept up. He turned around and looked at his daughter suspiciously, why don't you leave? Huo Yao blinked and said something seriously, I'm thinking, how much money you can spend on a meal here? After all, our family is not rich. When Song Ning heard her daughter's words, she couldn't help being amused, don't worry, don't talk about a meal, even if you come here to eat every day, mom can afford it. After all, this restaurant is their property. However, the daughter has always mistakenly thought that the family is poor. She and her husband agreed that this seemed quite interesting, so they did not plan to tell their daughter the specific situation at home. Hearing this, Huo Yao said half-jokingly, I always feel that you have a lot of things that you haven't told me. For example, it clearly claims to be a poor family, but it seems that the more you look at it, the less poor it is? Song Ning coughed, how come it's nothing? Huo Yao said oh, but his voice was dragged longer, obviously not convinced. The restaurant manager had already received a call from the boss, so he had been waiting at the gate. When he saw Song Ning, he hurriedly pushed the door and walked out to greet him with a very respectful attitude, MRS. Hearing this madam, Huo Yao raised his eyebrows, and his eyes fell on his mother's body with unknown meaning, as if he was saying, this is what you call nothing? Song Ning touched her eyebrows, the car turned too fast, she didn't have time to stop. After clearing her voice, Song Ning told herself to stay calm, so she nodded faintly to the restaurant manager, then turned her head and said to her daughter without changing her face, how about this restaurant's service attitude? It is good. The restaurant manager next to him. Is the boss madam complimenting him? The corners of Huo Yao's lips twitched, and he glanced at the restaurant manager who had always been bent over, and the magnificent restaurant behind him, as if he had seen the distance he was experiencing poor life getting farther. After a while, she nodded, it's pretty good. Go ahead, let's go to the box ourselves. Song Ning winked at the restaurant manager as he spoke and motioned for him to leave. Although the restaurant manager doesn't know what medicine the boss's wife is selling in the gourd, as a qualified subordinate who knows what to say, he naturally knows what to do with a glance. Soon, the restaurant manager left, and also ordered his staff not to disturb the boss's wife's family dining. Song Ning was quite satisfied with the restaurant manager's response, and took her daughter by the hand and walked to the exclusive box on the second floor. The box is very large, and the decoration inside and outside is the same, revealing grandiose and rich luxury. Daughter, see what you want to eat. Song Ning put the menu in front of Huo Yao's eyes and motioned to her to order anything. Huo Yao picked up the menu and turned to the first page. When she saw the price on it, she was silent again. I always feel that I took the wrong script today. At this time, Huo's father, who had parked the car, came back. He rolled up his shirt sleeves while talking, 
the second child just called and said he wants to come over for dinner. Song Ning was surprised when he heard this, he's back. Well, I went back yesterday. Dad Huo nodded, then looked at the daughter beside him, hey, you will see your second brother later. Hearing this, Huo Yao handed him the menu and asked, what does the second brother do? Seeing that her daughter rarely asked her elder brother, Song Ning said calmly, it's the lawyer who filed a lawsuit. When Huo Yao heard it, he really overturned the fact that several brothers are all gnawing old rubbish. Your second brother has been on business all this time, and you will be able to see him later. Huo Jinyan was afraid that his daughter might mistakenly think that the second one was deliberately not coming back to see her, so he explained. Huo Yao gave a light hum, his face looked as good as ever. About twenty minutes later, the waiter just brought a table full of seafood, and Huo Ting Grui, the second child of the Huo family, also arrived. Huo Ting Grui's appearance is introverted, his eyes are deep, and he wears a pair of rimless glasses on the bridge of his nose. He looks gentle and sharp, which is quite an aura of an elite lawyer. As soon as he entered the box, he greeted Song Ning and Huo Jinyan, and turned his gaze on Huo Yao. When he saw her, his eyes were obviously surprised. The little girl can be said to have inherited all the advantages of her parents, she has a good face, and she sits quietly and looks very well behaved. The whole person does not look at all the rusticity of growing up in a small place, and she sent him WeChat before. The picture on the photo looks like two people. Unexpected. Huo Ting Grui thought for a few seconds, then walked over, pulled the chair beside Huo Yao, sat down, and introduced herself quite formally, Yao Yao, I am your second brother, Huo Ting Grui. Huo Yao met Huo Ting Grui's gaze, his eyes were clear, and his voice was steady, good elder brother. Huo Ting Grui heard this second brother, and suddenly felt a little more inexplicable in his heart. He didn't know if it was a blood relationship. He always felt that the second brother shouted it sounded much more cordial than Xia Xia before. Thinking about it this way, Huo Ting Grui said again, call the second brother again. Huo Yao. Huo Ting Grui coughed, and gently pushed the glasses on the bridge of his nose with his hand. The topic changed, second brother didn't bring the meeting ceremony today. Why don't we go to choose a gift after dinner? When Huo Yao heard this, he shook his head hurriedly, no, I have to go back to school in the afternoon. What is the quirk that the family likes to give gifts? Huo Ting Grui then remembered that his sister seemed to be a student, but he did not force him to think about it, and then took out the mobile phone from his pocket, and while opening it, he said, the second brother will send you a small red envelope and wait for you it's not too late to choose a gift when you have time. When Huo Yao saw Huo Ting Grui's move to take out his cell phone, his temple suddenly slammed, and before he could refuse, the cell phone on the table rang. With a glance, the transfer amount on it. Huo Yao's lips twitched. Does her second brother misunderstand the definition of the word small? 200,000, is it small? Is it small? Is it small? Huo Yao pressed his eyebrows and it turned out that this behavior of transferring money at any disagreement was ancestral. Huo Ting Grui saw that her expression was quite complicated, and could not help touching her chin. It must be a little bit less than 200,000 in his heart, so he took out the wallet from his pocket again and took out a card from it. You can also hold this card. You can swipe anything you want to buy in the future. The password is... Huo Ting Grui finished speaking and put the card directly on the table. Huo Yao. The feeling of taking the wrong script of a giant is getting stronger and stronger. Dad's card, daughter, you must remember to swipe it. Dad Huo, who was not calm for a moment after his second son took out the card, jumped out to remind him. Huo Yao. While eating, Huo Ting Grui had been picking vegetables and shelling for Huo Yao, looking very gentleman. By the way, which school does Yao Yao study at now? Huo Ting Grui asked after putting another peeled shrimp into Huo Yao's bowl. Huo Yao raised his head to look at him, and replied calmly, 
number one in. When Huo Ting Grui heard it, he was quite surprised, that's great, I missed your second brother by two points and missed the first one. I still feel very sorry to this day. After finishing, he really sighed. You played games all night before the college entrance examination. You did it yourself if you missed it. It's not worthy of sympathy. Song Ning, who was next to him, was very rude. Huo Ting Grui coughed, concealing the rare embarrassment, and muttered, Everyone has a time when they are young and frivolous. Oh, you have the most excuses. Look at how well behaved your sister is. She got a perfect score just after participating in the preliminary test of the National Knowledge Contest, which is much longer than your brother's. The corners of Song Ning's lips raised up when he mentioned her daughter's achievements. Is it right? Huo Ting Grui's face could not hide the shock. Of course, what I lied to you, I just finished the municipal preliminaries this morning, and the results will be published tomorrow. You can go and see the results at that time. Song Ning snorted. Huo Ting Grui turned his head to look at Huo Yao, and was a bit shocked. I knew about this competition when I was still studying. It is held every two years and I participated in the god level scholars from all over the country. Full marks. This is too abnormal, right? Huo Yao looked at Huo Ting Grui's complicated gaze, pursed his lips and showed a good smile, and replied with a beating, small. Huo Ting Grui. Ah, I feel like I am no longer the smartest boy in the family. Asterisk. After eating, Huo Yao was about to go back to school. It was originally Huo's father who was responsible for driving to the place, but Huo Ting Grui took him alive halfway. In the car, Huo Ting Grui would turn his head from time to time to look at his younger sister sitting in the co-pilot. He couldn't help but sigh in his heart. They were all born to the same parents. Why is there such a big difference? Huo Yao noticed the gaze on his side and tilted his head, a strand of hair hanging down his shoulders added a bit of playfulness, his eyes were clear and doubtful, second brother. Huo Ting Grui coughed, I'm thinking that someone who can train my sister to be such an excellent person should find time to visit. He probably knew a little bit about the situation of this relative, knowing that she was not raised in Lu's family since she was a child, but at the country's grandmother's house, so he suddenly became curious about this grandmother. Huo Yao didn't expect that he would talk about this, and he pondered Xiao Su, I will ask the old lady when I have time later. Yet. Huo Ting Grui responded softly and did not speak any more. After a short while, the car drove to the school. Second brother, I went in first. Huo Yao unlocked his seat belt and said to Huo Ting Grui. Huo Ting Grui pressed his eyebrows and responded softly, Okay. Seeing that he was always doing this kind of action subconsciously along the way, Huo Yao couldn't help asking more, is it uncomfortable? Huo Ting Grui raised his head, stunned, then shook his head and smiled, occupational disease, that's it when you consume too much mental energy. Huo Yao made a thoughtful O and pushed the car door. As soon as one foot fell on the ground, she turned her head again and said, when will you go home? Huo Ting Grui looked at her unclearly, Hey! I have medicines for replenishing qi and nourishing the nerves. It works. I will prepare it for you in advance when you want to come back. Huo Yao explained quite casually. After all, it was the person who received the little red envelope for the meeting, so she must give something back. Although her medicine is much more precious than the little red envelope, Huo Ting Grui returned to his senses and understood that his sister was kind, and smiled. When he was about to speak, she heard her voice and came over again, otherwise you can send me an address and I can express it to you. Seeing his sister's serious expression, Huo Ting Grui swallowed as he wanted to refuse, and said, No, I will go home and live this time. Huo Yao snapped his fingers at him, OK, then I'll give it to you at night. After she said that, she jumped out of the car, the action was pretty cool. Huo Ting Grui put his hands on the steering wheel, looked at his sister who was gradually walking away, smiled and shook his head. Don't say, 
this sister is pretty cute, oh no, she should be pretty handsome. Starting the car, Huo Ting Grui turned around and left the school. When leaving, the car happened to pass by the loose car head on. El Yuxia in the car inadvertently looked up and saw Huo Ting Grui's face in the opposite car. Stop! El Yuxia hurriedly said to the driver. The driver stepped on a sudden brake and stopped on the side of the road. El Yuxia pushed the car door, but when he looked back, Huo Ting Grui's car had gone away and it was barely visible. Biting her lip a little annoyed, El Yuxia hurriedly took out her mobile phone from her bag and dialed Huo Ting Grui. After beeping several times, Huo Ting Grui on the other end of the phone answered, Xia Xia? Is there anything to do with me? El Yuxia still looked at the direction where Huo Ting Grui's car was leaving, and said warmly, It's fine, I just want to ask if you came back from a business trip. Huo Ting Grui, who was driving here, paused, and there was no unusual emotional ups and downs in his voice, and he replied, No, the company's case this time is more complicated, and it may not be that fast. El Yuxia heard that, holding the phone's fingertips subconsciously tightened, her face was a bit unsightly, and after a few seconds, she found her voice, Ah, yes, is it? Then you must tell me when you come back. Time to pick you up at the airport. Huo Ting Grui hummed perfunctorily, I still have customers. I'll talk when I'm free. Okay, then, second brother, you should be busy. After hanging up the phone, El Yuxia stood still in place for a long time, and a thin mist suddenly formed in her eyes. Although the two cars passed by just now, she would not admit that face and the other's license plate number. Why did the second brother lie that he was still on a business trip? Is Huo Yao so indifferent to her because he is back? Yes, his direction just now was to come out of school, and he didn't have to guess at all to know that Huo Yao must have said something to him. El Yuxia squeezed her fist, her pointed nails almost pierced her palm. As soon as Huo Yao returned to the classroom, he was originally lying on the table and looked listless. His face immediately became bright, giant sister, you are back. How did you test this time? Huo Yao hooked the broken hair on his cheek behind his ears, and said lightly, It's okay. Menjiang tut twice, and listened, it was this kind of undue beating. Look at your mental state, didn't you sleep well last night? Huo Yao glanced at her and asked. Meng Ying shook her head and knocked her chin on the table, looking unlovable. Do you know that this morning the head teacher announced something that everyone and God are indignant with? Huo Ya raised his eyebrows slightly, waiting for her to follow. The annual death exam. Meng Ying let out a long sigh, Do you know why Chen Yu was called a devil? Because every time someone's exam score is lower than the previous one, it will will be subjected to very abnormal physical punishment. Huo Ya looked at her lazily, Physical punishment. Yes. Every afternoon after school, you can jog ten laps in the devil's playground for ten days. You say that you are abnormal. Meng Ying Guang began to tremble as he said. Huo Yao's lips twitched, this is called perversion. Meng Ying immediately exploded when he heard this, isn't this a metamorphosis? Ten laps. Sister Giant, don't you know how big our school's playground is? Every time I run a physical education class, I'm exhausted. Donkey. What is the difference between running ten laps and killing her? Oh, she forgot, every PE class of this giant is like an athlete, as if they were not attending PE classes in the same school. Huo Yao touched his chin, swept the shadow up and down, and then shook his head, the eye sockets are black and blue, I often stay up late, my body is swollen and I lack exercise. I am overdrafting my life at a young age. You can't do that, baby. Puff, you make me feel like you are like an old Chinese doctor who is professional and foolish. When Meng Ying spoke, she reached out and took out a makeup mirror from the table box. But, my eyes are really is it dark? Huo Yao. It seems that dark circles under the eyes are quite heavy. Menjiang put down the mirror in an sorrowful manner, tilted his head, 
his gaze fell on Huo Yao's face. The skin is fair and translucent, without any impurities, it is simply, no harm without contrast. Meng Ying covered her face, Hey, I'm shocked, don't come to comfort me. The corners of Huo Yao's lips twitched, and he only said lightly, Review, your death monthly exam. Meng Ying put down her hand and looked at Huo Yao with enthusiasm, Giant sister, you are too much, double blow will not take you like this. Huo Yao smiled slightly towards the people. Meng Ying. You are no longer the giant sister I know. In the evening, after eating, Huo Yao went upstairs, turned out the bottles and cans in the box, took a light grey bottle from it, and then went downstairs again. Second brother, I'll give you this one, one tablet a day, and I'll get it later when I eat it. Huo Yao handed the porcelain bottle to Huo Ting Grui. Huo Ting Grui raised his eyebrows and took the bottle, is this the chi nourishing medicine you said at noon? While talking, he slowly unscrewed the bottle cap. Yet. Yeah. Huo Yao nodded, trust me, it's very effective for you. Huo Ting Grui smiled, then put the bottle on the end of his nose and smelled it. A faint smell of Chinese medicine burst in. It was not unpleasant. On the contrary, there was a refreshing feeling. Even the mind seemed a little clear. This medicine. Huo Ting Grui raised his head in surprise and looked at Huo Yao, it seems that I feel comfortable smelling like this. The corners of Huo Yao's lips were raised. Of course, this medicine was priceless. I'll try one. Huo Ting Grui couldn't wait to pour out one, the size of a mung bean, with a glass of water next to it, and he swallowed it in one mouthful. Although it is a Chinese medicine pill, it is not as difficult to swallow as the Chinese medicine on the market during the whole swallowing process. Su was preconceived as soon as he smelled the smell, which made Huo Ting Grui feel very comfortable. As soon as he took it, the heaviness that he had been hanging around all over the whole body disappeared a lot. This medicine is really amazing. Huo Ting Grui twisted his neck slightly, then raised his head again, then got up from the sofa and twisted his waist. So, Song Ning and Huo Jinyan, who had just come out of the kitchen, saw a scene of Silly Sun twisting his waist and his convulsions together. Second, what are you, doing? Song Ning asked in shock. Isn't her second child always gentle? How can you do such an insulting gesture? Two spicy eyes. Huo Ting Grui turned around and didn't notice the expressions of his parents at all. He twisted his waist and his voice was a little agitated, the little girl gave me a bottle of medicine, and I felt relaxed as soon as I took it. What a god! Song Ning's lips twitched, pay attention to your image. What does it look like? Huo Jinyan added disgustingly. Huo Ting Grui was inexplicably beaten. Song Ning walked over and saw the porcelain bottle placed on the coffee table. It had the same shape as the bottle her daughter gave her before but with a different color and probably a different effect. Your sister's medicine is really amazing. My migraines in the past ten years have been cured for most of the time. Song Ning said with emotion. She didn't take her daughter's medicine seriously before, and she didn't know how to find her face was hurt after using it. Really? Why haven't I listened to you during this time? Huo Ting Grui didn't say anything but Huo Dad next to him asked suspiciously. He only knew that his daughter's pill was very useful. Song Ning sat down on the sofa and leaned back softly, I'm not waiting to eat more for a while, I will tell you when I want to be completely better. Hearing this, Huo's father squinted his eyes and asked in a low voice, Is it so amazing? He remembers that his daughter also gave him a bottle, although the name sounds a bit hurting his self-esteem, he wouldn't refuse to eat it if it worked. Of course. Have you heard me have a headache during this time? Song Ning snorted softly. Not really. Father Huo shook his head. Then it's over. Song Ning spread his hands, his eyes fell on her second child again, and asked strangely, You are young, where is the problem? Huo Ting Grui listened to his mother's words, vaguely felt that something was wrong but after thinking about it, 
he couldn't pick out any problems, so he simply said, occupational disease. Song Ning let out a cry and withdrew his gaze. It doesn't affect talking about girlfriend. Yao Yao, where did you get this medicine? Huo Ting Grui asked curiously, feeling more energetic. Huo Yao's eyes drooped slightly, and his face remained unchanged. Knowing a friend is a medical student. It turned out to be like this. Huo Ting Grui thought for a few seconds, but did not continue to ask, but said, This medicine works so quickly, there should be no side effects, right? Although he was questioned, Huo Yao also expressed his understanding. After two seconds of pondering, he said patiently, The essence of Chinese medicine lies in not hurting the foundation, strengthening the foundation, and having minimal side effects. Of course, the medicine is three points of poison. The words are not joking either. Huo Ting Grui is not an insider and can't understand the essence, but he understands it with minimal side effects, not to mention his sister will not give him problematic medicine. The second brother is obvious. Huo Ting Grui scratched his head, expressing shame for what he had just questioned. Huo Ya raised his eyebrows lightly, it is not normal without questioning. Huo Ting Grui smiled, feeling that his sister is like a treasure girl. Interesting. There was Dad Huo who was listening to them all the time, but suddenly his eyes fell on the cabinet next to him. Old Huo, what are you looking at? Song Ning couldn't help asking strangely when she saw her husband staring at the locker next to her. Of course, Dad Huo wouldn't tell what he was thinking, so he just withdrew his gaze slowly and his voice still made people unable to hear anything unusual, I'm thinking whether the cabinet is a bit windproof. When Song Ning heard the words, the corners of her lips twitched, and said angrily, I think you are a little bit windproof when you stand there. Dad Huo happened to be standing next to the TV cabinet at this time. Although his figure is still good, he looks a bit rich because of lack of exercise. Fortunately, he is tall enough, even if his body develops horizontally, he does not look too much fat. But when he heard his wife's disgust, he moved two steps aside and sighed, Oh, I think I was a handsome guy when I was young. By the middle age, he was even disgusted. So turning his head, Dad Huo looked at Huo Yao again, Daughter, do you have any weight loss pills? Huo Yao's forehead jumped, You lack exercise. Otherwise follow me for a morning jog every morning. When Dad Huo heard this, he shook his head again and again, as if he heard something terrible, No, no, I think I am quite young now, and I don't need a morning jog. He hasn't exercised in decades, so getting up and running will kill him. No, no. If you get fat, get fat. I think my daughter's proposal is pretty good. Song Ning nodded in a serious way beside her. Oh, I can't tell you, I'm back to the room. Dad Huo grunted, then turned to open the locker next to him, took out a wooden box from it, clutched it like a baby, and left. Watching her husband's behavior, Song Ning murmured suspiciously, What the is this old Huo doing? Huo Ya raised his eyebrows, but smiled unclearly. This little old man is strangely cute. On the second day, at 10 o'clock, the city-level preliminaries of the National Knowledge Contest got results. As soon as it arrived, Menjing couldn't wait to take out his mobile phone, and while clicking on the web page, he quickly asked, Giant sister, please report your exam number to me, and I will check the results for you. Huo Yao tilted his head and lazily reported a few numbers to her. As soon as Menjing entered, he immediately clicked the query. Perhaps the web page data was not updated so quickly, and there were many people inquiring. The page turned around for a while before it popped up. Seeing the score, Menjing Sai suddenly widened, and then, fearing that he might be wrong, he zoomed in on the phone page. I'll go, 200 points, big sister, you are awesome. Meng Ying was stunned. The score of the written test is 150 points and the three on-site answers are 60 points. The total score is only 210 points. 
Her family's giant giant actually got 200 points in the test. What kind of perversion is this? Because there is only a written test in the first test, the full score of the test is understandable, and the question is relatively not particularly difficult, but the municipal preliminaries are different, the difficulty coefficient increases, and there is more on-site answering. The probability of wanting full score is almost zero. Therefore, for the total score of 210, only 10 points were deducted, which is undoubtedly even better than the last full score. Huo Yao didn't know what Menjiang's head was thinking at this time. When she heard this score, she was quite puzzled and said, is it only 200 points? She expects to get a perfect score no matter what. Just. Meng Ying looked at Huo Yao, who seemed to be dissatisfied with the score, and blinked. Giant sister, you're a little floating. Huo Yao, who does not accept Waterloo, has dark eyes, and his eyebrows become a ball. I have answered all the questions, and I can't make mistakes 100%. Where is the deduction? Meng Ying next to her heard the words, her expression became more complicated, she really didn't understand the world of studying God. Unable to solve the puzzle for the giant sister, Meng Ying lowered his head again and returned to the main page of the official website of the National Knowledge Contest. There was a link section where you could see the national ranking. Taking a deep breath, Meng Ying eased her nervousness, and with a fingertip, the page jumped directly to the national ranking. First place, Huo Yao, 200 points. Second place, Yilian Fan, 195 points. Third place, Chinja. 193 points. Meng Ying did not continue to look at it, her eyes fell on the name of the first giant sister, and she had a premonition in her heart, but she was still shocked. Raising his head, Meng Ying handed the phone to Huo Yao, giant sister, don't worry about that tenth. We are already ranked first in the country. Huo Yao only glanced lightly, and said with a little seriousness, this is not a question of ranking first. This is a question of her study. Meng Ying's lips twitched, why don't you ask about the situation? Huo Yao felt reasonable, stood up, and said seriously, yes, you can't just put aside the inexplicably deducted points just because you got the first place. Then she still wants face. Meng Ying, puff. No, no, giant sister, I just mentioned it subconsciously, not really. Seeing Huo Yao, who had already walked out of the classroom, Meng Ying covered his face. Okay, I feel that the giant sister is more handsome. Here, El Yuxia just took out her mobile phone, ready to check her results in this competition. Xiaxia, do you know how many points your adopted daughter scored this time? Chong Ying Ying was holding the phone, and the shock on her face couldn't be concealed. Because last time I learned that Huo Yao's score was ranked first in the country, Chong Ying Ying paid special attention this time. She didn't even check El Yuxia's results first, but directly clicked on the ranking list. As soon as she saw the results, she hurried to find El Yuxia. El Yuxia paused in her hand holding the phone, her expression on her face was the same as usual, oh, how many points did she score on the test? No one dares to believe it. It's 200 points. Chong Ying Ying didn't know what kind of mood to use to describe such an achievement at this time, and it seemed a bit far fetched to suspect that the other party was cheating. A full score can be suspected of cheating, but cheating again to get such a result. Isn't that questioning the fairness of the entire competition? After all, this test is not in the school, but is supervised by the Municipal Education Association. When El Yuxia heard this 200 points, his mind buzzed, as if something had been broken, even his calm face became pale. 200 points, how could she get 200 points in the test? There must be something wrong, she didn't believe it. El Yuxia's thoughts were chaotic, and he wanted to touch the information in his mind, but it became more and more chaotic. Xia Xia, are you okay? Chong Ying Ying only noticed El Yuxia's face, her pale expression looked pitiful, she couldn't help but patted her mouth severely, a little annoyed. 
she actually mentioned Huo Yao in front of her. Isn't it clear to add to her? Chong Ying Ying smiled awkwardly at the corner of her lips, and turned on her phone if nothing had happened, hurt, let's talk about what she does, I'll help you see your score first. Soon, Chong Ying Ying found Liu Xia's results and ranking on the overall ranking list. 186 points, ranking 10th in the country. If she hadn't seen Huo Yao's results, she would think this score was quite high, but now, Chong Ying Ying touched the tip of her nose, with a happy smile on her face, and said, Xia Xia, your score it's pretty high too. Liu Xia's confused thoughts were pulled back by Chong Ying Ying's voice, she forcibly suppressed the strange expression on her face, and asked calmly, how many points? 186 points, the national ranking is exactly 10th. When Chong Ying Ying said this, the volume was obviously a little weaker, at least much worse than when Huo Yao was only mentioned about 200 points. Liu Xia lowered her eyes when she heard the words, and said in a faint voice, I see. After saying this, she put the phone back in the desk box, took out the physics textbook, looked down, and the ponytail fell on her shoulders, blocking half of her face. Chong Ying Ying looked at her, feeling very uncomfortable. She wanted to say something comforting, but she didn't know what to say. All this is caused by Huo Yao. Having seized Xia Xia's 17th year daughter status, and now returning to return all kinds of people, it is really annoying. Stay in the experimental class, can't you be a low-key person? She's really mad at her. Asterisk. Here, Huo Yao went directly to Chen Yu's office. Student Huo, you just came when I was looking for you. Chen Yu's serious face would subconsciously soften it every time he sees Huo Yao. Huo Yao stared blankly, Hey. Congratulations on your ranking first in the city level preliminaries again, great. Chen Yu said with sincere emotion. I think she was misled by Wei Ming's stubborn old stubbornness, and she almost rejected such a good seedling like him. Humph, Huo Yao once again won the first place in the country this time, so the old stubbornness is even more upset. The corners of Chen Yu's mouth couldn't stop raising when he thought of this. Huo Yao was silent for two seconds, Teacher Chen, I suspect that my preliminaries in the National Knowledge Contest made a mistake. Chen Yu was stunned, something went wrong? What do you mean? I think I shouldn't have scored 200 points. No, I'm sure I shouldn't have scored 200 points. Huo Yao's expression was very serious, and his tone was serious. Puff. What is meant by 200 points? The total score is only 210 points. Chen Yu looked at Huo Yao a little complicated. For two seconds, she said, then how many points do you think it should be? Full score. Huo Yao raised his chin and replied confidently. Ahem. Chen Yu was choked again. To be honest, she wanted to believe Huo Yao, but she had learned about the rules of yesterday's game and the chance of getting a full score was almost zero, so. Student Huo Yao, it doesn't matter if you didn't get a full score this time. Don't be discouraged. Anyway, it is also ranked first in the country and has already made it to the city finals. Chen Yu said with earnest comfort. Hearing this, Huo Yao said a little bit dumbfounded, Teacher, I don't care about the full score issue, I just want to know where my ten points were deducted. When Chen Yu heard this, she realized that she had misunderstood, she couldn't help but smiled, and said, it turns out that this is the case. The people from the Education Association are now in the principal's office. I just interrupted and didn't finish talking. Originally, the principal asked me to inform you. In the past, you now ask how the points were deducted. After a few seconds, Chen Yu was afraid that Huo Yao was nervous. So she added, although there are people from the Education Association, you can answer whatever they ask, don't be afraid. Huo Yao Kao Chen Yu said okay. Not long after, Huo Yao went to the principal's office. At this time, in addition to the principal in the principal's office, there were two middle-aged men sitting on the sofa, 
probably from the Education Association of Chen Yu. Huo Yao only glanced at it and then withdrew his gaze, then politely nodded to the principal, Principal, you are looking for me. Yet. The principal smiled and beckoned, Come on, let me introduce to you. These two are both members of the Education Association. This is Tian Yat, Secretary General of the Municipal Association, and this is Zhao Zhao, a senior member of the General Association. Inexpensive. Huo Yao nodded at the two of them steadily, without any timidity or tension on his face. The Secretary General raised her eyebrows. The little girl was quite calm. After clearing her voice, she said, Student Huo Yao, right? Can I ask you a question? Huo Yao looked at him, his eyes were black and white, please speak. The Secretary General sat up slightly, according to my observation, your answers to these two questions are slightly different from the way you teach in your school. Did you ask a famous teacher for guidance? When this was said, let alone him, even the principal next to him wanted to know. No. Huo Yao's voice was quite low, but after a few seconds, she suddenly asked, Is this very related to the deduction of my city preliminaries? The secretary general was surprised that Huo Yao did not ask a famous teacher for guidance, and even more surprised that she was sharp. Immediately he nodded and said, Your written test and on-site answers should actually be full marks, but the last two answers of your written test paper are beyond the outline. Although the answers are correct, a series of principles are considered. All questions are treated as a deduction of five points. Super Gang Huo Yao squinted, not quite understanding. Zhao Lian cleared her voice and explained her confusion, the so-called Chao Gang is a question that is answered in a way that is not within the scope of high school knowledge. This is called Chao Gang. Even if the final answer is correct. Huo Yao frowned. It turns out that the exam still has this kind of attention? Zhao Lian said, because Chao Gang violated the principle of fairness. However, considering that the competition does not strictly stipulate the answering method, if you are awarded zero points for both major questions, you will not be treated. Fair, so only ten points are deducted when combined. Hearing this, Huo Yao fell into a bewildered silence. There is a simpler way, and she has to follow the complicated routine step by step. It seems that she still knows too little about academia. After a while, Huo Yao said, So in every subsequent exam, I can only use the knowledge of high school to answer questions, so that I won't be inexplicably deducted points. Theoretically, this is the case. The secretary general laughed. Huo Yao pressed his eyebrows sadly, Okay, I get it. This time she pitted herself on her own, too clever is unacceptable. Zhao Lian was silent for a while, then raised his head and looked at her inexplicably and said, If you can get on the stage of international competition, you don't have to think about Chao Gang. When the secretary general heard Zhao Lian say this, he saw an accident in his eyes. Although this is only a member of the association in name, he has a very wide network of contacts in several major associations in Beijing, not to mention that he is also a biology professor at Qing University. Is it a bit exaggerated to have high hopes for a little girl who just made her debut in the preliminary test and preliminary contest? The secretary general did not mean to despise Huo Yao. When the first test results came out, he still felt that this student could be recommended. Only after he asked in detail, he learned that she was a transfer student who had just transferred from a small county. Perhaps the basic skills of this transfer student are very solid, but can the teaching level in a small county be as good as in a big city? Even if she answered the questions in the preliminaries this time, it also reflects her very smart side, but with so many contestants across the country, who is not a top student. What's more? He has experienced many times in this competition, and he has seen through how many students who came to become a dark horse, although this little girl is indeed impressive, but she may not have the ability to compete in international competitions. As a result, the secretary general grabbed his mind and didn't answer anything. 
but Huo Yao felt a little fresh when he heard what Zhao Lian said. The corners of his lips curled up, and he asked a little playfully, is it like a cloud of masters in international competitions? Zhao Lian looked at Huo Yao, stunned, and then subconsciously nodded, this is natural. The principal who hadn't spoken next to him quietly glanced at Huo Yao, and saw that her face was clearly warlike, and could not help but touch her chin silently. I feel that this year's international competition stage is going to be lively. He was very curious about the true strength of this kid. Then the secretary general and Zhao Lian didn't ask Huo Yao any more questions, and soon let her go back to the classroom. After she left, the secretary general put down the teacup in his hand and looked at Zhao Lian, Professor Zhao, you seem to be very optimistic about this Huo Yao. Zhao Lian smiled and said, it's a good seedling. But, she? International competition. If it's a science student, it's okay, but a liberal arts student, the secretary general shook his head. Don't underestimate anyone. Zhao Lian's eyes were deep, and then he turned to the principal, which was meaningful, you are lucky. The headmaster's lips bent, and he nodded calmly, I think so too. The secretary general's eyes turned around the two of them, and he couldn't help whispering directly in his heart, is there really something special about that liberal arts student? After taking a sip of tea, Zhao Lian suddenly remembered something, and asked, by the way, there is another campus star in your one, and he also participated in this competition, right? The principal raised his eyebrows, are you talking about El Yuxia? It seems to be the name. Zhao Lian vaguely remembered, he raised his head and looked at the secretary general again, your chairman specially mentioned her to me. How is her performance this time? It seems to be okay, let me check. When the secretary general spoke, he took out his mobile phone, and after a while, he said, 186 points, ranking 10th. When Zhao Lian heard this, his interest in El Yuxia diminished a lot, but he still said, this score is not bad, but I kind of hope to make it to the national finals. The secretary general looked at him, remembered the previous instructions of the chairman, and opened his mouth to speak, that. It's just that he hadn't said what he said, but was suddenly suppressed by the principal's voice. Although El Yusya's academic performance has always been relatively stable, her focus may be on other developments, and the focus is on participation. The principal looked light. Yes, it may be more promising to be a star. Zhao Lian smiled and shook his head, then turned to look at the secretary general, Old Tian, what did you just want to say? The secretary general chuckled and looked at Zhao Lian's attitude. How could he suggest that he should meet El Yuxia? Suddenly, he shook his head and said, nothing. When Zhao Lian saw this, he didn't ask much. Instead he looked at the time on his wrist, stood up, and said, we should go now. The principal also stood up, okay, let's have another meal together before you return to the capital. Yet. Yeah. Zhao Lian raised his hand, indicating that he didn't need to send it, and walked out of the office. The secretary nodded to the principal and followed. Huo Ya returned to the classroom automatically ignoring the classmates who looked at her changing eyes every day. The first thing he did when sitting in his seat was reading. After a very painful lesson this time, she came to the conclusion that she still did not learn enough, she must learn from the pain. Meng Ying looked at the giant sister who was exuding super combat power, as if she would be stabbed by her combat power if she got closer, she could not help but touch the tip of her nose. This guy went to the teacher and then suddenly changed like this. He must have been asked which question he answered wrong, so he was hit. Meng Ying feels that she is at the same table as the giant sister. Although she can't help with her studies, she can comfort her when she is frustrated. Eyeballs rolled, Meng Ying stretched out her hand, and gently poked Huo Yao's arm, giant sister, don't feel uncomfortable. It's just a wrong answer. Anyway, we are still the first in the country. Not big. Huo Yao turned her head, and her deep eyes fell diagonally on Menjing's face. For a while, she said solemnly, 
no, you don't understand the pain of not answering the question too much. Puff, what did you say to the giant sister? What is the pain of not answering the question? Meng Ying was a little confused. After looking at her for a few seconds, Huo Yao shook his head, then withdrew his gaze without speaking. Meng Ying. How did she feel that the giant sister was discriminating against her IQ at this time? So, after carefully reading Huo Yao's words, Meng Ying's eyes suddenly widened, No, big sister, did you answer the question? Huo Yao didn't lift his head, Yes, even though the answers are correct, I still deducted 10 points. Not happy. Meng Ying heard this, the whole person was stunned. So, the giant sister she just thought was hit by a wrong answer, is it just her imagination? She was wrong, her giant sister will always be her giant sister, it is impossible to be hit, it is impossible in this life. Meng Ying looked up to the sky with a long sigh, and silently took out the textbook. If she doesn't work hard, she is afraid that she won't even be qualified to be hit. After finishing the last class in the afternoon, Huo Yao packed up his things and walked out of the classroom. As soon as I got down the teaching building, I happened to ran into El Yuxia who had also come downstairs. Although in the same middle school, this is the second time I met this semester. The last time was at the school gate. Huo Yao's delicate face did not fluctuate halfway, but he took a faint glance at El Yuxia, then retracted his gaze, and continued to walk towards the school gate. After El Yuxia's footsteps, she didn't seem to expect to meet Huo Yao. The results of the competition made her feel a little bad, so she left the classroom later than usual. If you know that you will meet Huo Yao, she will leave early. Although there was annoyance in her heart, El Yuxia did not show it on her face, as if two unrelated strangers, gathered the shoulder straps of the small bag, and walked towards the school gate. However, her pace was obviously slower than usual. As soon as Huo Yao walked out of the school gate, the mobile phone in his pocket suddenly rang, and when he found it, he saw that it was the phone of the old lady. He pressed the answer button without hesitation. Hey, Grandma, well, I'll come over in a while. After hanging up the phone, Huo Yao's eyes narrowed, and he walked toward the side of the road, preparing to take a taxi to the hospital. But as soon as she walked over, a black car happened to drive over and stopped in front of her. The window of the car was lowered, revealing Huo Ting Grui's handsome and gentle face. Huo Yao tilted her head slightly, looking at the people in the cab, a little surprised, second brother. Her eyes swept across the car logo on the steering wheel, her expression a little inexplicable. Last time it was a small BMW, this time it was a small Mercedes. The rumors that a few older brothers did not seek improvement at the time seemed to have been overturned again. Huo Ting Grui didn't pay attention to his sister's gaze. He raised his eyebrows and said, Get in the car, and today your second brother will pick you up. Huo Yao shook his head and said, I'm not going home yet, I have to go to the hospital. Hospital. Huo Ting Grui was puzzled. The grandmother who brought me up was sick and hospitalized a few days ago. I will go see her today. Huo Yao said directly without concealing it. When Huo Ting Grui heard this, his eyebrows became more serious, second brother will send you over, and go see the old man by the way. Huo Yao thought for a while, but did not refuse any more, opened the door, bent over and sat in, and then gave him the address of the hospital. Here El Yuxia walked out of the school gate and saw Huo Yao got on a black Mercedes. She couldn't help but squinted. After a few seconds, she quickly walked towards the car where the El Yu family sent a driver to pick her up every day and opened the door. Sat in. Keep up with that black Mercedes. She told the driver. Twenty minutes later, Huo Yao and Huo Ting Grui arrived at the hospital. Huo Ting Grui thought it was not good to go to see the doctor empty-handed, so he asked Huo Yao to go to the ward first, and he went to the nearby supermarket to buy things. Seeing his insistence, Huo Yao also let him go, and soon she went upstairs. There was not only the old lady in the ward at this time, 
the other two were the attending doctor and the other was the hospital director. As soon as Huo Yao pushed the door to enter, Yang Kaihua's face was immediately stained with joy and excitement, Yao Yao is here. Huo Yao pursed his lips, with a soft color in his clear eyes, yet. She walked over, put the shoulder bag in her hand on the chair next to her, and turned her eyes to the doctor and the dean on one side. Her voice was calm and confused, what can you do with me? The attending doctor glanced at the dean, then stood up, and said politely, that's it. When we examined Mrs. Yang, we found that she was recovering very quickly. After inquiring, we learned about the old lady. Take other medicine. Huo Yao's eyebrows moved slightly, and he probably knew what they wanted to ask. In the afternoon, I asked Mrs. Yang for some melted concoction. After researching, I found that this medicine seems to be very effective on the heart. So I wanted to ask Miss Huo where you bought it. Got it. When the attending doctor asked this, he was faintly expecting. Huo Yao looked at him, and while slowly peeling the apple with a fruit knife, he faintly replied, Sorry, this medicine is made by a friend of mine and is not sold. When the attending doctor and the dean heard the words, there was a ray of disappointment in their eyes. Although disappointed, both the attending doctor and the dean also understood the preciousness of this medicine. Not to mention the formula, the single production time and the amount of content required for each medicine are extremely delicate, especially the traditional Chinese medicine, which is more difficult than the mass production of Western medicines with equipment. Therefore, even if the medicines made by this special technique are available, they will not be in large quantities. This is the reason why there is a price but no market. The attending doctor and the dean knew that they couldn't ask anything from Huo Yao, so they didn't bother any more and got up to leave the ward. At this moment, the door of the ward opened, and He Xiaoman saw that the dean and the attending doctor were in the ward at the same time. His expression changed in an instant, and even Huo Yao next to him did not pay attention to it, and asked in a slightly anxious voice, Is my mother's body checked again? The dean and the attending doctor were stunned, and when they recovered, the dean replied politely, That's not true. As soon as He Xiaoman heard this, the worry he had just raised immediately eased, with a wry smile on his neatly made up face, I thought that something happened to my mother, even the dean, you were dispatched. The dean stroked the breastplate on his chest and said with a smile, We just came to ask about the medicine that Mrs. Yang was taking. There is no other meaning. He Xiaoman was stunned, the medicine taken? What medicine? Just after saying this, she seemed to remember something, her gaze suddenly fell on Huo Yao who was aside, the politeness on her face disappeared instantly, and she was full of questioning, you took the earthen medicine to my mother again. Huo Yao glanced at her lightly, and didn't want to pay attention to her. Seeing this, He Xiaoman pressed his eyebrows very angrily, Huo Yao, didn't I tell you not to give my mom any more medicine? My mom has worked so hard to raise you for seventeen years. Do you have to harm her like this? Xiaoman, you're talking nonsense again. It's not what you think. The doctors have said that the medicine is very good. Yang Kaihua really feels that this daughter is too confused. Every time she gets something related to Yao Yao, she is so one-sided and preconceived. After marrying into a wealthy family, the market is so blinded. He Xiaoman chuckled softly, I didn't want to tell you that the medicine she gave you had a problem, but now you are still stubbornly making excuses for her sophistry, I. The dean next to him suddenly raised his head, looked at He Xiaoman with an inexplicable look, and interrupted, No, Ms. He, have you misunderstood something? He Xiaoman, who was full of anger and annoyed with something to say, was suddenly interrupted by the dean. As soon as she choked, she looked at the dean, and it took a while to find her own voice, Dean, you said this. The meaning of Ms. Huo's medicine does not have any problems. It can be said that without her medicine, your mother may not be living in the general ward, but may be in the intensive care unit. The dean had a serious face, and it was gone. Your kindness. The dean is a sophisticated person. 
he only heard a few words just said by his Ioman. He probably understood that the little girl next to her should not have any blood relationship with her, so she spoke so sharply when she spoke. He is not a person who likes to inquire about other people's family affairs, but simply can't stand the attitude of questioning indiscriminately. When his Ioman heard this, his eyes suddenly opened, his face was full of disbelief, and even his words were a bit intermittent, why, how is it possible? Her medicine, I even took her medicine to the doctor specially. Even the doctor said that the medicine was. However, she was interrupted again by the dean before she finished speaking. Which doctor have you seen? Is it from our hospital? If it's really a doctor from our hospital, I will expel him immediately. Or Ms. He, do you think my dean is just an empty shell and doesn't understand pharmacology? The dean shook his head speechlessly. It is true that words can not only see EQ, but also reveal IQ. Some people look shrewd, but in fact some places are really not flattering. His Ioman's face was pale and pale, and he only felt a little unbearable, especially when he heard the two words behind the dean, it was very obvious irony. Opening her mouth, his Ioman, who knows her righteousness, lowered her voice and explained in a serene manner, Dean, you have misunderstood. I didn't mean that. I just, mainly, my adopted daughter doesn't understand anything. Great, where can she buy good medicine for the elderly? When the dean heard the words, the corners of his lips twitched, without saying anything, and strode out of the ward. The attending doctor just smiled at his Ioman for unknown reasons, and walked out instead. How can a person with extremely precious medicine be a countryman who knows nothing? Even if you don't understand, it is not easy to get this medicine. His Ioman looked at the direction where the dean and the attending doctor were leaving. His expression was ugly and embarrassed. He stood there like a clown, funny. After a while, after savoring the dean's words just now, his Ioman suddenly turned his head, and his eyes fell on Huo Yao's face again, gritted his teeth and said, Seeing me ashamed in front of the dean, are you happy? satisfied. The corner of Huo Yao's lips evoked an inexplicable smile, I haven't told you the value of my medicine. When his Ioman heard it, he suddenly remembered the sentence the adopted daughter said a few days ago, do you know how much my medicine is worth, and his face became even more ugly in an instant. Are you talking to me about the value of medicine? His Ioman sneered at himself, do you now feel that you have a special face and a special sense of accomplishment? Think everyone is a fool and you play around. Zioman, please stop talking. You have misunderstood and blamed Ye Yeo for your own misunderstanding. You are really getting more and more unreasonable. Yang Kaiuhua couldn't help but said bitterly. He Zioman was angrily laughed, Oh, I don't know the truth. Mom, who is your real relative, Et. After a pause, she glanced at Huo Yao again, and said sarcastically, Yes, I am here to be in the eyes of your grandchildren, so you should cultivate this so-called affection. After speaking, his Ioman shook his sleeve and walked out of the ward. Yang Kaihua looked at the door for a long while before she bitterly retracted her gaze, and then stretched her hand over Huo Yao's hand next to her, My child, I am wronged. Grandma shouldn't call you over today. Huo Yao squeezed the palm of the old lady's hand and said, I didn't take it to heart, you don't have to blame yourself. Yang Kaihua felt even more uncomfortable when he heard this. This child is too kind. Every time Zioman is misunderstood and blamed, he always takes into account her feelings and never defends herself. Even if she is wronged, she always it is so calm and calm. With a long sigh, Yang Kaihua had a vague decision in his heart. Huo Yao didn't pay much attention to the old lady's expression. The mobile phone in her pocket rang. She took it out and saw that it was the second brother calling, but didn't pick it up first, but looked at the old lady again, Right Grandma, my second brother said to visit you, he is downstairs now. When the old lady heard this, the sadness on her face was replaced by surprise, and she hurriedly said after she recovered her senses, You kissed the second brother? Right? 
then you go and pick him up. Yet. Huo Yao nodded. Seeing that the old lady picked up her short hair in a little panic, he couldn't help but say something funny, Grandma, you don't need to be nervous, it's all your own. The old lady put her hands down a little embarrassed when she heard the words, when we meet for the first time, Grandma should leave a good impression on others. Huo Yao smiled and moved a strand of white hair on her forehead to the side for her, it's fine for you. Soon, Huo Yao went downstairs to pick up Huo Ting Grui. Grandma, this is my second brother, Huo Ting Grui. Huo Yao put the nutrition products just bought on the cabinet for the second brother, and slowly introduced it to the old lady. Huo Ting Grui's eyes fell on the old lady, who was probably ill. The old lady's face was a little sickly pale, but her spirit was not bad, and she looked kind and purposeful. No wonder the little girl was thinking about it. Grasping, Huo Ting Grui nodded at the old lady politely and smiled and said, Hello, Mrs. Yang, you are here in a hurry, I will disturb you to rest. The old lady smiled and shook her head, No no, Xia Huo, I'm glad you can come, don't stand up, sit down and talk. Yet. Huo Ting Grui was not polite. He sat down in a chair on the side and looked at Huo Yao. He said again, thank you for so many years of meticulous care and training of the little girl, for making the little girl so good. The old lady was embarrassed on her face, it's because this child is very good. I didn't actually do anything. She followed me and suffered a lot. Huo Yao hooked up the chair next to him and sat down by the old lady's bed, raised his delicate eyebrows, and said proudly, I admit that it's excellent but don't say anything about suffering. After all, who has seen it? I am so good and smart, right? You kid, don't know to be humble. The old lady was amused. It depends on people to be humble. Huo Yao blinked at the old lady. The old lady smiled and shook her head, subconsciously grabbing her hand and holding it. Huo Ting Grui watched the natural and intimate dialogue and interaction between her younger sister and the old lady, which was completely different from the atmosphere when she faced real relatives when she was at home, and she couldn't help feeling a lot more in her heart. It is no wonder that when her parents went to pick up the younger sister at the old lady's house, she would refuse, and would delay returning home for a year. At that time, it seemed to her that this grandmother was the relative who had raised her for more than ten years. Let her leave her family love for more than ten years, but anyone with a conscience might not be able to do this. Huo Ting Grui couldn't help but think of his adopted sister again. After holding the wrong truth of the incident, the adopted sister left Huo's house almost without hesitation, and changed back to her biological father's surname as quickly as possible. The Huo family asked themselves and never treated her wrongly. Although she later explained that she was helpless and that her biological parents forced her, her behavior, is still very chilling. Huo Ting Grui's lips twitched. People can't make comparisons. Once the comparison is made, many hidden problems emerge. Huo Ting Grui grabbed the thoughts in his heart, and chatted with the old lady again. Perhaps it was because seeing that Huo Ting Grui was not as unbearable as his daughter said, and his manners and conversations were very polite, so Yang Kaihua's conversation box seemed to be suddenly opened and kept talking to him. Of course, most of the content of the speech revolves around Huo Yao, who has been talking about it from childhood to middle school, and the more he talks, the more energy he speaks. As the person involved, Huo Yao saw that one of the two talked raptly and the other heard raptly. He raised his forehead and stood up, I'll go to the bathroom. Not long after she had just walked out, the old lady looked at Huo Ting Grui with a more serious look in her eyes, I will ask you to take care of the miserable water in the future. This child has never received any parental care since she was a child. I can see her now I'm back with my biological parents and I'm having a good time. The old lady's voice was a little bit relieved and a little sad, and her face seemed to be covered in melancholy at this moment. Huo Ting Grui's eyebrows frowned subconsciously, always feeling that the old lady's words sounded a little weird, like. After thinking for two seconds, he opened his mouth and said, 
actually, I love you very much. Even after returning to our house, in her heart, you will always be her closest relative. The old lady heard the words, her eyes filled with warm colors, and her stout was also the best granddaughter in the world. Old lady, take care of yourself, don't think too much. Huo Ting grew e comforted. The old lady smiled and said she knew. After a short while, Huo Yao came back. The old lady looked at the darkening sky outside the window, and began to seduce people, it's late, you and your second brother will go home. Grandma has doctors and nurses to take care of you. You don't need to accompany me. You are also nervous about studying in high school. Go back early to review your homework. Huo Ya raised his hand and looked at the time, why don't I stay with you for a while? After hearing the words, the old lady simply lay back on the hospital bed and put the quilt on her body, don't don't, you can go back quickly, I'm tired too, and I want to sleep for a while. Seeing that she was really sleeping with her eyes closed, Huo Yao finally sighed helplessly, stepped forward and gently tucked the quilt for her, then you take care of it, and I will see you tomorrow after school. The old lady hummed. Huo Yao just took two steps, suddenly turned his head and said, Yes, I forgot to tell you. I participated in another competition. After a while, I will bring you back an international trophy. Come on, I know you are great, go quickly, don't mother-in-law is more wordy than my old woman. The old lady's voice was dull, and she turned her side deliberately. Huo Yao, who was disgusted for the first time, touched the tip of his nose quite innocently, and then quietly walked out of the ward. Hearing the sound of the door closing, the old lady who was still facing the door suddenly turned back on her side, her eyes were red looking at the door with too much dissatisfaction and sadness in her eyes. After a long time, she sniffed, shaking hands and slowly took out the phone from under the pillow. Here, El Yusya asked the driver to follow Huo Ting Grui's car until she reached the hospital. When she saw that Huo Ting Grui got out of the car, her mood almost sank to the bottom. Yesterday, she was perfunctory by her former second brother. She only told herself that his attitude changed because of Huo Yao. But today I saw him and accompanied Huo Yao to see her grandmother in the hospital. She was talking and laughing, but she couldn't calm down anymore. Although Huo Ting Grui is the most gentle and temperament among the Huo family brothers, in fact, he is also the hardest and sharpest among them. He can smile at you, but you never know what he is thinking even if she has been his sister for more than ten years, she never sees through him. But just seeing his attitude towards Huo Yao, it was obvious that it was the closeness she had never had when she was his sister before. She didn't understand why she had been a sibling with Huo Ting Grui for more than ten years, and why the relationship between these ten years was no match for Huo Yao, who had just returned for a month. El Yuxia felt uncomfortable, and she didn't know where the stubbornness came from for a while, and instead of asking the driver to take her away, she kept sitting quietly in the car. She kept looking out the window of the car and the gate of the hospital. She waited until her hands and feet were numb and her body was cold. When she saw Huo Yao and Huo Ting Grui walking out of the hospital again, they got into the car and left. Miss, that car has left, do you want to keep following it? The driver turned his head and looked at El Yusya sitting in the back row. El Yusya closed her sore eyes. There was not much expression on her face. After a long time, she said faintly, No, go home. In the car. The international trophy you just mentioned? What's the situation? Huo Ting Grui pushed his glasses and turned to look at the co-pilot's younger sister with a little confusion. Huo Ya raised his eyebrows and leaned his head lazily on the car window, with bright eyes, looking at him, the top five in the National Knowledge Contest finals will represent the country to participate in international competitions. Huo Ting Grui fell into a bewildered silence upon hearing this. Is his sister already smart enough to go outside the country? After regaining consciousness, Huo Ting Grui still asked in a complicated way, you are so confident. Huo Yao tilted his head. Why is this difficult? 
isn't it just a question? This answer is simply, too suffocating. Huo Ting Grui choked, feeling that his IQ was fatally crushed. After a while, he blessed in a sigh of relief, come on. Just give your second brother how to touch the trophy at that time. The corners of Huo Yao's lips twitched, and he gave a light um. Huo Ting Grui thought of something, and said hurriedly, by the way, my second brother deliberately went to check your competition results today. First place. Just tell your second brother what you want to eat. Second brother will give you a good celebration tonight. Huo Yao shook her head. When she was about to say that it was unnecessary, Huo Ting Grui's cell phone rang, so she closed her mouth again. The phone is connected to the Bluetooth of the car. Huo Ting Grui glanced at the caller ID, and quickly pressed the answer button on the steering wheel, Hey, brother, what can I do? Because it was hands-free, when Huo Yangzi's voice came over, Huo Yao could also hear it. Huo Yao didn't react much, he just looked out the car window. I heard you came back from a business trip, where are you now? Would you like to come out for a drink? Huo Yangzi's voice was very gentle. Huo Ting Grui lowered his head, looked around on both sides of the road, and said, My little sister and I are going to find a place to eat. Are you coming? We just happen to be together. Are you with Xia Xia? Huo Yangzi asked almost subconsciously. Huo Ting Grui frowned. Brother, hasn't he recalled the fact that El Yuxia is not his sister? After a pause, he replied, No. In turn, Huo Ting Grui raised his eyes and looked at the younger sister next to him, his voice was a little low and deliberately added, It's awkward. And Huo Yangzi on the other end of the phone was silent for two seconds, and said in a faint voice, I have a few friends here, and there may be other arrangements for a while. It's all a group of big masters, and it's not easy to bring a little girl. Convenient, let's make an appointment another day. Upon hearing this, Huo Ting Grui said casually, All right, I'm still driving, so I'll hang up first. Okay. After hung up the phone, Huo Ting Grui grabbed his attention and turned to look at Huo Yao. He didn't mention his eldest brother at all, but he said a little bit ridiculously, Little cute, do you want to eat? Cute? The corners of Huo Yao's lips twitched, and her expression was inexplicably complicated. Her second brother was a bit skinny. Forget it, let's go home, parents must be waiting. She shook her head and replied. Huo Ting Grui thought for a while, but didn't insist on it. After all, there is no need to squeeze on this day to celebrate. It is okay to celebrate tomorrow. In short, a sweet date with my sister must be arranged for a reason. When El Yusya returned to Lu's house, it was almost seven o'clock. His Ioman has just arrived home for a while, still holding a glass of water in her hand, looking at her daughter in confusion. Why are you back so late today? There was a delay in school. El Yusya was very annoyed, so she was a little absent-minded to speak, and did not say that she had been to the hospital. His Ioman didn't doubt that he had him. After sitting down on the sofa, he seemed to think of something, and said, Your game had a result today, right? El Yusya just put down the small bag, and when his Ioman asked, her eyes were a little dark. Well, it's 186 points, ranking 10th in the country. His Ioman frowned when he heard this, and turned his head to look at her, didn't you rank 6th last time? Why did you rank 10th this time? El Yusya seemed to have guessed that she would ask this way, and only calmly replied, the initial test is different from the official preliminaries, and the difficulty coefficient is much higher. Moreover, there are quite a few that tied for sixth with me in the last initial test. There are a total of 100 in the country. With more than 20 students, I can make the top 10, and I have great hopes of entering the national finals. Although his Ioman didn't understand the situation of this kind of competition too much, she heard that she was able to get to the top 10 among the 120 students, which is indeed very impressive. After all, 
she also knew that the top students from all over the country participated in this competition. Hizayoman's face softened a lot in an instant, Mom doesn't understand, thinking that your grades have regressed this time. Now it seems that my daughter is really good. Elusia lowered her eyes and didn't make a sound. She just walked to the sofa next to her and sat down, slowly pressing her eyebrows with her hands. By the way, how about Huo Yao's results? Hizayoman put down the water glass in his hand and asked casually. Elusia's hand paused, and subconsciously replied, I don't know this, I haven't paid much attention to it. Hizayoman thought of losing face in front of the doctor's dean because of adopting a daughter in the hospital, her eyes became cold, Xia Xia, you are the pride of your mother, you must crush Huo Yao in all aspects, you know. When El Yuxia heard this, a touch of embarrassment flashed across his eyes. That country girl got the first place in the exam these two times. How could she crush? What does she use to crush? Tearing the corners of her lips mockingly, El Yuxia didn't say anything, just made a perfunctory um. Hizayoman didn't notice El Yuxia's expression. After thinking about it, she said again, Well, during this time, my mother will ask you a tutor to concentrate on reviewing. After hearing this, El Yuxia thought for a few seconds. She raised her head to look at Hizayoman and asked, Mom, I remember that Dad seems to know someone from the Education Association. Hizayoman was startled, and then nodded, Yes. He and the chairman of the Education Association here often make tea together. I mentioned to your dad about your participation in the competition, but I just don't know about your dad. Did you tell anyone about you? After a pause, she took the phone on the coffee table next to her, Wait a moment, I'll call and ask your dad. El Yuxia smiled, and nodded obediently, her hands on her knees were agitated. Soon, Hizayoman finished the phone call, and then raised his head to look at her, your dad said he would let you participate in the competition with peace of mind. He mentioned it on his friend's side. He also commented that you are good in science and will look for opportunities. Recommend you to a famous teacher in the capital. When El Yusya heard this, there was a huge surprise in her eyes. The capital city was a place of crouching tigers, hidden dragons, and if she had the opportunity to climb up, then she wouldn't have to look at that Huo Yao in the future, and she wouldn't even need to cling to the El Yu family in the future. Thinking about it this way, El Yu Xia's depression all night was dissipated for most, and she secretly exhaled, she stood up, sat down beside his Ioman, and embraced her arm affectionately. Mom, thank you and Dad, you are so kind to me. I will definitely work hard in the future and I will never let you down. Hizayoman looked at the well-behaved daughter, which was completely different from the adopted daughter who looked bored. He couldn't help showing a gratifying smile, patted her arm and said, Fortunately you are the mother's biological daughter. El Yusya put his head on Hizayoman's shoulder and rubbed it, suppressing the dullness in his eyes, without saying anything. The next day, the third year of the first high school ushered in the first monthly test of this semester. Except for Huo Yao, almost everyone in the class was nervous and afraid of the exam. Before entering the exam room, most of the students were still looking at the textbooks, showing their attitude of embracing their feet. The school has a special examination room. This monthly exam seems to be extremely strict. Each examination room is equipped with testing equipment. Some students who want to sneak in with their mobile phones and materials have been selected. It can be said that it is impossible to cheat. Thing. Although Huo Yao participated in the National Knowledge Contest and achieved top results in both competitions, because she was a transfer student, her school exam numbers were ranked in order of last semester's results, so for the sake of fairness, she was arranged to the last one. Examination Room the top 30 in the third grade of senior high school are in the last examination room. Huo Yao had just entered the examination room, and the other classmates who were already in place cast curious glances at her. At present, almost no one in the whole senior year does not know her competition results. Although there are still people who question her results in private, it is only a minority. 
Even now there are students who are speculating that this month's test came in a hurry. It is very likely that the school had specially set up these rumors about Huo Yao's cheating at the back door during this period. Otherwise, Huo Yao would not be placed in the last examination room. Huo Yao didn't know this. Her seat was the last one in the last row of the classroom, and there were no other candidates on the left or right. Strictly speaking, her position seemed to be specially separated. Obviously treated differently. After a while, the invigilator walked in and distributed the test papers. The test in the morning is Chinese. Huo Yao was quite bald with the test paper. Among all disciplines, her least favorite is Chinese. Looking at the densely packed texts, it reminds her of the days when she was tortured by the stubbornness of the clan when she was a child. The room full of ancient Sanskrit books was simply her childhood nightmare. So after wearing this body, she has an instinctive resistance and dislike of language, so the partiality becomes a matter of course. He sighed silently, even though his heart was resisting, Huo Yao picked up his pen and began to write slowly. When the paper was handed in, although the entire paper seemed to be finished, the correct rate, then there would be no score. In the afternoon, it was the math test. For Huo Yao, this was the correct way to open the test. It's easy and simple, without any brain power. She had already been deceived once for the super gang answering questions, and she was quite careful this time and did not repeat the same mistakes. After the exam, I went back to the class. Everyone was flipping through the books to estimate what my score would be today. Sister Giant, do you feel that today's math problem is particularly difficult? After probably predicting the shadow of his barely passing grade, he looked at Huo Yao with a sad expression. But after speaking, she regretted it. This giant ranked first in the national competition, and asked her if she was looking for abuse by herself. Huo Yao tilted his head to look at Meng Ying, and uttered a rare long sigh, I find it very difficult to speak Chinese today. Puff. Meng Ying was stunned when she heard this, did I have a hallucination? I actually heard a difficult word in your mouth. There is still a special in front. Although I'm excellent, it doesn't mean I'm omnipotent. Huo Yao blinked, his tone light and flat. Meng Ying clutched her chest, and was critically hit asterisk and times daily. Isn't Chinese the easiest? Hastily put the topic back on track. Huo Yao shook his head repeatedly, and said distressedly, For me, it is the most difficult. Meng Ying saw that she didn't seem to be speaking modestly at all, and it was as if she had received a heavy news, Then how many points do you think you can get in Chinese this time? I've finished all the questions, but it depends on luck. Huo Yao dragged his chin with his hand, looking even more melancholy. I still miss the comprehensive mode test of the National Knowledge Contest, without having to be bald for Chinese questions alone. Meng Ying was so shocked that her eyes were about to fall out, giant sister, don't tell me, you are partial. Huo Yao glanced at her, a normal student will have partial subjects, right? That's the case, but the point is, are you a normal student? Meng Ying let out a sole question. Two consecutive competitions have achieved the first results, can this be called a normal student? Huo Yao lazily took out the Chinese textbook from the desk, I know you are jealous of my excellence. The corners of Meng Ying's lips twitched, and her eyes rolled, suddenly a wretched smile appeared on her face, and her voice was a little bit mean, if you fail Chinese, then you're ranking in this monthly test, haha. Huo Ya raised his eyebrows, child, you look very gloating. Meng Ying coughed, and quickly closed the corners of her lips with joy, and said solemnly, that's not true. I just want to finish the exam soon and see the results soon. Huo Ya chuckled softly. By the way, go shopping together after school later. Meng Ying touched the tip of her nose and turned the subject. Huo Yao shook his head, and faintly refused, no, it's a private matter. Seeing this, Meng Ying didn't force it, and quickly returned to his seat. 
before going out in the morning, Huo Yao and Huo Ting Grui explained that they were going to the hospital to accompany the old lady today, and they also declined his arrangement to pick her up from school. Therefore, as soon as school was over, Huo Yao took a taxi to the hospital. It was just that when she opened the door of the hospital room and saw that it was empty and even the quilt on the hospital bed was folded neatly on the head of the bed, her face changed instantly. Huo Yao was stunned. Thinking of the old lady's reaction when she left yesterday, she inexplicably pulled her heart out. She took out the mobile phone from her pocket and quickly dialed a call. Huo Yao took a deep breath, pinched off the phone, then put the phone away again, turned and walked out. Nurse Station Excuse me, where did Yang Kaihua in room 503 go? Huo Yao looked at the nurse on duty, his voice sounded steady, without any abnormal emotions. The nurse on duty was amazed by Huo Yao's face, and reacted, hurriedly flipping through the file records next to her, and replied, Oh, Grandma Yang, she was discharged from the hospital this morning. When Huo Yao heard this, his eyebrows tightened and he said thank you to the nurse, striding towards the elevator entrance without any hesitation. The nurse on duty looked at Huo Yao's leaving back and shook his head. The beauty of this girl is really nothing to say, she is definitely the highest kind of girl she has seen so far, and it can almost be a few blocks away from many entertainment stars. Xiao Kui, what are you looking at? Another nurse who had just gone to the bathroom came back and saw a colleague staring in a daze. Huo Yao's figure had disappeared at the elevator entrance, so she did not see Huo Yao. The nurse named Xiao Kui withdrew his gaze intently, and sighed, I just met a super good-looking young lady, she has a pretty face. When she looked at me, my little heart was beating fast. Puff, isn't it? Such an exaggeration. The other nurse said with a laugh, slowly took the water glass next to him, and took two sips. But remembering something, she said again, speaking of the value of a fairy, the grandmother Yang's granddaughter who was just discharged from the hospital in room 503 in the morning is really beautiful. You may not have encountered it in day work. I remember. I still have a picture of her. Let me show you. While talking, the nurse had already pulled out the secretly taken photo in the phone, hey, isn't it beautiful? Although it's just a profile face, it has a super visual sense. This nurse knows Huo Yao. Before, she thought that the other person was good looking, with a little boyishness all over her body, and her words were gentle and polite, so every time she came, she would secretly take pictures and help a lot. Take care of the old lady. Xiao Kui took a look, yes, it's this young lady, she was also the one I met just now. When the nurse heard this, her expression changed, and she hurriedly asked, ah, what about her? Xiao Kui was startled, and subconsciously raised his finger to the direction of the elevator entrance, just when you came back, she just got into the elevator. Oh, why didn't you call me? Grandma Yang asked me to hand over something to her. The nurse patted her forehead, her voice a little anxious. Xiao Kui touched the tip of his nose, you didn't tell me, but she probably hasn't walked far, so go and chase her. The nurse hummed, and hurriedly put the phone back in his pocket, then opened the drawer, took out a letter from it, and ran to the elevator again. Because it was evening, there were not many people in the hospital at this time. The nurse got down the elevator all the way and looked around in the lobby of the inpatient department. No one was found. So she hurried to the entrance of the hospital, but still did not find Huo Yao. After standing at the entrance for a while, she dropped her shoulders back. Go. At this time, Huo Yao had taken a taxi and headed for the apartment complex where the old lady lived. She looked at the fast reversed street scene outside the car window. Her eyes were bright and dark, her expressionless face was no longer the usual indifference, with a coldness that did not belong to this age. She took out her mobile phone and called the old lady again, and the response she got was a cold shutdown prompt. Yesterday she should have noticed the strangeness of the old lady. Pressing his eyebrows, Huo Yao's expression darkened. 
Twenty minutes later, the taxi stopped at the gate of the community. Huo Yao paid the money and walked quickly toward the community. When she went upstairs, she rang the doorbell. After a while, the door opened and it was a strange woman's face. Who are you looking for? The middle-aged woman looked at Huo Yao and asked suspiciously. She is the nanny he's Ioman invited to take care of the old lady. She has never seen Huo Yao before. Huo Yao frowned, the old lady is not at home. When the nanny heard this, he immediately reacted, are you looking for Mrs. Yang? Yes, is she at home? Huo Yao asked patiently. The nanny watched Huo Yao again. Although she didn't know who she was, she replied politely, the old lady was ill and was hospitalized some time ago, but, who are you? What can I do with the old lady? Huo Yao did not answer her words, but asked again and again, is she really not at home? Um. I lied to you to do anything, saying that the old lady is sick and hospitalized, otherwise you call her yourself. The babysitter looks strange. Seeing that she didn't seem to be deliberately concealing it, Huo Yao's heart sank, without saying anything, turning around and leaving. When the nanny saw this, she was still stunned. When she saw Huo Yao's figure disappearing in the elevator, she recovered, closing the door and muttering to herself, Who is this? The babysitter was puzzled for a while, and the more she thought about it, the more she felt something was wrong. She hurriedly walked into the hall, picked up the landline phone, and made a call. This is the LU family villa. Hizioman just answered the babysitter call, you said a young girl came to my mother. Yes, she didn't say her name when asked. She seemed to be a little anxious. I don't know if something happened. The babysitter, the 15th and 10th general, said all about the situation. Hizioman frowned upon hearing this, and said, is the girl tall and beautiful, looking like a student? Yes, madam. His Ioman's eyes narrowed slightly, okay, I see. After hanging up the phone, His Ioman put his arms around his chest, with a thoughtful expression on his face. She can be sure that the person the nanny called to describe it will be Huo Yao, but the question is, why would she suddenly go to the apartment and ask if the old lady is at home? Didn't she know that the old lady is still in the hospital? El Yuxia, who had just changed into her home clothes and went downstairs, saw that her mother had a strange expression on her face, she couldn't help but walked over and sat down beside her, and asked gently, Mom, what's wrong with you? His Ioman recovered, but said without concealment, the nanny who just took care of your grandma called and said that Huo Yao went to your grandma's apartment. When El Yuxia heard Huo Yao's name, her eyes condensed subconsciously, and she asked casually, didn't she know that her grandma is in the hospital, so why would she go to the apartment? Is she going to get something? His Ioman shook his head, it's not about picking up things. The nanny said she only asked whether your grandma was at home or not, and left when she heard that she was not at home. When El Yuxia heard this, a look of doubt appeared on her face, then what is her intention? After thinking about it for a few seconds, El Yuxia said again, Mom, I feel this is a bit weird, or else call Grandma and ask what's the situation. Yes. His Ioman nodded, turned his mobile phone, found the old lady's number, and dialed it. Soon, His Ioman frowned and hung up the phone, the phone is turned off. Uh, shut it down? Nothing will happen, right? El Yuxia suddenly said with worry. His Ioman's eyelids twitched and stood up, I'll go to the hospital's phone to ask. With that said, she walked to the locker and found a doctor's business card from the inside. Without any hesitation, she called the other party. Hey, what? My mother has been discharged from the hospital. His Ioman was holding the phone, his face was completely shocked. El Yusya had already walked up to his Ioman, and seeing that she had hung up the phone, she couldn't help asking, Grandma is discharged? Didn't she tell you? His Ioman's mind was still a little buzzing, no, I was confused by her last night, so I didn't go to the hospital today. 
When El Yusya heard this, her expression became serious, how could Grandma leave the hospital without even saying hello? She is an old lady who doesn't know anything about her life and doesn't go back to the apartment, so where would she go? Hezioman pressed his swollen temple, and suddenly thought of something, his face sank, and some gritted teeth said, Your analysis is correct, your grandma doesn't understand anything, if no one is doing things in the middle, how could she possibly be? Will be discharged. After a two-second pause, Huo Yao must have picked up your grandma, there is no one else except her. Hezioman looked very determined. El Yusya's eyes dropped slightly, and then she shook her head and said, It shouldn't be her, didn't you just say that the nanny said she was looking for grandma too? Hezioman sneered, Do you believe the thief calls the trick of catching the thief? But... El Yusya wanted to say something, but was interrupted by Hezioman, Okay, don't be foolish, I don't want to hear my daughter explain to an outsider. After Hezioman finished speaking, holding the mobile phone, angrily turned out Huo Yao's phone and called. After Huo Yao went downstairs, he did not immediately leave the community where the old lady lived, but sat on the public chair in the garden of the community. The old lady's phone still couldn't get through. The response of the nanny upstairs just now was not fake, and based on what she knew about Hezioman, she was unlikely to pick up the old lady, so the only thing that was certain was that the old lady left by herself. Pressing his eyebrows, Huo Yao held the phone and thought about it again and again. He tapped an app with an unknown icon on the phone with his fingertips. When he was about to log in, an unfamiliar phone on the screen called. Huo Yao paused, and only soon, she pressed the answer button. Hello. Okay, then I will be there in 20 minutes, thank you. After hanging up the phone, Huo Yao stood up, and the phone rang again. She looked down, almost without any hesitation, and directly pressed the hang-up button. Instead, put the phone in his pocket and walked quickly out of the community. The person who called Huo Yao was not someone else, but the nurse in the hospital who didn't catch up with her. Huo Yao took a taxi and went back to the hospital. Along the way, Hezioman made countless calls to her, but she didn't answer any of them. In the end, she simply pulled her mobile phone number into the blacklist. Miss Huo is embarrassed, I should have called you long ago and asked you to come and pick up things, but I didn't have much time to come over when something was delayed. The nurse looked at Huo Yao apologetically, and handed her the letter. Huo Yao accepted the letter and said politely, It's okay, thank you. You're welcome. The nurse smiled. Huo Yao just took two steps with the letter, then turned around and looked at the nurse, I want to ask, is my grandmother doing the discharge procedures by herself? The nurse shook her head, I don't know this very well. I will be on night shift tonight and will be away in the morning. After a pause, she said again, otherwise, I can help you ask my colleague. When Huo Yao heard the words, a touch of disappointment flashed across her eyes, then she shook her head, said no then turned and left. There was a public chair in the green park downstairs of the inpatient department. Huo Yao took it and sat down before opening the letter. Yao, Grandma is back to my hometown, you must take good care of yourself in the future, and don't worry about Grandma, Grandma will take care of your health, Grandma will also wait for you to come back with an international trophy. The content of the letter is very small, and the handwriting is not beautiful. Even the slow and stiff movements of the person who wrote the letter can be seen in each stroke. In the corner of the last signed page, there is also a mark of water dried up. Huo Yao's heart was a bit pantothenic, and he could almost imagine the mood and appearance of the old lady when she wrote this letter. In the past, the days when the two of them depended on each other with the old lady, at this time, it is like a movie of watching the flowers, appearing in front of them one by one. Although only getting along with the old lady for one year, this year is the most peaceful in her life. Time. Huo Ya raised her head, her eyes lightened and dimmed, and the not bright street lamp dazzled her face, as if a little loneliness was mixed with the warmth and coldness. Your expression is really rare. 
Suddenly, a voice full of playfulness came over, cutting through the silence. Huo Yao turned his head slowly, Men Yu's exquisite face caught his eye in his sight, his long figure stretched out, his hands clasped his chest, and he looked sloppy, not knowing how long he stood. Huo Yao twisted his brow slightly, folded the letter calmly, and asked in confusion, Why are you here? Men Yu raised his eyebrows, If I hadn't been here, wouldn't I have missed your weak, helpless, and pitiful side today? When Huo Yao heard this, he stood up and walked slowly to Min Yu's. His and white eyes were staring straight at him, and his voice was quite indifferent, My eyes are not good, I will come closer. Let you see clearly. The corners of Min Yu's lips twitched, looking at the girl close at hand, with an arrogant expression, How could he have been quiet when sitting there? He raised his hand and said with a smile, OK, it's my misnomer. Huo Yao let out a soft voice and withdrew his gaze, but soon, a thought suddenly flashed in his mind. Suddenly, her gaze fell on Min Yu's face again, My grandma was discharged from the hospital, did you help me? The old lady who had heart attacks was always sent to the hospital by this guy, so if she wanted to leave quietly, it was very possible to ask him for help. Min Yu was not surprised that Huo Yao would say this, after all, the girl's acumen was unimaginable. Yes. Min Yu admitted directly without concealing it. Huo Yao heard that the string in his heart seemed to finally loosen. Although he was not worried about what the old lady would do stupid, he still needed to know where she was. Your grandma called me last night, probably because she didn't want you to be wronged between her and the L.U. family, so please ask me to send her back to her hometown. Min Yu briefly explained. I understand. Huo Yao sighed softly. How could she not understand the old lady's intentions? After a few seconds of silence, she gathered her mind and asked, Where is she now? Min Yu raised his wrist to check the time, it should be home already. As if he was afraid that Huo Yao would be uneasy, he added, Don't worry. I have someone specially your grandma back. There will be no surprises. Huo Yao gave a light hum, and suddenly looked at Min Yu seriously, thank you. Min Yu raised his eyebrows, his voice was a little loose, we still need to be so polite? Well, my savior. Huo Yao glanced at him, but said with a faint smile, teacher Min? Why didn't I know I had an extra teacher to make up? Min Yu shrugged lazily, this is a beautiful misunderstanding. Huo Yao said a few words, put the old lady's letter into his pocket, turned around, and walked out of the hospital. Then please keep this misunderstanding. Her voice floated far away, her hand waved in the air, her back under the street light was stretched long. Min Yu smiled thoughtfully, and then followed her. Walking out of the hospital, Huo Yao took out his mobile phone and was about to check the time. He found that it had no power and turned it off, so he put it back in his pocket, thought for two seconds, raised his head and said to Min Yu, Did you drive? Hey. Min Yu glanced at her unclearly. The phone is out of power, and there is no cash on him. Why don't you be as good as teacher Min and send me along the way? Huo Yao said unceremoniously. Min Yu raised his eyebrows, I thought you were going to invite me to dinner. Let a penniless high school student invite you to dinner? As a makeup teacher, is this, true, true, suitable, suitable? Huo Yao bites the next few words particularly hard. The corners of Min Yu's lips twitched, otherwise I invite you. Huo Yao lazily refused, forget it, my family won't be able to contact me for a while. I will be worried. Let's go. Min Yu raised his hand and rubbed his eyebrows without teasing her anymore. Soon, the two got into the car. In the car, Min Yu held the steering wheel with one hand, leaned her left elbow on the door frame, tilted her head, her fingers kept pressing on her temples, her complexion was abnormally pale, and there seemed to be some fatigue between her eyebrows and eyes. Huo Yao only glanced at him faintly and asked casually, did you rest? It seems obvious. Min Yu's voice was quite low, and he turned his head to look at her as he spoke. 
Huo Yao's eyes condensed slightly, thinking that this person said to go to Beijing to do errands a few days ago, and then combine the old lady's experience today, suddenly she said with a bit of error, you shouldn't come back overnight because of my grandmother. Right. Min Yu's hands were still rubbing his temples, and he replied, naturally, I should come back when things are done. Hearing this, Huo Yao fell silent for an instant. After a while, she raised her head and looked at Min Yu again, and said nonchalantly, the soothing fragrance I bought for my grandma on the internet last time is pretty good. You go to my school in two days and I will leave school. Give it to you when. Hearing this, Min Yu thought of the Dobeo shop selling soothing fragrance that she had shared with him before, so he smiled and shook his head, it's okay, the conditioning will be restored within a few days. Huo Yao touched the tip of his nose, well. After a pause, she added, if you want it someday, you can tell me again. Yet. Min Yu responded softly, not paying attention. Twenty minutes later, Huo Yao thanked Min Yu, and soon walked into the community. At this time the sky was completely dark, and Huo Yao went upstairs, just opened the door with the key and walked in. He saw Huo Yangzi, who hadn't been back for a long time, sitting on the sofa with his hands clasped his chest and sullen face. There was a faint smell of gunpowder smoke floating in the air. Huo Yao squinted his eyes and put his shoulder bag on the cabinet casually. Huo Yangzi looked at Huo Yao, and stood up quickly, with a pair of heavy eyes approaching her, can't you stop all day? Boss, please calm down and speak for me. Huo Jinyan frowned, his voice a bit heavy. When faced with a sudden question from Huo Yangzi, Huo Yao's expression remained unchanged, but there was not much temperature in his eyes. What you said is very strange. What did I do to make you so angry? Seeing Huo Yao's indifferent appearance, Huo Yangzi's inner anger became even stronger, what else did you ask? Where did you take Xia Xia's grandmother? When Huo Yao heard it, he thought of the countless calls he Xiaoman had made to her, and probably guessed the source of his anger. The old lady didn't go back to the loose house, and she went to the apartment where she lived again, so after learning that the old lady was not in the hospital, the Lu family naturally thought that she was hiding. After all, only she is the most suspicious. Seeing Huo Yao not speaking, Huo Yangzi took a deep breath and tried to lower her emotions. Big brother understands that you have a good relationship with Xia Xia's grandmother, but you can't pick up someone without saying hello. Huo Yao picked his lips playfully. I'm curious who told you that I picked up the old lady? Lu Xia? Hey. Huo Yangzi twisted her eyebrows, she just made a call. Before he finished speaking, Huo Yao interrupted directly, when she makes a call, you are sure that I picked up the old lady? Then I will tell you that the person was not picked up by me. How do you judge? Huo Ting Grui, who was next to him raised his eyebrows slightly when he heard his sister's words. This little cutie in his family would use the rhetorical method. Huo Yangzi was stunned by the question back, and soon he reacted, Okay, you said that you didn't pick up the person, so why didn't you answer the phone from the LU family? Turn off the phone? You are not telling the LU family clearly. Did you suspect it? Huo Yao felt even more funny when she heard this. She took the phone out of her pocket without rushing, and pressed the power button several times in front of him, and then the screen was lit up and the battery was low. The exclamation mark automatically shuts down. I see it, it's out of power. Huo Yao said lightly, and then handed the phone to Huo Yangzi, slightly ironically, if you don't believe it, otherwise you will check it yourself. Huo Yangzi's eyes fell on the phone that Huo Yao handed over and did not reach out to pick it up. After a while, he tilted his head and said in a deep voice, if you really didn't pick up the old lady, then why did you hang up? Drop the phone on the loose side. Isn't it normal to hang up on loose phone? My sister's adoptive mother has always treated her badly, so why has to answer her phone? Where does this come from? Huo Ting Grui said lightly next to her. Yeah, 
what the second child said is correct, it is my temper to change it, let alone hang up, it has been darkened a long time ago. Speaking of the Lu family, Song Ning has no good feelings. Huo Yangzi looked at Huo Ting Grui with a complicated expression. Even if his father and mother spoiled the younger sister without a brain, he, the most astute second brother, actually. After a long while, Huo Yangzi shook his head and said disappointedly, You are used to people and I don't care, but Xia Xia's grandmother must have an explanation. After finishing speaking, Huo Yangzi turned his gaze on Huo Yao again, You and I will go to the Lu family. Since you didn't pick up the old lady, explain. Before he finished speaking, the mobile phone on the coffee table rang. He paused, and subconsciously scanned the caller ID on the screen. Seeing that it was Lu Xia calling, Huo Yangzi did not continue to say any more, but instead walked over, reached out and picked up the phone, and pressed the answer button, Hey, Xia Xia. Big brother, grandma found it. She went back to her hometown in Fuxian by herself. I'm sorry, it was my mother who misunderstood her misunderstanding. I also blamed me for being too anxious. I hope there is no misunderstanding for you. Lu Xia's voice on the phone was soft and weak, as if she was about to cry, full of annoyance and apology. Huo Yangzi was holding the phone, hearing Lu Xia's words, and thinking of asking Huo Yao angrily just now, there was a buzzing in his head. So, did he misunderstand her? Big brother, are you listening? Lu Xia on the other end of the phone didn't hear Huo Yangzi talking for a long time, so he cautiously asked a little more aggrieved question. Huo Yangzi closed her eyes, only faintly replied, I see. He said nothing, and hung up the phone. When Lu Xia heard the last few words full of coldness that Huo Yangzi said, she felt a little annoyed in her heart, and it took a long time to release her hand holding the phone. When Huo Yangzi looked at Huo Yao again, his expression was no longer full of aggressive aura. He opened his mouth, but his throat seemed to be blocked by something. It was both astringent and uncomfortable, and he didn't say a word for a long time. Word. Huo Yao didn't have much emotion on his face, meeting his complicated gaze, only said lightly, it seems that you have already figured out the truth. I. I'm going upstairs first. Huo Yao didn't give Huo Yangzi a chance to speak. After speaking, he glanced at the parents and the second brother in the hall, and then walked towards the stairs without a hassle. Big brother, we all know that El Yuxia has had the best relationship with you since childhood, but I still want to remind you that you should be clear about who is the person in this family who is related to you. Huo Ting Grui stayed lightly. The next sentence also went upstairs. Huo Yangzi heard the words, her face was hot, as if all her strength was drained at this moment, the phone fell off from her hand and fell to the ground. Huo Jinyan stood up, picked up the phone on the ground and placed it on the coffee table, patted the elder son on the shoulder with his hand, and left without saying anything. Song Ning also sighed in disappointment, you just have too deep a prejudice against Yao Yao. She is your sister and not an outsider but you are always unwilling to give her more trust, just like this evening. If you calm down a little bit, you won't be like this. Huo Yangzi's hands hanging beside him were tight, and there was a trace of embarrassment and shame on his face. When he received Xia Xia's crying call tonight, he convicted Huo Yao almost without any thought. He subconsciously thought that his sister would not stop all day long, even if it was a real relationship with Xia Xia's grandmother. Well, at the very least, you can't do such a wayward thing to pick up people without saying hello, right? The result now? Huo Yangzi sneered at the corner of her lips, and after an angry questioning, everything was just a misunderstanding in the end. Compared with the adopted sister, the relatives who came back didn't seem to have any advantages other than making him feel speechless and contrived again and again. Even if he got a full score in the competition last time, he had changed her a little bit, but he was disappointed again because of her indifferent attitude without explaining anything. This scene today is so similar to the situation last time, except that, after all, 
he didn't want to admit it, even if she explained it, he wouldn't believe it. Just like the phrase she asked just now, if I tell you, I didn't pick you up, how would you judge, the first reaction in his mind was still not believing. Yes, knowing that he wouldn't believe it, it would be futile to explain more, but he didn't bother to explain. Huo Yangzi wiped her face and smiled wryly at the corners of her lips. Huo Yao just came out of the shower, her long hair dripping with wet hair, while she took the hair dryer to blow her hair, she took the cell phone next to her which was charging, and held down the power button for a few seconds before turning on the machine. Many text messages and missed calls bounced out, including Huo Yangzi's phone number and information, as well as several unfamiliar numbers. Huo Yao looked around for a while, thought about it, turned off the hair dryer, and called the old lady again. This time it was no longer the cold shutdown sound. After a while, the call was connected. Huo Yao held the phone and didn't speak first, and the old lady on the other end did not speak either. The phone was quiet except for a slight breathing sound. After a while, Huo Yao yelled softly, Grandma. Well, Grandma, Grandma is here. When the old lady said this, she didn't know what she knocked over or what happened. In short, the noise was so loud that she almost covered her voice. Hearing this, Huo Yao pressed his eyebrows helplessly, then pulled the chair next to him and sat down, sighing, Are you sure you want to keep me hearing the sound of you knocking things over? So, as soon as she said this, the noise on the other end of the phone disappeared instantly. After two seconds, I heard the old lady's weak explanation voice, Ah! I just wanted to pour myself a glass of water, and I knocked it over without paying attention. Huo Ya raised his eyebrows slightly, and leaned lazily against the back of the chair. The warm light in the room hit her face, a kind of warm and sloppy, Well, I understand, you don't need to explain. Old lady. How can she not understand the old lady's habitual tricks whenever she wants to cover her emotions? Huo Yao's fingers picked up a strand of half-dry hair hanging on his shoulders to play with, his voice was a little careless, you are quite capable now, and you dare to sneak back to your hometown alone without a sound. When the old lady heard it, she smirked and said, I'm not alone, it was teacher Xiao Min who asked me to send me back. Huo Yao said lightly, how long have you known each other? In case of being cheated, where would you let me find another grandma? The old lady's throat was sore, she felt uncomfortable under the pressure, and whispered, Grandma knows that Xiao Min is a good person. Don't do things like leaving books and running away in the future. Just tell me where you want to go. Wouldn't I stop you? Slowly, Huo Yao's eyes narrowed slightly, and his voice was the most serious in history with me, no one will force you to live in a place you don't like anymore. She knew that he Xiaoman had always wanted to take the old lady to live in the city, but the old lady was unwilling. If it weren't for her going back to Huo's house this time, the old lady would not compromise. After all, it was her selfishness that made her live in an unhappy city during this time. She wanted to take care of the old man for the original owner of the body nearby but ignored whether the old man was willing. The old lady chuckled softly, if Xiaomin will embarrass you again in the future, you don't need to care about grandma's face, do whatever you want, don't let yourself be wronged. Huo Yao said lightly, so the reason why your heart disease is so serious is that it has to do with thinking too much. Fearing that it would be uncomfortable to continue speaking, the old lady hurriedly said, it's okay, it's not early. I have to go to bed. After speaking, he hung up the phone without waiting for Huo Yao to say good night. Hearing the beep from the phone, Huo Yao shook his head with a smile, then put the phone down and continued to pick up the hair dryer to blow his hair. Not long after, there was a knock on the door. As soon as Huo Yao dried his hair, he drew it together and walked to the door. Second brother. Huo Ting Grui's hands are behind him and after removing the rimless glasses he usually wears, the whole person looks more gentle. He pursed his lips and smiled and asked, You shouldn't have dinner, right? Huo Yao's face was surprised, 
and then he hummed. Huo Ting Grui turned sideways, raised his chin slightly, and looked towards the direction of the stairs, go, second brother will cook you something to eat. After a two-second pause, he added, big brother is gone, don't worry about embarrassment. When Huo Yao heard this, he was not hypocritical, then thank you brother. Soon, the two went downstairs one after another. It was almost ten o'clock at this time, and Song Ning and Huo Jinyan had already returned to the room. Huo Ting Grui rolled up the sleeves of his pajamas, opened the refrigerator and swept around. There was nothing but eggs and a tomato. He touched the tip of his nose, then looked back at Huo Yao, and said helplessly, There is nothing left. Can you eat tomato and egg noodles? Yes, I'm not picky eaters. Okay. Huo Ting Grui nodded, and took out the eggs and tomatoes from the refrigerator, you go to the hall and sit for a while, the second brother will make it soon. Huo Yao hummed softly, but did not leave. Instead, he folded his hands on his chest, leaned back against the wall lazily, and looked at the orderly noodle cooks in the kitchen calmly. About ten minutes later, Huo Ting Grui served the noodles out and put them on the table, try it to see if it tastes. Huo Yao picked up the chopsticks and took a bite. She raised her head and commented vaguely, it tastes good. Huo Ting Grui also sat down in the chair next to him, and raised his eyebrows proudly, that is, my second brother can cook at the age of eight. After all, he is a veteran driver with more than ten years of cooking experience. Hearing this, Huo Yao couldn't help falling into contemplation. When she was eight years old, she seemed to blow up the refining pharmacy in the clan several times. By the way, yesterday in the hospital, after you went to the bathroom, the old lady said something to me asking me to take care of you. I felt something was wrong at the time. I wanted to mention it to you, but I forgot it later. Huo Ting Grui's lips showed apologetic, I don't know that the old lady has plans to leave. If I had been more careful yesterday, maybe there would be no such thing as today. Huo Yao paused and looked at Huo Ting Grui with self-blame on his face. He said in a calm voice, Second brother, you don't have to blame yourself. Even if there was no yesterday, today's things will happen. She didn't live here. Get used to it, go back to my hometown. Huo Ting Grui smiled bitterly and shook his head, it was supposed to be your second brother to comfort you, but it turned into your second brother to comfort you. Huo Yao smiled, lowered his head and continued to eat noodles. Huo Ting Grui looked at his quiet sister with mixed feelings. Even when she was confronted by her elder brother's questioning, she never had any panic, and she was as calm as an adult. If this happened to El Yusya today, it would be more than just a grievance cry, let alone a grievance in the end. Misunderstanding It is said that crying children have candy to eat and the stubborn temperament like his little cutie who does not cry or makes trouble, it is no wonder that he will suffer. With a silent sigh, Huo Ting Grui found some small family members to chat with Huo Yao, but never mentioned Huo Yangzi. In the afternoon of the next day, after the monthly examination was finished, Huo Yao walked out of the examination room, and when El Yu Xia, who was outside the corridor, saw her, he walked towards her. Let's talk. El Yuxia looked at Huo Yao, there was no other strange expression on her face, but her voice sounded a little condescending. Huo Yao raised his eyelids lazily, his voice very impatient, no time. After her speaking, she brushed past. El Yuxia squinted her eyes, turned around and stepped up to follow, no matter what, you have already returned to Huo's house now. Please don't ask about my grandma's affairs anymore. This is for you, for L.U. Home, it's good to Huo's family, after all, you don't want to see people make misunderstandings and unpleasantness because of you, right? Huo Yao paused and glanced at her sideways, his eyes cold, are you teaching me to be a man? L.U. Xia was stunned by this look, then recovered, and said coldly, I just want to tell you not to be too greedy. Huo Yao's lips flicked a little playfully, this sounds fresh. With a chuckle, 
she faintly retracted her gaze and continued to walk forward. El Yuxia frowned, looked at Huo Yao's back, did not catch up, suddenly remembered when she called Huo Yangzi last night to explain, and finally his abnormal attitude, thinking for a while, turned to the other side go down the passage. Back in the rocket class classroom, El Yuxia took out her mobile phone from the desk box, edited a text message and sent it to Huo Yangzi. Ten minutes after the message was sent, I didn't wait for a reply. El Yuxia felt more irritable. This was something she had never seen before. After thinking about it, she sent another one, Brother, I'm waiting for you in the same place. Huo Yangzi who received El Yuxia's message here was in a daze with her mobile phone. When he received El Yuxia's first message, he instinctively wanted to reply to her. He just remembered what happened last night and what Ting Rui said. His fingertips seemed to freeze for a long time. Did not type a word. He has loved Xia Xia since childhood, and he knows her temperament. Even if she returned to the LU family, he never regarded her as an outsider, and he never thought that one day he would let it go. On her body. Huo Yangzi rubbed his eyebrows and clicked on the second text message that El Yuxia had just sent. After a long silence, he stood up, took the car key in the drawer, and left the office. A western restaurant in the city, in the box on the second floor. El Yuxia asked the driver to send her over after school. She waited from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock at this time. Seeing the sky outside the glass window darkening, her heart was sinking bit by bit. The message she sent, the eldest brother has not responded to a single one. She doesn't know if he is busy or deliberately not responding. It seems that since the call last night, something seems to be changing silently. El Yuxia was holding her mobile phone and wanted to call Huo Yangzi, but she had resisted this impulse several times. She kept telling herself in her heart not to panic and to stay calm. Finally, when it was almost seven o'clock, the box door was pushed open. When El Yuxia heard the sound, she stood up hurriedly, her mobile phone clanged on the desktop and she didn't care, her eyes were reddish and she looked at Huo Yangzi, who was late, biting her lip, her voice choked, Brother, I still I thought you were not coming. When Huo Yangzi subconsciously tried to explain to Shang El Yuxia's grievances face, she finally turned aside her eyes, and her voice sounded the same as usual, no, the company has customers delayed. El Yuxia heard this, his face looked a little pale, and the whole person was shaking as if he could not stand firmly. If nothing happened, he held the stool next to him, sucked the tip of his nose, looked down, shook his head and said in a low voice, No, it's okay, I can wait. Brothers. Huo Yangzi's hand hanging beside him tightened, and then he pulled the chair away and sat down. Without looking at her, he just picked up the menu beside him, what do you want to eat? Big brother treats you today. Soon, he pressed the service bell next to him and called the waiter. I can. El Yuxia whispered. Then it's the same as usual. Huo Yangzi closed the menu and raised his head to report a few dishes to the waiter. When the waiter left, El Yuxia raised her head and looked at Huo Yangzi, who was sitting across from her. Her lips showed bitterness, and she said directly, Big brother, are you angry with me about what happened last night? I know that I was too impatient last night. I shouldn't have misunderstood that my grandma was picked up because I couldn't get in touch with my grandmother. I spent the whole night on this matter. I didn't sleep much at night, so I was worried about it. Because it brings you misunderstandings. I went to talk to Yeyeo today but she doesn't seem to want to see me. Brother, I'm sorry, you call me, it's all my fault. El Yuxia choked and said, her bloodless face looked more pitiful. Huo Yangzi's gaze fell on El Yuxia's face. A person who used to be shining looks haggard at this time, with endless annoyance and regret in his flushed eyes. Even the images that he paid special attention to in the ordinary day were completely ignored. To apologize and explain. Seeing El Yuxia like this, Huo Yangzi was in a complicated mood, and the corners of her lips moved. 
when she seemed to want to say something, Huo Yao's cold and indifferent face flashed before her eyes. He didn't cry or make trouble, even if he was misunderstood. Disdain to subdue soft arguments, stubborn like a hedgehog. After a while, he slowly said, the matter has passed, and there is no need to mention it again. As for the apology, Huo Yangzi paused, and only said, no more, she won't take it to heart. El Yuxia's eyes drooped slightly, and the tips of her fingers on the table stirred each other a few times, and then cautiously said, but is this okay? After all, the misunderstanding is caused by me. Brother, you don't have to worry about me, just I can keep him from getting angry, I can do anything. When Huo Yangzi heard such words, his brows frowned subconsciously, and then he just said solemnly, no. El Yuxia's heart jumped, and suddenly she couldn't understand his attitude. Soon, there was the sound of the waiter knocking on the door. El Yuxia wanted to explore Huo Yangzi again, but was interrupted and had to shut up. Before someone pushed in, he took the sunglasses next to him and put on them. After the dishes were served, the waiter left, and El Yuxia took off his sunglasses again. She looked at Huo Yangzi, who was slicing steak with a knife and fork, and realized that she could no longer continue the topic, so she had to pick up the knife and fork and start the meal absently. For a while, the box became very quiet, neither of them spoke, and their thoughts were different. After the meal, Huo Yangzi went to check out, and when El Yuxia left the box, she put on sunglasses and a mask again to avoid recognition. Walking out of the restaurant, El Yuxia looked at Huo Yangzi and was about to speak. Are you going home now or? Huo Yangzi said first. Go home. El Yuxia replied softly. Huo Yangzi nodded, and only said, let's go, take you back. After speaking, he walked to the parking lot. El Yuxia looked at his back, as if she had returned to the way she had no suspicions before, her eyes drooped slightly, and many thoughts in her heart were collected. Maybe she thinks too much. Twenty minutes later, Huo Yangzi sent El Yuxia outside the gate of Lu's villa. Brother, you drive carefully, I'll go in first. El Yuxia unfastened her seat belt and said softly. Huo Yangzi hummed. After El Yuxia got out of the car, he did not start the car for the first time. Instead, he looked through the front glass window and looked at the huge El Yu family villa. The decorative lights on the wall are hazy, and the three-story villa like a small castle shows the wealth of the owner. Huo Yangzi twitched the corners of her lips suddenly, and his eyes became more obscure. After a long time, his hand holding the steering wheel moved, turned around, and left. El Yuxia just walked in and changed her shoes. Before she went to the living room, she ran into El Yu Ziming who had come down from the second floor. She twisted her eyebrows and didn't say hello. Father El Yu was sitting on the sofa watching TV at this time, El Yuxia walked over and cried out cleverly, Dad, I'm back. Father El Yu raised his head and glanced at El Yuxia, with a smile on his face, he asked casually, Well, why is it so late today? El Yuxia opened her mouth, just about to talk, but was interrupted by El Yu Ziming, What can she do, dating? El Yu Ziming sneered and walked into the living room with a foolish look, sitting lazily on the sofa. Date? What date? Father El Yu sat up straight, the smile on his face seemed to disappear instantly, he squinted his eyes and looked at his daughter. Regarding El Yu Ziming's words, the unhappiness in El Yuxia's eyes flashed away, and she hurriedly explained, No, I just had a meal with my friends, so I came back a bit late. Father El Yu has always disliked her wasting her time in useless places. The reason why she was kind to her was because she gave him a face outside. Shit, it's a boyfriend. El Yu Ziming smiled, then raised his eyebrows, and added, I just saw it upstairs. When El Yuxia heard this, she looked at El Yu Ziming with a cold expression, don't talk nonsense in front of my dad. It's not a boyfriend at all. He is just my older brother, Huo Yangzi, who lived in the Huo family. Oh, 
it's not a deer anyway, who knows? L. Yu Ziming said without blocking his mouth. L. Yu Xia's face was ugly, but because of Lu's father's presence, she couldn't turn her face on L. Yu Ziming on the spot, so she said angrily, You are my brother, do you need to speak so badly? L. Yu Ziming chuckled softly, lying on his back on the sofa, with his feet directly on the back of the sofa, No, I don't have a sister like you. When you came back, you looked down on Huo's family. The attitude of the family, how come they have suddenly regarded that family as a treasure in the past six months? Tisk tisk, the Sichuan opera has not changed your face as much as you. El Yuxia's expression froze. Okay, El Yu Ziming, why did you talk to your sister? Father El Yu glanced at his younger son. Although there was reproach in the words, his tone was not heavy at all. El Yu Ziming tried his best, but he didn't dare to be presumptuous in front of Father El Yu and didn't say any more. Father El Yu turned his gaze on El Yu Xia again, his eyes were already shining with a little unhappy, you and your adoptive parents are very close. El Yu Ziakui squeezed her hand on her side, and said in a calm voice, No, I usually go to the studio to train in addition to studying. I also occasionally contact and have a meal, nothing else. When Father L. Yu heard the words, he withdrew his gaze and cleared his voice, it is understandable to think about the kindness of foster parents for so many years. Dad can understand, but for some people, it is better to have less contact. It will not help you. Now that you know who you are, Xia Xia, do you understand what Father meant? L. Yu Xia's eyes drooped slightly, her expression constricted, and she hummed, then said, Then father, I will go back to the room first, read a book, and prepare for the next competition. As her words fell, El Yu Ziming sneered again. El Yu Xia heard it, but ignored him. Father El Yu heard his daughter mention the competition, and then he remembered something, by the way, after school tomorrow afternoon, go to the Municipal Education Association in person. Uncle Shui has prepared a review of the competition for you. Information, your mouth will be sweeter then. El Yuxia was stunned, Uncle Shui. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Uncle Shui is the chairman of the Municipal Education Association. Father El Yu explained. When El Yuxia heard this, her eyes widened, and there was a touch of ecstasy on her face, Thank you Dad. Father El Yu smiled and only said, don't let my father's good intentions be disappointed. Don't worry, dad, I will definitely place you back in a good place. El Yuxia was in a good mood. With the competition materials of the Municipal Education Association, she didn't believe it would be worse than Huo Yao. El Yuxia's eyes suddenly flashed with fighting spirit. Okay, you can go back to the room to review. Father El Yu waved his hand at her impatiently, and then set his eyes on the TV screen. Yet. Yeah. El Yuxia replied lightly, turned and walked towards the stairs. After waiting for someone to leave, El Yu Ziming put his feet down lazily, sat upright again, looked at Father El Yu, frowning, Dad, are you asking El Yuxia to get answers to the exam questions? What kind of information is tedious? Father El Yu only glanced at him faintly, and said, Children don't bother so much. Dad, do you know what your behavior is called? It's cheating. El Yu Ziming angrily threw the sofa cushion in his hands. If the exam is not good, what is the ability to cheat? He said that when El Yu Xia first came back, although his academic performance was good, he was not as good as he is now. Dare to be his dad doing tricks here? Father El Yu frowned, what is cheating? You don't review before the exam? You don't want to buy materials to read? Can it be the same? El Yu Ziming smiled angrily. Father El Yu pressed his eyebrows and said helplessly, Okay, don't let this dispute with your dad. Go back to your room and go to sleep. You have to go to school tomorrow. Seeing this, El Yu Ziming shook his head disappointed, and finally said nothing, and ran back to the room angrily. Lying on the bed, he stared at the ceiling with wide open eyes, 
and he couldn't figure out why this Elusia came back, his parents' principles of life became more and more difficult for him to understand. How come his older sister who was raised in the country didn't have so many moths? Thinking of Huo Yao, El Yuziming couldn't help but think of the embarrassment he was in the hospital before. He grunted and sat up again, took the phone next to him, and found Huo Yao's contact information. That was when I went to the hospital to see my grandmother a few days ago, I deliberately turned over her mobile phone and stole it. Looking at the numbers in the address book, El Yuziming moved his fingertips back and forth on the dial key several times, and finally rubbed his hair randomly and changed it to send a short message. Hey, coward, are you asleep yet? Coward, I haven't asked you to settle the bill in the hospital last time, you will wait for me, I won't let you off easily. After sending two messages in a row, El Yuziming waited for a long time without waiting for a reply. He was so angry that he slammed the phone on the pillow, then lay back on the bed, pulled the quilt next to him, and rudely covered his head. Asterisk. When Huo Yao saw El Yuziming's text message, it was already the next morning. A little kid. Huo Yao had read the information, shook his head, and then deleted the information directly, not taking it seriously. After getting up and washing briefly, Huo Yao suddenly remembered Min Yu's expression on that day. Although the other party made it clear that she did not need her soothing fragrance, but, the favors owed are always to be paid back. It is not difficult to make tranquilizers, but the medicinal materials are a bit difficult to deal with, and the effect will definitely be reduced by half if you use a normal substitute. Huo Yao thought about Xiao Su, slowly put on his school uniform, and walked out of the room. At breakfast, Huo Yao raised his head to look at Dad Huo, and asked casually, Dad, is there any market for medicinal materials here? Dad Huo swallowed the buns in his mouth, thought about Xiao Su, and asked, I know there is one in the medicinal material market, but it seems to be wholesale Chinese medicinal materials. Is this what you are looking for? Huo Yao nodded. Why did you suddenly ask about the medicinal material market? Father Huo was very curious. Huo Yao drank his porridge with his head down, and replied calmly, I need to buy some medicinal materials, it's useful. Seeing his daughter's answer, Dad Huo was horrified. After thinking for a few seconds, he didn't ask any more, but said, The card that Dad gave you before has money in it, so don't be reluctant to use it. Huo Yao twitched the corners of his lips and said vaguely, I see. Papa Huo looked at his daughter who didn't listen to him, his face suddenly showed melancholy. In the past, when El Yuxia was still in this home, he always tried every means to ask them for money. Although the family was not short on money, he and his wife did not want to develop her into that kind of extravagant and arrogant temperament, so since childhood, they have controlled giving. She did not tell her the specific situation of her family but I didn't expect that their thoughts would turn into harsh treatment among the L.U. family's population, and it also became an excuse for the child to leave their home without hesitation and return to the family of wealthy parents. It is really ironic to want to come. Let's take a look at my own biological daughter. Although she has been living hard since she was a child, even if they gave her money intentionally or unintentionally, they didn't see her buying anything, and she didn't even use the money in the card. An attitude that the family is not rich, don't spend money casually. This made them feel both gratified and uncomfortable as their parents. The smartest and cute baby in their family must have had a lot of hardships before they developed their current character, so he and his wife decided that whatever she wanted whatever they do, they will try their best to make up for their debts over the years. It's just, when he thought of the black card he had sent to him that had not been opened, Dad Huo couldn't help but let out a sigh. Ugh. Huo Yao heard this sudden sigh from the old father and couldn't help but glanced at him strangely, what's the matter? Unexpectedly, Dad Huo sighed again, looking back at her with a rather bitter look, without speaking, with a pitiful look. Huo Yao. Huo Yao just went to school, and was called to the office for the nth time this semester, 
and the classmate who helped send her to the office secretly told her that the face of the head teacher was not very good, so she was careful not to step on the thunder. Huo Yao smiled and thanked others, and soon went to the office. As soon as I walked in, I saw Chen Yu's dark face, and Huo Yao touched the tip of his nose dumbfounded. Is it because the language scores in this monthly exam were too bad? As he walked over, Huo Yao shouted obediently, Teacher Chen, you are looking for me. Chen Yu looked at Huo Yao with a very complicated expression. For a long time, she said dully, Student Huo, do you have any opinions on me as the head teacher? Huo Yao's lips twitched, and he couldn't answer the conversation. The results of the monthly test have basically come out. Your scores in all subjects are quite excellent, but your language. Chen Yu spoke, thinking of how she felt when she saw Huo Yao's Chinese test paper today, she couldn't help but beat her chest. Obviously, the entire paper is well written, and the beautiful fonts look pleasing to the eye, but the total score, makes her quite distressed. Seeing Chen Yu's eagerness to beat his chest, Huo Yao sighed silently in his heart. It seemed that the truth of failing was the truth. Chen Yu took a deep, uncomfortable breath before continuing, You actually only scored 92 points, how can you score 92 points? 150 points, 92 points passing line. Chen Yu has reason to suspect that her student is deliberately targeting her language, otherwise, how could she accurately step on the pass line? Although the two-point mantissa was given by the teacher of another class for her beautiful handwriting when reviewing the papers. When Huo Yao heard this, he raised his head in surprise, Hey! So I passed it. Chen Yu was surprised when she saw her, as if she still felt, very good, and instantly felt that her high blood pressure was about to commit. Student Huo Yao, if you are not satisfied with the teacher's teaching methods, you can mention it but this score for your Chinese is definitely not worth it. Chen Yu almost gritted his teeth. All other subjects are full marks. She just passed this subject, and she doesn't know where to put her old face. Huo Yeoking coughed and explained, Teacher, you have misunderstood. I don't have any dissatisfaction, but, put it this way, I have a very serious partial discipline situation. With so many subjects, how can she just choose her language? Chen Yu clutched her chest, desperately in need of a quick-acting heart-saving pill. After a long time, she said angrily, I don't care, you have to make up for your Chinese grades, otherwise you come to the teacher's home on the weekend, and the teacher will do your tuition in private. If this language grade is not good, she will have the illusion that a good seedling has been ruined by her. So Chen Yu decided that even if he doesn't rest on weekends in the future, he should give the crooked good seedling right. Huo Yao was really surprised if she could let the head teacher say such things as tutoring. After she recovered, she lied without changing her face, tutoring is probably not possible. My parents reported other things to me on weekends. K's cram school is full. Song Ning and Huo Jinyan, who were far away at home, sneezed together. Who is talking about it? When Chen Yu heard Huo Yao say this, his heart became even more frustrated. Obviously, she is only focusing on her language subject, and she does not supplement Chinese, but instead supplements other subjects. Isn't this what she has opinions about? After sighing silently, Chen Yu said earnestly, No matter what, your Chinese score must be mentioned otherwise the college entrance examination will suffer. Well, I know teacher Chen. As long as he doesn't mention the remedial tuition, Huo Ya responded very simply. Chen Yu glanced at her again, tired, raised her hand and waved in the air, go back to class. Huo Ya nodded, but before leaving, she asked more, does the monthly test result come out today? Chen Yu has walked back to the desk, no. Next Monday, the total score ranking has not been calculated yet. Oh. Huo Yao touched his nose, didn't ask anything, turned around and walked out. Huo Yao was called to the office because of her language performance. Although it was only a small episode, 
because she participated in the National Knowledge Contest and achieved the first place in the country twice, her popularity in school was so high that her results in this monthly exam have also attracted everyone's attention. Although the monthly test is over and the total score has not yet come out, the news of her poor Chinese performance this time spread like wildfire in a few classes in high school. I don't know who came out. I feel that Huo Yao from the experimental class is going to be embarrassed this time. I didn't even pass the simplest language. I have reason to suspect that she came in through the back door. Language failed, how did she get the first place in the national knowledge contest? Curious. Could it be that this monthly exam was assigned to the last exam room, and there were no top students on the left or right for her to secretly plagiarize, so the score data is so true? Don't mention it really looks like this. After all, the place where she sits is the most special in the entire examination room. It seems that the school teacher's arrangement is quite meaningful. I was originally curious whether Huo Yao could get the first place in the exam this time, but now this language score, M, even if he gets full marks in other subjects, I am afraid it is absolutely impossible. Chinese exams are so bad, you still expect her to get perfect scores in other scientific exams, anyway, I can't believe it. Basically, these were discussed in several class groups in the third year of high school. Even the students in the experimental class discussed the same. Of course, Huo Yao was also in the group, but she kept blocking the group news, so she didn't watch it. 2. Even if she saw it, she wouldn't mind it. After school in the afternoon, Huo Yao is going to go to the medicinal market that his father told her in the morning. As soon as she walked out of the gate, a few people suddenly rushed over and blocked her way. Coward, finally let me catch you. I dared not reply to my text message last night. The leader was Liu Ziming with an arrogant look. At this moment, he raised his chin and looked at Huo Yao with obviously malicious intentions. There were three tall and thin teenagers standing beside him, the expressions on his faces were no different from him. Huo Yao's eyes fell on Liu Ziming, and there was a bit of coldness between his brows. Liu Ziming was subconsciously horrified by the look in her eyes, but he soon recovered from annoyance. He is not alone today, and he is afraid of what this coward would do. With a cold scream, Liu Ziming also deliberately clenched his fists, squeezing the knuckles, I. Before he could say anything, Huo Yao interrupted him, before I get angry, get out. The voice is very impatient, and there is no temperature. As her words fell, the teenagers surrounding Liu Ziming stood up aggressively in an instant. Just you, dare you call us to get out. It's not because of not beating a girl, I'm just like you, I've already been beaten to the ground. You speak to me, pay attention to your attitude. Liu Ziming frowned when he saw a few classmates like this, but he didn't stop him either, clasping his hands on his chest, gloating with misfortune. Asterisk. Here Liu Xia just walked out of the school gate, and saw Huo Yao being stopped by a few boys from a distance. From her perspective, Liu Ziming's face was just blocked, so he didn't see him for a while. Chong Ying Ying, who was by Liu Xia's side, also saw Huo Yao, raised her eyebrows, and said happily, Xia Xia, is your adopted daughter troubled by someone? Liu Ziming's classmates were always like a riffraff, and they looked like problem teenagers. Liu Xia's expression was light, and she only said, I am not familiar with her, her business has nothing to do with me. Tisk tusk, how long has Huo Yao been back? Why did he even provoke students from other schools? Does this mean that it has a natural harvest? Chong Ying Ying sneered. Liu Xia's lips twitched and she withdrew her gaze, let's go, don't be nosy. Here. Huo Yao looked at these pretentious little boys, shook his head boringly, suddenly stretched out his hand, and hooked his index finger to Liu Ziming, come here. Seeing this, the named Liu Ziming, somehow, suddenly remembered the situation in the hospital last time when his wrist was almost pinched and dislocated by her, and he subconsciously stepped back. Counsel. 
Huo Yao spit out such a word faintly. Then, L. Yu Ziming didn't even react at all, Huo Yao walked up to him quickly, and twisted his ears. When I was young, I was full of bad habits, skipping classes, besieging classmates, bullying the weak, hey? That's how your L. Yu family educates people. Huo Yao didn't do anything lightly. L. Yu Ziming felt that his ears were about to be pulled off, and his whole body trembled with pain. There was no such arrogance just now. Ah, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, you let go. L. Yu Ziming let out a scream, but it was useless. He couldn't help but yelled at the people next to him, you guys quickly pull this crazy woman away from me. The few teenagers next to him were already looking silly, and they came back to their senses. They just wanted to go forward to pull Huo Yao's hand, but when they met Huo Yao's expressionless and obviously unprovoking face, they were all stunned. Subconsciously not dare to go. Huo Yao curled his mouth, pulled L. Yu Ziming's ears to draw him closer, and then slapped L. Yu Ziming's head with a slap with his left hand, isn't he playing sideways all day? L. Yu Ziming's head was buzzing, and the whole person was beaten up. He instinctively covered his head with his hands, and did not dare to resist. Huo Yao sneered at the corners of his lips, Your parents didn't teach you how to be a man, I'll come today. After finishing speaking, he slapped him mercilessly. L. Yu Ziming had never been beaten since he was a child. His ears were so painful and his head was photographed so dizzy. He could no longer pretend that kind of crazy second generation ancestor, don't beat me. I was wrong. Can't it? Huo Yao stopped his hand movement, squinted his eyes, and looked at him, what's wrong? L. Yu Ziming glanced at her cautiously. Although he was still angry, he didn't dare to break out. He bit his lip and said dully, I shouldn't come to trouble you, nor should I play sideways in front of you. If he knew that this coward had become so aggressive now, he wouldn't come to trouble her even if he killed him. Huo Yao let out a soft voice, his eyes filled with contempt, it seems that you are not only counseling, but also stupid. When L. Yu Ziming heard the words, he immediately raised his head to refute, but because his ears were still being tugged, he had to bend his body and shouted, I'm not stupid. If you are not stupid, would you bring a group of S and B skip classes to play sideways? If you are not stupid, you will be beaten by me so that I will not even dare to return it. If you are not stupid, what else can you do besides bullying like a second-generation ancestor? L. Yu Ziming's face flushed red, but he couldn't refute anything. You should be thankful that you are not my brother. Huo Yao snorted softly, and the fingers that were pulling his ears loosened. If she really had such a brother, she would have been taken back to the furnace and remade long ago. Huo Yao shook his head, took out the wet tissue from his bag, and carelessly wiped his fingers clean one by one, and then looked at L. Yu Ziming, who seemed to have been beaten up, with a cold voice, Don't let him I see you, or I will see you once and fight once. Huo Yao finished speaking and walked away. L. Yu Ziming returned to his senses and looked at Huo Yao's back gradually away. He was dumbfounded, with hatred and anger in his heart. I hate this coward who has been bullied by him since he was a child. Now he not only dares to resist him, but also dares to beat him. What's even more annoying is that she actually said that she was not her brother and didn't want to see him again. The more El Yuziming thinks about it, the more uncomfortable he feels, who wants to be your brother, you can dream. You crazy woman. Brother Ming, are you okay, the crazy woman just now is too scary. We don't want to help you, but we are afraid that she will be more ruthless when she waits. At this time, several other teenagers who came back to their senses gathered around and said with a wry expression of concern. L. Yu Ziming's face was ugly. Looking at these few classmates who often skipped classes and fights on weekdays, the classmates who didn't do anything except bullying, suddenly echoed the words of the crazy woman when he was being stupid. L. Yu Ziming aroused a wave of irritation for no reason, said nothing, turned around and left. Seeing this, several teenagers looked at each other, and they were all a little confused. 
wouldn't El Yuziming really be beaten stupid? I don't know if there is a tacit understanding or something. Several people turned their heads involuntarily at this time, looked at the door full of majestic and long history not far away, and came to a conclusion in their hearts. Sure enough, it is the number one middle school, and the people trained are awesome, unattainable, unattainable. Asterisk. As soon as El Yusya got into the car, before putting down the small bag in his hand, he heard the surprised voice of the driver in front. Miss, do you think that is the young master? Hearing the words, El Yusya raised his head and looked out the car window. As expected, he could see El Yuziming's face from a distance. Why is this idiot here? It was just that El Yusya saw a few teenagers behind him, and she was taken aback. Aren't they the people who just troubled Huo Yao? El Yusya squinted her eyes, only to notice that they were wearing the same school uniforms. These were El Yuziming's classmates? El Yuziming brought someone to trouble Huo Yao? After thinking for a few seconds, El Yusya instructed the driver, go and call El Yuziming up. After a while, El Yuziming covered his ears with one hand, and got into the car angrily. The first sentence when he looked at El Yusya was, did you see it just now? El Yusya twisted her eyebrows, did not answer his words, but asked, why did you come to a middle school? El Yuziming scratched his hair and glanced out of the car window, I want you to care. El Yusya seemed to have been used to his attitude a long time ago, and there was no dissatisfaction in her voice, I am your sister, I don't care about you, who cares about you? Ha, pretending to be something. El Yuziming chuckled, after thinking about it, he turned his head and stared at El Yusya coldly, I warn you, don't tell anyone what happened today, or I want you to look good. El Yusya took a deep breath, El Yuziming, you are already 15 years old, can you be more mature and stable? What's more, she didn't even know that he was among the people who had just troubled Huo Yao, and even if he did, she didn't bother to look at him. A person who has to cheat even to participate in the competition, talk to me mature and steady, are you funny? El Yuziming sneered, paused, and he added, Yes, I almost forgot, you are now are you going to find someone to get the answer? El Yusya's face instantly sank when he heard the words, seeing that the temperature in his eyes was already gone, El Yuziming, you are really not an ordinary mentally retarded. Facing El Yusya's scolding, El Yuziming just rolled his eyes, and then said to the driver in front impatiently, hurry up and drive. The driver carefully glanced at the rear view mirror, and when he started the car, he asked, Miss, should I go to the Municipal Education Association or send the young master home? El Yusya still looked ugly. She lowered her eyes, glanced at the time on her wrist, and frowned, you send me to the association first, and then send him back. Then I will take a taxi home by myself. Okay. The driver responded. El Yusya glanced at El Yuziming, who was facing her back and covering her ears with her hands. She pressed her eyebrows irritably, turned her head, and looked out the car window blankly. About twenty minutes later, the car drove downstairs to the Municipal Education Association. El Yusya stroked her hair and tidied up her clothes a bit. Before she walked out of the school, she had already changed her school uniform and was wearing a full suit. A decent lady's dress. After confirming that there was nothing wrong, he put on a mask and got out of the car. When the driver saw El Yusya walk into the lobby on the first floor, he restarted the car and prepared to return to Lu's house. El Yuziming, who had been cold and hadn't said anything all the way, suddenly raised his head and looked at the driver in front of him. Forget it, you can find a place to park and wait for her. El Yuziming tried his best and murmured softly, Anyway, it's just to get some information, it won't take too long. When the driver heard the words, there was a touch of surprise in his eyes. The two siblings have always been at odds, and they just quarreled. According to his temper, this situation would never happen when Miss Xia was together. However, children of this age are rebellious and often noisy is just to attract the attention of the other party. 
Probably the young master is like this, hard-mouthed and soft-hearted. Soon, the driver found a temporary parking space not far away. After he parked the car and thought about it, he took out his mobile phone and sent a text message to Elusia waiting for her downstairs. Ten minutes later, Elusia walked out with a paper bag in her hand. The driver had been paying attention to the direction of the lobby, saw her coming out, and quickly drove the car over. Elusia got into the car, put the paper bag in his hand on the seat, and took off the mask again. The expression on his face looked very happy. It seemed that all his unhappiness had disappeared because of a trip to the association. El Yuziming glanced at her, then fell on the paper bag again, moved his fingers, picked up the bag, just about to take out the information book inside, but was snatched back by El Yusya. Don't touch my things. El Yusya said coldly. El Yuziming snorted softly, cut, who is rare, isn't it the answer to cheating? El Yusya shook her head, eyes full of disappointment with this younger brother. She didn't want to affect her mood. She didn't bother to explain to him more. Soon, she took out the Bluetooth headset and put it on. Huo Yao here, after cleaning up El Yuziming, went directly to the medicinal material market. It's just that when she arrived at the medicinal material market it was a bit late, and many shops were closed and the shops that did not close the shops saw her young and were wearing school uniforms, and they didn't pay much attention to her. Huo Yao didn't care. After looking at a few shops, he found that they were all ordinary medicinal materials merchants, and there were no special rare medicinal materials at all, let alone the flavors she wanted. Walking out of a store again, Huo Yao's face was obviously disappointed. There is no medicinal material she wants in such a big market. This is simply unscientific. Huo Yao pressed her eyebrows and continued to walk towards the market. Soon, she was attracted by a store called Yuyazai. From the outside, the shop is not too big, but the entire lintel decoration has a kind of antique flavor, which is considered the most unusual existence on this street. Huo Yao pushed the door and walked in. The faint scent of sandalwood floating in the air burst into the end of her nose, and finally her eyes showed surprise. This incense is not stuffy, not astringent, nor does it have a pungent scent. It is fresh and elegant, and has a distinct texture inferior to those on the market. Huo Yao looked up and looked around. The display in the shop was very simple. There were old wooden carvings on the window counter and the whole wall behind the counter was displayed with small lattice wooden cabinets. The name of the medicinal material is posted, and there is an inner room separated by a bead curtain next to it. At this time, the bead curtain in the inner room was opened, and a middle-aged man walked out of it. He was still stunned when he saw Huo Yao who came in. Then he looked at the inner room behind him again, and then turned back again. The wooden door was closed, and then he said politely to Huo Yao, Sorry, the store is about to close. Huo Yao heard what the middle-aged man meant to rush customers, and she didn't talk too much nonsense, and asked directly, Could there be a few medicinal materials such as a century-old tortoise shell, five flavors, white gum, and keel stone? When the man heard these medicines, his eyes were surprised. Because these herbs are scarce and expensive, they all have the effect of calming the nerves, helping sleep, and regulating body functions. Moreover, people who understand pharmacology generally do not easily try to use them together as medicine. Once the ratio is not appropriate, the effect of the medicine will not be exerted, but there will be no small side effects. So although these herbs are scarce, very few people buy them. The little girl in front of me doesn't look like someone who knows medicine professionally, maybe she is buying for someone? The man was so absorbed in his mind that he could see that Huo Yao was the one who really wanted to buy medicinal materials, so he said politely, except for the century-old tortoise shell, it is available in other stores, but the quantity is not too much. I don't know how much you want. Huo Yao heard this, although it was a bit regretful but he finally gained something, and then said, Wu Weining and Bai Jiao Xiang each 300 grams, Keelstone 250 grams. 
The man nodded as soon as he heard it, these are the quantities. After a pause, he took the computer next to him, pressed the button, and said, these medicines total 320,000. The price is not too expensive. Huo Yao took out the phone from his pocket and asked, is it possible to transfer money to online banking? Yes. The man walked to the counter, took out a card with a bank account number, and handed it to Huo Yao. Huo Yao just glanced, and soon, within two minutes, the man's cell phone rang. He took out his cell phone and saw that it was the transfer information of 320,000 yuan, and he couldn't help but raised his head and looked at Huo Yao in shock. The little girl just glanced at the bank account he passed over, right? This memory, isn't it a bit too good? That's a long list of numbers. Seeing the boss's shock and loss, Huo Yao curled his eyebrows, boss. The man recovered his senses and said hurriedly, I'm sorry, I will get you medicine now. Okay. Huo Yao put away his mobile phone, while watching the boss grab the medicine, he asked, Boss, do you know where the Indian sandalwood is sold? The man understands pharmacology. Hearing Huo Yao's question again, he couldn't help but catch the medicine. If the medicines just mentioned are used to regulate body functions, then when combined with the warmth of Lishan sandalwood as a supplement, it can perfectly stimulate the characteristics of each medicine and minimize the side effects. It's just that, this method is relatively old, because it is too sophisticated in the judgment and preparation of the pharmacist, plus the formula and usage have been lost, and now basically no one will use it. The middle-aged man has only heard of it because his family is a family of traditional Chinese medicine. It seems that this little girl must have a good medicine at home. The middle-aged man constricted and spoke more politely, I have a friend who happens to make spices, and Laos Handan also has it. His shop is not far from my side. I will give you a business card and you can go. Take a look. If it weren't for the one in the back inner room, he would want to take the little girl over in person. After all, the current pharmacist is too hard to find let alone no ancient recipes. Soon, the middle-aged man packed several medicines, found out his business card, and handed it to Huo Yao. Thank you boss. Huo Yao took things and prepared to leave. The middle-aged man saw this, thought about it, and called her again, although there is no tortoise shell of a century in the store, there are sixty years of copies. Huo Yao paused, tilted his head, and said quietly, no, although the efficacy of 60 years of medicine may not be much worse than that of a hundred years, but the medicine is precise and precise, and even a slight difference will miss a thousand miles. After speaking, she opened the door and walked out. The middle-aged man was stunned and didn't return to his senses for a long time, until an old man walked out of the inner room before pulling his thoughts back. Eh hey, Heng, what are you in a daze? Don't you hurry up and lock the outside door. Hearing this, a hung walked to the door and said, Master, a little girl who bought medicine just came here. The prescription is still very special. The old man took out an old looking book from the drawer of the cabinet and asked casually, Oh, what medicine did you buy? A hung said the four herbs that Huo Yao wanted, paused, and then said, But I told her no for a hundred year old tortoise shell and she didn't want it for sixty years. Then she left, and she asked me about it. Sandalwood. When the old man heard this, his face was a little surprised, but he glanced at the direction of the inner room and interrupted, Okay, if you have anything to say later. After speaking, he took the things into the inner room. A hung hummed, then hung up the lock and walked into the inner room. In the inner room, the scent of sandalwood is stronger than that on the outside, and it is obvious that the outside scent is transmitted from it. Men Yu leaned lazily on the mahogany chair with his hands on the table next to him. From time to time, he would use the incense chops to flick the spices in the incense burner. He looked loose and casual, but his face was a little too white. Men Xiao, the current state of your body, apart from taking medicine slowly, the old man, I have no other way for the time being. The person who spoke was the old man just now. 
With Zhou Yun standing by Men Yu's side, he asked with a bleak expression, but now the medicine doesn't seem to work, so can't I try other methods to contain it? The old man shook his head with a wry smile, then opened the old book and handed it to Zhou Yun, this book is handed down by the older generation, and there are some methods available, but according to my ability, even if it is configured the medicine came out, but how effective the medicine is and whether it will reject Min Shao's situation is hard to say. What's more, he has studied medicine for decades. If he could develop it, he would have developed it a long time ago. Why is he still at a loss with an ancient book? The old man sighed and said, you can take this book to the people of the pharmacist association, maybe they will gain something. Zhou Yun's gaze fell on the book handed over by the old man, and was about to reach out to take it, but Min Yu slowly said, a gentleman does not take away the favors of others. Since it is something passed down by the ancestor pay, there is no reason to borrow it. When Zhou Yun heard his master say this, he was angrily and anxious, but what's in your body? Men Yu raised his hand and interrupted him, didn't old Pei say that it can be contained temporarily? That's it. His expression was calm, gentle and moist. If you can find the descendants of the rumored Shang Guan clan, maybe Min Shao's problem can be easily solved. Pei Lao sighed, paused, and he said again, but, this clan has never appeared. So it's still a mystery whether it really exists. Zhou Yun squeezed his fist thinking about the information he had found before, and his voice was deep, no matter what, even if I dig three feet in the ground, I will find people out. Huo Yao strolled around the medicinal material market again, luckily, and finally bought the medicine. After buying all the medicines, she took out the business card given by the middle-aged man before, looked for the spice address on the card, and looked for it. Because the production of old sandalwood is small and rare, the price on the market is also very expensive, and there are also many fakes. When Huo Yao went to the spice shop, the boss at first thought she was a little girl who didn't understand, and even fooled her with other origins. Only after she was dismantled, the boss realized that he had met an expert. Take out the genuine product. After Huo Yao saw it, although the color was a bit unsatisfactory, it could be used to make incense. He didn't waste much tongue with the boss, and he didn't ask him to pack it specially. After paying the money, he took the things and left. It was completely dark outside, Song Ning had already made two calls, and Huo Yao called a taxi from the side of the road and drove home. When I got home, it was almost eight o'clock. Song Ning looked at her daughter carrying a few bags, and felt very relieved for the first time. While helping her with things, she said, the girl just wants to go out and buy some clothes and jewelry. However, when she accidentally glanced at a piece of wood in the bag, her words stopped abruptly. Huo Yao changed his slippers, turned his head to see his mother in shock, he couldn't help but shouted, Mom. Song Ning raised his head, pulled the bag wide with both hands, and said with great pain, Don't tell me. You came back from a piece of rotten wood when you went shopping. The daughters of other people buy clothes and jewelry, and even if they don't work, they buy some food and take them home. Look at her house, actually carried a piece of wood? Is this fair? Huo Yao's lips twitched, and he corrected it seriously, this is sandalwood. The kind of high value. Song Ning didn't care about sandalwood. She only knew that her beautiful, cute, and intelligent image of a female goose was completely destroyed by this rotten wood. So Song Ning did not believe in evil and opened the other two bags, flipping them, and suddenly the expression on his face became even more desperate. Let alone a piece of rotten wood, and the other two bags contain strange things. Song Ning shook her head. She must have opened it in a wrong way. However, the sweet and lovely daughter is always just an imagination. Song Ning gave a long sigh, put a few bags on the cabinet, and said, Daughter, can we be a little bit cute? After speaking, she blinked deliberately, and then compared a scissor hand to Huo Yao. Huo Yao glanced over Song Ning's scissors hand, his forehead bulged, and then automatically skipped her words and asked, Mom, is there still food? 
Song Ning sighed again, there are some, I'll keep them for you, hurry up and eat. Song Ning and Huo Jinyan had already eaten. The second brother Huo Ting Grui had a business meeting at night and had to come back later, so at this time, Huo Yao was eating slowly by himself. After eating, Huo Yao picked up the bags on the cabinet, just walked to the top of the stairs, suddenly turned around, and looked at Song Ning who was sitting on the sofa watching TV, Mom, we still have free time at home. Your room or utility room? Song Ning raised his head, there is a utility room downstairs, but there are a lot of things piled up in it. Do you want to put something in this? Not really, it's just handmade something that needs a separate space. Huo Yao said unhurriedly. That's it. Song Ning thought for a while, then said, your third brother's room is empty. You can go to his room, which is the one next to you on the left. Huo Yao was silent for two seconds, and asked, Will this be wrong? Song Ning smiled and shook his head, No, your third brother is abroad, and he doesn't come back very often. Even if he is empty, he is empty. Hearing this, Huo Yao didn't say anything, nodded at her, and went upstairs. After she left, Song Ning stroked her chin, thought for a while, turned her head and said to her husband next to her, Old Huo, do you think our house is too small? After a pause, she said again, Look, there is no independent space for her daughter at home. Although the third child has settled abroad, she always uses the third child's room according to her daughter's personality. She is sure I will feel sorry. Huo Jinyan put down the remote control in his hand, thought for a while, and thought it made sense, otherwise, let's move to Yoshuawen. The environment there is good, the house is bigger, there are more rooms, and it's closer to her daughter's school, even if her daughter invites classmates to come. You don't have to worry about not having a room when you play at home. Yes, if you don't mention, I have forgotten the Yoshuawen villa. Song Ning patted his head, I will go to the designer tomorrow to see where they need to be redecorated and add more. What furniture should go in, try to move it in as soon as possible and surprise my daughter when it falls. Song Ning is a typical speedy IST, and she has to do things right away when she decides. After talking to her husband, she picked up her mobile phone, found out the designer's number, and called the other party. After I had finalized the meeting time with the designer tomorrow, Song Ning put down the phone, and suddenly felt a sense of melancholy. He looked around and sighed, I have lived for more than 20 years. I feel a bit reluctant to move out. Huo Jinyan raised his eyebrows and patted her shoulder, for my daughter. Compared with her daughter who had suffered a lot from snacks after living in a home for more than 20 years, the reluctance in Song Ning's heart disappeared in an instant. You are right. We are used to this old house, but our daughter deserves the best treatment. Song Ning paused, with a trace of annoyance in his eyes, I knew I should move before my daughter came back. Maybe it won't be misunderstood that the family owes money. Upstairs. Huo Yao took something and unscrewed the door of the next room. Press the switch on the wall and the layout of the room with only one bed and one table caught Huo Yao's eye. The decoration style is very modern and simple, all in cool colors, and there are two award-winning certificates of honor hanging on the walls. Huo Yao put the things in his hands on the table, walked to the two honorary certificates, and when he looked at the above awards, his face was obviously surprised. Knowles Medical Biology Award is the most authoritative organization certification in the medical field of M country. It is selected every three years. Those who can be evaluated are talents with super talents in medicine. The other is the Losco Medical Award, which is also an internationally prestigious medical award. These two awards, no matter which one they are, show how much this person has contributed to medical research. Huo Yao did not expect that her third brother, who had never met, was actually a medical genius, and she paid attention to the time when she won the award, which was five years ago. Five years ago, her third brother should have been around 20 years old? Huo Yao put his arms around his chest, he felt a little more inquisitive about the three Huo Yulins, 
but it was a pity that they were abroad, otherwise they could communicate. She is still quite interested in the study of Western medicine. Withdrawing her gaze, Huo Yao turned around, closed the curtains in the room, turned on the air conditioner, and when the temperature reached her needs, she began to play with the pile of medicinal materials on the table. Making incense sticks is not difficult, but the difficulty lies in adding medicinal materials to the powdered mountain sandalwood. The amount and proportion of the powdered sandalwood must be accurately calculated. Although Huo Yao is not a professional fragrance maker, she has a high talent in blending spices and pharmacy. Not only can it be combined with several domineering medicines at the same time, but it can also prevent conflicting side effects. Her familiarity with the properties of the medicine and the precision of her handling have almost reached the level of abnormality. Therefore, for her, Blending the ingredients of soothing fragrance is just a breeze. Two hours later, Huo Yao finally put down the utensils in his hand, his eyes fell on the incense stick that had been squeezed out with a mold on the chopping board, and he exhaled heavily. Now just wait two hours for the moisture in the incense stick to dry completely, even if the production is successful. Huo Yao twisted her stiff neck, and there was a little mud on her fingers. She went to the bathroom to clean it. After staying in the room for more than half an hour, after confirming that Xiang had no other problems, Huo Yao opened the door and walked out of the room. As soon as he closed the door, he saw Brother Huo appear at the top of the stairs, and he seemed to stumble a little while walking. Seeing this, Huo Yao walked quickly over, the strong smell of wine rushed into the end of her nose, she twisted her eyebrows, and quickly held the person. Although Huo Ting Grui was a bit drunk, he still had consciousness. Seeing Huo Yao, the corners of his lips instantly raised a smile like a flower, little cute, are you waiting for your second brother to come home? When Huo Yao heard the cute sound, the hand that held him loosened, Huo Ting Grui didn't pay attention for a moment, and his shoulder hit the wall. Huo Ting Grui hissed to avoid falling. He instinctively supported the wall with his hands and turned his head. The glasses on the bridge of his nose were crooked and about to fall down, Sister, you. Huo Yao put on the glasses for him, and said without changing his face, Sorry, brother, I'm weak, I didn't hold it just now. Huo Ting Grui heard that the alcohol-filled brain was indeed moving slower than before, Oh, it's okay, blame me. After speaking, Huo Ting Grui leaned on the wall and stood up slowly. After shaking his head vigorously, he turned his head and looked at Huo Yao again. He gave a chuckle, in fact, the second brother was not drunk. Huo Yao shook his head, once again reached out to support his arm, and replied in a perfunctory way, Well, I'm drunk. Sister, did you drink too? Huo Ting Grui at this moment, like Tai Han In, moved his head over while speaking. Huo Yao took a deep breath and resisted the urge to greet him with a slap. He pushed Huo Ting Grui's head aside, took his hand, and dragged the person into the room. The whole process did not take much effort. Wait a moment, I'll pour you a glass of water. After throwing the person on the boat, Huo Yao said and walked out of the room again. After a short while, she returned with a cup of colored water. Huo Ting Grui had already rolled off the bed and onto the floor, still not knowing what she was yelling. Huo Yao pressed his eyebrows, walked over with a black face, and got him up again. Drink this. She brought the cup to Huo Ting Grui's mouth. Huo Ting Grui looked at her dimly, without drinking water, just smiled, sister. Seeing this, Huo Yao simply fed him the water in the cup forcibly, with skillful movements and no drop was wasted. After all, it was not for nothing to administer medicine to those cats and dogs since childhood. Not long after drinking the water, Huo Ting Grui became honest, and soon fell asleep. Huo Yao sat in the room for half an hour, making sure that people wouldn't fix moths again, and then returned to his room. The next day was Saturday. Huo Ting Grui woke up in the morning, thinking that he would have a headache, but in the end he didn't feel any strangeness at all, as if he hadn't had a drink last night. That's weird. After getting up, 
Huo Ting Grui hurriedly went to the bathroom to take a cool bath, changed into clean clothes, confirmed that there was no alcohol, then walked out of the room and went downstairs. Song Ning made an appointment with the designer in the morning, so he left the house very early. Only Huo Dad and Huo Yao were downstairs, and they were having breakfast. Huo Ting Grui walked over, pulled a chair and sat down, rubbing his shoulders while looking at Huo Yao, and said, Sister, you have been taking care of me last night. You have worked hard. He only remembered that after going upstairs, his sister happened to be at the door, and then came to support him. What happened later is completely fragmented. After a pause, Huo Ting Grui asked again uncomfortably, Um. I didn't go crazy last night, did I? Huo Ya raised his head and looked at him, pursing his lips, showing a smile, it should be no. Huo Ting Grui's lips twitched. What should it mean? Was it posted or not? You will drink less wine in the future, or you will have to take care of you with your sister. Do you think she is so small, your conscience won't hurt? Dad Huo interjected, his expression was quite unhappy. He has not been taken care of by his daughter personally yet. Huo Ting Grui pushed the glasses on the bridge of his nose, and then looked at Huo Yao again. Thin is indeed thin, but small, is almost one meter tall, small? Does his dad have any prejudice against Xiao? What's wrong with your shoulders, have been rubbing and rubbing there? Papa Huo glanced again and asked. Huo Yao's hand holding the spoon paused for a moment. Oh, maybe I drank too much last night, I don't know where I smashed it, it's a little painful. Huo Ting Grui said not very much. Huo Ya raised his eyebrows, tilted his head and looked at him, snip it. Huo Ting Grui was taken aback and reacted, Sister, what you said has a deep meaning. Huo Yao smiled, No, Dad is right, you still have to drink less in the future. After speaking, she lowered her head again and ate breakfast quietly. Huo Ting Grui scratched his head, always feeling that something he didn't know happened last night, and it was related to his shoulder pain. After eating breakfast, Huo Yao went upstairs and went to the next room, preparing to collect the incense made last night. Huo Ting Grui didn't need to go to the company today, so he followed his sister upstairs and saw her go to the third child's room. He couldn't help but walked in curiously. As soon as he entered the house, he smelled a faint scent of sandalwood. Huo Yao was cutting incense with a knife, Yu Guang saw Huo Ting Grui walk in, but did not avoid him. Sister, what are you? Huo Ting Grui picked up a short piece of incense, put it on the tip of his nose and smelled it, is it sandalwood? Huo Yao didn't stop his hands, and hummed softly. Huo Ting Grui glanced at the utensils on the table again, Surprised, you can still make incense. Although Huo Ting Grui didn't know much about incense, but there were friends around him who were also playing this, and he was a little bit fascinated by it. It's just that he didn't expect that his younger sister, who grew up in a small county, would actually do it, and it seemed that he was still very skillful, which was really surprising. However, ordinary people who play incense have a slight elegance. No wonder his sister has such a good temperament, she doesn't seem to have grown up in a small place at all. A little bit. Huo Yao lowered her head, and her voice was faint. Soon, she would cut all the incense into the box. Huo Ting Grui thoughtfully stroked his chin. This incense is not made by someone who only knows a little bit. After a pause, he asked casually, this incense is made by you when you were still living in the old lady's house. Did the teacher learn it? Huo Ya raised his head and looked at him, the confidence between his brows and eyes could not be concealed, no, I taught myself. Adding some special medicinal materials to sandalwood, only she dared to mix them like this. Huo Ting Grui originally wanted to sigh that the old lady is really good at nurturing people. The next second he heard his sister say that he was self-taught, and he was autistic in an instant. Well. Since my sister came back, he has become a glorious foil for her IQ. Huo Yao didn't pay attention to Huo Ting Grui's expression. 
he only took out the phone from his pocket, clicked on WeChat, and sent a message to Min Yu. Last time I said that the incense for you has arrived, I will give you a meeting place? Although he has refused before, but the favor is always to be returned. Huo Yao's eyes were deep. Soon, the phone rang. After reading the information, she put the phone in her pocket again, and then turned her head to look at Huo Ting Grui, second brother, I have something to go now. Then, she took the box of tranquilizers and walked out. Huo Ting Grui was still silently waiting for his sister to offer him a piece of incense, but now he left with the incense. Suddenly, he followed behind her, and asked without intending to ask, Yao Yao, don't you have the second brother's share of the incense you made? The voice seemed to have a little bit of resentment. Huo Yao paused, then turned his head and glanced at him up and down, You have nothing wrong with your body, you don't need to use this. Huo Ting Grui choked, shouldn't the point be that those who see him have a share? What's more, he is still kissing his second brother. Half an hour later, there is a tea house in the city. As soon as Huo Yao walked into the elegant room, he smelled a faint scent of sandalwood, which seemed to be the same as the one she smelled at the Yuyazai store yesterday. Here. Min Yu was sitting in front of the tea tray at this time, making tea elegantly, with an incense burner not far away from her hand, and a cloud of smoke slowly emerged from the incense burner. Huo Yao constricted his eyes, hummed, and then politely nodded towards Zhou Yun next to him. Then he walked over, pulled a mahogany chair away with his hand, and sat down. Zhou Yun glanced at Huo Yao cautiously, not knowing why, every time he saw this little girl, he would give him a coldness that was incompatible with his age, and he couldn't see it through. Min Yu put the freshly blanched teacup in front of Huo Yao, picked up the teapot with his white and slender fingers, and slowly filled the cup with turquoise tea, Long Jing before Ming Dynasty, how do you taste it? Huo Yao held the teacup, and the elegant tea scent came out of the cup, and took a sip on her lips. She raised her eyebrows immediately and praised, the tea is mellow, and the mouth is sweet and smooth, which is good. Min Yu put down the teapot, his delicate eyebrows were dyed somewhat warmly, and he looked loose and unruly, I heard you participated in an international competition. Hearing the words, Huo Yao seemed to think about Xiao Su. She lazily leaned back in the chair and raised her eyes to look at Min Yu, did the old lady talk to you again? A small smile appeared on the corner of Min Yu's lips, and he said something inexplicably, after all, I am a tutor, and I must make a contribution. Huo Yao touched his chin, ah, no contribution is necessary, just help me make the old lady happy. As her words fell, Zhou Yun who was next to him seemed to be choked on by something suddenly, and coughed suddenly, cough cough. Huo Yao looked up at him strangely. Min Yu also glanced at Zhou Yun, and faintly answered her words, well, this is natural. Zhou Yun just calmed down to be shocked by Huo Yao's words, and then heard this answer from his master, his whole body was petrified. One dared to make a request, the other was still willing to accept. Is the way he opened it today is wrong, or his ears have auditory hallucinations, or is the master in front of him fake? Do you need a professional tutor? Min Yu asked Huo Yao while adding tea. Huo Yao tapped his fingertips on the desktop, thank you, no need. Hearing this, Min Yu didn't continue the topic, picked up the teacup and tasted the tea. For a while, the private room became very quiet, but this quietness was not embarrassing. After a while, Huo Yao looked at the time on his wrist, and then picked up the bag placed aside and handed it to Min Yu, this incense should help you a little bit. After a pause, Huo Yao picked up the teacup again, and stood up after drinking it all, the tea is good, thanks for the hospitality, I'll leave first. I see you off. No trouble, I can just take a taxi and go back. Huo Yao refused Min Yu's kindness, and instead of saying anything, he walked outside. Min Yu looked at Huo Yao's back thoughtfully for two seconds, wait a minute. Huo Yao looked back at him, hey. Min Yu smiled, took the tea box next to it, 
and walked over, I'll give you this tea. Ask me to get it after I drink it. Seeing this, Zhou Yun's eyes widened again, and he only gave a box of ordinary incense, but his master returned a box of limited edition tea, it was over, and he felt that his eyes had problems again. Huo Yao didn't pay attention to Zhou Yun's expression, but did not be polite with Min Yu, and accepted it directly, thank you very much, then. She remembered that the little old man in her family loved to drink green tea. Give him this tea and he would like it very much. Soon, Huo Yao left the room. Zhou Yun asked aloud after the person left, Brother Yu, what is this little girl worthy of attention? I think she is just an ordinary middle school student. Min Yu's eyes were a little far away, not knowing what he was thinking. After turning his head and looking at Zhou Yun, he walked back to his seat and sat down, his voice was faint, she rescued me a year ago. When Zhou Yun heard this, there was an obvious surprise in his eyes. He had never heard him mention this matter before, but... Zhou Yun said in a puzzled voice, she is a little girl, how did you save you? Min Yu took the teacup and took a sip. His handsome face became a bit more condensed, and he said, this is something I haven't figured out yet. Zhou Yun was stunned. Min Yu took out the long wooden box from the paper bag. This time the box was simpler and the workmanship was very rough. It was not of the same grade as the box he gave to the old lady last time. Min Yu looked at him, with a rare sense of sorrow on his face. For the first time, he saw what it means to be treated differently. Zhou Yun wanted to ask more questions, but seeing that his master looked a little weird, he couldn't help but look at the long wooden box in his hand, and then noticed the appearance of the box, his lips twitched fiercely. It's a big loss. Zhou Yun whispered. The master can buy at least a thousand of this box of tea, right? Zhou Yun couldn't bear to look straight and covered his face, then coughed, and said, This Miss Huo is also interested, but you should use the incense that Lao Pei gave for your body, this box, or just give it away. Give me. The packaging quality of the outer box doesn't look very good, the fragrance inside, he can't imagine it. Min Yu glanced at Zhou Yun faintly, you also said that this is the intention of others, and give it to you, do you think it is appropriate? After speaking, he lowered his eyes, rubbed the buckle of the box with his fingertips, and then opened it with a little force. Zhou Yun touched the tip of his nose and muttered, what's wrong? Not to mention your current situation, where is the person who can use this inferior fragrance? It's better to give it to me, and it can play a little role. For example, in addition to the smell at home? As soon as Minyu opened the box, a strong scent of sandalwood came to his nose. He sniffed carefully, and he could also smell a faint medicinal scent. Just smelling like this gave him a very comfortable feeling. Minyu squinted his eyes. He turned his head and looked at the incense burner that was still curling up next to him. After thinking for two seconds, he picked up the water and wiped out the unburned sandalwood inside. Seeing this, Zhou Yun couldn't help but asked in astonishment, Master, what are you? Min Yu didn't speak, but when the sandalwood scent in the room had almost diffused, he took the lighter next to him and lit a piece of incense sent by Huo Yao. Soon, the room was filled with a more special scent of sandalwood. Although the smell was strong, when it was inhaled into the nose, it was not dull, but gradually transformed into a light medicinal scent. When Zhou Yun smelled the smell, his eyes gradually changed, this scent seems, it's sandalwood, doesn't it seem? This is the real soothing fragrance. After a long time, Men Yu's extremely soft voice came over. Zhou Yun opened his eyes suddenly, looking at Min Yu, the real soothing fragrance? How could it? Min Yu stretched out his hand to pinch out the incense, carefully put it back in the box, it's the smell. Hearing this, Zhou Yun quickly changed his face from shock to huge ecstasy, if it really calms the nerves, then your body might get better. Min Yu was silent for two seconds, and then said, no. Maybe this is a little more special than the tranquilizer I used to use. Zhou Yun was completely speechless, because the real soothing fragrance is too precious, 
it can be said that it is completely priceless, and the master's hand is actually better than it, than its value. Zhou Yun swallowed, completely unable to imagine. Remembering that he thought it was inferior fragrance just now, and he was cheeky asking his master, and planned to take it home to deodorize. Suddenly, Zhou Yun had the urge to burrow in the ground. Fortunately, the master was not fooled by him. If he was really given to him, then he would be a sinner forever. However, Zhou Yun's gaze fell on the box of incense again, after thinking for a few seconds, he still said, otherwise, let's find Lao Pei to verify it. It's not that you don't believe in this incense, but if this incense is more special than tranquilizing incense, then whether it is better for the master's body requires further confirmation. At this time, Zhou Yun didn't think of the sentence that Huo Yao said when he handed the incense to Min Yu, this incense should be of some help to you. Half an hour later, Yu Yeozai. When Elder Pei lit a soothing incense and smelled the smell, the whole person's face changed, and his fingers trembling pointed at the incense and said. This incense is indeed a soothing incense. That's right. The person who made this incense is a genius. There are several kinds of medicinal materials in the spices. The top note of sandalwood can have a soothing effect, while the back note of the medicinal incense has the function of restoring the body I don't have decades of experience in medication, and I'm afraid I really dare not make such preparations. Wonderful, really wonderful. Old Pei praised him straight, then raised his head to look at Min Yu, but this tranquilizer should be specially made. Min Yu looked at Old Pei with deep eyes, what's the explanation for this? Because the medicines added in it are all aimed at your current physical condition. Drugs such as Wu Vi Gel White Gum are overbearing. If you decoct them directly, they may damage your body even more, so I have never dared to give you take these medicines orally. With a wry smile and shook his head, Old Pei continued, but now these flavors are ground into powder and blended with sandalwood. With the external tune, the medicinal properties will also be maximized, so I said that this fragrance should be special. Made for you. Hearing this, Min Yu had deep eyes, not knowing what he was thinking. Elder Pei looked at him, with a little expectation in his voice, Min Xiao, can you introduce the man who made this incense to the old man? Min Yu recovered, but shook his head, and said with a smile, it's true that this incense was also given by someone else, but I can be sure that the other person should not be someone who understands pharmacology. Hearing this, Elder Pei showed a trace of disappointment in his eyes, but he was not embarrassed to ask more. A hung next to Old Pei, who was the middle-aged man who sold the medicine to Huo Yao that day, listened to the few medicines his master had just mentioned. He didn't know why, and suddenly remembered that he also bought this yesterday. A little girl with a few herbs came, and the other party seemed to have asked about sandalwood afterwards. But soon, he shook his head, there is no coincidence in this world. Old Pei, listen to what you mean, as long as my master uses this incense to adjust, it is possible to get better, right? Zhou Yun, who had not spoken, asked aloud. Old Pei shook his head, although this incense is useful, it is only used for conditioning, to ensure that the body's function is stable. To completely restore the original state, it must be completely cured. Zhou Yun heard this, although he was a little disappointed, but he also knew that it was fortunate to have the current result. Min Xiao's box of incense can last for at least half a year, and the old man will try his best to see if he can develop a cure. After a while, Old Pei said. Thank you. Min Yu stood up, nodded to Old Pei slightly, and then said again, we won't bother to interrupt any more, and leave. Not long after, Min Yu and Zhou Yun left Yu Yeozai. In the car, Zhou Yun's mood began to float upwards uncontrollably. I don't know where Miss Huo got this incense, it's so timely. Zhou Yun said with emotion. Although he knew that the incense was sent by Huo Yao, Zhou Yun almost subconsciously believed that the incense would not be made by her. After all, even Lao Pei said that without decades of experience in medicine, it is impossible to make this incense. Of. 
How old is Huo Yao, a 17 or 18 year old pharmacist? I am afraid that no one will believe it, even the most genius He Shu in the Pharmacist Association is only in his 30s before becoming famous. Min Yu sitting in the back row, his eyes fell on the box of incense in the seat, and suddenly remembered the Dobeo shop she recommended last time. His eyes were warm and quiet, and he faintly answered Zhou Yun's emotion, maybe it's a friend she knows. Zhou Yun glanced at the rearview mirror, but said, a person who can have this kind of friend is not easy to himself. No wonder his master would be unusual for Huo Yao, and he really had a vision. Hearing the words, Min Yu raised his head and glanced forward, and said with a smile, Do you still feel that you are losing money now? Zhou Yun's hands holding the steering wheel were tight. Thinking of what he had said before, he looked at the tranquilizer on the back seat in the rear view mirror, and felt his face hurt inexplicably. Yes, why does he think the master's tea can buy thousands of this box? It's obviously that his master's tea is not worthy of other people's boxes. Pack a box that really calms the nerves, can it be called an ordinary box? Can. Can. So, brother you, I remember that you still have out of print red robe, or else you will send it to Miss Huo. Zhou Yun said with a serious expression. Min Yu. Roll. As soon as Huo Yao got home, he stuffed Min Yu's box of tea directly into Dad Huo's hands. Huo Jinyan held the box glanced at the packaging outside, his eyes widened suddenly, Daughter, where did you get this tea? Before the Ming Dynasty, Longjing was still produced in the most famous tea village in Z City. Although the price is not as expensive as Taiguanyan de Hongbao, the production of this tea is very scarce this year due to the influence of the weather. He had not grabbed it before. Tea, uncomfortable for a long time. From a friend. Huo Yao replied casually. Huo Jinyan opened the lid and smelled it. It was the one he was thinking of, and he was moved to tears, and then automatically skipped her words, Ah, my daughter is fine, knowing that dad likes this tea the most. It's so sweet to buy it as a gift for my father. Huo Yao. So it is better to raise a daughter, the daughter is not only cuter than his son, but also filial to him. Huo Jinyan snorted. Huo Ting Grui, who was cued by these words as soon as he walked downstairs. So has his status in this family plummeted? The weekend time passed in a hurry, and soon it was Monday. The monthly test results of last week were published today, and the ranking scores were posted on the school bulletin board early in the morning. The difficulty factor of this monthly test is A+. Because the time to notify the test is also rushed, most of the students' scores are much lower than before. But this is not the point. The point is that everyone is waiting to see what Huo Yao's real grades are in the experimental class. After all, last week, it was said that her language grades were extremely poor. Therefore, at this time the school bulletin board was already full of students. However, all the students were shocked when they saw the name with the top score. First place, Huo Yao. 692 points. Second place, Yulian Fan, 691 points. Third place, Chinja, 683 points. I test. Who came out last week that Huo Yao's poor Chinese performance? It's so bad that someone got the first place in the whole year. I want to know which of the turtles and grandsons has good academic performance and deliberately released such false rumors to mislead everyone? Yulian Fan, who has never won the first place for two consecutive years, has been tragically beaten by Waterloo this time, and is only one point behind the transfer student. This transfer student is too scary. To say it weakly, it seems that Huo Yao's language performance is quite poor, and he was deeply educated by her head teacher in the past, and everyone can see it. So poor Chinese scores can still get the first place in the whole year. Is it because she has perfect scores in all other subjects except Chinese? Suddenly I understand why the school arranges Huo Yao in the last examination room, and it has the intention to treat it differently. I don't know if the faces of people who say they have poor grades, go to the back door, 
participate in competitions and cheat are all swollen now. At this time, El Yusya was also standing in the group of students, staring blankly at the rankings on the bulletin board, looking at the name that occupied the first place in the whole year, the expression in her eyes was so cold that she could quench ice slag, and she hung her hands on her side. Almost crushed into a fist. It's her again. Why has everything changed since she came back? Xia Xia, are you, okay? Chong Ying Ying next to her was surprised when she turned her head and saw El Yuxia's expression after watching the results. El Yuxia returned to his senses, loosened his fingers, and watched Chong Ying Ying's eyes have returned to the usual warmth, and asked casually, How many points did you score? Chong Ying Ying was stunned. She probably read it wrong just now. Why did she think Xia Xia's eyes were terrible? Touching the tip of her nose, she said with a bitter expression, this time the question is too difficult. I only scored 615 points. I have fallen out of the top 50. It is uncomfortable and I don't know if I will kick the rockets. Class. When El Yusya heard this, she only gave a faint comfort, no. Hope. Chong Ying Ying raised her head and glanced at the name of number one Huo Yao. This time she was wise not to presume her in front of El Yuxia. She only avoided the emphasis and said, Xiaxia, your grades this semester are still very stable. I think you scored 670 in the exam, which is almost 20 points faster than the final score of last semester. In fact, Chong Ying Ying didn't know what to say. Originally, I heard that Huo Yao's language grades were very bad but she still thinks she will definitely be beaten this time, so she is waiting to see people jokes, but now the result. El Yusya's lips twitched lightly, and the color of ridicule disappeared in a flash. What's the use of a 20-point increase? Compared with Huo Yao, it is not too far away. Finally glanced at the results on the bulletin board, El Yusya said nothing, turned around and left. Looking at El Yusya's departure, Chong Ying Ying sighed heavily. Although Xia Xia didn't say anything, she was definitely uncomfortable. After all, she spent almost all of her spare time in reviewing during this period. The unprecedented seriousness made people feel distressed when watching. But what, was still crushed by the country's adopted daughter. Chong Ying Ying sighed again, and hurriedly chased after her. Asterisk. Huo Yao didn't go to the bulletin board to check the results. Her own score was evaluated after being called to the office by Chen Yu last week. Regarding the ranking, she checked the scores of this high school before entering the first high school. Combining her scores this time, she couldn't get the first grade, and the second grade should be no problem. After all, Chinese is a weakness, and she is also quite helpless. When Meng Ying saw that he had finished his achievements, he felt very complicated when he saw Huo Yao's old monk entering Ding. Since last week, she heard that her language proficiency was very serious, she was secretly gloating in her heart. After all, she has always been accustomed to being persecuted. It must be a reincarnation. If you can see the giant sister tragically in Waterloo, think about it. That picture is also very beautiful. As a result, I just went to see the score, he <laughs> he, she was still too young. Waterloo is impossible, impossible in this life. Stable first in grade. Su Ye noticed that her sight was quite resentful, and Huo Yao turned her head to look at Menjiang, and rarely asked actively, did you finish? How many points? You, score 692, first in the whole year. Meng Ying did not mention himself, paused for two seconds, and said with a grunt, You still said you have a partial subject in Chinese, teasing me. If I were not partial to subjects, I would probably not have a score of 692. Huo Yao shrugged. Meng Ying's lips twitched sharply when she heard the words. Critical attacks were always unprepared, but she was used to it. Shaking his head, Meng Ying said, I told you that Yi Lianfan from the rocket class, that is, the first boss in the Wanyan grade when you didn't transfer, the monthly exam was only one point away from you. 
Meng Ying said with his fingers, Do you know what a point is, maybe he will surpass you next time. Especially if you are still a subject. When Huo Yao heard this name, he was impressed. It seemed that this person had also participated in the National Knowledge Contest and ranked second behind her twice. Yilian Fan is extremely proud. Your paratrooper suddenly grabbed his first place. You are afraid that he will be listed as the number one enemy. Menjiang dragged his chin with both hands and continued, but Yilian anyone who is super handsome, if he really looks at him, he won't lose money. Huo Yao glanced at the person who was guilty of wild talking, and said lightly, Did your saliva flow out? Meng Ying subconsciously touched the corners of her lips with her hand, and immediately realized that she was being teased, and looked at her with angrily, Giant sister, you are getting darker and darker now. Huo Yao tilted his head, raised his eyebrows and smiled. There was laziness and scorn in his inattentive eyebrows, his appearance was exquisite and beautiful, and Meng Ying successfully swallowed his saliva. Yilian Fan who went to him, obviously her giant sister is the first person to cool. After the results of the monthly test came out, the doubts from the school towards Huo Yao disappeared completely in just one morning. El Yuxia was very upset all day because of her monthly exam results. After sitting for about half an hour, El Yuxia saw that Huo Yangzi never looked idle, so she couldn't help but stood up and walked to the desk, Brother, you are busy, I should go home too. Huo Yangzi paused, then put down the pen, raised her head and looked at El Yuxia, Junyi's face was apologetic, today there are a lot of things, otherwise you will wait for the big brother and wait until you finish your work. Go to eat. El Yuxia's eyes flickered, she only smiled and shook her head, and said empathetically, it's okay, you are busy with work. It doesn't matter if you eat another day, then I'll go. After speaking, she didn't wait for Huo Yangzi to say anything, she turned and walked towards the door, her back seemed to be a little lonely. Huo Yangzi watched her disappear at the door, but the whole person leaned heavily on the chair, pressed his fingers on the eyebrows, and was silent for a long time. He raised his head again and reached out to take the phone next to him. Asterisk. Huo Ting Grui, who had just finished his work, saw two missed calls from El Yuxia on his mobile phone. His fingertips swept across the screen, as if he was thinking about whether to return a call. At this moment, the phone rang suddenly, interrupting his thoughts. Seeing that it was his elder brother, he directly pressed the answer button without hesitation. Hey, brother, what are you looking for? Huo Yangzi thought that her second child might be busy and might not answer that quickly, so he was taken aback when he was connected, and he immediately said, It's okay. Just now Xia Xia came to me and asked when I would come out for a meal. Rice. Huo Ting Grui heard this, combined with the missed call just now, the look between his eyebrows and eyes suddenly became a little faint. I am afraid it is not good to eat together. Recently I have been very busy and can't spare time. Huo Yangzi was silent for two seconds before asking, Ting Rui, do you have any misunderstandings about Xia Xia? Huo Ting Rui was stunned while holding the phone, misunderstanding? I don't understand what this means. Last time because of Mrs. Yang, I really misunderstood the little girl preconceivedly. It may have caused a misunderstanding between Yao Yao and Xia Xia. Huo Ting Grui heard the words and didn't need to listen anymore. He already understood the meaning of his elder brother's question just now, and could not help but interrupted directly, Xia Xia called me two calls about half an hour ago. When appearing in court, the phone is always at the assistance. After a pause, Huo Ting Grui's voice was a little heavy, what's more? The little girl has never mentioned Xia Xia in front of me, so there is no misunderstanding and no misunderstanding. He used to think that adopting a sister was just arrogant and indulgent, and people didn't have any bad thoughts, but today, it looks a bit admiring. Shaking his head, Huo Ting Grui didn't want to make the gap between everyone even deeper because of El Yuxia. He just said, Big brother, if you have nothing else, I'll hang up first. The client is still waiting for me to say something. 
Huo Yangzi heard her second child's impatience, but at the end he didn't say anything more, it's okay, you can go ahead. After hanging up the phone, Huo Yangzi sat there for a long time without moving, her expression deep, she didn't know what she was thinking. After Elusia went downstairs, he took a taxi and went straight back to Lu's villa. As soon as he entered the house, his Ioman's slightly harsh voice came over, What did you do after school this afternoon? The driver just called and said that he hadn't seen you after waiting at the school gate for a long time, so he called nowhere. Elusia looked at his Ioman, and said perfunctorily, I went back to the training room, put my phone in my bag, and didn't pay attention. After sitting for about half an hour, El Yuxia saw that Huo Yangzi never looked idle, so she couldn't help but stood up and walked to the desk, Brother, you are busy, I should go home too. Huo Yangzi paused, then put down the pen, raised her head and looked at El Yuxia, Junyi's face was apologetic, today there are a lot of things, otherwise you will wait for the big brother and wait until you finish your work. Go to eat. El Yuxia's eyes flickered, she only smiled and shook her head, and said empathetically, It's okay, you are busy with work. It doesn't matter if you eat another day, then I'll go. After speaking, she didn't wait for Huo Yangzi to say anything, she turned and walked towards the door, her back seemed to be a little lonely. Huo Yangzi watched her disappear at the door, but the whole person leaned heavily on the chair, pressed his fingers on the eyebrows, and was silent for a long time. He raised his head again and reached out to take the phone next to him. Asterisk. Huo Ting Grui, who had just finished his work, saw two missed calls from El Yuxia on his mobile phone. His fingertips swept across the screen, as if he was thinking about whether to return a call. At this moment, the phone rang suddenly, interrupting his thoughts. Seeing that it was his elder brother, he directly pressed the answer button without hesitation. Hey, brother, what are you looking for? Huo Yangzi thought that her second child might be busy and might not answer that quickly, so he was taken aback when he was connected, and he immediately said, It's okay. Just now Xia Xia came to me and asked when I would come out for a meal. Rice. Huo Ting Grui heard this, combined with the missed call just now, the look between his eyebrows and eyes suddenly became a little faint. I am afraid it is not good to eat together. Recently I have been very busy and can't spare time. Huo Yangzi was silent for two seconds before asking, Ting Rui, do you have any misunderstandings about Xia Xia? Huo Ting Rui was stunned while holding the phone, misunderstanding? I don't understand what this means. Last time because of Mrs. Yang, I really misunderstood the little girl preconceivedly. It may have caused a misunderstanding between Yao Yao and Xia Xia. Huo Ting Grui heard the words and didn't need to listen anymore. He already understood the meaning of his elder brother's question just now, and could not help but interrupted directly, Xia Xia called me two calls about half an hour ago. When appearing in court, the phone is always at the assistance. After a pause, Huo Ting Grui's voice was a little heavy, what's more? The little girl has never mentioned Xia Xia in front of me, so there is no misunderstanding and no misunderstanding. He used to think that adopting a sister was just arrogant and indulgent, and people didn't have any bad thoughts, but today, it looks a bit admiring. Shaking his head, Huo Ting Grui didn't want to make the gap between everyone even deeper because of El Yuxia. He just said, Big brother, if you have nothing else, I'll hang up first. The client is still waiting for me to say something. Huo Yangzi heard her second child's impatience, but at the end he didn't say anything more, it's okay, you can go ahead. After hanging up the phone, Huo Yangzi sat there for a long time without moving, her expression deep, she didn't know what she was thinking. After El Yuxia went downstairs, he took a taxi and went straight back to Lu's villa. As soon as he entered the house, his Ioman's slightly harsh voice came over, What did you do after school this afternoon? The driver just called and said that he hadn't seen you after waiting at the school gate for a long time, so he called nowhere. El Yuxia looked at his Ioman, and said perfunctorily, I went back to the training room, 
put my phone in my bag, and didn't pay attention. When he Ziyoman heard it, the expression on his face improved a little, next time remember to tell me in advance, otherwise my mother will be worried. Yet. Yeah. Lucia replied softly and walked into the living room, absently sitting on the sofa. He Ziyoman looked at Lucia, only then noticed her look, and couldn't help but asked in confusion, what happened? It looks like a lost soul. Lucia took the pillow next to her and hugged it on her chest, her legs curled up on the sofa, without looking at her, her voice was very soft, nothing. He Ziyoman frowned, is someone in the company bullying you? No. Lucia shook her head, everyone treats me well. He Ziyoman had never seen her daughter look like this, so she couldn't help but break the casserole and ask to the end, then what happened at school? After a pause, as if thinking of someone, he Ziyoman's face sank instantly, is that Huo Yao bullying you? El Yuxia put his head on the pillow and did not speak, but the whole person seemed to be greatly wronged. Seeing this, he Ziyoman snapped the water cup in his hand and placed it on the marble coffee table again, that wild girl is a scourge. He forced your grandma back to her hometown. I don't know. Now she's doing harm to you at school again. How did the Huo family raise up people? El Yuziming, who had just come down from the second floor, was shocked when he heard the sound of the cup knocking heavily on the coffee table. El Yuxia was also taken aback, then raised her head and looked at her, with a forced smile on her lips, Mom, don't be angry, I'm really fine. He Ziyoman felt even more annoyed when he heard it, You are too kind, you don't dare to talk if you are bullied. Shaking his head, he Ziyoman picked up the mobile phone next to him, and while flipping the number, he sneered, How can my daughter be bullied by others for nothing? Today, I have to call and ask them the Huo family. When El Yuxia saw this, her expression changed and she hurriedly put down the pillow in her hand and grabbed the phone into her hand before he Ziyoman made a call. Mom, I'm really fine. You don't need to be angry for someone who is irrelevant. He Ziyoman frowned, Xia Xia, give your phone to mom quickly. Where did El Yuxia dare to give it? After putting the phone away, she sat down next to her, raised her hand and gently patted her back to comfort her, and whispered, Mom, I'm really fine, don't get me wrong. After a two-second pause, she changed the topic, by the way, today's monthly test score came out. I got 670 points in the test, and I was 10th grade. Being distracted in this way, the anger on Hizayoman's face dissipated a little, the ranking has improved four or five places from the end of last semester, not bad. El Yuxia finally breathed a sigh of relief in her heart when she saw that she didn't try to call the Huo family again. El Yuziming, who had been listening to the two at the top of the stairs, suddenly heard the score, but he sneered, even to participate in a competition, you have to rely on people who know the answer in advance. These 670 points, tisk, who knows it's not true. Only then did El Yuxia notice El Yuziming, and when he heard him speak, he stabs at him, subconsciously ridiculing in her voice, can you please take a little bit of your brain? Sorry, I don't know what the brain is. El Yuziming waved his hand with a look of embarrassment. El Yuxia shook her head speechlessly, El Yuziming, you are really. However, before she finished speaking, he Ziyoman interrupted, Okay, your brother is ignorant, you are ignorant? What are you stubborn about with him? El Yuxia's heart sank instantly when she heard this. El Yuxia has always been aware of what kind of position he is in the Lu family. On the surface, the Lu family's husband and wife love her but it is only because she became famous for participating in the women's team draft. Face Compared with her brother El Yuziming, no matter what she does or says, it will always be her fault if he is there. She had deeply regretted more than once. Why did she return to the Lu family? Obviously, she had never suffered such wrongs in the Huo family. It's just. El Yuxia thought of the Huo family's adoptive parents. She felt more hate in her heart. 
she had to pretend to be a poor family because she was so rich and even more hypocritical than her ruthless biological parents. Nausea. Elusia took a deep breath, suppressing some of the unbearable memories that surged up in her mind. His Ioman may have realized that he was a bit too biased. He stretched out his hand and patted the back of Elusia's hand. He lowered the volume and said, except for your brother's bad temper, he didn't cover his mouth. There is no malice. Focus on it. Elusia's lips twitched, her expression returned to normal, and she hummed casually. Elusiming had already walked over, sat lazily on the armrest of the sofa, and asked boringly, how many points did that coward score this time? Elusia looked at him and didn't understand who he was talking about. What coward? Hisayoman also asked suspiciously.